fucking no, wait. dare you. No. Why did you click the button? No. <laughs> wait, how many episodes are going to be Rings of Power Season 1? I think it's... Isn't it nine? Can we have a lower nine number? Nine episodes. Why did I get, well, <laughs> am I getting that number from something else? Because it's... I don't know. Like, probably. Actually, could be. Everything's so short now. Shows used to be like 24 episodes a season. Yeah, but we're going to cry for requests, like for complaining about that, because Daredevil's going to be like pain for 18 episodes or whatever the hell they mm -hmm. said it would be. That's right. Yeah. Like, why couldn't this have yeah. ended after six? I'm guessing those will be like 50 minutes each as well. Rangs of power. Uh, I Lang. presume, actually, it's. I don't see a list on Wikipedia of like. Yeah, me neither. That's why I was. Oh, wait. I, I think I remember reading something like that because of the COVID stuff that it ended up being like nine episodes for the first season. I'm sure I read that somewhere. Hmm. I wish I could read. Yeah, reading's really cool. Um, pretty helpful, We can, we can huh? sort that out for you at some point. Oh, shit, really? That would be nifty. Rags, you know some people who can read, right? I, yeah, I do. I do. Ooh. And they tell me it's worth it. How exciting. It's really neat. Just like reading's pretty cool, man. I can like, understand rainbow. words and things. I can finally understand what's happening in this weird box when I stream. Like, just moves these things up. And I think people are trying to say something to me, but I don't know. Just and whose rank. fault is that? It's definitely chat's fault. Always also, chat's fault. We're live, chat's up, we're on screen, everything is beautiful. Even Hello, me? chat. Hey, Fringy, I, uh, I was like, I'll sleep. And then I was like, I was just rolling about, and I was like, ugh, not sleeping. Not working. I was like, maybe, maybe if I just torch myself by recording more, and then I did <laughs> torch yourself. Torch myself. Yep, that's it. And Ow, I, hurt. I got another two hours done. I'm getting so close, which isn't in any way revealing. At okay, Oggy. I'm still on the recording, at least in part, for this new video I'm trying to put out. A fucking giant annoying thing, but it'll get done. It's gonna be nice. Mm -hmm. Pogland. Yeah, the the one Metal said. The, the, with yeah. The Pogs. People like Pogs. Remember Alf? He's back. Pogfall. Cool. And that is, is more than enough to bring joy and cheer to all of the people's... Um, well, legit, of, of, this, of this script. Because uh, it gets worked on in, like, pieces simultaneously, okay? And I have, like... Oh, let me have a look. Put it on screen right now, my screen, but nobody at home can see it because what? I've got the 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 EFAP thing up. If I didn't, they'd know exactly what the video is right now. Oh, yeah, three thousand five hundred words left to record, <gasps> which is like you know I could do that in in you know time, so that's not bad. I guess. Yeah. You could always spoil it. I've been half tempted. I really mm. have. Even though it kind of already is spoiled, I think, if you've kept an eye on me in the live streams the past week plus. Um, yeah, and every time I'm trying to, to hey, you want to hang out? It's like, no, I'm streaming myself. <laughs> it's like, no, I need to sleep. Like, <laughs> I okay, still, fine. I meant, I meant to stream the part two of Stray. <laughs> I never got around to it. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll keep trying at some point, because people want to see me play a cat game, you know? And I can't, I can't just, I can't just not. What'll, what'll happen? I don't know it's one of those times when you're just working on a video. <laughs> it's like, hey, wanna hang out? It's like, no, I've been up for like eight days. I should sleep now. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> pretty much where I was going with this. I was like, so then I finished the recording and I was like, sorting some stuff out. And I was like, EFAP is in two hours. Well, I guess it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm, I'm super energetic right now, 100%, ready to go. H how's Liar. everyone else? I'm fine. Why? Mm -hmm. I'm doing alrighty. I had normal sleep. Um, I had normal I sleep as well. Nice. My sleep was normal. Completely atypical. It's not yeah. even worth discussing. Nah, not really. Not even worth discussing. Is there even Can't such a thing that, that can qualify as that on EFAP? Even worth discussing? Well, there might be a few things that are worth discussing. Oh, I thought you were going to... No, that was like a... Like, <laughs> I was setting you up. I got nothing. Oh, okay. Well, I except, guess I'll see everyone next week. Except Prey. Speaking of next week, that's what we're covering, as it's far as I game. know. Oh, I'm wow. already seeing contention online oh. about uh, how good it is, which is...
Good that's news. Different, different to be honest with you. That's more interesting. That's um, more interesting. I thought it was just yeah. going to be a pile of shit, but I've seen loads of people say like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not as good as the original, of course, but it might be the best one other than the original. And it's like, whoa. Oh yeah. my goodness. And from what I hear, hey, maybe. Uh, Jay of House Longbone believes that it is banger or baller. She used one of those words, which either way, that's a good, that's a high, high bar. Then you got um, the, the few other people I've been seeing and comments from different people saying, you know, this is really good. And then uh, Drinker. Drink, Drinker said uh, Lies and Deceptions. Not a good film. Bad mm. film. So, um, you know, we'll see it. We're looking to try and view this film to to the morrow uh, and, and and who knows what it'll be like and then we'll we'll cover it next week so here's your warning people in the chat all right go see it before then if you want to have the the yeah. not the whole thing spoiled i guess because uh who knows who knows what we're dealing with exactly but the fact that not everybody's just universally shitting on it is good news i guess yeah, yeah. i think it's so much more interesting <laughs> to talk about yeah it's more interesting um yeah what else is there? What events happen in life these days? I watched Bullet Train. That was pretty how was, fun. How was the bullet, the bullet Train? train? Bullet Train, yeah. The, the new Brad Pitt actionism. Uh, it was pretty fun. Very silly. Probably doesn't make any sense at all. But, you know, it was fun to watch. It was a very entertaining movie. It knew what it was doing. So, I give it an A-OK. -okay. If you want to know more, check what's out what's the premise? I think I know what it is from the trailer, but why don't you tell us to tempt people to watch it? Maybe. Uh, basically, basically, yeah, basically, not basically, basically, like, the, like the, anyway, like the, with, with a lot of basil on it. Yeah, yeah, I was I was going there where I thought I wouldn't, but then you guys did it, so I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Uh, so yeah, Brad Pitt, newest one. Uh, he's basically an assassin man. He just came back from I don't know, I don't remember, it was like vacation or just took a took a leave of absence to find himself and he, he gets like his first mission back and it's just a here you go go retrieve this case from this bullet train it's just go grab it and get out of there but obviously that doesn't happen and then all kinds of shenanigans go down and action scenes and a lot of plot stuff happens that i'm not sure works out uh but yeah, over the top action scenes, a lot of explosions, a lot of gore, gory action uh, here and there, and yeah, it goes it goes crazy. But I found it to be very entertaining, uh, very entertaining action movie. Well, it's nice to know Brad Pitt's still around, still still making yeah. stuff, you know. He still looks the same, isn't he? Like almost seventy now or something. Like I don't 60 know something. I don't know when his deal with the devil runs out, but I'm pretty sure it's public record. We can go look it up. Brad Pitt. Oh, 58. I overshot oh, You're going to type in Brad Pitt deal with the devil. <laughs> deal with the devil. It's like, oh, it's only 350. Three that sounds Famously, good. Hollywood movie star Brad Pitt made a deal with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> but yes, he's 58. He looks, uh, he looks still pretty good. It's uh, pretty impressive. I think he's Benjamin Button in real life. <laughs> yeah. I Brad will say, Button. I think he's gotten older in the past 30 years. It's not that, that much is older. that is a true that is a true. Well, yeah, that maybe Benjamin a tiny button. button. Explain this plot. Yeah. <laughs> couple wrinkles in the past forty years, oh. but just a couple. And here's the the biggest shocker. It actually had some some stuff some some puns and jokes in there that made me laugh. That oh. yeah, that's, that, that doesn't happen too often with modern stuff. So I was very very pleased. Not 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 belly laughing, funny, but it's like yeah, that was pretty funny. I, oh, I like that. You know what I'm it is. You were in the cinema and you laughed and you were like you were like scared because you didn't know what that was as an experience. <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like cry. The others um, are doing it too. It's like you guys okay? Did you did that happen to you too? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man, are you, are you okay? And you're like, no, no, I don't no, think so. You, you guys been watching Marvel too? And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Marvel One? Yeah, um, <laughs> you actually a lot. <laughs> I think. I think to throw in a Simpsons reference for the sake of fringing here, uh, it's like oh, when good. Mr. Burns' heart slightly beats or whatever. It's like a horrible, screwed up black, like little little piece of fruit. And it goes, <laughs> it's like uh, a prune. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of remember the context for that. I just remember that image because it was funny as fuck. 
Um, so yeah, uh, the, the the last week we saw you all, you wonderful folk in chat. We talked about um, what surprises Marvel had for us for Phase mm -hmm. Five. It was so exciting. It was like, oh, yeah. you, you loved this, and now you're gonna love this, or else. How, 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 did, how did you guys like all all them trailers? Because you um, I did that before you, and then you did it for the FFs. What? How did you did you like the trailers? Were they amazing? Did we like any of them? Or I don't remember. <laughs> I think we said that the Wakanda Forever trailer looked the most like promising. Like I like promising i suppose or that any effort had been put into it or, or artistry had been put into it yeah but mm -hmm. um the others were i mean andor looked expensive most yeah. of the I others were know. just yeah well andor looks more expensive than the other disney shows we've seen was like the point right even though that wasn't one of the trailers that yes. got released we just decided to talk about it anyway. even though there well there's a new andor trailer that we could watch today actually yeah, well. no no. <laughs> oh, all right, jeez. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you really, we, no. can, we can if you want. I don't actually, I don't, I don't mind. I just don't really care. I, I really believe you mind from what you just said. You have a mind upon this subject. You have thoughts and feelings, and that is okay. I just don't want Disney, uh, Disney just lies to me. Disney is, they are, Disney are liars. In that what? case, how about today, instead of watching anything to do with Disney or Marvel, we watch other Ooh. people talking about Disney and Marvel. Oh. You know, somehow one more degree of separation seems better. Hmm. Well, because um, you see, we, we, we on we on EFAP, we're saying some stuff about the state of what well, I guess you could call it Phase Four. I think Loki did it in for us. I'm trying to think of the timeline because it was like I three strikes, think right? So, like one division and what Falcon and Soldier, very very bad, and so the world is gone, and several characters have all been fucking knifed in the back, but. Um, we were still in it. There was still a couple things left, and then Loki. I think we were like, "All right, that's it. Then it's fucked." Yeah, it's done. It's over now. Um, but a lot of other people stayed in the game. They're like, "Nah, man, this this is actually not only are you wrong about them three because they both they're all really good, but that we're on for great things." But ever since I think M O M and Thor: Love and Thunder and Moon Knight, that that little era, of fucking hell, it has changed the sentiment. Uh, yeah, if anyone's been paying attention to it. Jeez. I think Moon Knight might have been... Yeah, I think Moon Knight, Multiverse of Madness were the two that people were expecting more from, and then they were just the same sludge as everything else, and that was, like, the realization, oh, shit, like, it's never gonna be... It's never gonna be different Good. from then. Dude, I feel like I've watched, like, a million years of Phase 4, and then I still realize, oh, I watched probably only half of it. And only, I think, last week or something, I... I get to know about this fucking titan that's sticking out of Earth now because I never seen Eternals. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how did I not know about this? How has how has this never come up before? Yeah, I, just... I lost my shit when someone told me about. It. I was like, you crazy? You fucking with me, right? Like, this is not real. And then they and sent me a picture. It was like, what? How is this? <laughs> they this sent me a picture. what? <laughs> sent me a picture of this titan sticking out of Earth. It's like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Like they That's send you a bad, picture though. of. A fucking scene from a movie to be like no seriously look <laughs> this does exist someone made this they're not lying to you and I'm like, oh my god i couldn't believe it because no one mentioned it ever it's just oh what well, is this uh, sanity <clears throat> phase four mauler kind mauler kindly invited me on to this to talk about it uh phase four and i was like yeah sure and then i researched it and i was like oh shit i've mm. barely seen any of this because i in my what head the line where phase four begins was drawn farther back. I thought it was. Um, but I guess end game is where it, it kind of cuts off and phase four starts. And I was just like, fuck. Well, to be fair, I mean, <laughs> even I couldn't have, I, I was struggling to say where phase four began. I eventually was like, so it's one division then, but, but I was like, wasn't there a movie? Was there a movie? Was, was it all, was the TV shows thing a, a horrible nightmare that doesn't count or was it real? And it's like, no, it's very real. It's, uh, yeah. Very real. I guess yeah. Phase 4 is when they started integrating all the t the series that they're doing, right? Yeah, like, One Phase Division 3, was it wasn't really time. a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. One Division was their first one, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was the one that tricked us the longest. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. For two yeah, episodes? Those, those early episodes are the ones that are the, the worst received, even though they're the best ones. Yeah, and I think well, it they makes probably... angry. I don't know how much the, the first two episodes were worse. 
the worst received out of WandaVision? Yeah. Oh, the fucking yeah. Marvel fans were like, boo, I want to see interesting. It's like, no. <laughs> oh, man. Hard what to see superpowers. I, mean, I really enjoyed the beginning of that show. I, I thought it's shaking it up. It's trying to do something different. And I, I like that kind of old television. Like, mm-hmm. like it's trying to do like I Love Lucy kind of thing. And I just thought it was, I thought it was great. And they, they have, like, you know, they would lift up props on strings and stuff. I'm like, I like this. They're not even trying to, like, do yeah, CGI like, or anything. Like, yeah. Dude, in the part that, like, had me going the most was the dinner scene where they're, like, it's like they're glitching out almost. And, uh, um, yeah. It's just like, oh my God, what is happening? What does it all mean? I don't yeah. know how much it works now that we understand what was actually going on. Yeah. You know, like, I don't I don't know, that's kind of the problem, but even then, it's just kind of weird that the more sludge-like it became, the more people liked it. I don't understand. And it, and man, I did it like go sludge mode. Another planet. Oh, yeah, it was Why do you guys sludge. like this? I don't get it. Ollie was super duper sludge. That last episode we got the two different fights of two different people firing lasers at each other that <laughs> walk yeah. in the center, it's like, fuck. That's one of like the biggest signals of sludge, I think, is that kind of battle. Well, they shot their lasers, yeah. and uh, she shot her lasers, and then they shot their lasers at each other. But like, one yeah, person's laser different. was stronger than the other laser? And, it did, and one of them was red, and the other one was purple, and then it was, and then the good girl won, and then there was magic, and, and then the, I the, liked it. They ironically would be like, we set it up, remember the runes? We set it up. And you're like... No. <laughs> what right. Is, what, what do you think set up means? Ago, one episode ago, you said that they exist. Like, you set them up for a bad She time. somehow That's figured them did. out because Agatha explained she the mechanics them. to her. It's like, okay. Mm-hmm. A giant rune. Someone um, explains to me a language, a new language yesterday, and I start speaking it fluently today. That's not a setup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Because yeah, uh, he has a he has that fight in Multiverse of Madness with Evil Strange, doesn't he? They do a they do a um. We are doing our powers against each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but then I win. You're like, why? I I win. Uh, shut up! I win. Because <laughs> I am the protagonist. He's like, no, oh, but I'm like, but I'm you. Doesn't that mean I'm the? He's like, no. Mm-mm. Um. No, nope, no. So anyway. The, 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 I've seen more and more video essays now popping up about how, hey, guys, hey, you didn't know this, but Phase 4 is actually bad. And I'm oh, wondering... because wow, we didn't notice. Wondering about some of these channels that have been like, you, you, did, are you the same people that would have been like, oh my god, Loki was the, the greatest show. Yeah, when it's coming out. Oh, mm. this was the greatest show. Oh, Phase 4 is like the greatest phase. So, um, what I'm interested in is seeing what their reasoning is and comparing Ooh. it to us and seeing because we agree with them right on the surface but perhaps there is more perhaps if you dig into the details we discover oh, some discussions Ooh. um the people saying this are the same people who love the first three mcu shows yeah that's my theory uh on, on a mm-hmm. lot of those we were there for the hype we were there for being the controversy ones for being like oh yeah you guys hate it what a show we like <laughs> some of it <laughs> We wanted to like more of it. Falcon the Winter Soldier, did that last even an episode? I think we got annoyed after one, didn't we? I think, um, I think we didn't like it, but one. it was episode... We didn't like it from ever, but I think it was episode three that got us angry enough to where we said, all right, we're doing an EFAP on it. Oh, yeah. Because originally we were just going to let it go. Episode four was the one that... Um, four, that okay. It, yeah, because that was the one... What was one with um, Blood yeah. on Shield, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that pissed me right off. That whole show pissed me right off. And uh, Loki was gone in ten minutes. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> they just like, it's like, three, two, one, they shoot the gun, go, and it just slabs onto the ground face first. Yeah, pretty much. Something that you'll notice is, and something that we noticed was like the sheer depths of the dialogue. It was so like apparent in Loki. Like it was really bad from the get-go. Yeah, and, the and first episode just, hits you like a brick wall. Well, yeah, because we waste contra- no time. We have to contrast Avengers Loki with this Loki because they're the same person. So it's like oh, a direct mm-hmm. comparison, and it's just like, yeah. Well, I remember the the moment I stopped watching Loki is when they had all the Infinity Stones in a drawer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I the mean, fuck is this? Place. 
that's a fair enough place to just stop. It's like, the internet, went, we don't give a fuck, internet do we? went nuts about that, and rightfully so. It's like, what the fuck is this? And it's like, ain't it funny? It's like, oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Michael Waldron? People aren't really happy that, like, you've got the thing that Natasha sacrificed her life for just sitting in a drawer. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's funny. like, it's not funny, really. It's really undercuts, like, a really important moment, but. I'm sure that second was a great idea that everybody thought was really funny in the writer's room. Yeah, second yeah. we're done with the Infinity Saga, it's like, these things, they're just paperweights, who cares? It's like... <laughs> and yeah, about Loki, by the way, it's to... For continuity, if you want to see this, Loki's face, it's like you need to watch, you know, Thor, then Avengers, and then this, and you'll be following directly, and it is a fucking... You go from Joss Whedon Loki to Michael Waldron Loki, which is, you know, it's similar. <laughs> Um, what even, what else happened? I'm trying to remember now, because I was just like, because the, the, that's where we were like, uh-oh. Um, because we haven't been keeping up with, uh, with everything lately, which is okay, alright? We recommend everyone else not keep up with everything Marvel put up <laughs> to now. Was there a film Correct. next? Oh, um, after Loki? What? Oh, Black Absolutely. Widow was first up, yeah. Oh my god, are you, oh Black fuck, I could have been convinced Black Widow was phase three for a second there. Oh, yeah. that happened. Right. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, that's the one. That was a really oh. good movie. Mm -hmm. did it, did it, were people saying that was great? I don't think so, right? Um, I don't... I'm not sure. I can't remember. But if anybody was saying it was good, they moved on pretty quick. We did cover someone who said good, right? <laughs> I think. I think. We did. Probably. I think. Um... Because then, yeah, because when Shang-Chi comes out, it's like this weird middle of the phase where you're just like, hmm, well. Well, remember, Shang-Chi got pretty good responses, um, but uh, that's another case of, like, the half-life on these projects, because nobody talks about it anymore. Nobody will. Nobody, we, we, we would have said it back then, nope. now it will be true. Nobody will remember the plotline for that film. Well, it's been, it's been a year since that film came out, and I can, yeah, I can imagine that nobody could tell you anything. And plus, I mean, we even saw on Twitter, right, like, people getting, posting, like, the scene, the fight scene at the end, like, oh, the action's so great, and getting eviscerated. <laughs> Everybody's not accepting that, because, like, the tide is really turning on a... It seems at the moment, like, the general sentiment is starting to sour a bit. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. have you seen the, the meme where it's like, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, it's all over fucking Twitter. It's, the Deep is, is re-announced to be a part of the, the, uh, the Seven in Season 3 of The Boys. And it's this okay. meme of him, he's got his back to the camera, and he reveals himself and walks on stage like, I'm really awesome sort of thing. And people are using that imagery to say, like... Oh, you have Moon Knight fans saying my character was hard done by, and then it'll say Taskmaster fans, and it'll show that clip. Like, basically, the, you know, you, you, there, there are ways to have it way worse. Um, and it's just funny, because yeah, it goes all the way back to, remember Death Dealer? <laughs> Does anyone remember that? that, that is Death weird. Dealer? No. It I was, don't remember it, Death Dealer. The, the, oh, guy. he was the dude, the guy who was He was the really, really cool, cool bad cool guy in Shang-Chi, and he just got fucking killed. <laughs> By a yeah. spooky old ghost demon, it just sucked his spirit out. And he was dead. One of the most bizarre yeah. fucking things that's ever happened in all of Marvel. I don't know why they did that. Just throw away this really cool character for, like, I guess a joke. I, like, I don't know. I'm not Once, even sure what the point. That's a good question because I'm not sure why they did that. Because you had, um, was he called Razor Fist, the other henchman yeah, guy? I think so. Like they let him live. It's like, why didn't you? <laughs> why? I just don't understand. Remember when they had the old archer man? He just got casually killed by one of the spooky demon yeah. ghost big things as well. Just remember the fact that that was what happened in that film. Like, that there was demons from another dimension in, like, a mystical forest. Mm. Uh, like, cause, and, like, they, and they, they pick you up and suck world. something out of you, and then you're dead. And it's just like, oh my oh, god, right. what, does that, what does that mean? What did they do? Is that Was that his soul? <laughs> do, do we have well, souls? Souls are canonical, like, in the Marvel cinematic. Considering um, the undead spooky dudes in, in Multiverse of Madness, are they connected to that at all? And it's just like, look... I I, I don't I'll know. Ask we questions. forgot about okay. it, so you better forget about it, too, okay? It's... it's we, we are... Phase 4 is not interested in cohesive world building at all. Everybody's doing their own thing. Um, 
under the illusion of interconnectedness because occasionally Wong or Abomination will show up. Like I, th I feel it's 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 kind of um, I think that what what people liked about the MCU was conceptually was that you could tell stories that were much longer than you would traditionally see in films, um, because you know every film is connected and there's like a couple of films a year, and that you can build up these really big stories, um. But now it's just characters show up. That's the extent yeah. of the world building. Hey, you <laughs> might see somebody you recognize. They might pop up to hang out for an episode or like show up for five minutes to remind you that they exist. It's not really world building. Yeah. And then like, Kevin Feige really comes around. At all. And then Kevin Feige comes around and I was like, oh, by the way, this phase, this is over. Uh, we call it the Multiverse Saga. Okay, phase four, five now. It's like, oh. Oh, that okay. was, well, yeah, I, they've <laughs> cut Phase 4 short. Um, uh, they've definitely cut it short. But they haven't done anything. We haven't concluded to anything. We just told all stories, I guess. And now we We're, just do the next. I mean, it's... You look back at the... Now, technically, Phase 2 ended with Ant-Man. And technically, Phase 3 ended with Far From Home. Mm -hmm. But uh -huh. they all end with, like, Avengers films. Because there's yeah. some plot that leads up to there. And then Phase 2 kind of wasn't a good example of that. But then Phase 3 was much more clearly building up to something. Here it's like, by the end of Phase 4, what are we really going to have accomplished? Other than the destruction of several characters. Yeah, and the I'll... introduction we... of, of not great replacements. Yeah, because we thought that Kang is going to be like this overarching thing. That he's going to he is, ap still. appear he here and be. there. Yeah. Be. In 2024 yeah. or 2025. Exactly. The first Get Kang your popcorn. Gonna... Okay, I, I want to, but it's too many cars. Get your promotional <laughs> popcorn pins, sit down in your seat, and buy all the things. So we have... it, seems to, it seems to me one of the biggest issues with this phase is it's now they're now relying too much on audiences watching the Disney television series uh to understand like what's coming down the line in the films like kang the conqueror for instance like i think one of the the first of the two avengers movies that are coming i guess revolves around kang and as i understand i didn't watch this far into loki but it's loki that kind of sets him up that's like and true there's... but i don't even know that you'll un... i don't know what do we have to say about kang? it's like he's kind of just this eccentric weirdo uh when you yeah. see him next he's probably not going to be the guy that we met but in loki be the same person yeah okay i i think that they're almost and 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 then you look at another example if you didn't watch one division you might actually be better off in terms of like especially if you direct one of the Wanda films is. i would argue you're right. correct on that because of pale vision Yes, right. because because if you know who if you know about Power Vision and everything to do with that, you're just going to be confused as to, and also you're just going to be confused about it. it's like I thought Wonder Vision resolved on like Wanda trying to be a good person, um, yeah. But then but then we changed our minds because it's so incoherent. I don't know that you benefit at all from like watching the shows. I don't know that you benefit from knowing more because I mean, look at Metal saying like, oh wait, there's like a dead celestial yeah. sticking out of Earth, and nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. You're better off well, not knowing that, <laughs> you know? I think that and, like, even if all the television shows were great, it's too much. So, it's like, I, I, I don't want to watch all the television series, like, 8, 10, 12 episodes of this show, that show, that show, to understand where the movies are going. Like, uh, Marvel, Marvel would really like you to, because that means that you're going to be a lot more invested in, like, the Disney ecosystem. Well, yeah. Uh, I think it's as simple as, like, they were successful because they had pretty well-written and endearing characters played by charming actors. That was, like, the main, main thing. Because it doesn't now matter, they, a, lot of their oh, plots, yeah. a lot of their plots and world-building were kind of, eh. Mm. Um, but were I feel like we are... Mood. If we dealt with that <clears throat> same, you know, positive in all these shows and movies, I think maybe we'd be like, it's a bit ridiculous we've got to watch all these shows. But at the same time, if we were enjoying them, would we really be complaining that much? Or would we be like, well, I mean, they're good shows. Yeah, like, yeah. if they were good, they're good. Um, people are going to enjoy something that's good, even if there's a lot of it. But it's not. Yeah, because this is what I don't get about the whole, like, Phase 4 sucks now crowd. Like, when you guys, like, and singing the praises of some of like the for example the character working falcon winter soldier they would talk forever about how amazing bucky's journey was when we were like wow they skipped over most of it 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just like, to remember, the end. remember when they were they were having their group therapy session and like Bucky in episode two, Bucky just like declares the arc that he needs to resolve. Yeah. <laughs> like he just states what his inner conflict is. I would it's definitely like, watch more that... I would watch more of the shows if they were all good for sure. But like in like the Breaking Bad universe, for example, if like Breaking Bad was a thing, Better Call Saul was a thing, and Mike Ermanshaw had his own show, and Jewel <laughs> Babino had his own show, and Kubi had his own show, <laughs> and Howard had his own show. I'd be like, you know what? I'll maybe watch a few of these and just kind of try and fill in the blanks on my own. Like, like you joke, right? And everyone's like, haha, yeah, fun, fun. But it's like, yeah, but fucking Agatha is getting her own show. Yeah. Why? <laughs> right, yeah. Echo, a character that is nobody knows from a show nobody watched, and, and yeah, I, obviously yeah, this, she's more of a somebody in the comics, I suppose. But like, I just mean in reference to the people who are t- paying attention only to the movies and shows. It's just funny to be like, "Rags, are you excited for the Echo show?" And she's like, "What? No. Is that even Marvel?" It's like, <laughs> it's "Yeah, like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no idea." It's it's oh. like they're um. I don't know. They made an Echo show. And like you guys will watch this, right? It's Marvel. It's got Marvel on it. We put Star Wars. I mean, we put Marvel on it. You'll watch it. Because <laughs> they announced the Agatha show right after WandaVision happened, right? It was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. interested, Inside. interested. And now it's like, it's like it was a joke, and now it's like, now they committed to the joke. <laughs> They're really going through with it. Uh, I guess they signed <laughs> something somewhere. Um, last week we talked about DC, um, and their sorry yes, state of did. affairs. Mm-hmm. Uh. What, did we? Did we remind me? Because my brain is uh, melted cheese. What you know? The whole like DC canceling everything that hadn't happened yeah. when we were talking last week, right? That no, that yet. was that was, that was like, like a few days, days ago right? when they, they had this whole list they that that went out. We should probably uh, talk about that because people. There's going to be some people who have no idea, and there's some people who just want to know what we think about that. Um, hang on, I think James. Did they cancel list. more than just yeah. Batgirl? Yeah, no, hang on, I'll, I'll get the list. Canceled, they cancelled other films, but in terms of DC films, they cancelled... That was just Batgirl. Was Flash one of them, or is that still going? Oh, wait, no, that's... No, no. Um... Is that the one? Yeah. Flash is still going to oh, come out look, some year. This is a list yeah. of things that have been, like, yeah, cancelled and, and stopped. Um, but I guess the the relevant ones are... Uh, Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Hunt uh, Haunts were the ones that got cancelled this week for like oh, tax write-off purposes. Holiday Hunt? Alright, that sounds appropriately scooby Um, and, and and presumably a lot of the stuff that was on the CW has been uh, cancelled as well as, as like shot. part of these measures. Hope so. <laughs> there was there was also that uh, I think Warner Brothers is is also now scaling back animation uh, kids programming as well um mm. and and uh the that they want to merge hbo max and discovery plus into a new streaming service <laughs> oh and i guess they announced <clears throat> joker too like properly and officially yeah with lady gaga as, as a yeah i'm scared Harley Quinn. I'm, scared. Not, I'm, I'm interested i will still scared. i would happily say i am scared because this could be good I, yeah. I, I really wish I hope it does. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's going to be Please good, don't but... be good. Please don't be good. Oh, I guess in the sense that if it's bad, I'll be like, no, you had a chance. Meanwhile, <laughs> when they have something new in Phase 4, it's like, does it have a chance, really? It's trying to claw out of its swamp. Just like, <laughs> like just go back in. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so... um, but I guess it, as it pertains to DC, the announcement was that they, they're, they're developing a 10-year plan and that they want to do it more like the MCU, like openly yeah. stated that that's their goal. Yeah. Which I guess, um, and and also that like I think that DC's like spinning off into a new studio or something, um, and that there'll be like new leadership. I think the current guy is, um, I think the current guy may or may not be leaving. Walter Hamada, Hamada, I think is his name. I, I think he, uh. From what I understand, he almost left like straight away after Batgirl was cancelled. Um, but mm. that, that might not be the case anymore. So yeah, lots of changes going on at DC because yeah, it's not it's not really anything going on right now, is there? And the public discourse uh, around it has been pretty cringe. Everyone's like, uh, a lot of people are upset. What has the public discourse been? Well, well, I mean, 
I a, a lot of people seem to be so <laughs> it'd probably be important to I I can understand being like really sympathetic to you guys worked on a film and like nobody even gets to see it. Like that's really lame. Especially when you were totally under the belief that it was going to be seen. You went into production, you worked on it. Um, like that's lame. How I do feel for the cast and crew just for that. Yeah. yeah. Like they pour for all that, that I... time and effort into it, you know. But like as for were people really like excited and looking forward to Batgirl in the numbers that you would seem to see on Twitter? That's no. more so what I'm I well, I think I think it's just you've been told that you can't see it. So now, like, you no, really would what like you feel it, like you wanna, know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that who said, was, though, who I, was I towards the back girl. Yeah. Well, I do. I do wonder if maybe they were ultimately doing the actors a favor by not putting this film out. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe it really was that terrible. Well, I mean, the problem is that when we're talking about because <laughs> sentiment that's that I've seen is like, oh, but the last few years of just scattershot DC films has yielded good results. The the two that I would that you would point to as being like really worthwhile are not part of the DCEU. They're like totally separate, so I don't even know if I'd count those. And people include in that grouping like Aquaman. Aquaman is shit. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that was shit. A, Aquaman fucking sucks. Like it's a really bad film. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I agree, and, but it was funny. Not, that I, yeah, I laughed finished. quite a bit watching that. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, but people people say like, "Oh, that movie's fun," but it's only fun ironically. It's, yeah. it's not fun like for what it tries to be. The jokes it tries to tell are bad. You laugh at it because of how stupid it is. <laughs> I don't disagree with that at all. <laughs> no. Ocean yeah. Master, and then they played the music. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um. Well, yeah, so the reason why I wanted to bring that up as well was you got Patrick Willems' uh, tweet, uh, which is partially what Free was referencing there, uh, I assume, at least in part. Um, probably an unpopular take, but I liked Warner Brothers not having a plan for DC. The past four uh, years of, I don't uh, know, who cares if they're connected, let's try shit, has been way more interesting than the intricately planned Marvel <laughs> stuff made during that time. The fact also, he thinks that Marvel we, stuff is intricately planned is fucking hilarious. But also, we need to be talking also, about movies for a living. Aside from that, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Go, go ahead, Free. Sorry. Well, so part of the problem in this discussion is that. So why why are these decisions being made by Warner Brothers? You know, as part of the merger, it's like probably because they're not making any money. Um, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers can't like inf infinitely indefinitely just keep losing money <laughs> just because you find the projects interesting you know like at some point they got to start making money on these films yeah and most of them haven't made money or, or like not made a lot of money aquaman is this weird exception but birds of prey lost money shazam made like a modest profit the suicide squad lost money um did it really joker wow. uh yeah unfortunately it did yeah um hmm. I mean, Joker was like a big success, but that's mm -hmm. another one. Like, it's it's um it's probably unsustainable, and like it can't. I don't know that these things persist with like um, we're just like oh, but I find it fun. It's like sure, but a lot of people like aren't showing up. It's yeah. kind of like the problem yeah. that DC seems to have at the moment is just a lot of people aren't showing up anymore, um, as opposed to Marvel, where they seem to at least be able to consistently get people through the door. They get them in the first weekend. <laughs> they they get them in the first them. weekend. Yeah. That's that. That's true. They get them in the first weekend because, like, Doctor Strange probably could have made a billion, and Thor making less than Ragnarok. Like, that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, Got to get those I mean, butts in those seats. At the very mm -hmm. least, we need right? the butts. Like, um, yeah. Um, well, I guess it's just. Um, I I yeah. I don't like that that a film can be made and then just nobody gets to see it forever because you want to write it off. Like that's, yeah. I don't like that. Um, as for like any changes to the, is. uh, well, yeah, but I get, but this is DCEU. Like, what does that even mean? You know, like most of the films are awful. Um, <laughs> how bad yeah. could it have really been by comparison to like Wonder I mean, Woman 1984. Anything, that... Oh yeah, Wonder Woman 1984 was like a huge disaster as well. I forgot about that one. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I watched our EFAT movies on that uh, yesterday. 
um, just while I was doing stuff. And man, that film is that film's terrible. No, <laughs> I watched the I watched our Batman versus Superman video and our Wonder Woman eighty four video, and it it really reminded me how bad the Zack Snyder stuff was. Firstly. But also yeah. how absolutely awful the uh, um, the Wonder Woman eighty four was. <clears throat> it was fucking horrific. Yeah. Well, part of um, what I was referring to when I said uh, cringy takes was that people were like, "This has revealed that it turns out a lot of these superhero movies are made with more so like a monetary thing in mind." Mm. Like as if that was a surprise. I I, I, I legit yeah. I'm like what? yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of them what do you mean yeah like, all of them are made <laughs> you, you don't spend like a hundred million dollars on a film that you are like ah, i'm not sure if this one will make money you just got to throw it out there like you, you don't do that <laughs> sometimes you want yeah. these people to have that kind of money to invest in a movie just to see what they then you know do and say and and uh, like just, the idea that you just throw all that money in and be like yeah fuck it whatever if it flops it's fine it's like no they, that's not how it works they're like no you, i uh, want a sound investment it's not how it works for a publicly traded company, that's for sure. Oh, like, that you could just keep losing money. Yeah. I was just like, man, this is not... Then people are just like, man, you know, this Martin Scorsese was right. Which I like as a meme, but I was like, wait, but that... If his point was just movies these days are getting more and more soulless, I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. But, but, but he said they're not cinema, which is a different thing. And that's I don't even know what that means. That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> where? Is this cinema? It's like, I don't know, I'm in a cinema watching it, I, I guess. I, I think, um, mm, okay. I think, uh, because there was a, there was an image that went around, it was from the, the, the Warner Brothers, like, uh, the earnings call or investor meeting, wh whichever event it was, that all of this stuff came out, and there was this picture that just had, like, brands, you know, franchises, uh, which... <laughs> There's they listed 90 Day Fiance as like a big franchise up there with like, you know, uh, DC and and Game of Thrones, um, and I remember I saw people thought that that was laughable, but then I found out that like 90 Day Fiance was actually like there's like 50 television shows based on that franchise, <laughs> and it just reminds you that in the Warner Brothers Discovery merger, Discovery is actually like the big player. In the sense that they're the ones that are in charge, because David Zasloff was the CEO of Discovery, and now mm. he's in charge, and so all that indicates to me is that um, I think that depending on which circles you're in, in terms of your discussions about media, it can give you a little bit of tunnel vision where you don't see the bigger picture. The bigger picture in this case being that like there are actually yeah like there's there's a lot of money that gets made in media. And like these types of projects, you know, like reality television and stuff like that is a is still a big, you know, yeah. that's a big thing. Um, and I don't know how much that factors into streaming, but it may well, and it probably does. And so it's like, yeah, yeah in the totality and the grand scheme of things, um, how well is Warner Brothers doing, considering how much how well you'd think that they would be doing with all of these sort of recognizable franchises that they have, as well as, like, all of the talent that's, you know, in the studios that are within Warner Brothers. Um, I guess the concern is that you see a pitch like that. Oh, these are our brands. Like, these are our franchises that we need to make money on our streaming service. It's like, that gets you worried. It's like, man, it really is all about, like, IPs and streaming services, isn't it? Yay! Like, uh, I, don't, I don't like that, especially when we're talking about stuff that I do like. I like DC. I don't like the films right now, but I like DC. I really like Looney Tunes. Fucking love Looney Tunes. A lot of the stuff on Cartoon Network when I was a kid. It's like, yeah, they they have a lot of stuff that I like, and I get a bit nervous about what the future looks like for that company. Mm. Yeah, their animated stuff looks so so flat now, like everything else. Like you know well, that kind of uh, well, keyframing style. For, um, are you not excited for DC's League of Super Pets? Is that not <laughs> uh, not really? Uh, not doing that, it for you, huh? The, the, the beginning of the, the DC Super Pets universe and co coinciding with the Black Adam DC universe. What a yeah. weird statement! I don't get that. What a weird pair of videos. <laughs> 
Just Warner Brothers used to be great with animation. You know, like the, mm. the old Looney Tunes stuff and Batman and Animaniacs that was all like 2D traditionally hand drawn and had so much life in it in the way it was drawn. But it's so, so flat now and dull. And it looks like there's going to be less animation though going forward, which, um, I mean, that's, right. I don't like that actually. That's like nice. that's, I don't, especially when it's grouped in because they said animation and kids content. It's like, Mm. you know like animation is like a, just a, a method of of making like films and television shows right like animation yeah, is, a, I, is a medium I've, I've been watching the uh dc animated things uh with meme on metals forge i think we watched like four or five now and they've all been pretty good like way better than every, anything else i've seen from dc movie stuff uh so i don't know i don't know why they just drop that shit or just make it Less, well, I guess. they put all their eggs in the Zack Snyder basket, okay, and it worked out real well. Uh, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, the animated shows, like we watched Mask of the Phantasm uh, for last week's watch. That was really good. That was pretty good. They, those are like things where I was like, oh, these could have used like 15 more minutes to make it a little bit better because there's some contrivance and stuff in there you could have eased out with a little bit more time. Uh, but they're mostly like, they're really good. Like, very good. Yeah. Uh, on the thought of Snyder, I just reminded myself, I was on, uh, I was on the old Twitter, making mistakes as per usual. Uh-oh. <laughs> what um, were you doing on there? I no saw, good story begins with. So I was on Twitter. It was like 5,000 likes uh, on a pretty new tweet, and it was, it was, going, it was going up there, and I was like, what does what this do with, do with Buttman? And it was like, uh, Wonder Woman's intro in Batman vs. Superman was one of the greatest fucking moments in like movie history or some shit. And I was like, oh, what was it again? Because I've forgotten. And I press play, and you know, it's, it's Batman is in his little car, and he's like, oh man, my car, it's all, oh no. And then Doomsday is like, I'm going to shoot you with my face laser, which was always very funny. Uh, and then Wonder Woman, you know, she just appears from the sky and slams down and blocks it with little fan braces, and then she hits them together, and Doomsday goes, whoa. And, and whoa. that is it, mechanically. Now, stripping away all of the like. The party. What? The party where Wonder Woman shows up. Oh no, yeah. Sorry, I meant yeah, I meant when she shows up as Wonder Woman, I guess is what they were saying, as opposed to Does she have an alter mm-hmm. ego? Is that something she yeah, does? Yeah, Diana Prince. No, I know that's her name. I meant like does she do that uh the the two lives thing? I can't even remember anymore. Yeah, she yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's not very good at hiding <laughs> uh... <laughs> I think later she in she works at like the archaeology place. Ah, yes. or the... Uh, but anyway, I was just thinking to myself, like, oh, such lizard brain shit. Like, like who, you know, the power to have written this scene. Batman's about to die, but then she's there. That's it. And it's just like, oh, one of the greatest scenes in all time movie fucking history. But then I left. I left it to play because I was, you know, I was a bit. I was feeling a bit cynical, and I was like, eh, whatever, fine. You know, they like, like. And do if you remember, Doomsday gets hit back, and then they, you can see in the background like a sonic boom from Superman's coming in. I don't know if he was yeah. in space or something. Fucking hits Doomsday, and Doomsday just flings into this building in the background this enormous it's explosion. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, this is the Superman I've always known from Zack Snyder. Every time. I was just like, he's been on screen for seconds in this clip uh, that I don't even remember what happens, and there it is, a giant fucking explosion, because that's what it always is. So seeing the Superman <laughs> in the DC animated shows was like a fucking culture shock. It's like this is supposed to be so. This is way better. He's not killing everyone. It was this is great? <laughs> Look, if you need him killing everybody, can you at least <laughs> not keep saying? But <laughs> also, so he's awesome and super bad. Like, oh look, he, he looks out for the civilians and stuff. He makes sure that they don't get killed. Like, oh look, they go somewhere else because there's people here. It's like, oh, that's smart. I think that uh, what's his first day? Shut the fuck up! Sorry. I could le- legit think that uh, like every time he shows up in that universe, you're sort of like, yay! And then he like he <laughs> takes away the villain. You're like, yay! And then he throws him into a skyscraper. You're like, no, 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 no! <laughs> it's, it's like, oh no, a villain! Oh no, it's Superman! Get out of here! Fuck! And the villain's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Like, I'd I I protect wanna... you, citizens, from Superman. <laughs> oh, um. So, we may as well uh, get started. That's enough. That's enough talking about it. Now let's let's see what people have to say about it. Uh, which 
which would you like to see first out of these two? But not necessarily going to see them both, though. If we start, one of them is shorter than the other, so I think we should actually thinking about it. Yeah, we should probably just start with a longer one because oh it'll either Happy make for a whole episode yeah. or uh, or it won't, as opposed to it definitely being janky with with the ten minute one. So where is where's right. the invite here? Uh, wait. <laughs> There you go. There's the invite. Click. All right, we have ourselves. A... We can watch the videos. Yeah. Really, really cool fucking feature. We just like syncs up. Or watch it. Oh wow. So, That's this is uh this is by a YouTube video essayist named Typho. I Typho Typho. I think it's Typho. Typho. Um, I I I, th I oh yeah wait I this, I made up a H or slipped them uh, flipped them no in my the head. H is at the end it's T Y P O H typo I I, I, if you heard I said I flipped them so I would have made up the H after the P to say typo and it uh, wasn't one there is it, if you flip it do you make it up I thought was, making up is like you added it I guess I've still made up a word like that's not actually there an H. I just got it was typo spelled wrong. I get it. <laughs> Ironically, we we are talking about the spelling of someone whose name is Typo. So. My brain made a typo. Or That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> crazy -o. This video is called MCU Phase Four. Kinda sucks a lot. A lot. Ooh. Which is like okay, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> I agree with. Well, hang premise. on. It kinda sucks a lot. I mean, well, yeah, it definitely sucks. Huge nuts. <laughs> it's terrible. It just sucks a little bit. Yeah. A lot. Ouch. I guess we'll have to see what he has to say, because it's, it's, yeah, you know, that could mean a lot of things. Um, and it looks like everybody's in here, so... Let us... BEGIN! Whoa! The Marvel Cinematic Universe has been in pop culture for so long that it's hard to remember a time when its mark on the film industry wasn't blatantly obvious. I find that very funny as someone who's not even that old, because I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, I do. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Is the, how old is this guy? I was born right. in 2003 and I was five. Oh, okay. First, that ah. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> He's a like, It's hard to believe oh, people, were born in, people were born in this century. It's, it's, it's such a moment <laughs> of like, what do you think what, about, isn't it? Like, what do you yeah. mean, fucking hard to remember times? Like, oh, you're five. You were five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Yeah, it's time funny marches how you on inexorably. <laughs> and it's it's and funny like the... how you actually need to remind yourself sometimes, like, oh, people were born after me. Yes. Yeah, there right. People, <laughs> people are going, there are people on YouTube right now making video essays who were born in the 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying, to say the least. But it, and it's funny because, like, on real BBC, the memes are always about how I'm a, I'm a young'un, but, like, I genuinely start, when I'm listening to this stuff, I'm just like, ah. Oh. Gotta get my pills. Stay awake to watch this video. Stretch, stretch my body. <laughs> oh god, I, I stretch I'm... my muscles so they don't atrophy. <laughs> oh god. Oh, I poop oh. my pants. Oh, I'm not, not again. strong enough to take all the pills I have to take every day. <laughs> but I crunch them down. <laughs> oh. First oh. entry to be expensive franchise released and ignited the spark that would later build wow, into one disconnected time. Hey man, I would say the, the editing's a, a little bit erratic for my tastes, but it's strong. You know, there's a lot yeah. of... Yeah. 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 Good old, nice voice crack out of there. <laughs> yeah. There's like yeah, an yeah. Adobe drag and drop preset for every single cut, but uh, I thought I thought it was well put together. At least. I, like, I appreciate grabbing up them clips it. to I match, you know? He's, uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Good job. Expensive franchise Reference. released and ignited the spark that would later build into one interconnected timeline. It never been done. It's because they they slide up and down. They don't they don't uh it's just a little, swap. Uh, They've got uh, a moving slide to them and it's really quick. Yeah, I was wondering if it's me being old or, or it was it was <laughs> something because oh, I was just like, oh, it's a little bit too fast for me. Oh Jesus! <laughs> like, it's the transitions. Right. It's how they transition. You have hmm. like you have one. They they slide up and down or whatnot, so you can have sort of two on the screen at the same time, and that takes a certain amount of time for the transition to happen. And as fast as they're transitioning, it adds to like a busyness. Mm, yeah, it reminded me of uh, zero punctuation. I felt a little like bombarded by it on the first watch, but uh, I had to watch it a few times to kind of absorb everything. But like, uh, and fast in like an unironic way. Like zero punctuation kind of leans into that. 
He it's not ironically part of the joke. fast. Yeah. <laughs> Oridonically fast. That is the spark that would later build into one interconnected timeline. It never been done before. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first one, there's a spin, and then they slide from different directions. It's not consistent. That's what it is. That's what catches you off guard. Presumably, that's what for. he was going for in that one. Oh, you, yeah, you can't accidentally do that. So I guess no, you can. He was, you could, you could yeah. put on random presets. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of things you can do on these. Uh... Well, I guess if you put, if you purposefully set it to a random thing, it's not. It's not is one. It really. It's, it's not. Like, you could purposefully do that, right? So then if it comes out the way it is, could you Wait, say that... Are you that saying you if you chose it random, it doesn't count as random? No, I mean, like, to say that he didn't really... Because you, you would approve it at the end, right? Hopefully. Like, when you edit but, it and went through, and like, oh, I'll take whatever the randomness did, or I won't. Well, so when so I like say... This Sir, go ahead. What I was saying, uh, what I think, uh, assume is intentional, is that he's like, I maybe I'm maybe I'm being really too good faith here, but like uh, the idea of you got several sort of different but similar elements, and then they combine into the Avengers, being that that's why I use different transitions for each one to be like, <laughs> maybe. up for this, down for this, spin for this, and they all came together. But yeah, maybe it could be could could also just be that he maybe he did choose random, and then he saw maybe the end. Maybe variety's like, the spice of life. Maybe. I didn't know you could do random. That's interesting. So, like, uh, the either. software decides what transition to apply right before the export or something like that? Well, it's even if you... Ultron setting. Even if you couldn't <laughs> choose, like, a, like say, for example, there was, like, left, right, up, down, and random, there were your actual options. Even if there was no random option, you can still just, you know, click random. Not necessarily randomly, but you sort of click quick through a selection. You guys, you guys never done that with fonts, for example? I've done that with fonts. No, I haven't. Where I scan mm -hmm. with uh, the, the arrow keys... Oh yeah, I'd use the mouse wheel, yeah, but yeah, that the arrow too, keys yeah. as well. To have all these characters with their own standalone movies come together in one climactic event. It was a feeling that's hard to come across now, that you're climactic. witnessing the birth of something special that could never again be replicated with the same resonance. Remember Nick Fury? Whatever happened to him? Uh, he's in space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, Sam Jackson said, I'm too fucking old, I'm staying home. What I think <laughs> being touched on there, that's uh, a super important element that's gone now, is the novelty. Uh, you don't get that yeah. anymore as a benefit. We are almost at the point where people seeing people show up is now a negative. And not because of the concept alone, just because of how they're executing it. But that, once upon a time, was seen as a fucking mind-blowing thing. To be like, what? You're on the same screen as you? You're a different person. Yeah, now it's just like, oh man, I wonder who's going to be in this one this time. <clears throat> That I haven't seen oh, look. in two movies. It's Mr. Fantas- Oh, there he goes. Uh, he's the smartest man in- Oh. <laughs> Maybe he's not that that smart. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's all relative, okay? Everyone was a I think you man. lied to me he's when you said he was smart. smarter than a beetle. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think a beetle wouldn't say, Hey, if you step on me, I'll die. <laughs> 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 okay, no. That's, that'll be the legacy of that, by the way. That's what's so great about it. Avengers oh, was that the first the legacy film. of it in the MCU I ever saw, and at the time it blew my mind. An explosion of spectacle, action, and cool character dynamics. The result of all these various worlds clashing into one. And from there... It is, I will admit, it is distracting. A little bit. The, like I said, erratic feels like the yeah. word. Yeah, it does feel erratic. It's a bit much. I'm trying to focus on the words he's saying. It's... My, I, I might need to close my eyes. Mm -hmm. Kept going and going. It may sound stupid, but some of my most standout memories to do with going to the cinema are closely associated to films in this franchise. Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, The Winter Soldier in both Infinity War and Endgame. The climax to the- Man, there's so much effort in the editing, I really appreciate yeah. that, but it's, um, it's creating it's, a cacophony. It's kind of bad. It's, yeah, it's- more isn't better. Like, we just went through, point. uh, like, three soundtracks, I don't know if you guys caught that, uh, and he, <laughs> he synced them up in a, such a way that, like, they don't slam into each other, but at the same time, it's like, wow, calm down. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't know. I don't really... Yeah, I am impressed. It would be better if it was just the cuts, like, no transitions. Yeah, there's a, way too much going on visually here. Um... Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, The Winter Soldier in both Infinity War and Endgame. The climax to this universe spanning a decade and over 20 films, filled to the brim with the very thing I, think, I fell in love with in the first Avengers. I think what I'm starting to realize is it might just be that 
I think the reason why it's difficult to focus on what he's saying is because the music and the sound effects are a bit loud. Certainly in that portion. Yeah, um, music, I, I legit was effects, about to have to go back because I visuals. got distracted by listening to the, the sound of the sword strikes. And then I was like, fuck, I'm supposed to be listening to what he's saying. End game. The climax to this universe spanning a decade and over 20 films filled to the brim with the very thing I fell in love with in the first Avengers. Amazing spectacle, creative action, and an incredible focus on characters and the relationships that drive every aspect of these movies. We got uh... to see these characters' lowest points and their highest highs. We got to see resolutions to plot lines and. Mm, well, uh, I'll allow it. I mean, I if, we, oh, if we count <laughs> the hits and ignore all the misses. Uh, um. Best faith version of this, I can assume that we would agree with, is that their stories had endings. It's like, yeah. yes, they were going somewhere. Not... They had a direction. Like, yeah, that that uh, angle where yeah. they yeah. had an idea. There was a purpose to this. Whether or not it was well done is a different thing. But it's fine. Yeah. Hey, uh, does Watch Together let you turn on closed captions? Um, I might because I was about to say it's he's really mumbly very he's slurring a lot of his words together There's not a lot of clarity in the way that he speaks. Well at that point that I wonder if closed very... captions are gonna help because Unless they well, well, you, YouTube's made, you know? were fairly accurate um, <laughs> But I don't know if the YouTube functionality carries over to this website. Yes yeah, real funny ones with YouTube some... <laughs> <clears throat> Like Marge said it's an ending that's enough I don't even remember when you said that. <laughs> What's the context for that one? Does anyone remember? I like to try and remember no. my Simpsons quotes. Oh. I can't remember. Neither can I. Character arcs spanning years, all ending in a way that closed the book on these characters' journeys and more broadly and arguably an end to a universe that had weaved through all these different works. The, um, Jeez. I don't know if this is like a... I don't even know what kind of take this is, but to me I was just like... I mean, Endgame is never going to be the end with this many characters who have this many unsolved, unresolved no, things I mean, going on. I mean, the big one of the big points I made in the Endgame video was that it wasn't the end. It, ne it never was the end. Like it wasn't even trying to be. I'm not even trying to do it from like a cynical angle, though. I, I just mean, why wouldn't this? There's plenty more story to tell if yeah. you wanna. Oh sure, I, I guess um, because because it would be a little bit odd to look at Endgame and go, well, Tony and Steve got their resolution, so that's it, right? When it's like, yeah. what about all the other characters that we've introduced? Like, yeah, they're the ones that you care about the most, but that should tell you more about the quality of of the films, um, more so than that that this is like the end of the story because a few of the the most important characters in that universe had their endings. I think we all. And, and yeah, like, it, it doesn't even, because comic books have been going for, like, you know, you've had comic books running for, like, 80 years consecutively at this point. Um, like, why, yeah, like, you, I don't know why you would necessarily assume that it ought to be the end. Um, well, because a lot of people I are do doing think... the thing, right, where they're like, I, I stopped watching after Endgame, that was the end of the story for me, and it's like, you wouldn't be saying that, though, if these were good, right? You wouldn't be saying, and Endgame yeah. wasn't good, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I I definitely story should end, but um, the MCU I guess is I will... like a you can you can like the MCU is something that you can always refresh with new stories and new characters. The important part is making sure that like plot threads, you know, important plot beats wrap up or characters have their stories come to an end, mm -hmm. rather than just sort of lurching forward forever with no clear direction or end point because, in mind. Um... I in a way, stories were ending in the MCU still. Uh, it's just, it, you know, the story of the MCU as a whole, we, we, yeah, that's never going <laughs> to... Unless it stops making money. Yeah, because um, yeah, they'll never even want to draw that to an ending, I don't think. But, like, you know, there's that's still, right. I think, a... It's, it's a little... Like, I'm fine with the, the, the deer in concept, theoretically, that we have it, so that the endings you're looking for are just going to be character journeys, specifically, because people have starts, middles, and ends, but... That you know that guy. Remember that guy over there? He's still going. You want to go see what he's doing? It's like yeah, you can if you want. You also can't if you mm -hmm. don't want to. I guess oh, not the right word. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, it's it's interesting. There's a whole angle to Phase Four and Endgame and how it all worked together in an alternate universe where everything was really well written, and everyone's just excited and talking about how much they can't wait for them to do this, that, and the other, and nobody's talking about how I wish it had ended at Endgame. Right.
evolutions to plot lines and character arcs spanning years, all ending in a way that closed the book on these characters' journeys and more broadly and arguably an end to a universe that had weaved through all these different works. But nothing ever truly ends. The MCU is the largest film franchise on the planet. Star Wars got decked in the fucking mouth by Marvel a million times over. It's hard to it, it's legit yeah. hard to pay attention. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to not look at the screen if I'm gonna pay attention to his words. I mean I'm able to, oh. I just you know. <laughs> uh it's, it's just like really kind of rough. The, idea the, the that, sound uh, effects you also need to be mixed a bit lower as well. Yeah, like I think that's fair. Before. Uh Star Wars getting decked in the mouth by Marvel. It's like um You wouldn't be saying that. I, I think it's just that those Marvel? the Star Wars was just like shit right out of the gate when it came back. Well, Pretty much, yeah. I, mean, I guess people don't because like, everybody. It got given TFA the Marvel first, treatment. But, um, shows and shows and. Well, yeah, because it's like clawing that. its way back through doing Marvel's strategy of Phase Four. Um, Pretty much. I did it, get a laugh out of this meme: Marvel <laughs> punching Star yeah, Wars in uh, the face. But I wouldn't I was... say Marvel is quite in the high position that the meme is suggesting. Well, that's that's kind of I think where I was thinking. I was like, is it is it angling from like a box office viability sort of thing? And it's like, well, I, I guess so. But Star Wars have been too scared to release a movie now for a while. It's not that it hmm. would guaranteed fail. It's that they really don't know what a safe project is anymore. Meanwhile, Marvel are like, if a Thor movie fails, well, you know, we can still try a Black Panther one, right? And it's like, if that fails, like, well, we got Spider Man. Let's try him. He's like, oh, Spider Man's working fine. We'll just put out more Spider Man. That sort of thing. Yeah, while yeah. Star Wars is like. Solo? Oh, no, 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 okay. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, th this is why it's like, oh, they decked Star Wars. It's like, I mean, I, in the same way that I guess Marvel have decked everyone, I guess you could say. I don't know. Every I don't film feel like it's decking more like, um, it's just, you need to accept this formula we've got. Kind of. Right. I mean, uh, for, for, since Star Wars is getting molded into Marvel's formula, yeah, it is... Uh... The formula for Marvel have managed to transition successfully in terms of viability to the new age of the streaming world. All they had to do really was just spam fucking TV shows, apparently. Well, if they want uh, that yeah. for Star Wars, you would think that they would put more like competent narrative development staff like on Star nope. Wars. Like they, I don't know that any Eddie Studios is ever going to invest in writing at this point. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It, it, it Instead of like... just like locking J.J. Abrams in a fucking room with a whiteboard and then <laughs> and forcing him $500 to... $500 million uh... dollars and be like, go, <laughs> J.J., make us money. <laughs> oh, it's know. been three years. What you got for us? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh... You guys okay. remember A New Hope? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked a new hope. You guys, you guys liked it too, right? It's like, let's make that. Please tell me you liked it. What about new what hope? The Disney but exec, again, like, actually, we hate a new hope. That movie sucked. We don't want anything like that. And you're like, shit, shit. man. <laughs> then we like, blow up uh, five planets. Ooh, that's see, like a new hope. I can't believe how things have progressed though, because we would have, you know, he would have taken a load of time to make a full script and redraft it with another writer that was a rip off of New Hope, and we're all like, boo for that. And it's filled with like contradictions and stuff. Um, if anyone doesn't know, I, I got a couple of videos about that, you know, they're like, you know, like 10 minutes, it's alright. Um, you got, so, so that's the reality, but then you fast forward, and now we're at the point where scripts aren't even being written before they film, like, fuck it, sort of yeah. thing. I hate how much writing's disrespected as a, uh, yeah. important component, yeah. it sucks. Really annoying. Oh, totally. Really, really annoying. And it's like, why do our projects keep coming out like shit? It's like, oh, I don't know! I don't know. Just don't know. In the fucking mouth by Marvel a million times over. Every film garnering profit, a passionate fan base, and a practically unlimited stream of new. How did Eternals and didn't Black Widow not garner profit? Uh, I think it might not. Uh, well, it depends how you. Wasn't they like in a? In like, we got what? it like officially though through the quarterly reports or whatever. I remember that being a thing where it was like it was like proof that Black Widow did not make a profit. Oh, that might be the case because I know that it's because the Disney Plus like release. Yeah, the box office wasn't yeah. that good. <laughs> she sued them. Uh, that was the whole thing. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and Kevin Feige called her and he was like, wait, 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 don't, don't, don't. That was awkward. No, 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 Comes over her house and he's just like... Randy Moss. It wasn't supposed to happen. Comes over her house and he's like, sorry about this, this was never supposed to... Oh, whoops, my wallet's on the floor. Ah. Oh, wait. Ah, damn it. Anyway. Uh, oh, thank you so much for your contribution to the MCU. Oh, Please stop saying mean things about us, okay? <laughs> Please. Yeah.
It was in theaters exclusively briefly, right? And and then it no, went Black to streaming Widow, fairly quickly. Black or... Widow was the one that did the premium release on Disney Plus. Like yeah. you paid twenty bucks. Like experiment oh, and they so, right. so they it was uh, twenty bucks. Was it simultaneous, like streaming and yes. theaters? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. simult- but it wasn't like because the Suicide Squad was cinemas and you could watch it on HBO Max as part of your subscription. But if you were subscribed to Disney Plus, you had to pay to watch right Black but still yeah but then they they didn't do that everything else i think had like a 45 or 60 day like exclusive uh theatrical right yeah. that was a yeah and and that was a bit of god complete with with the uh, black widow because i think they thought they could float anything especially after captain marvel they managed to make that movie make a billion dollars it's like holy shit you guys are just mm-hmm. do anything but uh yeah, you know like, post phase re-ending i guess it's like hmm and i think mom and thor love and thunder it's like wait shouldn't those have made more than that and it's like yeah well, so, yeah i i guess um i imagine that there probably was an expectation that black widow could have made a billion dollars and it didn't come close um yeah. shang chi probably could have <clears throat> i think the floor you would presume would have been ant-man and the wasp which made like 650 million then like that's as low as it gets Right, but I think Shang Chi and Eternals made like four hundred million. For Shang Chi, that was probably all right. For Eternals, that probably wasn't all right. Though yeah. they're making a sequel, so I guess it was good enough for them. Dude, they're um, making Agatha. Yeah, for... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it, well, I guess it's because even if the films don't make money, if they're good for like buffing up the streaming service, if they, you know, yeah, if that's like more of a reason to stay subscribed to Disney Plus, then it doesn't even need to like make you mm-hmm. lots of money. You know, through box office numbers, maybe. Content. Remember that? I remember that Black Widow release now because I remember seeing on like uh, whatever it was, HBO, Disney, the price of it, like twenty, thirty, yeah, something twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, totally fuck cool. that! I'm supposed to pay <laughs> that to watch it at home on my fucking phone or TV, and it's it's less like half that to go to the theater. Yeah, that's like, wild, really isn't it? Weird. I think it's well, they did that with uh, Milan. It. With Milan yeah, was like thirty bucks. Yeah, oh, I do oh, not fucking understand that. that pricing at all. Yep. I think I think the pricing is because they know that families are going to watch it, and families, you know, in terms of the money you'd make oh, in the cinema compared to one ticket, I think that's why they did it like that. That, that makes sense. Too bad they right. we're all lonely and sad. Yeah, so we didn't consider that <laughs> loneliness. Woo. Price equation. Well, Mulan. Mulan. Still outrageous though. I think like no way. Oh sure, I agree. Yeah. It's outrageous they made that movie. <laughs> burning profit a passionate fan base and a practically unlimited stream of new content oh we're a passionate fan base you can bet it. yes bet. we are we're we're really <laughs> money speaks louder than anything else disney had a streaming service to push actors not as loud as these sound effects standing on to the people yeah it's such an interesting choice isn't it he's really making sure that those make it in and some of them i think are, are a decent idea some of them less so some of them are like matching the clips like he's he's made sure to crank like for example, shooting the the web there, but some of them are just like, huh, the little clanky drum things, whatever that was. With new content, money speaks yeah. louder than anything else. Disney had a streaming service to push, actors to utilize, and characters to keep expanding on. So the people who say the MCU should have ended after Endgame, I agree, but you're stupid. The- it should have ended after Endgame. I agree, but you're stupid. Well, it depends on how. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I shouldn't have paused him to be honest. I was just, I was just like, okay. To <laughs> so the people who say the MCU should have ended after Endgame, I agree, but you're stupid. These movies make more money than any other film in the industry, and the MCU yeah, has more characters than the ones that are. Sw- yeah, he's okay, being so, a bit tongue in cheek there. Yeah, well, like to it. to defend the unwashed masses, whenever anyone says they should have ended at Endgame, what you can guarantee fucking tea is they're not saying. They should end it because it won't make money anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's. I don't yeah, think anybody has point. ever made that claim, so that was just kind of pointless. Right. Why would anyone don't make that? You know that, that claim? Disney wants to make money? It's like, no, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Whoa. I mean, it's usually. Kind of these days. They're usually saying it in response to the concept that it's made loads of money. Or that it's. Because it's usually about, like, oh, it's doing really bad, but I guess it'll have to keep going because people are still watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Swimming with the fishes alongside Topher Grace and Bullseye's baseball coach. The well has admittedly dried up for people like Captain America. He's had his story, his or- Wow. Okay, no, that's just because Chris Evans was done with the role. As someone who hasn't even read the comics, 
I'm pretty sure there's like a billion stories left to tell for all of these yeah. characters. The fact Absolutely. that Iron Never Man ending. didn't even get to fight the Mandarin. You understand how much of a like, yeah. <laughs> like well, you know, the stories they kind of came will to their end. You worry. Like, no, like that is, like I said, I'm someone who hasn't even read the comics, and wow, that's wrong. There's there's plenty more you're allowed to do. For people like Captain America, he's had his story, his origin, his lows, his loss, his conflict, and at the end, his story comes full circle. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I no. disagree. Read a disgusting um, way, maybe. I his story disagree. didn't come in uh, full circle. No, <clears throat> no. I could see how it would have been seen that way by people, including us. I think at first, and then you're like, wait, I wait, thought, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Think about it. Cap's ending he is horribly awful. He traveled back in time to live a full life with his long lost love. Oh. Thus abandoning the present to deal with all the <laughs> yeah. problems he doesn't care to deal with anymore. The man out of time went back in time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, wait, what? Um, yeah, no, uh, I don't know. It's just Most people at this point agree Cap would never have done this. Not what his ending should have been. Yeah. Definitely Characters him. like Spider-Man and the Guardians still have stories to tell and places to go. I'm sorry, what defines whether or not someone has a story to tell and places to go? Yeah, that would have been my question as well. Seems a little bit I arbitrary. guess if they... Because nowadays, I guess you can't even say because they died anymore, because there's going to be some <laughs> magic bullshit that'll bring them back to life or some time travel shenanigans. Like, just like Loki. Loki's story was finished, and look what they did to him. They resurrected his... Senses. Oh yeah, see, but... Maybe maybe I'm going a little bit weirder with this because like I actually agree with you that his, his in Loki's case that story is done and it's like why it's like well he's dead so it, it, like this story is complete and it all lined up. Meanwhile, because someone could be like you could have told, told more stories for Loki. It's like no, you can't now. But like oh you know Cap, his story didn't have to be over. Even when he's old, it doesn't have to be over. They have literally a fucking de aging device in uh, in Endgame, and old man That's Cap right. is still something you can do mm. stories with. Um... This is the thing. I'm actually, I'm actually against old people prejudice. When people are like, "Why would you want to tell a story when they're like fucking eighty or something?" It's like that would be interesting, but that's yeah. fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Exactly. Um, but to be like, you know, Guardians still have their stories left. It's like, well, what if I don't know? What if Guardians two? They all just went. You know what? We've done lots of good stuff. Let's retire now and chill out and play chess or something. Would you then be like, see, this story's over? It's like just because someone essentially told you, narratively speaking, that this story's over. They decided, know. yeah. It's really where they use Cap as an example of being old but still having stories to tell, and then we remember that he was mysteriously absent in Falcon and the Winter Soldier for reasons yep. that they legitimately never <laughs> begin to explain or touch on. Plus another, right. I do love how much access we have to better information, including but not limited to. They didn't tell us if we were allowed to have Cap or not. They didn't tell us if he was dead or not. They just said, don't, like, talk about it. It's like, oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, but he's really, really, really important to this story. We're we're talking about him like he's in the room, but we're whispering, and we're not allowed to mention him. <laughs> like like the well, how, because how how could you know, give us this restriction? This is insane. Probably because they still rig Chris Evans once per year. Like so, mm -hmm. how, how's your career doing? You you feel like maybe you want to come yeah, back and right. do a little cap, huh? A little bit of a little, a little bit of multiversal <laughs> cap. How about that? You could be a what, cap what? who's like shaved his whole head, or or you could be like a cap who's got a shield that's all purple or something. Yeah. Get it? Like, what if? What if? Uh, uh, what if it was a purple shield? Come on. He's, he's hung up, up he, he hung up the phone like two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're being kind of quiet. I, I guess that means you're really giving this some thought. That's good. We yeah. like that. We like that. Okay. I'll call you next week. Like you. He's busy making the Gray Man, of which I have only seen people be negative about. I watched it and the thought gray it was man? Eh. Yeah, it's like an action movie. It's the Russos that oh. made it, you know? Oh, I don't know. That doesn't mean anything. I don't mean... <laughs> that doesn't mean much of anything consistent at this point. I don't know what it means. Characters like Spider-Man and the Guardians still have stories to tell and places to go. The MCU continuing life was inevitable, and I wouldn't be so ignorant to say that it could never go forward and move past the story that was told prior to Endgame. But as of right now, the MCU has no story. No story? Um, I mean, in the sense that there's no cohesive overarching, overarching story... Yeah, yeah. because like if it's if because everything... they made it that way, not because it needs to be that way. Right, because if take Thor: Love and Thunder for example, if it was a film that started and ended with Gore being introduced and then Gore dying, um, but it was really really good, 
and we had loads of those in Phase 4, and then someone said, there's no real overall story, though. I'd be like, that's okay. That's fine. No, that's okay. As long as it respects... You can have essentially... The other things are happening, like there's no yeah. contradictions like that world building wise, and we just go, and it's a phase where there's lots of individual stories, that is absolutely fine. That's not what we've got though. Um, no. And yeah, the, them not having a plan about how anything fucking comes together is one of many problems right now. Yeah. This recent slate of films and TV shows making up Phase 4 has been a jumbled mess of ideas and storylines. They're the cinematic universe equivalent of a headless chicken running around without any clear sense of direction. Black Widow, Shang-Chi, WandaVision, Loki, What If, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Eternal, Spider-Man No Way Home, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness are all projects that are a part of this new direction that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been following, and I don't fuck with it. You don't fuck with it? You don't like it. That's what that means. Doesn't like oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, I, I am, I am inclined to agree. Let's see sure. what you think, sir. Which is by no means a debatable statement or hot take. There seems to be a growing sentiment that Marvel's recent releases have been a downgrade. Oh, it was yeah, a they fucking. Take, they, they, yeah, it, it was, was it exactly. Was I hate we this. Know. We know. I was there, bad. Gandalf. I, I was, was there. there. Thousand shows ago. It, it's not <laughs> fair. It's, it, it really isn't fair. Like yeah, every it was a hot fucking take. time, dude. Every we time. We have to bear. We have we come out with the the correct opinions <laughs> in real time. We get shat on all over for it, and everyone's like, "Oh, you fap, They just hate art, and they can't let." Anybody. And then, sure enough, everyone else they they start singing our tune, and everyone loves them. Yeah, because it's like this growing sentiment that Phase Four isn't very. It's like, where were you? Like, where, we we were already saying that for like fucking ages. Like I told yeah. you, I think Loki was our point of saying like it's done. We 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 were going. It was over. Like, yeah, the, the quality of the writing was never gonna be, like, good. But they do this thing where they're like, oh, I loved it. But then I look back and I was like, hmm, actually. And then they look back at the whole thing like, hmm, actually. Mm. It does make sense. It was really good at the time, but now it's... It's like they liked the trees, <laughs> but they hated the forest. You're like, oh. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, how could you hate all the trees but like the forest? How does it even... <laughs> <laughs> Like, things are only bad in retrospect once the entire phase is released. And it's like, well, why wasn't it bad then? Why is it... It makes me Most think... Importantly, once they've already gotten your money, so, yeah. I, you know... Like, well, what, do you, what are you expecting? Like, the next thing is going to come out and somehow redeem the earlier thing? I think it's like, that whole... Uh, it, unfortunately, because humans are a little bit lizard-brained, or maybe... I don't know what brain I'd are. go with on this one, but uh, the whole, oh, man, do I love a new thing coming out and we all love and talk about it. That that I love that. I don't even care what one division is. I just love that where we are all on forums and we're all talking about. Oh, this is so good. And then I make a little some community or yeah, yeah, like your... yeah. And once that's all Being gone for that fan. project, all that's left is the project. It's like, so what do you think of that? Ten years later, and you're like, what even was it? I don't know. Too busy <laughs> thinking about multiverse of madness 12 yeah because it's the community of, and everyone's going yeah. nuts Ooh, uh, so cool oh sam raimi and uh reed richards ah uh, he was fine uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah and then you know it dies down again then they look back like nah actually because yeah the fun seems to come from that hype culture almost yeah from stuff that preceded it. Taking quality out of the equation, the interest for certain properties has definitely died down. Nobody is really talking about the MCU that much anymore. That, I don't, well, that's, so that's just, that's just blatantly true. fault. That's, not, it's, uh, that's obviously not true. I would go yeah, as far as saying it's the most talked about thing in the movie industry yeah. type stuff. Everyone's talking about everything that comes out. The only thing about it that's interesting is that they switch topics so quickly that you forget what was even discussed like yesterday. Yeah. I don't even know. It's so weird for him to be like so right and then just so wrong. <laughs> like, it is okay. kind of interesting. It is weird, yeah. People aren't feeling obligated to go see these movies and TV shows for a myriad of reasons. It feels nowadays that the MCU is running on fumes instead of the nuclear generator it used to have going for it during its peak. You missed an uh... uh, uh, opportunity for like a nice little reference. A nuclear generator? Instead of, yeah, why didn't you say arc reactor? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that would have been neat. Um, as for the whole, like, it seems like it's running on fumes. Like, I guess I agree. Um, I don't know. In one sense, but in another. On, the, uh, on the, the name, Marvel Studios, like, that's, like that's really helping it. Yeah, because yeah. in many of these, if you would have, I don't know, like, white people's understanding and familiarity with Marvel, 
and you just released a lot of these projects as their own things, yeah, they probably wouldn't make as much money. Do you say white peoples? No, wipe. Like, wipe. Remove their memories. Oh, but okay. I think the question is where the fumes are coming from, and I would pin that on the writing. Like, because there's, I think there's well, plenty still to mine from these characters. You so know? that's why yeah. I was going to say, I guess I agree. It's like, so what, why? And it's like, well, because actually, would I even agree at all if it were well written? And maybe that's the problem. It's got nothing to do with fumes. Like, because the fumes implies we've got no stories to tell much of anymore. So we're just relying on, you know, well, I don't know. Running on fumes is when, of course, you, you're running on barely anything that's left or the remnants of something mm. you used to be running on, essentially. Yeah. Which I would take to mean for the MCU, we're running on... If someone said the MCU is running on fumes, I'd say, oh, like, it, it isn't good anymore. It's just relying on everything that came before it in terms of its quality and setup. It's um, not generating anything. It doesn't have anything to run well, in on. In that case, itself. you would agree with the sentiment, then, would you? Um... Was it running on fumes from yeah from that sense in terms like a quality. Because what sense. I was gonna say, I think my brain is heading more so toward running on fumes, uh, being that they had nothing of substance left to offer, and they're just relying on like references or like that would be the equivalent. Meanwhile, I think Phase Four has like infinite shit to offer. They're just really bad at executing all of it. We've got plenty of characters yeah. left, plenty of really interesting mm -hmm. conflicts to go through, but it's yeah, all been tons of new stuff. It's just yeah, all crap. I agree. Yeah. Because the idea is so bizarre. Again, I'm, I, it's like I've suddenly started reading comics or something. Um, I'm just like, the, the fucking wealth of potential they've got from their source material. And this yeah, is what they it, have to show for it. Like, oh, well, we've done Iron Man, Cap, and fucking Ant-Man, so I guess it's over now. It's like, well, hang yeah. on. I you mean, haven't even done that. Have how long have these characters and stories been going on in the comics? Like, at least 50 yeah. years. And then, like, oh, the Marvel movies exist for, what, like... 10 years at least and then it's like now we're done it's like mm, yeah like spider-man maybe... recently celebrated the 60th anniversary it's like oh yeah 60 years. and nobody's that's what, that's what I mean, spider-man like, you know like nobody's done with spider-man the i understand the movies and comics are not the same thing and thus when a character gets a trilogy it's like well they're done it's like no they don't need not to really, be done no. they don't need to be done at all like thor's got his fourth movie now and yeah, you might call that running on fubes but that's again not the case gore could have been really fucking cool <clears throat> Just look at yeah. fucking James Bond. Yeah, running yeah. on, running on fumes, totally. right? <laughs> that's yeah. a great example, and that's just one character. It's one character. Yeah. That's all we can do. And there's enough to even get from the MCU itself. Like you have this whole end game and and uh, snap scenario and whatnot. There was so mm. much things you could tell, like so many stories, like things that happen, like resource management. I don't know, there's so much things you can go off of, but... I mean, not every Bond movie is great. I could see one person arguing that Octopussy is running on fumes. <laughs> no. <laughs> they all, Bond always manages to bounce back, you know? Because they, they find some new material. It's, oh, we can do something with this. We haven't explored this with this character yet. Like, let's, let's go this route. Yeah. I mean, Star Trek, the, uh, the original series of Star Trek, they had six movies, I think. And then the crossover with Generations. So... There's plenty of movies you could make. You got these. If you got a cast of characters people care about, man, you can just keep pumping out movies. You can do it as long as they're good. Mm -hmm. No one will complain if they're all good. No, they really won't. These videos would not be the same if they were just good, even though the arguments would technically be unaltered for a couple of them, at least a couple of the arguments. Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, Thor Ragnarok, The Winter Soldier, and Civil War all helped to generate hype. Not just because they were great setups for future movies or great culminations of years of continuity, but because they were just generally great movies. Uh, not generally. And not, not, <laughs> a, a, not a great script either, just this is very, um... They're great because they were great and they were great and they were great because they were great. I can't speak for everyone, right, like but... like we're not qualifying anything yet. I don't feel like I got much there in terms of why that phase were, was good, if it were considered good. For me, my interest in the MCU and its content is motivated now from a place of obligation. Like... Hey, I can agree with him on that. Yeah? Yeah. Welcome yeah. to our world. <laughs> yeah, that's, our, that's our life. I can't wait for Andor. Yay! Oh, there's a new Marvel movie coming out. I'll watch it so I'm not behind or missing out on a good 30 minutes of conversation with somebody. Which, let's be real, is kind of business as usual for these movies. I'm not gonna see. Um. So he, so he doesn't miss out with 30 minutes of conversation with someone. But then he I said. Mean, that... I guess the reasons you watch it are 
The thing is, the following right. comment implies that, um... Because he had a, a visual from Iron Man... Was that Iron Man 1 or 2 when he sh picks up the partial oh, shield? Because the, the implication there is like, well, that's how it's always been, I suppose. And it's like, ah, I don't know, man. I think some of these movies used to last a lot longer in the cultural side. Iron Man is talked about to this day as a fucking fantastic foundational movie for the MCU. Like, do you really think that's going to happen for Shang-Chi? He's like, no. People for already forget that existed. People already for it's like a lot of no way people movies. can remember people the plotline. I'm saying it. I'm, I put money on it. Your average big fan of Shang Chi would be like, people well, can't there remember was the a plotline for Multiverse of Madness. What was the plotline? <laughs> it's like fucking chaos. Is what it was. Give it a few weeks. No one will remember what the fuck happened in Love and Thunder. I think we're there already, but I agree. Here oh, and act yes. like me watching 4 2, where Ant Man and the Wasp was motivated by anything other than obligation. And me yeah, but you've picked the two most forgettable ones in the past set for MCU. We're in a new era of forgetting what the fuck happened because people have low passion, the plot lines are confusing and weird, and the, the movies themselves are just fucking crap, so it's hard to remember anything anyway. But I don't disagree that these, these two were very forgettable. Me thinking that it was going to be important for the wider story of this universe. And that's just it. Marvel has no plan anymore, it has no direction. Its story concluded and its grand finale came to an end, with no endgame to the it's endgame of it. Mm. Well, so the funny yeah. thing is, we've just found out that it does have a direction that it's going. It's just, you know, like the multiverse stuff, but it's like... stubbornly forwards. Yeah, like, how do I put it? Like, it's like, it's there in all of the superficial ways a plan can be there. It's like, what, it, what doesn't matter? Who cares if they have a plan if it's all just this poorly executed, right? Kind yeah. of, yeah, the difference between no plan and a horrifically executed plan can sometimes be just, like, you, you, you might not even recognize them. I mean, for instance, right, the DCEU up to Justice League had a plan, and it all culminated <laughs> in the film. <laughs> yeah, because he, he planned out Justice League 2 and 3, right? I and it's weird yeah. because if you would have came to me and said, yeah, Zack Snyder was making them up one by one as he went, I'd be like, yeah, I believe you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it must have been that way. <laughs> than the faint concept of trying to build on top of these characters we've come to know and love. But it insists on using the same old bag of Wait, Sorry, did you say fake concept? Or did I mishear that? Not anymore, it has no direction. Its story concluded and its grand finale came to an end, with no end game to the end game other than the faint concept of trying to build on top of these characters we've come to know and love. Faint. The faint, faint concept. Okay. Yeah. Meaning it's like, like weak like or... They Weak, yeah, uh, that's what I would say. They're well, I mean, these characters it's, it's weird to it? pick this one specifically because the story is about how does he deal with the events of Endgame. Like, it, and it doesn't and it, really add Endgame. Like, you can't really take yeah. the film off it anywhere else. It kind of needs to be after Endgame. So, um, and then I'm thinking, like, what else is there? And it's like, well, you know, Bucky dealing with shit after... Like, I don't like Falcon the Winter Soldier, but there's lots of potential there. I wouldn't call it a faint... But, you know, it's like this stuff. Plenty of people. But it insists on using the same old bag of tricks it's been using since it first dipped its toe into the idea of an expanded symbiotic cinematic universe. But you said That's, that it was like a powerhouse thought, back in the day. That's it's so the the issue now is that it's too much like it was before, or that it's maybe, trying to be what it was before. Maybe, maybe this isn't the point that he's making, but I would agree that like. You think about the whole, you know, post credit scenes back in phase one, it's like, that's kind of exciting because at the time it was such a novel concept of, oh, you're going to like lead into that film. Oh, that's going to connect to that one. Like, that's really cool. Whereas now when it happens, it's not really like, what is it other than, I guess, just trying to fuel speculation and hype for like the potential of a character interacting with another character when that as like a gimmick is kind of diminished. I think that's what he's trying to say. Okay, I'll roll him back. Leaning a bit. into hmm. since it first dipped its toe into the idea of an expanded symbiotic cinematic universe. Those being to stay in the box to keep the stories generic, short, and simple, not take risks, and to use each project as an. Okay, now I'm baffled because oh, he yeah, fucking okay. he said right. like the the first set of movies. Did okay. he say Iron Man was like amazing or whatever, or by mistake? He said I it was like so. a, he, said, he described it like a nuclear fucking oh, generator. I thought it's, it, well, I, I mean, I remember him saying that the films were generally great, 
remember? Didn't but now it's that like, because that was a pretty, yeah. that was pretty scathing right there. I was like, the formula was that they're simplistic and because what he's probably going to say is that the, the formula is you want to make films that can be watched on their own without the other films, but you want enough to make people want to go watch the other films. Yeah, but that's the formula. Yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, that is that is the formula. They when he said reactor, recently, it, I think he was talking about like the hype and storytelling engine that powered the first three phases. You know, not that but, it's good. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right, we'll we'll we'll, go, well we'll. I'm go not sure what he thinks. Yeah, too. let's see if he elucidates. Is being to stay in the box, to keep the stories generic, short, and simple, not take risks, and to use each project as an advertisement. Because I think Guardians was a risk. I like to I like to think I that think that's so. it, think it, it it, as Marvel risks go. Avengers. Dude, Avengers is a risk. It really is. Like it was uh, at first. If you could pin the riskiest decision they've ever made, what are the, it might be fucking probably... Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a stupid fucking risk, I would say. But might you know. be, might be. Uh, but yeah, I, we all agree. I remember like, I that a lot of these are risks, but I think a lot of like the whole the Loki stuff and all these things. These are huge risks by doing this stuff. But I think it's just now people don't care if stuff is necessarily risky, or they don't understand what a storytelling risk necessarily might be. Oh, I just say that the projects aren't risky anymore because Marvel Studios is a name attached to it, ensures that it yeah, will make floats money. everything. But back in the day, there was no like recognition in Marvel Studios. I like Iron Man was a risk. Um, Avengers was a risk. We look back and see how much money it made, but that wasn't like a guaranteed thing, really. Like, yeah, Iron Man saved um, the studio, right? Kind of. Uh, Blade saved the studio. Well, um, Iron Man still. was the first one. That, Iron Man was the first one that Marvel Studios financed, I believe, because um, that was like the first one that they did, as opposed to like you know, licensing it out to Fox or, or Sony. Well, like, yeah, I just, awesome. didn't they need it to be successful? It wasn't something they could just uh, oh, deal with yeah, failing. they spent a lot of money. They spent a lot of money on that film, yeah. Like, if it failed, that would have been really bad for them. And I wouldn't say Avengers away. is as much of a risk as, like, the likes of Guardians of the Galaxy because they're putting all these characters together. And I Guardians think it's fairly safe to say... Yeah. That, yeah, that people that. are going to um, show up to to watch that, like Iron Man and Thor true. and whatever in the same movie. It's like, well, I've got yeah, to yeah, Guardians, see this. Guardians, I think is kind of a nutball decision, and I remember just being like, why the f what, what tree, ra ra raccoon, what, what, yeah. and, I, and it's like, yep, yeah, I agree, that was a risk. I remember when the trailer came out for the first movie, and I was just like, what is this? And a lot of, I think a lot of other people were saying the same thing like what yeah. where did this come I from i remember when it got announced i was like guardians of the okay <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah sure yeah, i point. guess and then it was better the than Age of ultron it was like oh yeah the trailer oh, itself was very odd and like the kind of music it was using um well that hooked on a feeling track it just it stood out distinctly when, from all the other stuff what i think was the time. so impressive too is that they kind of speed ran what was achieved in avengers they brought in a whole like, we got individuals, mm, and then we mm. brought them as a team in one movie. It was just like, nice, good job. Yeah, right. All brand new characters. Well, for, I mean, for the films. Yeah. People not take risks and to use each project as an advertisement for the next. Even though my tone may sound negative, and that's because, well, it is. For the most part, I don't think Marvel Studios was making a wrong decision in taking this direction early in its life. Okay. Fair mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> I was just processing that. I needed to pause, okay? It's fast. <laughs> Many franchises have come and gone due to doing too much too fast, but Marvel had an advantage over the rest of them in having a grand architect to steer the ship in the right direction and make sure that everything was up to code. What's interesting about that is Marvel did do everything too fast still. Um, I think if they knew they were going to be successful, we could have planned out like a shit ton. The, oh, yeah. uh, as we've already said, like Iron Man 1, 2, 3, that was done real quick, and we've, we're pretty much just done with Iron Man entirely. Like Iron Heart will eventually pop in, but... Tony Stark is just like, yeah, man, there's a, there's a metric ton of stories that just don't get told now. And even if you were to argue, like, yeah, well, we don't have Robert Downey Jr. forever, it's like, yeah, but you can still make plans to try and make use of the best stories and the most detailed ones, as opposed to just being like, because if, if I remember correctly, it was just Shane Black's ideas of what, what Iron Man 3 was. It wasn't that Kevin Feige was like, oh, we need to make sure we hit the, uh, you know, the, the Iron Monger, the Whiplash, and the uh, extremist storylines. No, that's just that's just like you just ended up. It's almost like fucking roulette wheel at that point. Which is why I think that they get a lot more credit than they probably should for the planning. It feels like 
bare yeah. bones planning, even in phase one, two, and three. It just kind of worked out. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Yeah. It's like calling him a grand architect. I'm just like, mm -hmm, come on. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. Kevin Feige knew that having a strategy and taking it slow is what would pay dividends in the long term. But the thing is, if all of Snyder's works were good, that would have been fine. Like, yeah, the, if they were good, just which is having of like course a, a grand hypothetical, but people yeah. would have been down for it if those films. Were I think Guardians proved good. it. It's like we could have had the yeah, team up movie be hit. the fucking first. It could have been Justice League is the one that starts it all off, and it just you just get the three characters, you know, the first act. We get all three of them doing their thing, and then they team up and beat some bad guy. If it's all really well executed, people be like, all right, I want to see Guardians the next one. was. Guardians is the proof that the thing is if the thing's good, and if all the characters are well written, you don't necessarily have to give them a whole bunch of time. If you come up with a plot that has them all interacting and bonding, yeah, but you know it's. You know, at least with this, it's like if if three of our dominoes fall out of our five, at least we still have two. You know, because like yeah, it, yeah, hedging bets sort of thing. Yeah. So the idea was formed that sets of movies would be organized into phases, highlighting a specific arc and purpose to the overall story they were telling. Phase one was Iron Man, the Hulk, Iron Man two, four, Captain America, and the Avengers, with the overall goal and story arc being to create the building blocks for an interconnected cinematic universe. Phase 2 featured Iron Man 3, Thor the Dark World, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant-Man, the Winter Soldier, and Age of Ultron, with the primary One idea being to good. build <laughs> the pond building <laughs> blocks that were established in Phase 1, placing a large focus on the world building, establishing its politics, its uns- I, <laughs> I guess you could say they did that. You I, could uh, say that it does those things, I guess. I'm sure. sorry, having the president show up doesn't mean you've established like world building <laughs> and politics. That's not at all what that means. It's just, the it's Sokovia just... Accords told us they are not ready to deal with a poli- no. Oh, Jesus, a fucking Falcon and Winter Soldier. Jesus Christ, and, that's- mm -hmm. Fuck, I've man. told this story before, but like I remember phase two, I was I was down on the MCU. I was like, fuck, the world building is so bad at this point. Like These films just don't care that they exist. How fucking wrong I was in terms of thinking that was like a low point for world building, you know? Um, How but we still, yearn for the days of Thor: The Dark World. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> to tell me like, oh, you know, they were focusing on that in this. It's like, no, no. they did, they they would they were doing their that. thing of, hey, you make the movie, hey, you make the movie, and luckily we're early enough in the timeline that you guys can literally make your own movies and you don't contradict each other. We're past that at this point. <laughs> like, we're very God very knows past what those that. Those movies would have looked like these days. Yeah. Seen past and expanding the MCU's scope towards the weird cosmic side of the universe. Also, your mileage may vary because this was a separate division from Marvel Studios, but around this time you got to see the rollout of Marvel TV within this universe. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter are all coming out to make the universe broader and fill in the gaps the movies didn't have time for, but... Fill in the gaps the movies didn't have That's time for. That's not what Daredevil does. Daredevil was, Daredevil was definitely telling its own story, I but I guess he might be talking about the other ones. I feel like all of them would probably argue they're telling their own shit. They might have, like, oh, course, fun bits. Do you remember? Because there was that, um... This was the last episode of Jessica Jones I watched. It was when he's, like, fighting the couple who are su superhero yeah, serial yeah. killers or whatever. Um, and they, and and they talked said, about like, the Chitari. The green guy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, like, the idea that you'd call that filling the gaps when it's more so just being like, Ooh, I know that, because I watched the Avengers movie. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. that's all that felt like to me. But we'll get into yeah. that. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., as people are saying, that's probably the fair argument to make for that show. I could see that show definitely being like, we will fill in the gaps for the parts in between and stuff. More detail later down the road. Phase 3 was when they got experimental. Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Infinity War, and Endgame. This is when they got comfortable with playing around- Wait, didn't he- he, he just missed uh, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. How dare uh, you? <laughs> another <laughs> film everyone in the Wasp. Quantum. Uh, no, wait. That's the next one. Just the uh, Marvel. You got to miss that one. You got to assume he missed those two because he legit forgot. <laughs> like, I, just, <laughs> I don't even know. I think so though. Around with this universe. Prior to this point, a big meme was that all this end of the world shit was going down. But despite referencing the events of previous movies and other characters, rarely would you see an actual crossover outside of the big team ups like the Avengers. But in Phase Three, you had all these different characters crossing over, talking to each other. 
Yeah, so I actually agree. This phase three, yeah. I, I started to feel like, okay, we are now behaving as Real though MCU we're in. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Having Doctor Strange turn up when he's like, who the fuck, you're like, you and Loki are fucking around, what are you doing? I remember being like, oh, that's great, good, thank you. <laughs> like, same for, uh, you know, Civil War, being like, it's a Captain America movie, but it has fucking everyone in it. It's like, oh, okay, this is better. Yeah. Each other, fighting yep. each other. Some new players were established. Doctor Strange could show up in Thor for two minutes, Iron Man and Spider-Man could share the screen, and it would all feel natural and not alienating. The universe was even more fleshed out as it started to shed its more grounded foundations for more out there and comic booky sensibilities. Thor went to space, Doctor Strange dealt with wizards and other dimensions, the cosmic side of the universe was better explored. I think I agree with He's... all this. Phase 3 felt like yeah, it was yeah, I expanding, do. Yeah. Being, yeah. being kind of neat. Looking back yeah. already now, I'm like, Phase 3 is probably my favorite, I guess. Um, I have a respect I, that's, for Phase 1, I, though. I think that's the phase where it felt most like the comic books. Yeah. Where, yeah. like, they're they're being put out with this level of confidence where, you know, you, you see other characters from other worlds coming in to contribute something. Like, I think, and I think that's what... MCU. I think that's what they were really aiming for the whole time. It's like, how can we do this comic book thing, but do it in the theater? Right. And yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Civil War, like the fact that it had all of these characters who were relevant in like showing up when you think with a movie like this, it's like, no, you can't get all these people in and then have all of their story. Yeah. Like it's, it's when the universe felt most interconnected. Yeah. And you start to see a slight variation in styles between projects. Before Phase 3, Marvel was very committed. Wait, why? Uh, I thought he was talking about Phase Three. Why do you show Winter Soldier? I think matter. it might have just been a visual that wasn't really wisely placed in the timeline. Perhaps. Fair enough. Thor went to space, Doctor Strange dealt with wizards and other dimensions, the cosmic side of the universe was better explored, and you start to see a slight variation in styles between projects. Before Phase 3, Marvel was very committed to making everything feel homogenous with one another. Every Okay. Every movie looked the same, tones never really varied, and was a massive point of criticism that was mostly unaddressed by Marvel during that time. Which makes it sound like they fixed it later, but I'd be a liar if I said Phase 3 was Okay, I'm getting lost because I'm seeing clips uh, from Phase 4 a lot, and it just makes me- he's not talking about Phase- he's, he, he specifically- just to clarify, he's saying that Phase 1 and 2 had criticism of being too homogenous, Phase 3 broadened it and let creators do more with their own styles, right? That's, that's what he said? Yeah. Okay. I think so. First, because I was I was curious if you meant phase one, two, and three were too homogenous, and phase four is expanding. But I'm pretty sure he said three. I think was whatever pretty... point he's making at the moment, he'll he'll grab an image from anything. It doesn't okay. matter. Like it feels a little it bit is. yeah, fast and loose with the relevance of the visuals in a lot of senses. I use them as um as guiding hands sometimes, and maybe that's a mistake. Driven her that each movie was distinct because no, they weren't. They were each very obviously Marvel movies, mostly directed by people hired to get the job done and collect their paycheck. But some color got injected into them. They weren't all gray and boring looking. Colors popped, locations varied, and Is some directors were. Is that a fair thing were... to say? Because I can't I'm... remember off the top of my head. I'm honestly lost on what eras we're comparing exactly. Is he saying. Because he was like, oh, it's still kind of boring because people are all like hired gun directors, but it was still colorful and it popped and stuff. So I'm just like, uh. uh. I know the guy who directed Guardians of the Galaxy was a hired gun director. Ah. Uh, which is. Oh, uh, we got jokes this episode. Funny too, because <laughs> he's probably the, like, the one that you'd say, like, well, phase two. <laughs> yeah, ironically as it is, yeah. Phase two had him in it, and he was. Phase two is not all homogenous. But, uh. I'm just gonna let it play because I'm a, I'm a little lost on exactly what he's saying, but I'm pretty sure I agree. <laughs> Afforded the opportunity to incorporate more style. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 feels like a James Gunn movie. Likewise, Thor Ragnarok felt like a Taika Waititi movie and injected new life into one of the most boring and one note of the MCU's main cast. Oh boy, how that statement has aged. Stop. We need to stop doing that. We need to stop saying that now. I'm just saying... <laughs> After recent events, this film, yeah. this video apparently oh, yeah, was made right, yeah. before he saw Thor: Love and Thunder, so it's just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. How, do we how, feel about Thor how now? bad we must feel now. I deviated quite a way. What's funny as well is I've come to appreciate older Thor a lot more over time. Um, I used to kind of think he was stale, but 
after all of the childishness, it's kind of like, I don't know, man, I guess I kind of like that he's I, he's the one in the team is pretty stalwart and, and uh, res, you know, civil and respectful with a little twinge of comedy that was nice when it came up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I thought the first Thor was pretty dull, but I think, as I understand, that actor, uh, Chris Hemsworth, injected a lot of his own kind of wit into the role as the movies went along. And they just brought a lot more humor into that character that I think was much needed. And then they cranked like, it. That, that was a good decision. Cranked it too far, okay. We'll love that that does seem to... I haven't seen <laughs> Love and Thunder yet, but that does seem don't to be do the it. case. Yeah, don't they you, just Don't you do it, John. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Spare yourself. <laughs> well, I'm actually... I was quite interested because I wanted to see Christian Bale doing that role as Gore. Like, I'm f kind of fascinated by that. I'm curious how Christian did that. Like he performed that. I was going to make a joke about how he plays multiple characters and then I realized you wouldn't get it. So I just, because you'd be like, huh? Uh, so I'm just <laughs> not going to try. But there you go. Now I've technically made the joke by describing what the joke would have been. But good I, job. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't end really up. good joke, Mahler. I'm glad you made it. Yeah. I didn't end That's up going job. because I asked my friend, like, hey, you want to go see Thor? And he's like, Thor is his favorite character. And even he was just like, ugh. I don't oh. care. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's good, man. That's a shame. Yeah. I was just like, like uh, I won't, I won't go then. Whatever. Why is Thor Ragnarok like... felt like a Taika Waititi movie and injected new life into one of the most boring and one note of the MCU's main cast? I'm not even fair to say he's one. I'm just gonna let it go. Whatever. We'll just move on. I deviated quite a way away from talking about Marvel's phases there, so to briefly circle back around, Phase 3's main focus was to combine most of the elements they had learned throughout their tenure. Multi-movie spanning storytelling, more comfort in playing with the universe and tying everything all together for their finale. Now I'm not aware of the inner intricacies of Marvel Studios and the comings and goings of their operation, but if I were to hazard a guess, post-finale they were consulting the sacred chart and working their way for about a dozen ch- Ah, oh, calm down. These edit, yeah, it's legitimately difficult for me to, the noise, it, I don't know, it's weird because I'm like a big gamer and everything, and my <laughs> my gamer brain is having difficulty <laughs> focusing. I don't know where to dodge to. So, it's a shame, because he's clearly putting a lot of work into oh, it. So, he's working, he's working so much too effort, hard. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. much effort is going into something that's ultimately harming his video. I just, yeah, because yeah, like, what he's talking about, I want to listen to it, but at the same time, such intense visual sounds, it's like, sound ah. effects, yeah and goings of their operation but if i were to hazard a guess post finale they were consulting the sacred chart and working their way through about a dozen chickens because phase four currently has no working overarching their way through goal a dozen major... chickens i, I think guess that reference before they hatch i thought it was referencing his headless chicken thing or is it, or it could be that yeah because you mentioned the oh headless chicken i think earlier, i think right? they both work incidentally like mm -hmm. they marvel thought they had a they they were counting their chickens before they hatched they were counting their characters before they paid off um Hmm. There you go. There's something to discuss. That was fun. Things and goings that there are. By the way, I still am not 100% clear on what he says in this sequence. I need to focus on what he's saying. I keep failing to do that. Operation. But if I were to hazard a guess, post finale, they were consulting the sacred chart and working their way through about a dozen chickens. Because phase four currently has no overarching goal or major storyline to build towards. The closest thing you can point to is this whole multiverse thing. The idea that there is an infinite amount of universes all running parallel to the one we see. You've all seen Spider Verse, you get the idea. But out of the 11 entries yeah, in that the phase. Was good. <laughs> well, and, and I, I, not to cut him off before he gets there, theoretically, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be assuming here that it's a bad phase because they don't have an overall goal of where they're going. Because I'm starting to think maybe I should push back on the whole thing. Is it really that impressive that when they were making Phase Three, they were like, Thanos is going to attack at some point? Um, probably when we have enough films out that we feel like it, it about works, when it matches a couple of contracts drying up. It's not like it was this, it was laddered up perfectly with all these other movies. It's just sort of like, well, you remember Ragnarok ends, and it's just like Thanos is attacking now. It's like, oh, shit. Well, there we go. Well, I guess he had to attack sometime. So. And, yeah. and if anything, I remember, you know, like, to be fair, Civil War ends, and then Thanos attacks. And it's like, Man, that's probably not the best time. We had plenty of stories to tell, but now we just don't. Like, what was it like when you had two Avengers teams running at the same time? One of them was a vigilante team. It's like, you won't find out. You don't get to know. Yeah, that's the whole oh, okay. thing. We, go for. we found out in Black Widow. Widow. What do you mean? <laughs> and then if, there was uh, no secret Avengers. Like, that's the story yeah, that's and, not yeah. happened and probably won't. 
And so if someone said, like, oh, it's so good how they meticulously planned it compared to Phase 4, it's just like, they didn't really, they just dropped Thanos on the fucking world at some point. In this, they're gonna drop a big multiversal plotline at some point. The problem is really not that we're going somewhere in particular. Um, it's, it's that the individual components are all fucking garbage. Like, did, did we all think that Phase 2 was adding up to Age of Ultron? It's like, no. No, no way. Nobody thought yeah. that. Four, and only three of them actually explore that concept. Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Loki almost have nothing to do with each other, except that they all share a vaguely similar story concept. I guess. You so again, I just want to repeat that. That's fine. You could have done it that way, and it could have been good. That would have been okay. <laughs> the fact that they have that all three of them explore different elements of how the multiverse works could have been a thing that works, and then you combine them all into a big ensemble thing at the end. That, that's that's a way to do it. So you could argue that because Loki broke open the multiverse, that's the catalyst for the Green Goblin and Eddie Brock breaking through into the main universe. But there's no TVA, no mention or reference to the events of that series and the how or the why all of this is happening. Yeah, because they weren't yeah, made with that? people that care about each other. <laughs> <laughs> even Eight still, plot, though. Four. Uh, even still, you could probably have had all three of those projects be excellent and have barely any references to each other. It's probably possible. It's just the this is where I, I keep trying to allude to the fact that it's rotten at the core, as opposed to any like, oh, you see, their problem was they didn't bind the multiversal storyline together. Like, uh, it's not really. I don't think that would have saved it. When No Way Home ended and after Eddie Brock pissed off, left his goop and Morbius met up with the Vulture, the post credit scene showed a trailer for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which makes it look like the events of that movie would follow on from No Way Home. That Doctor Strange cracking open the multiverse to allow the Sinister Six and two other Spider-Men to- Do you remember when we thought that it was- that Wanda was gonna say, you fucked up with Spider-Man and you seem to get away with it, but I, you know, blah blah blah. I thought that's what she was gonna be referencing, but it wasn't. Uh. <laughs> it was as dumb as it ended up being. Mm -hmm. To enter, resulted in the multiverse crashing in on itself, adding more weight to the finale of Loki and what Kang said would happen. But then I actually watched the movie, and aside from exactly one exchange, the plot of No Way Home has absolutely no bearing on the story of Doctor Strange. It just ended up being... Correct, and isn't the matter information that makes this interesting that they were going to be released in reverse order at one point? Yeah. I yeah oh, really? Oh, so, okay. I don't know that. Which is interesting to think about. Because yeah. we imagine, like, for uh, from our perspective, where instead of us coming off the relative high of No Way Home and then getting into Multiverse of Madness, we have the depths of despair that mul uh, Multiverse of Madness is, and then we're like, oh, No Way Home actually was, there was some good shit in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have uh, been weird. That would have been weird. Thinking about how Strange is lonely and the whole multiverse angle was an incredibly minor part of its actual story. And I have no problem with these films being isolated. In fact, I welcome it. Oh. Part of why DC is okay. doing so well right now is because they're more focused- But- it, Part of why DC's doing so well right now? Uh, DC is not doing so well right now. I wouldn't now. say DC's doing so well right now. <laughs> I mean, they literally just like wiped their slate clean, it was so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I think they're, they're certainly doing better now, like since Justice League. Um... Like with, with the Batman and... I don't know the- uh, if we're doing, I don't know. I guess. What do you, what do you guys in, in the in the context of discussing like uh, the overall sort of health of the universe and IPs, like this is this is why referencing the Batman or Joker is like a fool's errand. Strange. It's like why would you even bring them up? They're not even. Yes, they are DC IPs, but they got nothing not to do with the rescuing universe. your drowning franchise. Like uh, in regard to the universe that they're trying to build. Yeah, like they're not a part of the okay. DCEU. At least they haven't. Been integrated as far as i know and they don't have plans to do that either as far as i know i think you get the reeves universe you'll probably get something like that you'll get a batman one two and three and then they get a oh, pe okay. penguin tv show so that's just going to be its own its own thing it's got nothing to do with dcau as far as i know right um, is, and to say is that there a that, reason sorry go ahead to say that that is why like dc are doing like marvel is still doing better than that I don't right. know. Like, I, I just, agree with DC that, is yeah. clearly envious of Marvel's success. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 Marvel have found a way to fail and continue. DC fail, and then they have to scrap like <laughs> ten projects. <laughs> Whatever like, they fuck. were doing, they failed at. Hey, Gary, we're looking at we're looking at someone tell us why Phase Four is bad. It's been interesting so far. It's we're been not a mixed learning bag as much video. as we might have been able to, but it's it's a journey. Yeah.
Um, is there a reason they call it the extended universe other than just trying to differentiate itself from Marvel? I, I think that's the only reason. I think reason that's the only reason, cool. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're the extended universe, not that pussy ordinary universe that Marvel Yeah. Did. But, uh, that ordinary universe is so shit and ordinary. We're special. Yeah. I, I think this is. I don't think he would have made this section this way if he had known about what happens Man. probably a week after he made this video. Part of why DC is doing Bad so well timing. right now is because they're more focused on standalone projects instead of being overly ambitious and setting up future projects yeah, and having their DC cinematic universes remain connected. No, they they do want to set up all of this shit with the cinematic, but it's just been fucking. Like You're gutted by work. we've got two insane actors that have fucked everything up for him. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> this is this is hilarious. Why would you think of like oh well because the Batman and Joker did well and we had Peacemaker as a TV show. It's that they're doing well because they're not focusing on their ensemble shit. It's like no, they they want to get this shit out. They want to make more of this, but they keep getting fucked over. It's, yeah. Uh, you almost feel bad for him. <laughs> like, I kind of do. Yeah. Like I don't feel bad for Marvel at all, but I kind of feel bad for DC a little bit. <laughs> With the so actor part of it, to, yeah, like yeah, they hired some psychos. What, what insane! Like, How could you have known? What insane luck! Because if if everything had gone better, they they would have they would have been pumping this shit out. We would, we would have seen the Absolutely. Flash would have been out by now. <laughs> it is not a it is not a crazy to imagine alternate reality where the MCU is struggling and the DCEU is leading the charge. I really wish in these ensemble movies they would stop doing these lineup lineup of heroes shots. I understand that they're trying to like you know reference the imagery of like the even... cartoons and the comics, but like I hate when I see this in these. Why kind do of you movies. feel this? Why do you feel so strongly? Uh, what is it about the lineup that I've... you don't like? Because I don't mind the lineup at all. I think it can be kind of neat. Yeah. It feels it feels too staged, like the blocking of it. You know, it's like they're orienting themselves for the camera frame, and it's just like it's I don't know why like they. It's not really natural. Like, that's not yeah. how people would stand. Like, people don't really do that. They're not just I, incidentally sort of hey, in the frame together. All yeah, it's around. like we're leaving the ship now. Everyone form a line, and then we'll walk out <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> bad, bad, if you got the that smoke know. machine Very, active? He's like, yeah. It's yeah, very second. dramatic in this one, isn't it? It's super dramatic lighting. I understand uh, the comic book appeal of it, so maybe I'm nitpicking. I just realized, by the way, didn't uh, Thor, Love, and Thunder and... MOM and certainly Spider Man make more than the Batman? Um, uh, no, Thor is... hasn't made more money than the Batman, but Multiverse of Madness did, and Spider Man made more than double what uh, the Batman did. So, like, if we're not, and... we're clearly not going by box office, and we're going by critical acclaim? I, I would guess assume we so. Because uh, uh, I just, because money wise, stuff I find that, okay. I find that fascinating because. On one hand, then you'll be like, "Yes, you got the Joker or Joker and the Batman for DC," but then John on the other, DC. they've literally I'm just sorry. stopped a completed movie from coming out, and their cited reason is that it's too awful to release. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't. Yeah, I don't no, <laughs> still, <laughs> like, still <laughs> just thinking about this is insane. Yeah, movie's done, but man, this is fucking garbage, dude. I'm just gonna write it off. It's like, damn. But I guess he would. He would argue like, well. Uh, all of Phase Four is awful. I think I, I assume that's the argument he's going to make at this point. I don't know if he likes any of it. Yeah. They're creating a lot of different projects for different characters with radically different tones, which is what Marvel should be doing right now. See that? Is, that to me isn't at all the way that we fix Marvel. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, they just need to make sure they grasp different tones. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, they probably are doing think... that. Yeah, I mean, you could have movies with multiple different tones and be bad. I mean, I would certainly... I, it's weird, because do you want to have your universe with a wide variety of tones, especially in terms of if you're going to market it? Do you want to, or do you want to have it like a, well, they're all sort of the same, play it safe, almost like a, a fast food franchise? Not necessarily in a bad way, but you know what you're sort of getting when you go there and it's reliable. Well, something mm. that we've talked about is how um how everybody wants to write their own story and doesn't give a shit. It's kind of like the worst of both worlds. There's no interest in any continuity from a writing standpoint. Um, but mm. visually and you know, in terms of like tone, a lot of the films are chasing the exact same vibe. So it's like the worst. Whereas what you would want is that everybody is considerate of how their story slots in, but they're pushing the boundaries of what they can do with the medium visually terms of music um yeah and tone as well like and that it, would be ideal 
how different would be important, right? Because what Rags is saying is like, yeah, 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 I think that's what they've been doing in phase one, two, and three, and four, to be honest with you. But you don't want them doing literally like completely different uh, things that you make makes you think of even in the same universe. Because it's interesting that he's like, that's their problem. They need to be uh, having different tones when it's like, well, I mean, their unified homogenous thing is literally what jump started and made successful, made into the juggernaut it is today. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Arguably, shouldn't they continue doing that? Maybe the problem isn't that. It's the other part, the script part. I, I think it's the script part. I, I agree. Mm. Even though some films bad. and shows have some pizzazz now that they didn't used to have, the writing of each of these is still so samey. There's no risk. Oh. Okay, there you go. So I guess he agrees with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Marvel should be doing right now. But even though some films and shows have some pizzazz now that they didn't used to have, the writing of each of these is still so samey. There's no risk, no variation. Okay, well, he doesn't really agree. That's not our problem, <laughs> that they're samey. <laughs> it's that they're awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if they were all somewhat similar, but well, quite I good. Guess, hey? But they're all awful, right? So <laughs> I guess in that I... sense, it's samey. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's what he means. No, I, I know, I know. <laughs> also, the fact that, because it was in the context of, like, the homogeneity thing, which, mm -hmm. uh, we call it sludge, just... right? But, <laughs> like, because <laughs> uh, uh, what we refer to in that does include that there's, like, a similarity in how bad everything is. Um, there's, there's, like, clear mandates coming in from things, but at the same time, it's, like, they are, it's, it's not quite the, it's not that the, they are the same that is the problem, it's in the, the manner in which they are the same in ways that aren't surface level. Say what you will about the Netflix MCU shows and their fluctuation oh, quality, we will. but at the very least they mm. all felt different. Luke Cage was a show focused on okay. black American issues and incorporated that into its style and writing. Jessica Jones was a light noir detective show, and Daredevil was an action crime drama. Each one has various- I like how he didn't mention Iron Fist. <laughs> like, yeah. Was that one too bad? It didn't make the cut, I guess. Uh, and compared to what's coming out now, Iron Fist's probably not the worst. But this is the thing, the way he just did that, description-wise, have you seen the meme where um, someone has, on the left, it's like a bunch of uh, Marvel movies, and on the right, it'll have, like, loads of, some of the, a lot of the best movies ever from one, like, director, and it'll describe the Marvel yeah. movies, and it'll be, like, fucking action thriller thing, action thriller thing, action thriller, like, they're all the same, that's the idea, but with the, the, the director, they'll be, like, it'll be named... You know, with much more specific genre, subgenre titles, and it'll, the implication being, of course, that you know one of them makes art, the other one is just making sludge pipe stuff. And then someone mm -hmm. flipped the meme where they were like, "Winter Soldier," a uh, you know noir style. I haven't even what, what, what words I'm trying to come up with. I used to know this. What what, what do people consider Winter Soldier? It's like espionage, right? Espionage, usually. Yeah. Whatever. The, the, that kind of approach to naming all of them, even even Doctor Strange, I think, was in there, and it was given like this much more complicated... And then and then it would show... Um, yeah, political thriller is a lot of what people say Winter Soldier is as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, then, well, then we they would show... Talk, it's the genre talk. This is what happens when you talk about kind of like genres and styles. It can be as... Yeah, yeah. And then to say what a thing really is. On the other side, they then had like Casino, Godfather... Good, good fellas and a, a bunch of them and they were just like generic gangster mob movie generic gangster mob movie gener like as if to imply you can do this with everything that move that that meme got fucking hated people were like outraged that they would even try oh, and make course. it when i was just yeah. like oh i thought he was just making a commentary on how genre works i don't know <laughs> like you, yeah, you could yeah. be a and that's what i feel's happening here he's like you know these shows were so different because and then like plucks i don't know elements when i think you could do that with all the phase four shit Doing Moon Knight, you could be like, it's like an Indiana Jones type adventure through Egypt and discovering through multiple personalities and blah, blah, blah. like he's like, oh, that sounds so yeah, world ending threat and save yeah the, yeah da, da, da. and then it's like, what is Falcon and Winter Soldier? It's like, oh well, that that, that is a political thriller once again, a globe trotting uh, thriller, just blah blah blah, and it's just like, see, those two are completely different. It's like, I don't know. It, I feel like you're being very nice to these Netflix shows that, outside of Daredevil, are shit on a decent amount by a lot of people. I guess I'll give a pass to yeah. Jessica Jones. People like that a lot, too. But, uh, yeah, Luke Cage oh. and Iron Fist were both shit on a lot. Oh, the one of the points that this guy makes that I'm really inclined to agree with is that Disney, at some point, became far too uh, obsessed with the interconnectedness of everything and, like, the, the broad multi-year plan rather than focusing on films individually and making sure they're like integral and the stories are working and the characters are working like I scorsese think the at least did as much 
blame for that as the as Disney does. I feel like I could argue the opposite. Phase four is all these people are making their own shit and they don't care about how they fit in with anything else, but they're also really I'm bad saying. at their jobs. <laughs> like that's just yeah. <laughs> Sure, fair enough. Um, but I, I was just thinking, like, if Scorsese had, like, Scorsese Con, where he was, like, on a stage, and he was, like, showing his plan, a 10-year plan for all his movies, like, Casino and Goodfellas are up there, and Wolf of Wall Street, and it's like, this is gonna come after this, and this is gonna be a cliffhanger that feeds into this thing, and it's, like, Scorsese doesn't do that. I mean, what I like about him is, like, you can argue, like, a lot of his films are similar in that they're all, like, crime, kind of gangster-themed, but he at least takes on projects one at a time, and he makes sure the script is good, and it's working, and he casts carefully, I think, and it's like, releases one film at a time, polishes it, and it's like, there, that's good, moving on to the next project. And then, and only then, will he do that, you know? And Disney is sort of obsessed with just like, what's, what's, our, what's our plan and not focusing so much individually on, on each film? That, that, I think, is, I agree with. They're definitely that's pumping them out, and uh, I don't think they care... Like the, the 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 lack of plan and lack of cohesion and lack of care that they even recognize that each other exists is definitely there. But I just I don't know that that I don't even know that would be that much of a problem if the films themselves were individually very very good. We would be pointing out yeah, it's like wait, yeah. but this doesn't make sense with this and the other movie. But most people wouldn't give a fuck at all. They'd just be like whatever. The movie's good. Sure, I mean if 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 they did that broad plan thing and the films were good, I I agree. I would have no problem with that. Well, then but we'd be like, we'd be golden. That'd be great. The, but they yeah, are yeah, they absolutely. are so. F they are so fixated on the interconnectedness and the broad scheme of everything that they are neglecting the quality of the individual films. So they're, they're going they too just, far on one side of it. They just take all the random people they can find to write their stuff or direct their stuff. Like there were, there were, weren't there like multiple things where people got like lead of these production that like one writing, uh, 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 I'm missing the word here. One writing, uh, Fuck. I'm missing a word. Help me out. Help. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, they've, they've only written Macaroni. one thing. They had only one writing thing on their resume. Yeah. Well, like, then... like, a, like an inexperienced director or... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's just of, these yeah, directors that have like one writing credit. That's the one. Oh. That's what I was looking for. Like one oh, writing okay. credit or direction credit or whatever. And they get, trying to get say... like these multi-million uh projects they have to lead and stuff yeah i thought you're trying to say a person with one thing having done is a person who is i was just like i, I don't know uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just brain meld uh so, yeah, so but then again even if they give give it to people that have more writing credit i mean look at fucking thor love and thunder we had kind of kind of higher hopes for that movie to be at least decent with character stuff, but that fucking shit to shut the bad. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to forget that once upon a time we were like, no, oh, that'll be a good one. That'll be a good one. Yeah, that was like the one was like, oh, even if the story is gonna be, eh, I, I think the characters and funnies would be good, but goddamn, how yeah. wrong I was. I tend not to look at like the amount of previous writing work to determine if like somebody's script is gonna be good because I think I've seen writers come out the gate. You know, with their first feature, and it's like well, it's terrific. not guaranteed, but it's surely indicative. Because yeah, like I'll you be can use it as like a predictive point to some degree of like what you might. Well, it helps me expect from that person. Yeah. Like I'm but, gonna watch everything Mike Flanagan writes, pretty much, because I'm I have confidence in his work. But that would change if he made like five bad things in a row. I'd just be like, all right, I'm fine. yeah, mm -hmm. right styles and writing sensibilities. And sure, some suck, but others are okay to incredible pieces of television that stand on their own. I can't say the same for any of the shows that were officially produced and overseen by Marvel Studios. Agreed. With the exception of Moon Knight, each show seems more committed to being an advertisement for future projects. Um... I don't um, know if that's fair to the I other shows, like actually. Even, I feel like that's sort of what they begin as, anyway. The idea that Moon Knight stands out on all the TV shows as one that wasn't looking to advertise for something else. Like, if so, if you're going to say WandaVision clearly advertising for Multiverse of Madness, Falcon Winter Soldier advertising for Captain America 4, Loki advertising for Loki Season 2? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. um, I don't know if that's fair. I'd just be like, isn't Moon Knight advertising for whatever Moon Knight ends up in next? Uh, they all have their own stories to tell. They're just really badly done. I definitely prefer it if there's like a justifiable reason for like a character from another 
like t- or not timeline, but like like you know, like all these different characters have their own branches, and like say in No Way Home, where you have uh, Daredevil show up to be Peter Parker's lawyer, that makes a lot of sense because he like needs a lawyer in that situation, and it's like why not have Daredevil come in? But then in other cases, if you just shove in a a character for like no reason, and it's just cheap in the sense that it's just for like this guy is saying advertising the next thing, I'm not a fan of that. Um, people saying Loki advertised for uh, Kang. Right, being Kang Dynasty. Uh, but the thing is, uh, Loki season two is coming out before that, so mm-hmm. you know I'm just trying to think of what would Loki be the thing that's what. What does that season push you into? And so I guess it's season two for now. That'll push you into uh, the Avengers movie probably. Mm. With right. brief flourishes and minor trippy visuals to allude to having more style than they actually have. When One Division was coming out, people were interested in how the show would function as a metaphor and exploration of grief. The sitcom setup at the show works as an expression of nostalgia for a life you no longer have and the loved ones you no longer get to spend time with, as well as the desire to cling on to a potential future you cannot obtain due to their loss. If the show scaled back their ambition and focused purely on its characters and their journey, it would have been a much wow. stronger show. I mean, I agree yeah, with this totally, but you I, also I need totally to... I totally agree. Like, that's, that's, that's the focus, that is correct, but also just talent. You, need, you still need them to be yeah, able to write it. Yeah, it has to be it. good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I'm not sure but that yeah, they could totally have, agree. but yeah, that's, they went nuts by the end. They made it a crazy nonsense thing. Turned into sludge, yeah. The, it, the last episode of that show was just like incomprehensible, stupid <laughs> nonsense. Why are they lasers at each other? What do you mean? It's madness. It, was, it wasn't lasers, it was magic. Rune no, it was spells. lasers. I'm talking about the, the visions. They fired oh. their lasers each. Oh, the visions were lasers. It's, mm. it's hard to keep it all straight. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just make it a short, small-scale story set in this world about an otherwise disposable character. But well, I guess. <laughs> like, aren't they all disposable? I don't know. What we ended up getting was a show that convoluted itself with evil government groups, witches, and setting up future projects. Remember that really weird moment in the last episode when the scroll from Captain Marvel showed up to set up the Marvels coming out in 2024? Oh fuck yeah! That did happen. No, I don't remember that. I legitimately do not remember that. Yeah, the uh, Rambo. She just goes and talks to a scroll, and it's like, wait, what? And it's like, this is gonna. It's for a movie later on. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh man, that's so true. Yeah, he's. Uh, oof. Well, that's. <laughs> yep. Free. Or when Wanda had her peaceful little cottage in the forest with her astral form menacingly studying the Necronomicon. Yeah, that was as clear as day a thing of like this is gonna keep going somewhere else you'll be excited i swear it won't be cringe <laughs> to set up doctor strange in the multiverse of madness releasing in may of 2022 loki and the falcon show had the same issue where both felt like ads for the next few films filling in the blanks that would otherwise go unexplored see i don't know that i i want to give them more credit they had their own stories they were just really bad yeah, yeah, they were definitely trying. They were very, I'd say they're very proud of the own, their stories they're trying. It's kind of like the, um, it's like the Kenobi show and everything like that. Like, they're very proud of these horrifically crap stories that they want to mm-hmm. tell. Because, like, I'm not going to deny all of it is like an ad for the next thing. We've been saying that for ages, the whole, like, get ready for the next thing and stuff. But it's just like, but they all still do, like, have a start, middle, end thing going on. It's just oftentimes it's, like, really, really ch- bad. It's very bad. Yeah. Loki opened up the multiverse and set up a new villain in Kang, who will be returning in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania coming 2023, and the other one transitioned Falcon into Captain America, and set up a bunch of other eventual characters, movies, and storylines that will be expanded upon in later MCU ventures. Okay, but couldn't I make this argument for literally all of the MCU at this point, though? Like, that was phase one, two, and three as well. Be like, Iron Man set up, set up fucking Iron uh, War Machine, you know? Like, it's like an ad for the next movie that's going to have him in it. And it's like, yeah, but they, they ran stories as well. This is the thing, I, I'd rather just, I feel like we're shifting focus away from the fact that it's just really badly written and their, their, um, their script sort of respect has plummeted. We've got plenty of references now to know mm-hmm. how they treat script writing. Um, the writers will, like, admit to what their standards were in, like, a funny, haha, this is, <laughs> ain't it awkward that I wrote it while we were filming, hee <laughs> hee. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, that is that's more than awkward, actually. Mm-hmm. It's quite revealing. Which, um, which I think is more so where we should be being like, "There's the problem right there." That's the issue, yeah. This isn't how movies should be made. 
As I said, the overarching storyline for Phase 4 seems to be the multiverse, but we got a bunch of other threads on top of that. The multiverse feels like something that's thrown in to be an excuse to shove in other characters or variants of things we know. Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, Patrick Stewart, Professor Rex, Ben Affleck, Daredevil. But there are other stories at play as well. In addition to the multiverse, you also have the Thunderbolts, who so far consist of John Walker from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Black Widow's sister, and as far as I know, that's it so far. Initially, I thought they'd be used for an upcoming Avengers thing, but recently it was announced that a movie centering around them will be released. So the whole concept reads as throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. Um... Yeah? I don't know I that that's... I think it uh... might have that... I, th I think because... I think when things are of really bad quality consistently, it can give that impression. That they're just trying crap. You know? But it's hard yeah. to tell. But because like, it's all just bad. Who knows exactly what Thunderbolts will end up having in terms of their uh, their casting? But are we really actually suggesting for a second that's like, well, if we don't know more than two members, what's the point? It's like Guardians is right there, man. Like it's 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 a matter of it, how good it is, obviously. Yeah, we went in knowing none of the characters. So I um again, I'm just he's like, he's like oh, they're throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. It's like that's I guess true, but I mean you know we can do that when trying to make good stuff, too. It can happen. Like, Guardians was clearly a, like, well, let's see if this works. Test, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, you also have the Celestials set up in the Eternals and will maybe leak over to the Guardians films. And there was also that weird tease with the sword and blade at the end of that movie. It's all a big mess, and I don't necessarily have an issue with having small storylines within one big story. In fact, I'd prefer it. I want smaller contained stories, but every one of these can't help the impulse to try and shove in some kind of teaser crap. The films in phases one to three. Uh, I agree with him, but yeah, and I paused there because I was I was about to say like surely the counter to that would be they've been doing this the whole time, so yeah, I'm gonna have to see how if he accounts for that some kind of teaser crap. The films in phases 1 to 3 did the same thing, but those movies had a defined end goal and a big bad to build up to. Keep saying that, but I <laughs> don't agree. I'm sorry. I feel like we're kind of rose-tinted this shit. Thanos has, like, got a quick cameo at the by the time you hit the end of phase 1, and then he has a second quick cameo by the end of phase 2. Being like, ah, this is incredible build-up. It's like, not really. Um... Yes, he's he's here. He's doing a thing. Yeah, there's there's not much development in those cliffhangers, except that he gets the Infinity Gauntlet in the second one, I guess. Yeah, the whole it, the whole thing that shocked that, everybody yeah. was that he was really interesting in Infinity War. Do you remember there was there was like discussions about yeah. how who cares about Thanos being the enemy in Infinity War? He's just this fucking huge thug guy who's just gonna be like, ah, oh, evil. But then people watch the movie and they're like, oh, that was that wasn't that wasn't him just being lame. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was great. At least he was in Guardians. Yeah, he had a scene in Guardians. I think that so character has such a presence that it's easy to overlook the fact that Josh Brolin was even in that movie and how good a job he did, you know? Mm -hmm. like, he looked, uh, he looked he was strange really up until they gave him all of the money in uh Infinity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that's, that's fair. I, f I did forget for a second. He, had, he, was, he was like Ronan. Oh, he had two scenes in Guardians, I think, actually. Okay. He was on a monitor for one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, being like, because it, it, it's like, yeah, Thanos is on the way. Therefore, it's bound as a as a series of phases. And I'm like, so is that all? Phase four is missing. Then being like, Kang is on the way, even though we have done that. That is there. Yeah, that is there. So I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel like, gosh. in terms of the secret source, I, I think it's more than that. That's not yeah. it. It's not it. Like, yeah, 4-2 was a disposable nothing movie, but it showed off and established the reality stone that gets used in Infinity War, and that was pretty Why? Why? So? You know? Like, I don't know. If, like, if they didn't... I forgot that they did that in Thor 2 I, I, I had a feeling I, because I'm a normal person. I think plenty of so people it, wouldn't have fucking known. That's what, when, when they say like, "Oh, where is the, uh, the 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 reality stone?" and they're like, "It's um, it's in nowhere." Because that's where there's an after credit scene, I think, in Thor two, where uh, Sif and uh, one of the other Warriors three delivers the stone to the Collector, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm following, I'm following. But like the idea that that is what bound the phases together and made them worthwhile, like fuck off, no one remembers that shit. <laughs> this is that's, that's the shit that I remember because I obsessive a bit with this. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've mentioned this, um, but what was cool about phase three in particular 
was how it leveraged a lot of the broader character arcs to culminate into something meaningful, like meaningful conflicts and meaningful resolution. That's the cool thing. Um, well, that's the meaningful part. So compared to, well, there was a post credit scene where it showed them talking to this guy. Like, that's, yeah, you know, that's cool, I guess. But really, like, the, the promise is long-term building of characters. Um, yeah. Well, so that's, the, that's... this... This section is him basically saying, like, the reason Phase 1, 2, and 3 were working better is because they all built toward Thanos, and he's arguing, like, even Thor 2 built towards Thanos, and that's what, like, component-wise is a good thing, when I, I just feel like, as if to imply Phase 4's problem is it's not building toward Kang, which it is. It, it is and, building towards it's, Kang. It's yeah. built more towards Kang than Phase 1 has built in, in towards Thanos. Like it's, well, Thanos it, was only revealed right at the end. As a cameo, like, exactly. Right at the end. And yeah. so I, I don't like that we're ignoring the reality that it's like, no, it's just a matter of these stories being fucking interesting and well-written. That's like clearly exactly. what the main component is. The idea that most... if these were as good as they are and they have the exact same level of components that involve Kang, we could be arguing like, ooh, Kang, oh, it's going to be interesting. We'll yeah. get to Kang, ooh. There's no reason for Kang to not be potentially as exciting as Thanos. There's no reason that shouldn't be, he, yeah, that shouldn't be the case well, that's um, most interesting. I was saying as well, like, uh, people were pretty pessimistic about Thanos before they saw Infinity they War. Were. They I don't, were. I, don't th I hope we don't, uh, you know, rewrite history on that one. It's not like everyone was super excited for the big purple guy to show up. People were like, hey, it'll be a movie where they have to beat up a big guy, okay. I'm pretty sure more people were excited for Ultron. Look at how that turned out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm missing something. Is there a property out of all the Phase 4 stuff that is building up to Kang other than Loki? Because I, I can't. Be like oh well, stuff in seems to be building up to Kang. That's if, like his yeah. Whole if we're supposed to believe that Kang is in some ways puppeting all of the multiversal events, you could argue that that's in well, some way. Kang is the ultimate puppet master, even above Thanos. It yeah. was it was him. Everything. It was okay. me, James Bond. I was the author of all your pain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking great important. Doctor Strange was a pretty mid film but it had the time stone in it, established its rules and implemented a character. I don't I, I don't like this. I I think this is unfair. These movies have a lot more to offer than that. Even Thor 2 has more to offer than that. But Doctor Strange, man, there's a lot going on in that movie beyond the fucking time stone. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's part of, I would argue it's all the foundational shit for why I really hate Multiverse of Madness. It shits on this it film. Wasted, it wasted Doctor Strange. It doesn't even, yeah, like a Mordo, man. God damn. Like Poor Mordo guy. <laughs> He was a person. He, he was a person, damn you. He was really important to Doctor Strange, and then we just discard him because Michael Waldron wanted to have Wanda as the villain. And, like, everybody seems to forget, when Doctor Strange came out, everyone was fucking cooming all over the visuals. But now everyone looks back yeah. and they're like, eh, it's a part of the phase of shitty visuals. Feel, it's like, what? No! Like that. The honeymoon period so was short for that. Well, I think it's just, I don't know, I feel bad for Scott Derrickson. He had a story he wanted to tell with Multiverse of Madness that he wasn't he left because of creative differences. So there was a story he wanted to tell as a creative that he didn't get, and nobody gave a fuck. Um, like, nobody gave a shit yeah. as soon as he got replaced by Sam Raimi. Like, nobody cared that he had a story he wanted to tell. Who cares no, about his vision? Yeah, that, we want we want to go a different way and make a shit movie, sorry. <laughs> all that information can be found and confirmed, but nobody gives a shit. It's like, oh well, bye, no, Scott. Cares. Like, no one cares about you. Because... Uh, They'll even say nice things about it, but it's like, there's no fucking way he's happy with where you took it compared to what I assume was oh, his uh, uh, intentions. Because he obviously was going to make Mordo a significant component, and you fucking booped him out. You almost, you would have killed you him if they'd kept the scene in. Like... Scenes. You would have gotten rid of being able to use, I will butcher his name as I always do, Chuetel Edgy. No, I almost got it right. Chuetel Edgy for, I screwed it up. You you had him. You have him in a role that you could leverage him, and you nearly got rid of him. Why would you do that? And uh, yeah, just so in case in, in case anyone in chat doesn't know what we're talking about, there was gonna be a scene where Scarlet Witch revealed Mordo's head to Doctor Strange in Camotage, yeah. like above the uh, when they were talking up there as a sort of threat. And the the idea was gonna be that she killed him uh, when he tried to kill her for having power. He would have just been knocked out of the fucking franchise just like that when. <laughs> It's pretty clear that he's supposed to be like an incredibly important and meaningful personal enemy to Doctor Strange. It's uh, it's, it's amazing how much they just didn't give a shit. But yeah, um, I think it's well. That's Phase Four. It's amazing how much they didn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I find especially 
alarming. It's like Doctor Strange is probably the last uh, movie in the MCU that did the whole, like, here's a character, here are his traits, he goes through this conflict, and now he has to make a choice, and it, it involves having powers. And, uh, you know, he chooses the right God, thing in the end. might be right. It's like the, a lot of when we well, watched Homecoming, Homecoming would be the last... No, wait, no. I guess we exclude the Spider-Man films, right? Well, I was going to say I wouldn't count Homecoming because that's like a deve that's like a Doctor Strange 2 where he's, he's, he's already he's developing as oh, opposed to beginning. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, Doctor Strange... Yeah, I hesitate to say origin all... story, yeah. uh, but I just mean origin story... Introduction, this... maybe? Something like that, yeah. Like, like, it's origin just... movie... Though and the fact I think I know what you're that talking about. Made me start to think about how a lot of the um a lot of the recent films haven't really demanded that the characters make a meaningful choice. Like yeah. you think you think about the like Captain Marvels was about realizing how great she was. <laughs> yes, that um, was that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess Black Panthers was about T'Challa realizing how to be a king in his own way. I guess uh, so. Like the. the one of the big resolutions of conflict in that was the whole um, taking responsibility for the 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 lies that his father ran, but there was never any reason for those lies in the first place. The whole like I, getting rid of Killmonger thing. I would sure, but I guess I guess it would be that despite the flaws of the actual plot itself, it's a decision that he makes that I guess is meaningful to him. Well, maybe that's I the, guess what the I'm key factor like, that we haven't had one that like matters in some really way for a while. Sense. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose um. I don't know, yeah. It, it would be nice if we had more stories where, like, yeah, you do the Doctor... Well, you do the standard thing. Character has X traits. The story challenges those... Or character has X beliefs. Story challenges X beliefs. Character develops Y beliefs we'll or something. What like thing, they, yeah. they mold, they change. Yeah, or, or even, maybe he you know, X plus right, one but, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, Which is what I thought... Arc. I thought that's what <laughs> Multiverse of Madness was going to try and do because it did the whole you you doc, if you guys remember Doctor Strange in the first movie says uh, I took an oath in the Hippocratic oath and then he's like but I have just killed a man and it's like oh shit yeah I've never even thought about what does that mean to you as a person and the more we follow him the more he's clearly willing to fucking kill people so what happened what is what that changed? and yeah and then you have Spider Man where he's like in the grand calculus of the multiverse uh, you know these lives are fucking drop in the bucket compared to like everyone you're like oh okay so he's gone like full utilitarian I understand and, and I'm not against that logic especially in that situation is a complicated one then you have multiverse of madness where he repeats that line but he is killed during saying it and I remember despite already thinking that scene was shit because that's right at the beginning I was like oh Okay, so clearly the film's going to be trying to make a point about him having said the whole grand calculus thing. And if you remember, <laughs> Scarlet Witch then kind of says the same thing to him in the uh, spooky Kaled scene. She's like, one life compared to the whole multi... Her logic is the uh, it's dangerous for America to have that power, you know? So I should just kill her. <laughs> because like, Wanda's a fucking moron. But like, it, fine, we'll run with that. And then if you remember, Strange says to her, that's the kind of logic villains use. And it's like, oh, I see what you do in movie. You'll make you're, you. You've just had Doctor Strange criticize himself without realizing it. Um, oh, how very clever! I can't wait to see where this goes. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, all right. So we, I've got my foundation. That's near the beginning of the movie. How are we going to develop this? And then it's like pretty much nothing right up until nothing. the end, where he's like, uh, you know, he's like Wong is like, Strange, take her power. Like you got to kill her to save the multiverse. And he comes to his choice. He's like, oh, and he goes, No, I'll just tell her to believe in herself. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? No, that is no. Fair, that is a good plan. And yeah, and it works. And we never address the whole uh, grand calculus thing. That, and, and I was just like, was was there a plan to do it, and they dropped it, or or was it just written I by Michael? I can believe Walden? that they. I think that he thought that he did that as well as other themes because of how well written that script is. Like, look at all these multiple themes I wrap up. I practically feel tricked watching it, because I was just like, you're clearly about to tell me why it is that sacrificing one person for everyone else is a bad decision. Or at least has a, a counter-argument. Give me something. But no, they just go, nah, I don't mm -hmm. like it. Well, because the counter-argument that you could present is like, but what, is this, what does this say about you? What does this do to you? You know, all of these individual compromises, what do they amount to in the end? Um, There's so many things you can say about it. Like... That might be a bit too interesting. <sighs> but yeah, they never did anything with it. And so I don't even know what Doctor Strange's position is now. Has he decided the Grand Calculus thing is bullshit now, or is he still following it? I don't know. Because if you remember, I... this is something we pointed out in our discussion on it, he was more than willing for the other universe Wanda to be killed 
to save the multiverse, just not America. <laughs> like when true, she gets yeah. booped across the room, America's like, oh, I'll go save her. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't okay. do that. I can see how this pans out. And this is the thing. Oh, it's written by such a fucking baby. Because it's like, if you're going to argue to me that it's not worth saving the multiverse to kill one person, does that count for Wanda as well? So when you, like, kick her ass, it's like, so... So it's okay to say to kill Wanda to save the universe, then, right? And I know you may think like, well, that's that's different because she's evil. I'm like, well, you, are you going to talk about that? That's Is it about the intention, about, yeah. the motivation of of why you're in the position you're in and what what it means? Like, oh, there's so much for you to cover, but you just go like, mm. they just Ooh, win. Evil. <laughs> Die. Don't worry about it. So, uh, yeah, you don't like multiverse of madness, do you? I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> and you might even say I'm like an expert on it at this point. I'm not sure how that uh -oh. happened. It was the only Marvel movie that made me mad in the theater. <laughs> it's interesting you say that. Uh, I, yeah. Jay said that I the only film that made him one. mad was uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. That like legit infuriated <laughs> Jay. So really? It seems like everyone's picking <laughs> different points in what Phase Four to get angry. What was that? <laughs> mad John, out of curiosity. Uh the be right off the bat, it felt kind of lazy. Because, like, this girl comes out of nowhere and just says, like, oh, yeah, I have these powers. I can jump to wherever I need to, if, like, immediately. And none of it's explained. And uh, I thought Scarlet Witch's character was kind of butchered. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, you could say that. Yeah. And then the ending was stupid with the zombie <laughs> Doctor Strange. Oh, right, that's cool. And that it's cool. You're not allowed to think that was kind of weird. I, I just, I just like, like the ending was stupid. It's like, yeah, the ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't even get like a Sam Raimi vibe from it, which is one of the reasons I was curious about it. Like, I guess, like some shots, find like some Dutch angles, whatever the fuck. Um, but like, a... but just... by the time they were had that musical note fight in the castle or whatever, <laughs> I'm just like, what, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> So clever then, though, <laughs> dude. When I saw people like being like, "Oh, the fucking musical fight was so cool," I was like, "You're not gonna say that in a day from now." <laughs> <laughs> You'll forget it ever happened. Musical fight, like a fight with notes on a page that you pull off. Do magic yeah. systems recognize like the way that humans have developed like music as a concept? Yeah. I like right. reading. And a, a lot of the performances felt wooden, even um, Benedict's, but I don't really, because I know he's good. I th blame it on yeah. the material, you know? And and he's, 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 and I would go as far as saying that there were a couple of moments in the film where I, I thought he did some good acting. He was there. good, yeah. He's Here honestly, and there, I suppose, yeah. There were, there were, uh, there's flourishes on, like, the particular deliveries that made me think, like, oh, Because like, if, if only, if maybe you were bad as well, I would just be like, yeah, whatever, this is all shit. But it's like, oh, no. Because Benedict Cumberbatch is a really, really, really good actor. He, um, he goes all out on most of his roles, no matter how cringe. Mm -hmm. That's the sign of a good actor, folks. When they're like, you know what? This, is, could, this could be terrible. That's okay. Because I, I didn't pay to do a job. I didn't understand what was so special about that girl. Like, her portals are like blue stars. <laughs> Instead of all, like, the golden well, circles or whatever. if you remember, in the first film, they say that you can use rings to travel the multiverse. Right. But then they change their mind. <laughs> because her power is she can travel through the multiverse. It, legit. No one else can. There's and a, she's the only one who can do it. She's, this yeah. was linked on the Mauler subreddit, that's why I saw this. Uh, the, 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 there was a thread in the Marvel Studios subreddit of that reference being like, you know, the sling ring can travel all the way through the multiverse. Uh, sorcerers use it as an incredibly important tool, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, so why would that make her special at all? And the fucking top <laughs> comment was like, uh, watch Doctor Strange. When they say multiverse, they are referring to dimensions. In, uh, in Multiverse of Madness, the multiverse refers to... Uh, universes loki's refers to timelines like pay attention jeez you what yeah. you could not tell that <laughs> what with like... the same meaning <laughs> <laughs> it is so fucking baffling that you could just go like wait one plus one equals two right you go i said yeah. it equals three it's like you but over here you just you make said... up your own definitions like, and then everything is fine <laughs> um like <laughs> and crawl into that igloo and then close the door and just be like, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. alone. What the, how am I supposed to make sense of realms, worlds, dimensions, realities, timelines? And timelines and, uh, like, yeah. what, 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 what is all Jesus. of this? It's just like, also the gap junction. The space between space. The answer is, 
it's universes and they just forgot. That's the answer. They're yeah, all that's universe. absolutely the answer. They wish they didn't have a line that said sling rings could go through the multiverse. They fucking wish they, they didn't have it, but, but it's there. Because mm-hmm. they've established rules that are really, like, terrible, I think. They're very restrictive. Yeah. Like, only one person could travel the multiverse, and the only other way is using a magic evil book that doesn't exist anymore. Why would you limit yourself like that? Why wouldn't you make yeah. it way they can just invent things on the spot, so it's not really they, even limiting they, themselves. They, but but like if you wanted to stick to your rules, traveling the multiverse now entirely hinges on one character rather than other people being able to do it in their own different ways. Uh, I don't even know what it would mean. Um, you know like when... how important America Chavez is, isn't she just the greatest? She's super the greatest. And she's gonna have even more powers by the time we see her next. She might even be Sorcerer right. Supreme. Um you know oh, if she no. opens a portal to let's say that other Wanda universe, right? And then Doctor Strange is there. Can he make a portal? Do you remember the the, the portals yeah, rules right. as they were first stated was you have to picture the 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 thing you're looking at. I think mm-hmm. I think it was No Way Home that added you can do it via thinking of a person individually. Um, but I'm not sure if that's true. Can, there's a couple of things I'd have to check in the other movies to see if that was kind of. It doesn't matter. My point is that if you opened up that star portal, does it then mean that he could picture that and thus open the portal, or would he be like, oh no, can't do it. It's a different universe. Not working. Um, question. I don't right. know what their logic would be for that exactly. And then if he stood in that universe, can he just not use the sling ring at all? Because it's from a different. You know what I mean? Like, is the li- is the sling ring attached to the universe it was created in? And I don't. I know for a fact. If I said this to fucking Michael Waldron, he would just his he would glaze over. He'd just be like, I don't know. <laughs> you got paid money, lots. Of money you got paid money this. for this, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> can you please make sense of it to me? gets used in Infinity War, and that was pretty important. Doctor Strange was a pretty mid-film, but it had the Time Stone in it, established its rules, and implemented a character that would serve a major role in future movies. Wouldn't that be the value of the film, not the fucking Time Stone? Be like, so this, this say, guy. The, the first one I don't care about as much. The second one I care about immensely. Yeah. This guy, we know his full history, we know what he values, we know what he went through, and now when we see him and Tony on the same fucking screen, we're like, oh shit, what would they say to each other? These two characters mm-hmm. that are so fucking ego-driven, that believe they are the individual protector and leader of Earth, what would they do when they have to make decisions? And I think Infinity War paid that off really well. Yep. Yeah. Especially in the fucking two minutes it had to do it. But this multiverse free line seems very ill-defined and doesn't really seem to be building to anything other than to maybe bring in the X-Men or completely reboot the franchise. Oh yeah, remember that? Remember Ralph, Ralph Boda? Boda? <laughs> Fuck, they make so many bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Same goes for all the other things going on. The Marvels and Secret Invasion are apparently going to be showing off the development of a Skrull invasion in the Marvel Universe, and I can't see how that will have anything to do with anything. Why? I mean, I don't think it'll have anything to do with anything because it's it's really badly written, but but the idea of Skrulls being in and throughout all of Earth, it's like, yeah, that could have everything to do with everything. Yeah. Yeah. Just because even if we had a through line, it doesn't mean other things stop happening. Yeah, like a lot of the ideas are not bad conceptually. Yeah, I really um, think um, a lot of them are bad in execution. This guy's whole issue is that Phase Four is badly written, and he's uh, he's tried to pin it on this particular idea, but I just don't think it works. The whole like Phase Four is without a plan; it's building towards something that nobody really even sees the components for, and that's the problem. It's like that's not really the problem. Nobody would give a fuck if they were really good. Exactly. That's that's what a lot of this is. No one would care if it was all really good. There'd be no superhero fatigue if it was all good content. Garen's exactly. fucking to you. Yeah. People would be talking about how much of an incredibly good idea it was to go from Phase 3, this glorious, over-the-top super spectacle, to Phase 4, a calm exploration of individual stories dealing yeah. with individual problems. And then we're going to build back up again. That was a genius move by the MCU. But instead, we're in the world where they badly wrote everything. So now we're saying, like, you know what the problem is? They didn't build up to something. They're not unified. Yeah. No, that's the problem. It's like, oh. Or really have any place in this universe other than being an excuse to have all these characters cross over again. Which I'm completely over at this point. I'm not completely over if it's well written. <laughs> I mean, just give yeah. me more of the crossovers if you do it well. Fuck it. Cinematic universes have now become something that's almost expected in the modern oh, franchise the landscape. Tunes. You got the MCU, the SSU, oh, the Sony off, no. Spider-Man universe, which is sort <laughs> so of in the MCU, but not really. It's got Venom, Vulture, and Dr. Michael Morbius in it. DC has the DCEU, which is their main continuity. It's kind of a clusterfuck. That- 
I, I like I like talking about the DC's fucking continuity. It's funny. At least Marvel pretends that it's in the same. It just doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes. I had no plan, but there's some good stuff in there. There's also the Matt Reeves Batman universe, which will have tie-in spin-off TV shows to accompany each movie. Star Wars will is it? trying its hand at a big connected TV universe, which is where. Um, Star Wars was always like one continuity. I'm yeah, it's all one continuity. <laughs> Hence why I was like, "Hang on, <laughs> like, is it Star Wars has had has had novels and video games like in its universe." Was Star Wars ever time. not a huge interconnected Star Wars thing? Is a big series, like yeah. it, to say that, that's just what Star Wars was. Like it's just always been a big thing. Oh, I guess yeah. it's always. I guess something has changed now, and that they're trying to emulate the release structure and. And I guess like the the format of the MCU, but it's always been yeah. Yeah, maybe it's it means not, the know. thing that they that they try to get like like Mando oh, yeah, and like and stuff together. Show, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I assume he's referencing that. Over, but so. the thing is, he mentioned like a bunch of other franchises trying to go the way of the universe, and it's like Star Wars was a universe Star before Wars it was even you know it yeah, always yeah, was yeah. yeah. You know, before like Disney <laughs> yeeted all of the extended stuff, and then like, I feel decided like... they wanted. Again. Yeah, the Star Wars. If you said to Star Wars, like, "Oh, look at you trying to copy Marvel," I, I, they'd be like, "Well, maybe in releasing TV shows, we're not copying them by having a universe. The fuck, we're the mm. old man universe. We've been here for ages. <laughs> they copied us." <laughs> well, then again, I guess Star Wars would have copied the comic universe. You know, it keeps going back. Review of yeah. its own video in and it of itself. It's exhausting at this point. I don't know about all of I you, agree. but for me, I'm getting a little tired of the constant cameos and references that are being expected to sell tickets to go see these I movies. I wouldn't if they were good. Again? Yeah, yeah you gotta keep pushing that. It's the, the... it's the quality argument that seems to be sort of missing from his video. The qua It's quality is such a huge part of all It'd of it. It'd be this. like if you're, yeah. um, you're eating really bad... Uh, fries and then burgers and then uh, I don't know fucking sausages whatever all these different foods at McDonald's and then you go man I'm just I think I'm just tired of McDonald's it's like well you, they keep giving you really shitty those is, is more so the <laughs> yeah. problem like if you had a really good sausage a really good burger really good fries you wouldn't be tired of awesome. McDonald's as a whole um, yeah. And we talked about it before, you know, different quality from different McDonald's and stuff. Like that. I just think that they've been giving you lots of shit recently, and so you're just like, what are the core components of this shit that go beyond writing quality? It's like, you don't need to go beyond writing quality. That's all it is. That's the big problem. Yeah. Everything else will build up from it. Because again, like, isn't it kind of funny that No Way Home is basically the most praised of Phase 4 when a lot of people knee-jerk want to call it, like, that's a key jangly one? It obviously is. It has Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man in it, and it's like, yeah. Yeah. It, it does have that. I guess it's just good or something. It must or it has be good things in it. Yeah, it must be that they executed that well. Because um, pretty well handled, yeah. Being like, oh, do you know who's gonna show up in Secret Wars? You're like who? And you're like, fucking Tom Cruise, Iron Man. Okay. And, and, and you're like, if it were like a really, really good and well executed thing, that would be pretty fucking cool. I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Give I me good I, stuff. Uh, I like it. Nom, nom, nom. I don't understand. I don't think this guy or anyone else would see that and be like, "Oh, for fuck's sake, Tom Cruise, fuck!" It didn't have some plan or it didn't have some vision or some director thing. I I don't I don't believe. It. I think it's much more about expecting it to be shitty, which we shouldn't. We should be like, "No, it couldn't be good." We which I wish we didn't have to expect it to be, but yeah. Just Let's be real, the vast majority didn't go to watch the Multiverse of Madness because they loved the character of Dr. Stephen Strange. Wow. Okay, stop. Wow. Uh, you just said, but you just said in your qualification for why Doctor Strange was good, was that it established that he's a neat character. Also, that is why I went actually. Actually, you're right, yeah. He yeah. Said that, at first <laughs> he said Doctor Strange was mid, and then he said, but at least it established the Time Stone, established which the time then stone moves into, you know, having Doctor Strange and the Time Stone as part of Infinity War. It's like, so why would you mention him if he wasn't a neat character? I like... I really did like Doctor Strange a lot. I did. <laughs> like, he was yeah. really cool. What I liked about Doctor uh, yeah. Strange the most was him, Doctor Strange, in, the titular Doctor Strange. He had the yeah. um. He's an arrogant piece of shit asshole, but he was often correct and really smart and really talented. And so it's like this is a fucking interesting dynamic. Let's uh let's test that against like you know him entering this whole world he knows nothing about, and then and then you know he's like terrified of the all the shit he doesn't understand about sorcery, and then gradually starts getting into it, and then starts excelling to the point of impressing and worrying everyone else. Our villain is a character who got overzealous and overpowered and, like, ran off with it, sort of thing. He's like, you could argue, a shadow self of uh, Doctor Strange. 
to a degree. Mm -hmm. His best friend is someone who eventually turns to like a third party, or like becomes a third party by the end of it. His mentor ends up dying in the film after explaining to him like how much he just doesn't fucking understand about any of this. Um, I don't know, there's so much going on for him. And then Infinity War begins the downfall, where he starts making some strange... De like, it's the it's the last decision he makes in that movie that you're like, hmm. Yeah, up until that point, his interactions with Tony is really great. It's like a good clashing of egos. Well, and his fight with Thanos was fucking him. great as well. Uh, yeah. It was cool. It's a shame he forgot about all those abilities when he was fighting <laughs> Wanda. <laughs> I How thought exactly the same thing when I first watched this video. I'm just, I went to see Doctor Strange. I've always liked this character, even before Benedict was playing him. Like, I liked him in the cartoons and some of the comics that I read. And uh, cool it's, he's just like, I guess this guy doesn't like Doctor Strange. But, you know, speak for yourself, because... Part like of the craziest him. thing about it is if you, when I went to see Multiverse of Madness, after everything I knew, I didn't even do some of the leaks. It'd be like, so you going to see Professor X and Reed Richards and fucking Captain Carter? I'd be like... Yeah. No, not really. I'm also, I'm hoping I'll be able to see not only some decent acting from Benedict Cumberbatch, but maybe something that explores his character. That'd be nice. Something. Admittedly, I was curious about those elements, but that wasn't oh, sure. the reason I, I Dude, I, I was went, curious about yeah. how the whole thing was going to come together, because I'd heard it was going to be a disaster. And then it was a disaster, but... Uh, it was a disaster, yeah. You know, um... Uh, I, I've, he's been ruined several times over in several movies, and that just stands to reason that his uh, his draw as a character is quite powerful. That I can keep being like sad that he gets ruined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this uh, shot that you're paused on here reminds me of one of the other reasons I didn't like this movie it was because I thought the the multiverses that we see were just surface level augmented. Like there, I, I don't think were, they were very. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they were very imaginative. It's just like, here's a universe where everything's covered in foliage and wearing everybody's wearing fedoras. And it's like, well, yeah, but that is very well, cool, why? though. Well, so the, the, <laughs> cool, the cool thing to do with, with multiverses is just, it's so funny. You've got a show that none of us really watched that is like, what, you know, what if this happened? It's like, that's all you need to do to come up with interesting premises. Like, mm -hmm. an easy one that we've talked about. What if the Chitauri defeated the Avengers in 2012? What if Loki won and like Earth falls under his domain and then they enter into a universe where they have to account for that? Yep. Or like, yeah. what if, um, what if, I mean, I, I guess we're doing the really boring ones. Like, what if, I don't, well, eh, a little bit boring, I guess, not imagine. What if Ultron won and like took over this particular planet and then like put them in places where it's not just this is a slightly more utopian Earth and this yeah. is an Earth where everything is floating around. Like also, so red means green, Lamau. Yeah. Like, it's oh, all that's just, wow. It's that's like the laziest right. changes to like the world. And it's, you know, oh, all of the cool like, universe we saw in the montage, all of the yeah. interesting places that we could have explored were in the montage. Like, what if they went to a universe where everything was paint and they had to try and actually navigate a world where everything was paint? What if they ended up in a dinosaur planet where they yeah, had yeah. to invade Tyrannosaurus Rex and like, brontosaurus and all of these these creatures what if they ended up in a universe that evolved it, yeah i mean yeah, the, like, the laziness of it is hilarious almost on like a rick and morty level like where like, i just uh, remember like that rick and morty is like rick... a universe where people are couches and they exactly order the, mm -hmm. the gag with the pizzas and the couches yeah. ordering people like you know <laughs> like that was a great way of like embodying this idea of like the lack of intelligent design and all these different um, multiverses. It's, it's just like you multiverse. have a universe where everyone's doing this fucking stupid thing for no reason, and then you have a oh, universe okay. where everyone's doing this it thing is, for no reason. It is hilarious that a writer who worked on Rick and Morty produced such a thoroughly boring multiverse story <laughs> when Rick and Morty is like super entertaining as a multiverse story for all of these crazy dimensions they go to. Yeah, yeah. I and, it's, it's and then the icing on this shit cake. Sorry, one last thing. With this uh, particular universe that he's, that he's in, this fucking memory lane store that he walks <laughs> past. Right? Oh, God. Where he just, he, like, the store is called Memory Lane, which on its own is just so fucking lazy. Like, the, it's the laziest device I've ever seen for, to they have the same incorporate a in flashback. They have the same as we do, so it makes yeah. sense. And they use it twice they, in a row. Yeah, <laughs> he he walks onto a pad outside the store and he triggers like a memory to manifest. And it's like, how does this store work? Is he being charged to his fucking like Amazon account or yeah. something wirelessly? Like, how oh, do it's they just like a taste? 
It's on the streets of taste, <laughs> but if you buy the real, if you buy your Memory Plus subscription, it'll be yeah. even better. Right. Just the fact that Fucking if they walked down a different street, we wouldn't have received two plot critical flashbacks that explain mm -hmm. one of the central arcs that Doctor Strange is going through and America's or origin story. Like, <laughs> it's so cringe, dude. I fucking hate it so line. much. It's yeah. so, so bad. This was a reshoot. I I wouldn't be surprised if this was a reshoot. This whole scene like feels like they're not where they're supposed to be. I don't know. Got to get plot stuff done, but you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to turn it's down whoever cool. whoever that other prospective director was, that they turned him away it's in order to do too. their own thing. Like, the, in, the, the, the idea that they turned him away to do this instead. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's oh, called man. Multiverse of Madness. You think, like, you want to invest a lot of imagination in the universes that he's traveling to, but they're just the laziest something shit. Here's, here's the thing, though, John. Something that people will say when you talk about wanting more breadth to the multiverses, oh yeah, you just want to see like cameos and stuff. But the reality um, is that you can substantively explore the multiverse and it really has nothing to do with cameos. Like yeah. I don't need to see, we could go to that Loki universe where the Chitauri won and we don't even need to see Loki. We could just see the Chitauri and have, and have that be a thing that they have to account for. But the reason why it's interesting to have them account for it is what does Doctor Strange do in very unfamiliar territory when yeah, he doesn't right. know who the key players are what forces you know he has to account for what does it look like when dr strange is thrown completely out of his comfort zone we don't get to see that very well no when the universe we didn't see a multiverse of madness yeah it's weird no, they called we it that <laughs> yeah well yeah. it's because they probably were going to do something more compelling when it was originally that but then they changed their mind and they were like, yeah, but the title sounds kind of cool, so we're going we're gonna <laughs> to keep it. And they're right. It did sound kind of cool in terms of just, oh, that's kind of campy and weird. Let's see what they go with that. And, and, and they were like, like oh, it's a horror, horror movie. movie. Ooh. Yeah, the oh, yeah, hype in the trailer, I thought were, yeah. that was all well done. And then the movie came out. And then it came out. Um, hey, what I, are we going to do in this multiverse? Oh, no worries. This is like our own universe. I know exactly where we need to go. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, like, wouldn't it be cool if you went to a universe where there was no Sanctum Sanctorum? He's like, yeah, yeah go there. Oh, shit. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, this uh -oh. is just a fucking pizza store here. What is happening? What's going on? In, uh, in preparation for this podcast, I watched a couple episodes of What If? And oh. that does a much better job, I think, of, like, this idea of, like, exploring these other universes where people made different choices and a whole different world kind of manifested... Oh. from that like it's not just surface level like everyone's wearing a stupid fucking hat all of a sudden you know agree with like, you that... what if there were zombies what if there what what if peggy carter was you know super instead like at least the, if there's the... a lot more imagination in yeah the changes things. are much more substantive i just i wish the writing was better in that as well because yeah, i was yeah, about I mean, to uh, say that uh, i agree with that yes yeah i was about to say like oh well it's in the premise they, they, they focused on that i was like well so is this so no yeah, fuck it, whatever <laughs> it's like this, this is just shit yeah I think right. I think um what what I actually when I looked through the list of the premises that they came up with for what if I uh I think they could have done better. I think they could have asked more. I think I think the Peggy one's fine. I think that one's okay. Um but like what if what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? It's like what is that? Like what why, why can't we why can't we do something a little bit more interesting than that? <laughs> Like, I did. If, I did if, find the writing for it was lacking, but it bothered me less than the other stuff because it was just trying to be like a fun kids cartoon, and I was just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, kids will probably get a kick out of this. I don't think a lot of adults are watching this show anyway. You know, like I mean, I, I'm not saying like kids shows can't have good writing, but I just no, I wasn't. I, I think, um, it's. I find it really funny though that because I'm pretty sure what if which. Oh, the have the Emmy the Emmys haven't happened yet, but like because Arcane was nominated for like best uh like outstanding animated program, but so was What If. Oh, mm -hmm. I swear uh, to really God, there is an obvious winner there. Okay, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's be reasonable. Can we take it? Look at the lit. Hold on, I just we we can continue. I'll 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 find it. Angel wanted to see Sam Raimi's return to the superhero genre. They went to see it because they thought they'd get to see Dr. Michael Morbius, Professor Charles Xavier, and Blackie Gar Boltigan. Hit a guy, hit a there. I don't even know how many people knew that was happening in the general audience. I don't think, yeah. 
I bet that was a huge second of all, I just, fucking, that's not even relevant. If you said to my, like, any of my fucking extended family, oh, are you excited to see Blackagar bolt again? They would look at me like I'm speaking a different fucking language. What do you mean? Like, no, does no, nobody like knows what this shit speaking is. Welsh, what do you mean? <laughs> I would ask you what the fuck you're talking about, I don't know. Yeah, Welcome see, to the little village I would have asked me. I would have asked me what I'm talking about until I saw this, and I was like, what's, what's Black Agar Bolt? It's like, Black Bolt? It's like, what's that? Inhuman, what's that? It's from the show Inhumans, they, they popped up, same actor. What's that? I never even knew that was a thing. I yeah. missed it. Yeah, like oh, yeah. Inhumans. Was, was that a Marvel thing, Inhumans? I, Inhumans I almost I forgot about thing. that. They made a, uh, well, so the, the story of Inhumans is interesting because, from what I understand, because they didn't have access to X-Men for films... Uh, the comics really pushed the Inhumans as like a replacement for the mutants for a uh, while, but then they got the rights back for the film, so then they just gave up. <laughs> now is that now, is that before they acquired 20th Century Fox? Yeah, is that, is that yeah, what got in the so, way? Yeah, because of course the comics have always had X Men, but I think the comics at this point kind of follow the films in terms of um. In terms of, you know, like, I think Fantastic Four were, like, relegated to the sidelines for a while. And then when they got the film rights back, it's like, all of a sudden, Fantastic Four gets to show up again. Mm. Oh, That's right, yeah. Lame. That would be so lame if you're, like, reading comics and your favorite character gets pushed away because of fucking contracts. And, like, yeah. rights and licensing. So well, that lame. really annoyed me with Spider-Man back in the day when Sony still had the film rights. I'm just like, fuck, man. I really well, want to see what Marvel does with this. Rights. Sony does have the film rights. Well, they, uh, you're you're right, yeah, but they've reached some kind of uh, yeah. like partnership. Well, deal. I, the funny thing is though, like people look at the upcoming, they're like, "Oh man, these Sony Marvel movies so shit." It's like, yes, because the MCU is is like the high watermark or, or the high set a high bar for quality right now. That's the thing, yeah. man. I mean, like yeah. Sony, Marvel, DC is like nobody's on top in terms of no, no. like, oh yeah, yeah they're Marvel's the ones on with the. What flavor of crap do you want? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, in, in terms of a box office you can pick one, but I guess if you were just like if you were to from the stew be like you get to have one new one, which one would be the best out of Marvel, DC and Sony giving you one? Which one would you gun for? Which one would I gun for as yeah. the, like right now, do you mean or in general? Yeah, no, right now, like with with how the studios are working, but it's a mystery project. You're going to get one from each of them, which would do you think is going to be the best? Uh, I think I'd go with Marvel, Marvel. DC. I think I'd Ooh. go with DC. DC. I think I, would go I, think I might DC. take a chance on Sony. I might be like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really? know. Cause, well, because you get some stuff with Sony here and there, like, Whoa, like Spider Verse. Right? Yeah. Everybody forgets that oh, Into the Spider Verse yeah. is Sony. Oh, it doesn't mm. exist without Sony. And think about how Into the Spider Verse has now pushed a lot of uh, animation studios to be more experimental with uh, 3D animation styles. Like, look at what DreamWorks is doing now. That doesn't exist without Into the Spider Verse, I don't think. Is Maybe Sony not yeah. Spider Man right now. Or Sony own owns they... Spider Man. Um, they own Spider Man and all of the associated characters, which is a lot of characters. Yeah, it's all the villains, all of the uh, like anti-hero yeah. spin-off characters, because they're making a Madam Web film. <laughs> also, yeah, I probably would go with DC. Thinking about it, actually, because you got Joker and the Batman were pretty, you know. <laughs> What I do like about what DC is doing right now is that their production workflow is less centralized than Marvel's is, where they don't like storyboard everything meticulously. That's not, they, they just... That's not lasting now. They're going to change that. No, so. since they've come up with this 10 year plan, I suppose that's going to the wayside now. But, but here's the thing the problem is, like, I wish I could be like, yeah, it's been fun, this scattershot approach, but I don't like it. I don't like that. Um maybe i'd like it more if all the films were great but they're not yeah. and so like what we have is this universe that's lurching forth where it's like yeah i because i really like the batman i also like the idea of batman in like a more wacky comic book world where we get to see like mr freeze or poison ivy or um or like killer croc well, not not the one that we saw in the suicide in suicide squad but like you know, more of the, um, it would be cool to see Batman interacting in a world that you see more often in, like, animation and in the comics than we've seen in the films. It would be yeah. cool to have Superman films with, like, a really, you know, like, the good guy Superman, like, the altruistic. Yeah, you know, that one is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, we, yeah, but, but the problem is that because it's been lurching forth with this, like, weird half and half committal to like we want to do new things but also we exist in the same universe as films that we don't like to talk about anymore it's right. um 
Uh, did you forget Batman and Robin? No, I could never forget Batman and Robin. What I'm saying, <laughs> who is, could forget that movie? The miracle of yeah, it. I'm, I'm saying it would awesome. be more cool to have that again in a in a broader universe where he can like you know it's it's something that we don't get to talk about a lot. But like Batman and and Superman, you know, Bruce and Clark are meant to be best friends. We we've, mm. we've never got to yeah. see that. We've right. never seen that. Um, we it's it's um it's lame. It'd be cool if we got to see that. And then you have more live action films anyway. Yeah, I think because the sentiment is like, oh, you get, you get your Aquaman, Birds of Prey, fucking this, that, the Snyder one. It's like, isn't it nice that it's kind of more of a flurry and we don't actually have to have it all be connected up? And it's like, would you really be complaining if all of these things were good and connected up? Exactly. I don't think, I don't think you yeah. would be. Look I think you would be like... Look at how disconnected that is and how confusing it was to everybody. Yeah. Everybody's like, wait, she can fly. What? She can't fly. Like, you oh, can't dude, have when... Um... That fuck it. I can't remember if we covered it on EFAB. I think we did, but just so pointing out Wonder Woman is fucking annihilating people in the Snyder Cut when she's established in 84 to be like, she would never hit someone. That is not how she solves problems. And it's like, so those two things are incongruent. And then fucking people on Twitter were like, <laughs> uh, no, they're not. That's two different directors, two different ideas. Oh, fuck off. It's like, but. Yeah, that's what we. That's what. From, you just the, stated my, my thing again. They're from the problem. same continuity. It's like, they're not the same continuity. They're different movies. It's like. Oh, oh, I got that argument recently. Um, the uh, like I'm uh, responding to the he was I was because we were, we were talking about the how lightsabers, um, in the Kenobi show seem really really anemic and weak. Baseball and batish. Kenobi has to hit yeah he has to hit stormtroopers like they're baseball bats and it bounces off. And we talked about how it used to slice up droids and chop off limbs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and they were serious business. And the response from him was well. That's just directors in their own. You, that's just directors in their vision, and uh, you, know, you can't fault you know them for having their own little. Well, each director having and their fault own them take for on doing. Lightsabers. If you're gonna make that argument, job. could I not make the argument scene by scene? I'd be like, this was the direction and vision in this scene, and now this scene, they have a different direction and vision. Therefore, yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. In this cut, in this cut, <laughs> yeah. this one shot, they had one direction, and in this shot, they had another one. When this was shot, he wasn't even there, so it was probably the intern's vision. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There are trait. You get benefits and trade-offs from doing sequels, and you don't get to pick and choose them. No, yeah, you, you have to commit. Is, yeah. You can leverage the story that existed before to enhance your own. The detriment is you have to be consistent and in, uh, with, with the story that came before. You can't just the, do whatever you want. It's the fuck-up they always make. They're like, we want Kenobi because he's really cool. And you're like, alright, here he is. And here's all the stuff that comes with him. And you go, no, nah, I don't want that stuff. No, I don't want that one. I just want a character. It's like, uh, uh, I just like, oh, you name. have to take that he's courageous with you. And you're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! I'm no, fine. No, he isn't. He's a little, he's a little pussy. I little watched the, puss the movie. Puss. Little pee pee holes. I hadn't heard about that director's vision thing in regard to the lightsabers, and that's pretty bullshit. I mean, because they're just gonna <laughs> if they're gonna bounce off anything, why don't they just make them like swords? Well, how like, the fuck they're... are they cutting through droids but bouncing off stormtroopers? How's exactly, that happening? Exactly, that's part of my argument. Is yeah. if if they're slicing effortlessly through metal robots then man they're they, you bet your ass they're going through a person even easier oh no, yeah, but we yeah. Can't have limbs disassembling that would be that we would can't be do that even though we want to present our story as mature and like a slow character study but we can't have people getting chopped up that would if be they, that would be even if they went with the sli one slice and it makes a big old mark down them and they fall down, mm. I'll take it. That's something. I'll take be, it, yeah. A one hit. It's like in Return of the Jedi. Luke's going around and hitting people, but there ain't no limbs flying off or anything. But he hits them once and they're done. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. Get to see Doctor Michael Morbius. Oh yeah, I want to roll him back a little bit further because I think he said something else that triggered me. Go see these movies. Oh, no. Let's be real, the vast majority didn't go to watch The Multiverse of Madness because they loved the character of Doctor Stephen Strange or wanted to see Sam Raimi's return to the superhero genre. They went to see it a lot of they... people. It's a... a lot of people were saying the Sam Raimi thing. So, that was, a, that was marketing, man. It would. They it said was, from they direct were... right the trailers. They don't. They totally do that did. Yeah. Movie. So. All of the people are going to see this, and you go, what are the total reasons, like, most commonly, this is like a game show, what are the most commonly, you know, voted upon reasons to go see it? Like, for the character of Doctor Strange, that's gonna be a lot of people. Because this is in the MCU, that's probably the biggest reason, is there's a good chance. Um, for these cameos, that I swear to fuck, most normal people didn't even know this was happening. 
-hmm. Most people, even if they did, like if they knew that there would be these cameos, they wouldn't appreciate. They'd just be like, you know what I mean? Like, what would they say? Oh, Black Bolt, I know so much about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then um, what else we got? It's like, uh, uh, I guess progressing the overall story. It's like. No, I don't even know if anybody's there for that. <laughs> like, I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe. Hey. Um, yeah, I just, I don't believe at all that it's like, nah, they're in it for the cameos. Like, hang on. That, that'll be how they try to sell the next thing. And that's a lot of people on, like, Twitter. But you're, like, mainstay movie audience. I think they're still going off the fact that this is the MCU. Yeah, that's lovely. But hey, that might die. Gradually, if you're not careful. I thought they'd get to see Dr. Michael Morbius, Professor Charles Xavier. And it would have been cool to see Morbius, I don't disagree with that. Blackie Gar Boltigan. He did that more than time. Apart from the cameos and the admittedly. I choose to interpret that edit as that he thought that was shit uh, too. Yeah, which that's the correct opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a seething hatred for the line, hit a guy, hit a there, whatever the fuck that is. It's, it's weird how mean they are to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Amazing and visual flair from Sam Raimi, what you're left with in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is a pretty dull and forgettable story and experience. The action. I don't even. I don't. Why does this always happen? Where, like, you get this dull. insane nonsense crap film and someone goes, oh, it's so dull. It's like, I don't know that it was it dull. Like, <laughs> that movie was not dull. I was never bored watching it's Multiverse bullshit. of Madness. It's I was fucking frustrated. I would say it's breakneck with the fucking pacing. This film yeah. is insane. Like, it's a hit a minute. We go from, she's in, she gives them, he, she first establishes the offer of, I will get, you will give America to me in like 24 hours or whatever, or I will, they, there will be consequences. Okay. Fast forward like seven minutes and we're traveling through the multiverse because the whole battle is like already done. There were like eight, eight action scenes in that film, I'm pretty sure. There's yeah. The well, one, and there's the Gargantos one, and then there's the uh, Kamataj, and that's act one. That's the first yeah. 30 minutes. Of it's insane. Reaction. Feels fucking wild, dude. I, I would like, actually say that oh. I I found that film dull, and by the time I was in the third act, I was just like waiting for it to end. And but it wasn't for a lack of action; it's because I wasn't invested in anything. I was invested in the characters or the situations. It was just, oh, well, you're I don't, right. Like, it's, it's, it's thing, I don't think it's I don't think it's invalid to describe anything, especially because it's your own experience as dull. It's just that if the reasoning is going to be that I wasn't invested, then at that point, it's just like, oh well, then. Yeah, I mean, it's not because it was dull; it's because you weren't invested. I mean, it was yeah. Because how I would try and categorize dull to be a meaningful description well, it, of anything is usually to describe that it's very mundane. Nothing's happening at all that's of any interest or difference. Yeah, I had a dull experience, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But to, this, yeah, I think that's the difference. Saying that you, f it felt very dull to you, is kind of different than saying it is dull. Because it really does yeah. imply that there's not much going on in this film, and I'd be like, this is one of the most insane fucking MCU movies that there are. Right, yeah. The action isn't particularly rooted in anything meaningful. The protagonist is really bland, and his arc is mostly forgettable. I get, see, the, the, I, I have it's completely terrible. different issues. He has like five arcs yeah. at once, and they're all nonsense. It's not that yeah, there's yeah. like nothing going on. They, exactly. And I think there's work done to really pinpoint that they are trying to do some arc stuff, but there's just such disjointed and cut pieces all over the place that it just doesn't match like the whole are you happy thing he must have noticed all of the characters keep fucking asking are you happy it's like hmm i wonder why that is and at the end wog is just like yeah i am <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> all right then uh i'll complete it ding 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 exactly like this is what i mean i think they're crap but they are there like uh they're just mm -hmm. really really badly done yeah that's really awful Given the way the MCU is attempting to elevate some of its properties now, you can't help but reflect on Martin Scorsese. Oh no! Good old Marty. No. Remember when he made the film about the Wall Street guy who said fuck and beat his wife? Good times. A couple of years ago, the Marvel fanboy and film side of the internet lost their collective shit over Martin the Wolf's- Hey, don't forget to highlight that the other side lost their shit too. Everyone lost their shit. <laughs> Scorsese saying in an interview that Marvel movies are not cinema. And you're going to contextualize it to mean something completely different, aren't you? I'm sure it'll be really insightful. Here we go. Which is definitely a loaded statement to make, that I don't really care to it's debate when taken statement. at the surface. It's, it's just wrong. I don't know why people have trouble with this. <laughs> Saying something... Yeah, if if what you want to say is the films are shit, go for it. I would agree say with you. Shit. Saying they're not cinema, shit. it reminds me of when people say, like, fucking Ryan Johnson's not an artist. It's like, I'm sorry! 
He is. Yeah. He is. It is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I would, if you're putting images to film, you are making cinema, and that can be bad or good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How, however, again, however, if you really want to run with your own personal definition, and cinema means film that is good and meaningful, fine. But that's right, just not yeah. the word. That's, that's the fiction and literature thing, isn't it? Yeah, but it's just not at all how it's used colloquially, and I just don't know why you're doing this if not to piss everyone off. <laughs> like, why don't we just I, be a little bit more precise in what we're saying? It's shit. It's fine. I would prefer if Martin Scorsese said their shit, then it'd be like, yeah, totally agree, dude. <laughs> like, look at everybody. Would be like, what a Chad! But this one is just like, wait, what? What exactly? What, what do you mean? I suspect was what he's getting at is uh, like uh, integrity, consistency, and self-containment when it comes to like the production and release of these films. But he's using the wrong word to like encapsulate all that. Like, he shouldn't be using the word cinema. I don't think. Which is definitely a loaded statement to make, that I don't really care to debate when taken at its surface level. What Scorsese was actually trying to posit is that Marvel movies- Ah, uh, here's, here's what he's actually trying to say. They all do it. Up. That's fine. This is what he but that's will, not even though he what he fucking said, is it? It's, even though he multiple, he multiple times he clarified, and obviously his <laughs> clarification was arguably worse when we covered it. Yeah. This is what he really means. Scorsese's Remember just an old man, he doesn't know what he's saying. Remember the guy Let's we said who was like, oh, he was talking about when it gets to a point of being a franchise. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking- No, <laughs> that's not at all what he was- No. Fundamentally do not provide the same experience as your typical view of what a movie is. Using the metaphor of theme park rides, each film essentially functions as its own attraction providing brief bursts of dopamine. Essentially, when you go and see an Avengers film, you're not going for the sake of getting an emotional and cinematic experience. Oh, yeah. sure. Here, here we are yeah. again, everybody. Welcome back. Oh my god. There we go. We have arguments. completely changed everything. I, I hate it. Boo. I do. Oh. Like... Yeah. <sighs> I was I thinking about this the other day. I found it interesting that, you know, Martin Scorsese would describe the Marvel movies disparagingly as a theme park ride. But uh, I would say that's an accurate descriptor for The Wolf of Wall Street, which is uh, quite a shallow and bloated movie. But I don't dislike that movie. I think it's shallow and bloated by design because it's actually thematically relevant. Like, it's, it's part of the theme of that movie that he lives this really shallow and excessive lifestyle. And that kind of manifests itself in the way the movie's actually made. But uh, given that, I don't think he should be tossing that term around disparagingly to something like Marvel. It's like, well, you've kind of done the same thing. He, um, like, is would you, you say Wolf of Wall Street isn't cinema? Didn't you go as far as saying, like, just superhero movies in general? Or was it just Marvel? I can't uh, probably. Remember. Probably superhero movies in general. Well, because I was going to yeah. say, now with the Batman having come out, do you really think it's fair? Oh, Even I though mean, the Joker me. was already out. Well, well. Let's use a different example, like Richard Donner's Superman. I doubt he has that perspective on that film. I doubt he has this perspective on a lot of blockbuster films. Well, I like, doubt... He probably would feel the way about Jaws or Jurassic Park or E.T. Yeah, or, and I doubt um, the guy who made this Wars. video would agree that those should all no, qualify either. No which is why it's such a... It screams to me that same smug energy that Jay Bauman had when he was like, Todd Phillips is not a real filmmaker. Like, oh, oh fuck off. Wouldn't say that about, um, wouldn't say that about Nolan's, uh, Batman films. He probably wouldn't say it about, um, Raimi's Spider-Man films either. I presume no, yeah. not. Yeah. So at that point, it's like, so we're not really talking about super... What I think if we were doing best faith is almost that like these are projects where you don't think that the filmmakers are at the helm of the filmmaking and you think that there's a compromise there. Problem is, how do you account for Guardians where like a vision does shine through despite being a, um, you know, despite being a Marvel Cinematic Universe, big old budget production. And so, yeah, at the, the end of the day, it's, it's shit. And you don't, and, and maybe because we would agree on this as well, we don't like the process that is used to make these films, yeah. which mm -hmm. I don't. I really don't like the, we start with the project, then we find the people who are going to make it, and then Agreed. we make it, and we need to get it out at this quarterly. We need to get it out, you know, for the second quarter of the fiscal year, and we got to get it on the streaming service. Like, yeah, I don't like that shit either. But he didn't say that. He said that they weren't cinema. It's a very different thing. Yep. They are. They just suck. I don't like that uh, dismissive 
like disparaging characterization of Todd Phillips either, just because he made a few missteps with the Hangover series. I but think like, he Hangover had a one lot is of good. Hangover one's a good movie. Yeah, I I agree. It's great. <laughs> I think he I think he screwed up quite a bit with the second and third ones. But I think with Joker, mm-hmm. he finally found his footing. Like there was an alignment with what he wanted to do and what the studio wanted. And I think before that, there was like they were butting heads. You know, like he Mark wanted clearly to really make the distinction between the two. I've got to find the quote because this happened last time we talked about it, where people were telling us that the quote was different than what it was. Yeah. Hold on. I, second place in Mario Kart. Not bad. All right. Well, that's the one that his point is <laughs> okay. aging. His point is aging very well. It's like it can't age oh, okay. well. <laughs> it's literally it doesn't matter how bad the, the, the superhero movies get. Yeah, he said in superhero, this is, so he wrote a New York Times op-ed where he clarified it, and it was titled, I said Marvel movies aren't cinema, let me explain, and the, the, you know, the subtitle, the tagline is, cinema is an art form that brings you the unexpected, in superhero movies, nothing is at risk. That's a very broad statement. It's not true. It doesn't distinct. Yeah, I don't it's agree not, with and that. It's just not true. It's not true. It's not true. Well, I guess this is the point, right? We, I mean, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole op-ed. Um, the thing, like, why? I, we're forced into defending it, and it's just like you understand, guys. You've been listening to us complain about this non-stop, and it's just like so. You you do understand we're not biased in favor of the fucking phase four. I just think it's ridiculous that we're at the point of being like, oh no, it's not cinema at all. It's like oh come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's really yes, quite. Because, yeah, we we occupy this space where it's like we're not on the Marvel guys' side in terms of extolling the the wonder of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe artistically, but at the same time, we're not going to pretend that it isn't art. It is. It's just bad art. Yeah. Yep. It's so much simpler. The world is easier to understand. It's so much simpler when it's all art and you just decide whether it's good or bad rather than it is sufficiently bad that it's no longer artistic expression when it all is. Brief bursts of dopamine. Essentially, when you go and see an Avengers film, you're not going for the sake of getting an emotional and cinematic experience. You're going because it's an attraction. Because you want to see who will turn out, what will happen, the big crap. I, I don't no, tell me what I want. I'm, tr- I'm trying desperately not to just, I just let him go because I just disagree so fucking hard on this, but it's okay. The favorite moments that everybody cites in superhero movies are actually a lot of the time the big important. Like, how many people in Logan? Like, when they talk about Logan, when they talk about their favorite parts of that film, how many of them are going to be like, yeah, it was so cool when X-23, like, showed up that he was in the film? Like, how many people are going to say that versus citing, like, the final scene in that film? Um, or just, like, any it, number of really emotional moments in that movie? Or, what does it like, say the, about... The what does yeah. it say about Infinity War? The one of the first things my head goes to for best scenes is just Thor Rocket talking about Thor. how much he's lost. Okay. Rocket, yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, but, but that's just an attraction. You're just there for the roller coaster. Everybody's favorite of emotions. Is the conversation he has with May. Like a lot of the most, a lot of the best moments that people cite in these films are what you're getting in a lot of films, where it's conversations between two people that you care yeah. about. Um, the emotional all, I mean, catharsis of like a situation, right? Where... Yeah. Daredevil Punisher talking on the rooftop. Everyone yeah. loves that scene. Yeah. The, him talking at the cemetery. And if we had the go next Spider-Man movie's coming out and it's going to deal with the fact that he's starting to believe that he needs to open up again, that he's been isolated because of what happened after No Way Home, and this is the movie that starts to challenge, really, is that the best way forward? That, I'm like, oh, I'm sold. And if they go, also, uh, the lizard is going to be in it, I'd be like, okay, that's okay. fine. All yeah, right, fine. Hey, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, Let's whatever. See, we'll see what they do with him, I suppose. But the g- this guy, the way that he's explaining this, it sounds like it should be the reverse for me, where they go, he's going to be dealing with blah, 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 and I just go, yeah, 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 who's in it? Who's in it? Lizard? Ooh, oh, sweet. Okay, Lizard, oh. yeah. What else? What have we got? Doc Ock? Come on. <laughs> Give me Doc Ock. <laughs> I hope yeah. it'll be as good as Spider-Man 3. When we find out, like, Doc Ock and Green Goblin were in No Way Home, the first thought we all have is like, oh, shit, please <laughs> don't fuck them up. <laughs> yeah. And what are we referring to when we say that? Character writing. Because that's why we are here. Obviously not yeah. everyone is there for the same reason, but stop telling me I don't turn up for the meaningful stuff that I'm only there to go, yeah. ooh, <laughs> look at the cool yeah. colors. <laughs> right. Dude, have you guys seen Mask of the Phantasm, the animated from 1993? It has, like, I've seen the Phantom. Isn't that like, the best reputation? so long, for, like, I don't remember it that's well. A, that's a Batman, a Batman one, it's a recent I watched. That has like a scene in it when where he's just talking not even he's not even talking to a person he's talking to the graves of his parents and it's like a conflict in his interest and it's fucking amazing 
I, I think it's it the has the best reputation of all uh, animated movies for Batman, right? And I, think, I see why. I see why. It's really good. It's really good. No. Are they for the spectacle? Shut up. Uh, uh, Joker's in it. Ah, look at Batman. He's running around. Shooting <laughs> things. Beep, 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 Let's go. Beep, 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 beep. It's funny as well because we, we were talking earlier about how, like, oh, one division fell the fuck apart when we had what he's describing here. The fucking laser people attacking. Oh, the witches are firing their spells at each other. Whoa. Oh, there's the ruins on the sky. The dome is falling apart. Have ah. Spells in it. Meanwhile, we were like, the most interesting part was the dinner table where they were saying things kind of weird and off. And it was clearly noticeable that this is not right. Crowd please it's your favorite mascot fighting a big purple asshole. It's actually pretty meaningful that he can pick up Mjolnir, but why should I even bother at this yeah. point? <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. Bear in mind this is Marty's opinion and not mine. The Good. statement of them all not being Wait, hang on, that's not even Marty's opinion. You made all that up. That's not what he said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't it fucking hilarious that they're like, no, I know what Martin meant. You're like, all right. It is yeah. hilarious. I know. The old, the old, he's just an old man. Doesn't know what he's talking about, especially when it comes to movies. I'll let you know what he really means. In cinema and instead, theme park rides is a little bit of an oversimplification. If emotion yeah. and aesthetic are metrics for what makes cinema, then why are films like Guardians of the Galaxy lumped in with this theme park idea? Because... I, I like, I like, Marvel movies. Oh, he's almost there. So he just went like, okay, if I'm to believe you're correct, Marty, we can't include Guardians 2 because that's really good. <laughs> it's like, no, we can't <laughs> include any of them. It's not, not fair. Any of them. Just because you like Guardians 2 a lot and it's very well shot or very unique compared to the rest, that doesn't make it cinema where the rest aren't. Mm -hmm. that's that's Marvel movie movies. Where it's, and it's emotion and characters come before anything else. See, it's a... I'm very disappointed <laughs> that you you almost you had came it. this close. Yeah. Yeah. So close. Like I said, what is and isn't cinema is a pointless debate that comes down to subjectivity and how- It wouldn't be pointless if we had better definitions of what we're even fucking yeah. talking about, would it? Like, it, if we're just we like- we discuss it objectively if we had a definition. We could- we'd be much better off, because everyone's just shouting at each other at this point. Pretentious you are. But digging Zoom. past the surface level of what Marty the Ace Scorsese was getting at is a sentiment I agree with and is apparent now- Oh, that's what he was getting what, at. What, what, what was if he truly he was getting at, yeah. of using words. I just think people want to be seen as agreeing with Martin Scorsese because he's one of the most legendary directors of all time. Like you would, <laughs> you would want to be like if 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 maybe he'd made five mad, bad movies in a row, maybe people would be like, oh, no, he's, maybe he's wrong actually. You know, it's fine to disagree with someone. It yes. really is, even if they're very important. I mean, every every scientist can uh, can bite the bullet on the fact that Isaac Newton was also an alchemist, right? It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Bring you an alchemist? I can't remember. Um. We don't, you know, you can ask me about that on a different day, I guess. Okay. I'm too tired. <laughs> I'm too tired to give you the, the scripted answer. Wait, did I say that? Whoops. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness gracious. Alchemist confirmed. They just said good points, but someone in chat said y'all mad, so you're wrong. Fuck. Damn it. Well, Dang. that's it for tonight. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Watching most of these shows and movies because they're looking for art that will satisfy or challenge a world viewer desire. Plenty are just empty spectacle with a paper-thin story to service the action sure, or the cameos. Sure, plenty are. Some aren't. I mean, you could, even if they were mostly thin, like there's only a speck of kind of like, oh, there's something interesting there. Isn't that enough? As long as you have How something. How does the story have to be before yeah, it stops yeah. being cinema? As soon as the, the the fact that we were bringing up the whole grand calculus thing in Doctor Strange, it doesn't deal with it. It doesn't talk about it. But there's something in there that I can now discuss. Does that yeah. count or does it not? I don't know. Factory filmmaking is a real thing, and if there's one thing Martin Scorsese factory filmmaking is a real thing is like I not shocking at all. Factory filmmaking is shit though. It's if you said that, yeah, that yeah. would have been he is right about is that it's an incredibly damaging precedent for the industry as a whole. When referring no, to the it's current- No, they're bad. I was gonna say, like, it wouldn't be that way if they were really well executed they were movies. Good. Yeah. yeah. Quality is king. <clears throat> I mean, you could say all film studios are factories, but like, you what- could. Uh, He's implying that, like, it's like soulless filmmaking. Which, sometimes uh, it is. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it is, sometimes it isn't. I don't know that you could have a soulless film that is it's still cinema. Because, to be fair, what does soulless yes. truly mean? It's like, oh, I'm not exactly sure. We're all kind of aiming at something vague on the line of they made but it yeah, without thinking about soulless. anything, really.
right no heart and soul in there yeah yeah <laughs> you guys know that soul versus soulless meme where it's like something with better graphics and slightly worse graphics and it's like <laughs> like if, if something has better graphics it, it immediately is soulless, soulless. yeah mm. like uh, the term gets thrown around a lot uh very loosely mulan was soulless how that was how dare you? that was hilarious that movie was it's fantastic. called mulan Mulan's get it right soulless. that's interesting Ma -ma -ma -mulan. Oversaturation of the superhero genre, Martin Scorsese said. In many places around this country and around the world, oh, yeah. franchise films are now your primary choice if you want to see something on the big Wait, screen. What is happening? If you're going to tell I'm me that track. it's simply a matter of supply and demand and giving the people what they want, I'm going to disagree. It's a chicken and egg issue. If people are only given one kind of thing and endlessly sold only one kind of thing... Of well, wouldn't, wouldn't it have been proven already by the fact that some make more money than others? That people are coming to see some and not others? It's not just that they're there? Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's there is all kinds of movies, and they're all quite easy to access, really, if you actually want supply to. Supply and demand really answers this question, because the fact that DC are like, fuck, what sells and what doesn't? Drop the stuff that's not selling. No it's one ever says, shit. all these MCU movies, nobody wants those. Stop making them. We, it's not chicken and egg, because we can point to a time when superhero films weren't dominant at the box office, and then we can slowly see the transition into superhero films becoming dominant in the box office. Like, we look now at, you know, the cinema that has 40 screenings for Multiverse of Madness, and meanwhile there's mm -hmm. only one screen for, like, The Northman. That's now after yeah, and the market has told the, the cinemas what they want, which is broadly franchise films. People want to see Fast and Furious, they want to see Marvel movies, they want to see... I guess they don't want to see Harry Potter anymore, they want to see Star Wars <laughs> to yeah, some and, extent. And I, 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 I'm a firm believer that you have those hundreds of thousands of Twitter accounts who are like, the Northman, art, great, blah, 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 blah. They all went and saw Doctor Strange. They didn't go to see yeah, Northman. a lot of people didn't go see the Northman. The thing oh, I remember Northman. most distinctly from No Way Home, like one of my, definitely one of my top favorite scenes is when they, all the Spider-Men convene on the rooftop and they're all kind of broken in their own ways. Yeah. And they all kind of find... Um, uh, they kind of repair their emotional states through sharing their grief with one another and they realize how much they have in common with what they've lost and it's all really well acted I think yeah. and uh, yeah. like, really. stuff like that that's the stuff that like I see that in a movie and I'm just like fuck that was great like well, I'm always sure, gonna but it's not even cinema. if the rest of the movie is shit <laughs> <laughs> so is even if the rest of the movie is shit like I'm always gonna remember that scene for like the rest of my life yeah, that's that's what we call um, key 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 jangling. That's not cinema, I'm afraid. You're just you've been <laughs> key jangling. <laughs> people people have called it key jangling. I'm just like it's it's substantive. They're literally talking about <laughs> what makes them who they are. What do you mean? I'm yeah. guessing that uh, this quote that's being read is something that Scorsese said verbatim, and I find it interesting because it doesn't put a lot of faith into the audience to more clearly understand what it is they because it's what he's kind of saying is you don't actually want this. You think you want it. But, like, I don't know if that's true. I think people do want, like, what yeah, I think they want it. it. Um, and it's it's weird to almost say, like, nah, you've been bamboozled. The studios have told you this is what you want, but it's not really what you want. You want to watch films that just people aren't going to see as much. Um, I, um... I think I think more grim, th there's got to be a more grim realization, which is that, just think about it. Transformers made, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, that used to be what we would cite as, like, the shit blockbuster that yeah. makes so much money despite being absolutely meritless wow well, yeah, and, and they, they keep making them because they they put it out and then they go well what was the profit on one of our assets it was huge what was it it's like transformers what, what is that and it's like make another one whatever it is oh and then next year they're like so how did that one do like yeah asset two but it, it, even more money this time they're like fucking hell really what is this transformers thing and they're like oh, it's just some mm -hmm. thing about robots i don't even know yeah make a whole bunch of them fuck it like that's how that's how the idea that they're like no we shall put out transformers again and again and they will fucking buy it or I'll come into their house with a gun and make sure like come on we know that right now. we know that it's much more forced by the the fact that people are actually going to see this shit because we this film's failing right now when they come out it has to be to do with that but at the same time I'll happily grant there is still like a an other another element to it that's that still exists like Captain Marvel. Uh, was definitely a, an example of a movie that they put out and everyone was just like, sure, let's do it. Like, I'll like this. And then it, it like worked out. 
but um, there's lots of other factors that that go into that. The idea that it's just like this is a problem because like I don't know, Marvel Studios just get to dictate now what everyone's tastes are going to be. Like we're already the, the fact that Phase Four is not making as much money as they would like it to already, and they've mm. been putting out shit that's crap. Like I I don't know. I just I don't. I don't buy this. I don't think that we'll be here forever. I it's weird that Scorsese of all people would say this when he would be more than aware of all the phases of Hollywood's gone through, all the genres getting popular and less popular. Um we shall see. Everyone's talking about how this is the end of the superhero uh timeline in terms of its popularity in the industry that we're seeing like one of the, you know, phases of it dying out now. We'll see. Well, we're we're still getting zombie shit. And that was the phase before the superhero craze. Well, to be fair, right? we're still getting westerns, but they just, you know, they die down. They're not the king yeah, anymore. Yeah, they weren't. That's yeah, it true. wasn't as, like last uh, stream we are talking about, Bonanza, it's, Gunsmoke, Little House on the Prairie, all the ones that I that aren't coming to the top of my head. Dozens of can, seasons. Can you call zombies a genre like like western is if a you, genre? If we're calling superheroes a genre, we can call zombies a genre, yeah. Yeah. That's sure, but, but then I would apply the same thing to superheroes in western. Like well, I, when dude, I, I'm with you. I've been saying that forever. I don't know that yeah. superheroes as a genre will have the same trajectory as something like a Western because Westerns seemed a lot more locked down compared to superheroes that can literally be fucking anything. Yeah. yeah. You can make a Western with superhero movies. So. Exactly. You can make an anything with superhero movies. Just yeah. take any movie you've ever seen and make one of the characters see through walls superhero. or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's all you gotta do. Unfortunately, no cinema anymore. Sorry. Oh, heck. It's a chicken and egg issue. If people are only given one kind of thing and endlessly sold only one kind of thing... I guess that's what's amusing about it, right? It's like they're not sold one kind of thing. They're sold lots of things. Everything Everywhere All at Once was a different kind of thing, and it managed to actually yeah. surprise in terms of its success. Maverick yeah, was a I different mean, kind of thing, and look how fucking well that did. Quite mm -hmm. well. So, yeah. billion. You'll have still haven't seen that one. <laughs> it's funny how cynical I usually am, and I'm like, no, down with your cynicism. Boo! <laughs> it's a chicken and egg issue. If people are only given one kind of thing and endlessly sold only one kind of thing, of course they're going to want more of that one kind of thing. And I tend to agree. It's too much. It's unhealthy for the industry and it's unhealthy for our minds. What? I don't know about that. Uh, like, I'm minds. okay. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll check okay. out some other I'll... movies. And, you know, I, I find... Will... Yeah, take I don't think it. it's more than healthy for us to uh, watch them and then talk about them and how badly yeah. or well they're doing. I, I, I'm i gonna be fine. Alright. Um, just... As for unhealthy you... for the industry, I don't know, man. The industry is basically dictated by the consumers, so right. maybe. I... Is it not healthy? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not on board with this idea either that uh, superhero movies are destroying cinema in the same way that I don't think comic books are destroying literature. You know, it's like people want what they want. There's a demand for comic books and great books were still written alongside comic books. I mean, and great movies are still coming out. Like I get like there's always a superhero movie on like the marquee when you go to a theater. But like, I don't really see that as an issue. I just you wouldn't want to be that guy. When you, a group of friends go to see it, you'll go, oh, that was terrible. Yeah, that was bad. Ah, yeah, it was bad. The one friend goes, this is unhealthy. <laughs> you know, like, um, you like, know, no, I'm, I'm, you know, come on, Jerry. Like, we we can we can watch a movie and riff on. It. He's like, no, no. You, you need to. We need to stop encouraging this. We we're going to the hospital right now. So, wait, <laughs> what? Oh, we, uh, going. Uh, all right. Yeah. Sh no, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize this was happening. I'm fine. I'm by no means immune either. I went to see Doctor Strange because I didn't want to be left behind with the rest of the world, and because I was interested. I mean, I guess see, isn't make... that a isn't that a whole different thing though? Yeah. That's not, that's, going, that's that's just to do with social stuff. That's just talking to people. You want to be in on the new topic, and so I guess. Hey, if hang you on. Video, if you make, go ahead. Isn't this the guy that said nobody's talking about the MCU anymore? And then he said the whole reason I go to see this stuff is to be able to talk about it with people. Yeah, yeah. I think he yeah, did mention you're right. That, yeah, make sure to uh, re redraft. It's, it's, it's great. It's a it good is. Thing. Yeah, it helps you catch these these little things. I'm never gonna get tired of good movies with superhero elements in them. Like, you know, I'm yeah. st I'm still not tired of good westerns just because they're not on top. Doesn't yeah, it's fine. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what? I'm just a big fan of good stuff. Hell so yeah! I said it. Yeah. Unbelievable. 
I'm sorry. Did in the cameo potential of the film. That She-Hulk show looks really lame and kind of bad, but I'll see it just because I want to see Daredevil show up. So many of these. So you. So you. Part <laughs> of the right. problem. So you're the part. Of, you're the person. Okay. Yeah. You're a massive hypocrite. Then shut the fuck up. I, I mean, mean is, is it? Are you a hypocrite if you say like the thing you're doing is bad, but you know you're doing it, and that is that, is that, that is still hypocritical, right? If you're critical for some reason, of any behavior, yeah, if, and, but then you do the thing, yeah, and it's like, yeah. well, you need to I think that was, qualify this seriously. I think that was so blatant that it, like, passed my hypocritical senses, because I was just like, oh, wait, what? Well, <laughs> like, well here, here's a question, because I'm pretty sure I said explicitly last week, I'll probably watch the show because of Daredevil is in it. What do you make of that? Well, I would, That's fine. I would defend you as saying, I doubt you're watching it because you enjoy... Uh, did have just no, want to get giddy at seeing him. You want to see the yeah, damage. He's actually a character yeah. you have investment in. It's the same reason why uh, we watch all of this stuff is because we're doing it for our job. We're to be critical. I already told you guys. I there's plenty of these things I wouldn't have seen by now if it went for what we do. Right. Um, I, I was yeah, almost done with the MCU right. in phase two. I was almost done. Civil War is what dragged me back into the MCU. I was like, fine, all right. If you if you're really gonna try and take this more seriously, fine. And then Infinity War, I was like, fuck me, I'm really invested again. This is going great. Uh, and and you, you guys know the rest. <laughs> you live. I would wait, we, uh, we, I would wait we, to we... see the execution of incorporating Daredevil into the show before well, dismissing it as a cheap tactic. Like, we, maybe it we've makes seen him. We, there, I've seen the images. He's, he's got his yellow and red costume. We, we see it. It's like, oh, by man, the way, you're bringing you... him in. Like, he's um, coming. The other angle there as well is that you you might be hypocritical on that. If you were, I think you'd probably just be like, "Yeah, I, I got a weakness on that one" or something like that. I could I could understand you saying that, and that'll be fine. Mm. I think this guy, okay. by I mean, he must acknowledge this, right? I'm part of the problem. I assume that's coming next. I don't know. Maybe because uh, the thing well, that like, people he... accuse us every once in a while is like, "Aren't you guys paying for tickets and thus fueling the thing and talking about it and making it more aware?" And it's just like, I'm pretty sure. We cost them more tickets than we'll ever get for them uh, overall. And we're constantly trying to be critical of their work Absolutely. to direct and advise on what we believe would be the better mm. thing. And the second they make any good stuff, or even good scenes, good moments, we try to highlight them to be fair, because we're invested in what is the great, greatest in the sense of most people watching. Like the, the greatest show being put on ever in terms of a story in our world right now culturally. And we love storytelling here. That's EFAP's foundation. Yes, we much. do. It's good. It's good stuff. But yeah, I'd, like I would go over all the different components for involved for for why we're watching this stuff, despite saying that people probably shouldn't be watching this stuff because of how shitty it is. Um, and I was going to say another element that proves I think that we're doing this more so for the work is the fact that we miss out on loads of it because we don't have to watch it all even for the work, right? Like we don't even, you know, like like I'm not going to see Echo when that comes out. I didn't even watch Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, hopefully I, know, I don't I, have to. I just realized, by the way, like 10 minutes ago that I had totally forgotten about Hawkeye's existence. Yeah. Like, I, I realized, because I think there was footage from Hawkeye, it's like, dude, that was like a show. Like, that's part of this phase. Out of all totally the shows, that was definitely one of them. It, yeah, so <laughs> that's it was definitely, definitely one. That is one of them. Oh, people are saying he's in chat. Guy who made this. Let me know oh. if you would like to jump on and have a chat with us. We found your video interesting. Oh, so that'd far. be great. Certainly interesting. The Hulk show looks really lame and kind of bad, but I'll see it just because I want to see Daredevil show up. So many of these movies sell their appeal on that promise of somebody significant or somebody who will be significant showing up. I mean, it did get him to watch She-Hulk, so he's going to watch mm -hmm. She-Hulk because of it, so that is true. Like, does it count for nothing that, um... Because Daredevil was a cameo, but to be fair, he was literally in Spider-Man for, what, like, 10 seconds? But, like, Tobey mm -hmm. Maguire's Spider-Man, for example, if someone said that's just a cameo, I'd be like, I feel like you're underselling what they managed I, to do with I that. I want to make more of a distinction between a cameo and, and just the, the character being part of the story. I suppose yeah. you could define it as a cameo, but his integration in this movie makes a lot of sense. So, well, like, it's just really well like executed, and that. if that's what everything yeah. was going to be going forward, alrighty. I'm on board. Even this freeze frame sort of shows how they're both, like, it's coming through the window... Daredevil's raising his arm to catch it. Peter's got his hand up to catch it. I mean, they're both kind of on that same wavelength, superhero-wise. Oh, yeah, yeah that I mean, was a good good beat. I liked that. I liked it, too. Yep. I think a lot of the things Martin Scorsese said about Marvel is kind of misinformed and hyperbolic, but honestly, the metaphor comparing the MCU to a theme park sort is a perfect of, yeah. analogy. When
No, it's not. Theme parks are good. Uh, <laughs> theme parks <laughs> give me joy and happiness. <laughs> I don't know what to say. They give me delicious funnel cakes. I, don't know I saw someone that. in chat yeah. say that, like, that what this was another example i think of informing what you know trying to compensate for what martin scorsese actually said but like that superhero no because that's not good enough either you need to be more specific saying superhero films are like fast food it's like no just the bad ones maybe like if you want to yeah. you know so it's 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 not superhero it's just bad content even like it's bad film bad television shows yeah yeah because what about that's how it. does that work uh analogy wise with like tasty fast food though what is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Just, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't... I just... I, th I find these distinctions, like, we don't need to make additional categories to distinguish between, you know, what we would consider to be good and bad in that medium. We can just say it's all art, it's all cinema, it's all television, it's all, you know, it's all everything. It's just good or bad. That's that's the metric that matters. Um, He said in chat, I'm aware this is a very flawed video on a script level and I'm not going to get up in arms over people talking about it. Not going to lie, I just found this interesting. Well, yeah, I mean... Right, uh, I mean, well, if you, you want to jump on, though. I, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming that's him saying he doesn't want to, but totally up to you, yeah, man. Fair Let enough. me know. Um, what I would say is that I was uh, just linked this video at some point and I listened to a portion of it and then I was like, all right, I think this is a great little vehicle for discussing broader topics about the MCU. I've agreed with yeah. you on a bunch of stuff. I just also disagree with you on a bunch of stuff. That's all. It's a, it's a video, I think, all right. I'm not sure if it's um. I think that in the case of this video, I think it's the the conclusions that are being drawn are like lining up, kind of. But I think it's that we disagree on um. How we got I, here I, is yeah, very. I, I think our workings are different. Um, well, yeah, our answer is much more boring. I think, which is that it's just badly well, written. Yeah, because cause your title is Phase 4 kind of sucks a lot. I agree. I don't think I agree on the reasoning. Um, But then again, I'm not sure that you disagree with our reasoning either, I imagine, if we are... Uh... Because at the end of the day, it's it's all that it's it's bad, right? Like, that's the most important part, that it's mm -hmm. bad stories. If it was good, maybe you'd have a different opinion. Like, maybe it would change um how much the homogeneity or the process that's being used to make the films or the saturation in the industry, maybe that would change how how important you think that is. Wait, someone just the, said, the okay, Fringy, if 90% yeah. of superhero content is bad, how important is it to stress that it's the work and not the genre? You all mentioned at the start Phase 4 was bad, but you liked No Way Home. Like, you just, you just highlighted so, why it's important. You, yeah, you've highlighted exactly why it's important. I don't want to... I don't want to shit on bad things because I'm too lazy to make a distinction between what I'm talking about. Why would I do that? Yeah, like, if 90% of the things are bad... Well, so, uh, we say it's label X, and we hit 100% of things, or we say it's, uh, this other label, and we hit accurately 90% of the things that are actually bad, well, we'll go for the more accurate label, won't we? Well, it's just, it's, it's... Uh, so let's say, this film is bad because X attribute. Well, no, this film has X attribute and it's good. Oh, sounds like X attribute kind of has nothing to do with it. Sounds like right. we need to identify a more accurate attribute that explains why we have this opinion. Like, that's all this is. So in this case, it's not that they're... Like, saying superhero films are bad pretty strongly implies that it's something to do with the genre that they are. Or like something that is inextricable from superhero films as a medium. But that's not true, because there are great superhero films. It's like, oh... So what is the actual real underlying explanation? And the explanation is it's not well written. It's not telling a good story. Mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to do with being a superhero story. So we can just be more accurate with our um with our labels. I don't want to throw good stuff in with like the bad just because I don't want to clarify or find a more accurate um explanation behind it. No, I agree. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, I recently watched a movie called The Innocents. It's a Norwegian film about kids who have superpowers. And mm -hmm. uh, these four kids kind of convene on like this social housing uh, complex and they find out that they all have powers. It's not really explained how they got the powers, but whatever, you just kind of go along with it. They have powers and they learn about each other's powers and they interact in really interesting ways like one has is like severely autistic and ten, and can't talk but with the powers of another kid who can read minds he, she can speak through the autistic girl and speak fluent english and like the other there's one kid that can move things with his mind and 
like there's a scene where it's like one kid holds up a stick and it's like try to break the stick and he does it and it just snaps in half and she's the girl who's holding the stick is laughing but and it's just like it plays with that tension because like sooner or later that's going to be somebody's leg or arm that mm -hmm. gets broken and and there's like one at one moment the kid who moves stuff with his mind he like throws a rock at his with his mind really fast and another kid and the kid kind of ducks out of the way like the tension of that like i don't know if any of you guys have had like a rock the size of a baseball thrown at you but like holy shit you you dodge that thing like it's a bullet you know and it's mm -hmm. like you, you're kind of paralyzed with fear because it, it feels in that moment that any direction you run you're going to run in, in the wrong direction and the, ro the rock is going to hit you and like it plays with that tension really well and it's it's the most grounded approach to uh people with superpowers that i've ever seen in a film, I think, like to the I point do. where it's almost a horror movie, and that I that can be you can call that a, a superhero genre film, and I th I thought yeah. it was so great, like a, a really like unique and simple in its execution, very little CGI, a lot of it's practical, using like like f off camera fans to create ripples in the water to give the impression that there's like force fields being shot at, shot and generated at other people, and I highly recommend it. It's uh. It's called The Innocence, uh, people in chat are asking, but uh, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, superhero film that was great. And it, you know, it wasn't bad just because it was a superhero film. Like yeah. You can do really interesting shit with it. It just reminds me of Chronicle. They did a very well, yeah. a good job of that as well. Where you see Chronicle just... was interesting as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chronicle's not art, though. Cause... <laughs> Well, not see, but I, I genuinely think that the guy who made this and even Martin would probably be like, "Well, no, 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 that is," and then you'd be like, "Yeah, oh, Chronicles God damn it. doing the found footage thing," and it's like, "Yeah." Well, but I think they would almost see it as intuitive. While we're like, "No, it's not though. That's the whole point. It's not intuitive at all as to what is mm. and isn't cinema." <laughs> um. When making this video, I went back to see a couple of older MC releases, chief amongst them being Iron Man 1, the first Avengers film, and Avengers Endgame. Infamous? Which are... I don't I just, know. I'll be, I'll be, you would be I'll be trying to, I think you would be the I've... only one who catch that. Yeah. <laughs> the, re the reason why is because I've just, I've been trying to, they, they come and go so quick. I'm pretty sure I heard Halo music briefly, but I'm not sure. That sounds like... Oh, there's all kinds of music used in this. I hear the social yeah. network, uh... Oh yeah, I heard that. What one. else? Uh, Hotline Miami. Yeah, there's a lot of different tracks. He's quite good with his uh, music selection. Like the Hotline Miami music was used specifically over top the part where Peacemakers like killing people with a shotgun or something. Dude, the guy, the good editor. Yep, taking that away. Said about Martin and misinformed and hyperbolic, but honestly, the metaphor comparing the MCU to a theme park is a perfect analogy. When making this video, I went back to see a couple of older MCU releases, chief amongst them being Iron Man 1, the first Avengers film, and Avengers Endgame, which are an interesting selection because it shows a massive divide between Marvel and their beginnings to Marvel at its peak of success. Marvel had taken a massive risk in starting this whole cinematic venture initially. The company was in debt, and unless their name was Spider Man or Wolverine, nobody gave a shit about giving some obscure comic book character a chance in their own movie. So Iron Man was a very risky film. Nobody cared about the character. It was coming out Because we, we made a big sting about how Iron Man was a risk in response to him saying otherwise, right? We, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure yeah, we yeah, felt that he, we he said small, self-contained, safe stories. Yeah, which uh, we were like, well, Iron Man wasn't safe. It was the first one. Like, it's just, yeah. At a time of steep competition and had lofty aspirations to be much bigger than its one movie. And that's the thing, he's, up, he's making the argument for us now. I was like, yep, true. <laughs> A risk yep. that was worth $525 million in the entire Marvel catalog. So what you're left with is a movie that feels bizarrely out of place when contrasted with the rest of the MCU's content. It didn't sell itself on its IP, its lead actor was someone who had a spotty- I think you can say this for a couple of the movies, that they, they really are themselves, it's not really much about this. Because he's saying it for this, I think, because of the fact that they really didn't have Avengers in the, in the horizon when they were making this. It was more so just like, let's just make this work. But yeah, I feel like that sense is in a lot of the movies in the earlier phases. I think so. Even the bad movies have it. <laughs> that's okay. That's it was like, probably it's not in a key the component. I imagine it was in the back of their mind, but they probably treated the first Iron Man film kind of like a pilot for a series where they're just like, let's see how this does. I think so. Yeah, I think that's fair. We'll yeah. Build on top of that. Yeah.
a reputation and wasn't well known by the general public. It didn't sell itself on cameos and easter eggs because they knew nobody would care about showing off Nick Fury or S.H.I.E.L.D. You say that as if they didn't have the potential for it, but if the trailer had, like, he's like, I'm gonna need help on this mission. I know a guy. His name's Parker. And you go, oh, you're gonna bring Peter <laughs> yeah. Parker from a spy baby universe! And remember, um, there was originally going to be a reference in The Incredible Hulk, which was created with the same sort of, like, it, it, you know, it's not, it's, it's two years later, right? So it's, and it was uh, by... Same year as Iron Man one came out. Oh fuck! I always months. I always mix that up because th those two were both made by uh, a different. Th there was like a different situation for those two than they were for the rest of the movies, right? So the first one was Paramount. Uh, so Iron Man was Paramount, and uh, Incredible Hulk was Universal. Yeah. And then I think back to Paramount again with the rest of Phase One, and then it was Disney for Avengers. Right. I think because so... Disney bought Marvel in two thousand and nine. After a lot of the deals had already been sort of set in stone. If I remember correctly, I'd have to Google it. I'm pretty sure originally they were going to have Iron Man's cameo with Ross at the end of Incredible Hulk. He was going to say, like, I oh man, your, your project didn't go so well, huh? With your like, little experiment with the, the Abomination stuff. And he's like, no. And he's like, um, you know, I can relate. I fucking gave, uh, I gave a guy some metal arms over in a different city, and he fucking ran amok, as as if to imply the Raimiverse is connected to the MCU. Um, oh, that was something that was gonna be in there, but they took it out. Oh, okay, yeah, because that post credit scene is still in there when he talks to Ross. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can go find this. Because I remember reading it and being like, "No way, they were gonna do that, huh?" Interesting. Um. That is interesting. It is. It was a movie that wanted to be a big summer blockbuster that would attract a general audience and leave a lasting impression. Even today, the movie has a lot of stuff in it that is sorely missed in its future entries. The actual Iron Man suit Are still looks amazing. Oh, that scene. 2008. Oh. <laughs> also, yeah, this is a point that everyone should agree on, and if they don't, they're wrong. Iron Man looked his fucking best and baller pretty much in the first movie, it's and nice. by the time- Yeah, yeah. it's the best. A lot of people say, like, oh, he just looks the worst the more you go on. I still think he looks the worst in Age of Ultron. I really don't like the way he looks in the second half of that film. But, yeah, the, yeah up until Avengers, like, the f first Avengers movie, the suit looks amazing. Gorgeous, I would go as far as saying. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> still one of my top favorites. I think my favorite Marvel movies are still are Infinity War, Homecoming, and the first Iron Man film out of I everything. Did. Sorry, what was that, Fringy? Iron Man is great. Such yeah, I love that first movie, man. It's solid. They really captured the um the vibe of of just being on on his level, like following him through his journey, and just when he gets to this point, you're just like, fuck, he's built yeah. himself all the way up to here, and he just annihilates them. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that they work their way up to this, because this is like an hour into the movie that this scene. It might even be a little bit more than an hour into the movie that this scene happens. And what's really cool is that even though they follow up this scene of him absolutely annihilating these guys, they then have the dogfight when he's kind of like out of his element. Because um, in the dogfight, he's like really struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, man. Awesome. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on. Let me close the stream. Sorry. Hey, what up? Oh, good. Hello. Hi. We're watching your hey, video on up? the YouTubes. Oh. I know. I got Weird. a cool little message on Twitter. I was like, I what the fuck? I hope it was friendly. Uh, we were... No, yeah, yeah for sure, man. We, we talk about Marvel every once in a while, here and there, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I find it interesting that we are a, a section of the internet that have, I guess, a particular point of view, and it's funny when we end up agreeing with people, it's often for very different reasons. And I suppose since you're here, may as well ask you a couple couple questions if, if you're interested. About, uh, your perspective yeah, on the old MCU. So, like, we basically theorize that it's all just gone down the tubes because of really, really poor writing practices. Um, I don't know if you know, but, like, Black Widow was said to have been written in 13 days. Um, Doctor Strange yeah. was originally supposed to be written in three weeks, then it was two weeks, then it got thrown out and it was written as it was filmed, the new Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. um, Same with Noah Home, right? As far as I know, yeah, a lot of it is built. They put the tracks down as the train's running. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a fucking awesome film as a result. It's possible. Um, I think the example people go with is Mission Impossible Fallout. Fallout. And it's not even... To be fair to Fallout, like, well, the, the, the strategy with those is that the action scenes are crafted and then the script is crafted after, right? That's kind of how it goes. Um, so they have to... So. 
yeah so it's like it's still you know a challenge but it could still be done but i just think that there is no respect for the script writing process anymore and we're starting to see uh everything collapse in on itself now with the more stresses of time i think covid didn't help either with uh because like the first production line for multiverse matters got cancelled because of that so they just restarted so that's what we think the problem is but I think you're highlighting a lot of things in your video that I just I consider superfluous almost. Like, um, are they building up to a, a grander storyline, and does that make it a worse phase as a result? Like, possibly, but I don't think it comes close to just the fact that the individual components are really badly put together. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know this kind of comes across as very, like, I guess kind of cowardly, um, but if I were to go back in time, there is a lot about that video I would definitely rephrase i think the whole thing about the phase being planned uh sorry uh a lot of shit about i talked about um involving like the phases plan i'm not really sure i stand by i think it's more just like uh the execution of it i have a problem with i don't think i highlighted many of the key aspects that i should have yeah. I don't think it's cowardly. I think it's it's partially that you've changed your mind or maybe hey. with more clarity understand what what the like that you had the 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 feeling about, you know, the problems and then it's over time you managed to hone in more so on what the problem cuz I I mean I would say that I think it's execution. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's what I think the problem is. I think that I don't people have been talking about superhero fatigue and stuff like that. And I don't think it would exist if everything that had come out was great. I think that everybody would be like really keen on more, uh, superhero stories. Like the, the investment doesn't go away as long as it's good. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think there are rare exceptions where like scripts are written on the fly, like during shooting and it comes out good. Like Die Hard yeah. is an example of that. The first one, where Steven D'Souza, I think his name is, the screenwriter, he's he was writing pages and then they would shoot it the next day while he was like writing the next chunk of the script. And it turns turned out to be one of the greatest action movies ever, right? And maybe there was something to that the that um way of doing things that injected a certain energy into that script that made it work. I don't know. But like for that film's production, it's like Silver, Joel Silver of Silver Productions, they got that tower and it's like, we know we're going to make a movie with this tower and we know we're going to rig the roof with explosions, with explosives and we're going to blow it up. And it's like, Steven, make us <laughs> write a story around these facts, right? And that's mm, what yeah. he did. And, and it turned out good. But I, but I would say like, as a rule of thumb, get the script done first. Make sure it's well, up to snuff and then shoot it if, if you can do that. You know. That's interesting that you bring it up because something we've talked about is how a lot of Marvel films will pre-visualize action scenes well before a script exists. And so yeah. like the job of the writer is to basically justify these action scenes. Like Black Widow, before they had a script, they knew that she would be like fighting while parachuting, like falling from somewhere yeah. high. And then what's the consequence? Oh, we put the red room in the sky <laughs> for some reason. Which is <laughs> fucking absurd. Mm. Hey, it's hidden, okay? Because it keeps moving. That's how it's hidden. No one ever noticed. Ultron and Tony, <laughs> no one noticed. No, I, I don't know that we've... Uh, to notice. I don't know that we've gotten it from the video yet. If you... What would you cite? It's typo, right? I'm not... Yeah. Mis no, yeah, 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 what yeah. would you... What do you uh, think are, like, the, the strongest and the weakest Phase 4 projects? Um, I think the strongest so far has probably been No Way Home. And That's the correct choice. I as think. For, <laughs> correct choice. <laughs> as for hmm, as for weaker, oh boy. Um, I don't know. I can't really. There's not really anything that pops into my head as like, oh, that was exceptionally bad. Um, there's stuff. I would, I I would really... put that on Eternals personally. Go, hmm. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Eternals is just weird. Um, I think I really, I really didn't like Moon Knight. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really like Falcon and the Winter Soldier at all, mm -hmm. and fucking, what's even come out? I don't know. I didn't really like yeah. Doctor Strange that much. It's it's well, a blur, isn't it? I think yeah. <laughs> myself, Rags, Metal, and Fringy. I'm assuming all of us vote M O M is the worst in Phase Four. Oh it's yeah, Multiverse of Madness followed in close second by Loki. Loki, yeah. and then yeah. third is Thor: Love and Thunder. I think. 
It mm. probably oh, is Thor. Yeah. I forgot, yeah. about, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> you I forgot, forgot about the that. most recent one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that and those three together, absolute catastrophe. Uh, it sucks that it's gotten this hideously bad. The, and what was interesting about Thor: Love and Thunder, especially, is that it seemed like the whole internet agreed on that one. It was like, whoa, what a stinker! That was awful. And it's um, every reason for people to be in favor of it because people love Taika Waititi. People enjoy a good comedy. It was a, it was all tongue in cheek. Had plenty of fun things in it, but like, man, the the jokes were so badly put together, and the story was absolute nonsense. You even had Christian Bale trying. He tried. he tried his ass he off, dude. He was uh, he was working he was stuff. Given. That's the case with a lot of the actors, though. It's really not oh, the yeah, fault absolutely. of the actors. They've got great talent, and and they've yeah. got great talent on the production standpoint with like set design and props and things like that. The visual effects people, if they had more time, could really show off like you know what like I mean we've seen their work right with Thanos and Rocket. Um, like everybody's working. It's the writing. Like it's just. I don't know what it is. Like, well, I do it shit, but like, Bad, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what what wrong. Well, yeah, because uh, uh, I guess one of the other questions I was going to have for you as well is, um, would would uh, would the information recently about DC have switched your mind on exactly who's sort of winning in the overall? Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a part in the video that is aged exceptionally poorly, and also I think I didn't phrase right. Um. When I said, like, part of the reason DC is winning right now, like, obviously it's fucking not. Even at the time, like, it's it was a clusterfuck. It was a mess. I just meant, like, I really like the Suicide Squad. I really like Peacemaker. I really like the Batman. And yeah, I no, love, like, it, like... I thought I maybe you were referring to um, the critical acclaim aspect. Because, like, if you go from 28, 2019 onward, we get Joker, the Batman. I'll even give you Peacemaker and uh, the Suicide Squad versus what does Marvel have in terms of what we would genuinely consider to be well-written stuff, or even partially well-written, it's like, no way home, is it? Mm. Um, mm. And so it's like, yeah, so in that sense, I suppose DC is winning, but yeah, overall, I was just like, I mean, D DC, unfortunately, the Batman, um, it, it didn't make anywhere near as much money they probably wanted it to, compared to, like, like no way home well, fucking Dr. blew the Strange box office. Well, Doctor Strange beat it. Doctor Strange, like, yeah. made more money than Batman. Uh, the Suicide Squad, didn't it flop, unfortunately? It flopped. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. So, like, yeah, uh, you know, Marvel is, like, laughing all the way to the bank, I suppose, while DC is just like, mm -hmm. fuck, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> like, what is happening? And that's that's why we were saying to our covers, like, we kind of feel bad for DC, because they're just, it's, uh, it's a circus for them right now. Yeah. I just think you've been marketing it horribly. And, like, the thing I commended them for, which is, like, they really encourage or seem to encourage a lot of creative expression with individual projects, and now they've fucking... They don't want to do that anymore. It. Yeah, but no, <laughs> they're not interested yeah. in that. Though I guess um, it looks no. like the Batman will persist because that was specifically cited as one of the films that the CEO likes and wants more of. Yeah, so that would be yeah. nice if that can sort of continue to exist in its own little corner. Well, and if the second one is anywhere near as good as the first one, it should be able to get a, a stained legacy in like a good way. Like it mm. should be mm -hmm. yeah. a mainstay. Then and DC will have a bit more maybe respect and stability. Ready. Also, greatly benefits that they don't have any, uh, I don't know, world ending scenarios at the moment at DC. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> well, at the, the moment, moment, I say that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Freeze. What Black uh, Adam's going to be about. Mr. You know, Freeze is going to freeze what? the whole world. I still, I, I've seen that trailer like a million times every time I went to the cinema for one of the movies. I was like, I still don't know what the fuck this movie is going to be about, really. <laughs> Black no, Adam he... is so generic looking. Yeah. What? No, no. What's so interesting about him is that you know, like how heroes will not kill people. He, he, he <laughs> they do. He's different. Even he's though, a different oh, we have, I have, we have footage oh. on on stream right now. Oh. The first action <laughs> scene, <laughs> the dude punching a dude so hard that he goes flying into a wall. This is quite a, a good screenshot for that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm different than someone like I'm not. I'm not your dad's Iron Man. Iron Man is the I'm first not your Black Adam. The I Black mean, Adam DC universe. What is? Okay. He kills Beautiful. so many people, guys. You wouldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> any any additional thoughts on the whole Martin Scorsese thing? I'm curious what uh, <laughs> if there's anything else on that because we've come across it several times. We believe the Chad fucking response to it all is, "Come on, Marty, it is cinema. It's just bad." And that's it. Oh, um, I don't remember how I phrased this specifically, but. 
Um, I don't agree with that. Like, obviously, it is like of merit, and it is like it's most of what I watch. Like, I nowadays, like, I completely just gorge myself on popcorn shit. Um, <laughs> Wait, do you, do you see maybe that? I don't know. It, it felt a bit weird to have like a whole video talking about how bad that is, and then to be like, "That's what I'm oh. doing." Well, it's like I think the the point. I guess whether or not I expressed it right, um, I don't know. I definitely didn't. Um, but the point I was getting at more there, the thing I bring him up for is just kind of the theme park act aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Like I felt that a lot with um, watching shit like Multiverse of Madness, where it's like. A lot of the time, I feel like most people are like, "Ah, oh, I'm gonna go see this one because Blank shows up." Like, I think if you were I to can, go back a few years I can, back, I'd completely oh, disagree. I'd completely disagree with the theme park thing. But I mean, now I'm starting to be like, "Huh, that's kind of like what a lot of Marvel is selling itself on." Well, like, I is- even remember when Moon Knight was coming out. Like every week, somebody was being like, "Oh my god, the Hulk's gonna be in the next episode, guys." No, I remember. I remember Shang Chi. People were like, "I can't wait to see Abomination." He's got his comic accurate ears. I remember that being a thing. Yeah. I was like, Are "You fucking <laughs> kidding me?" Like, who cares? Yeah. It's, he's just gonna show up and, and scream. The like, big thing with She Hulk is Daredevil. That's like a huge selling point for that show. That's what a lot of people's investment in watching it comes from. He, well, I think I it's mean, just. Yeah, I love the controversy the, for that. Is is like that's getting overshadowed by the controversy for shit the CGI looks. <laughs> it's like people yeah, are much more invested in Everybody's about concerned that. about about um what they're gonna do with that character. I think in, in terms of the Martin Scorsese thing, I think all you did was what a lot of people did, which is where you try to make better a quote that just is pretty like silly. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, um... I found it fascinating that you felt the need to say like Guardians Two shouldn't count along this, and it really felt to me that you had found meaning in Guardians Two. Where I believe, and I just, I'm gonna say, like, I think it's fair for people to find meaning in something like The Room. If people can draw it out through the characters and they can just be like, this is this is what I got from it, this is blah blah blah. If that's all that we require to then elevate something from theme park ride, like shallow and stuff, too meaningful, I think it's easy to do with every uh, every installment for the the MCU. Well, that was like a part where I wasn't I wasn't agreeing with. Martin there. <laughs> Martin. I wasn't agreeing with Scorsese there. I think that was mm-hmm. more so me just bringing up that I think the whole, like, superhero movies are not cinema. Like, I how I think that's a little bit bullshit. Yeah, uh, well, because... You, you do do that. Yeah, you do yeah. say that you disagree with him. It's just that, um... It's, well, that's, it was say what he really meant was... Da, 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 well, what I was highlighting was just, like, it shouldn't be that you go, like, Guardians 2 is an example of how it breaks this sort of... That you'd just be like, all of them are. They are all of them are, honestly. Like, if you... I don't. I, I like. I famously hate Iron Man three, but there's plenty I could say for what Iron Man three does for like character work and stuff. But if we fast forward to Phase four, I could do it for uh, Doctor Strange. I think you said like part of what you didn't like about Multiverse of Madness was there was no, there was no arc for Doctor Strange. Was that right? I think it was that he had a dull arc. Yeah. Well, because like the first thing that we all, uh, I say we all, I think me and Franky talked about this when we first seen it. We, like, we were baffled by the fact that they ran about three to four arcs for him at once in that movie. It was all these components that were running. They had um, whether or not it's like right for him to take one life in exchange for everybody's. It's the does being a superhero make him a happy person? It's the uh, having the control to make the biggest decisions in the world. Holding the knife is like a part of his personality to the point where it ruins his own re- reputation uh, relationships with people. And how is he going to reconcile that? Like, they were running all of these things at once, but none of them had any kind of satisfying coherency or answer. And some of the characters, like Christine, were just dragged into it and forced to sort of co- comport to it, despite the fact that she has her own life. Um, but she never talks as though she has her own life. She only talks in regard to him. Uh, so, like, what I'm suggesting is that I was actually quite interested in all of the crap they were doing to try and come across as an actual story. This is this is why I'm still kind of interested in the MCU in some ways. Is um, I find the incompetence of their storytelling fascinating sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like a it's like watching a train wreck. To, to like give you an example, one of the the biggest like fucking mind blowing. This is why we consider Multiverse of Man is probably the worst. Like there's a, about a bazillion arguments, but when they establish that uh, by being in the wrong universe, you gradually create the chance for an incursion. Like it's an inevitability, and you need to get out of the universe. I can't believe they established that, and then no character tells that to Wanda, whose whole goal is to go to a different universe and be with her children. All you need to tell her is, oh, mechanically you'll destroy the universe if you do that. So, uh, don't. 
but like th th this is the thing when the when they wrote these things they just they, they're doing everything scene by scene in the moment they're not they don't care about how any of it matches anything else and um it's just destroying everything you know whether or not they're building to the multiverse or kang or whatever else hmm. that's our take we're much more positive about it as you can see I think there's plenty of action movies, not just superhero movies, that are cheap, um, unsubstantive thrills, which I think is the definition that Scorsese is applying to theme parks when he uses that term. But to apply that to the entire subgenre is just lazy. Like, well, he's the, not thinking about it. I think Capital Opinions enough. was in chat earlier saying, like, part of this you have to keep in mind is that he's like, he admitted to like not having watched basically any of them as well. Right, yeah. Hmm. He was like, yeah, he's probably not going to have a reason to think they're better than a sort of cynical view if he's not even uh, checking them out. Um, but yeah, uh, well, was there anything you wanted to ask us? Or? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little flustered, as you could probably tell. No problem. Um, I guess just like, because I've, I've come in extremely halfway. Um, what was like, the general thought about my video so far. Uh, like you've whatever got, parts you thought was, I fucked up in. You've got close to impeccable editing. Um, I'm very impressed. We've watched about a bazillion videos on EFAP in our time, and you've got some of the best editing we've seen, though I will say... In terms of the technical aspects. Yeah, it's... I would use the word erratic in terms of there are some mm -hmm. sequences in this that I'm almost... Yeah, it's the equivalent of eating too much cake, where I'm just like, mm, visually... I think, I think it's massively over-edited. Mm. Um, I think it would be um, lots of that noises if, that if are you, too loud. Constant if transition. If you dial it back just a little bit, it uh, because I think that occasionally it can kind of like obfuscate the points that you're making. Like it just becomes a little bit difficult to focus in on exactly what you're saying. So I think as if you dial it back, like the clarity will increase like substantially because you're already you I'm already gonna... have like a clear level of competency. Can in, I make a um, guess? In editing itself. I've yeah. I've spotted Dr. Skipper's talking in chat. Are you part of the commentary community? Um, <laughs> I am very much not, but I am a friend of his, yeah. Well, because I was just going to say, your editing, now I'm thinking about it, reminds me of a lot of the way commentary community people edit their videos. Um, I used to talk to a lot of people in that community, but I really do not fuck with it. I don't want any. <laughs> oh, yeah, no it. worries, because uh, it's a, a, you know, any community on YouTube is a fucking curse hole at this point. But mm -hmm. I was just going to say that... that. <laughs> That could explain <laughs> where you may have uh, learned it, because it does feel a little bit unique compared to the... Because video essayists, they tend to have a different... You, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say this, right? Like, there's a, a commonality between, like, Brown Table, High Top, and a bunch of the others yeah. we've covered. Putting not, test on screen. They're not quite like this. Yeah. This is a different beast, uh, but still of a level that I think is much better than a lot of the people we cover. Yeah. Well, I used to... You have um, a style. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah. I used to make videos before, like, I was typo. I had, like, another thing, and it really, it didn't go anywhere, and I tried to, like, fix a lot of the mistakes. And the reason for the erratic editing, uh, uh editing, um, is for two reasons. One, like, it helps me avoid copyright. If, like, the music's constantly changing and the mm. clips are constantly changing, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it doesn't really be, yeah. get picked up for claims, and I think it's more fun to do. And also, I think it helps watch time. Like me personally, I'm always more engaged if the frame is moving and changing and it's like there's it's some kind of it's dynamic than it's kind of static. I my brain starts to sizzle a little bit if I watch um like video essays that kind of like stay on one thing or use the same music too much. So I kinda of wanted to avoid that. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, fair that's enough, a good, man. good point, yeah. I, uh, what else? Uh, we, well, so the overall thing is that we, we agree with your conclusion, we just disagree with a lot of the ways you've come to figure it out, i.e. what you've stated are, like, the bigger problems that the MCU's fourth phase is facing. I think I covered it when you first came in, but just, like, broadly speaking, like, oh, they don't even have an overall plan that's clearly, like, hampering them. We believe pretty much that if all of the films were really well executed individually, but contradicted each other, I think it would still be fine. People would would be fine with it. I think they should be mm -hmm. like, oh, that's kind of weird that, uh, I don't know, that this thing turned up there, but it's not in this, thing, blah, blah, blah. Because uh, that was kind of what Phase 2 was to the public, I would say. The, the movies yeah. on the mo their own, people really loved them, but when you actually look at their world building, it doesn't fucking match very well. Um, 
I think yeah. something that, looking back, I think I kind of went off course with my original intent. Because something I really wanted to drive home, and I'm not entirely sure I did very well, was that I don't really want like the big interconnected universe shit anymore. I don't really care about it. Um, I'd much rather prefer smaller individual things. But my main issue with Phase 4 is that it's trying to have its cake and eat it too. Like, it's, like I've gotten so many comments on my video about like, oh, it's another Phase 1. It's trying to set up new things. <laughs> um, but it's constant. It's constantly putting in like setups for future I was things. Say, like, it's, still hampering it. Yeah, there's shit tons of people all over the place everywhere in this. It's not. I wouldn't compare yeah. it to Phase One at all. <laughs> like, just like, see yeah, how... I wouldn't. Because you look at like an Iron Man one, like that's very centralized with its main character, and then like it's telling their story, and then you look at like um, a Shang Chi or something, and it's going all over the place. There's a bunch of different other MCU characters in there that I feel kind of hampers the story they're trying to tell mm -hmm. i think so, it even makes i think it even makes the cinematic universe less cool that's another I wonder, thing i kind of like about no, dc no sorry no um, no no go yeah go for it. someone it's... needs to take charge <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i um... I, I was just gonna say i wonder if um something that i think i said before while we were watching the video is that i think that phase four is the worst of both worlds in that it's yeah. um it it everybody wants to do whatever they want with their story with no regard for the broader universe that it connects into so you've got something that's incredibly incoherent yet at the same time none of the films are that distinct in terms of the types of stories they want to tell or yeah. visuals well told, or you know editing yeah yeah i think moon knight could have been such a fucking cool show <laughs> if they had yep. just like if they disregarded the Marvel formula and the Marvel presentation, but they were, didn't. Were you, they tried were, you uh, were you hyped for Moon Knight before it came out? Uh, pfft, not really. Oh, okay. I, don't know. I guess it was a bit I... different. Sorry, oh, sorry. Go for it. Um, I haven't really been hyped for anything other than No Way Home. I guess with Moon Knight, it was more morbid curiosity because I was hearing like during the build up, like, oh, it's going to be gritty. We're bringing back the gritty side of the MCU. <laughs> It's yeah. gonna be street level, and then it's just the yeah. complete opposite. And then, like, I dealt... you lied to me, you know. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> lied to me. I saw like more of the source material stuff, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is so cool!" And then I watched Mr. Robot, and I was like, "This is kind of what I wanted from the Moon Knight show." I think right. I... Well, I mean, Ooh. yeah, I mean, if we're gonna compare Moon Knight to Mr. Robot. It's not a particularly favorable comparison, that's for sure. Nah, Dude, nah. They did the same thing with Moon Knight that happened with WandaVision and happens with a lot of their shit. Where by the time you hit the last yeah. episode, when you see the two kaijus fighting, you're like, what the hell was this show? I thought this what was. What happened? Like, what? I thought that Moon Knight was really gonna be a street level detective mixed with, like, this guy who has to deal with these alternate personalities and a history of his. His own history is like shrouded in mystery and he doesn't understand it. But instead, yeah, we gotta have a big end of the world climactic like showdown with yeah, the big kaiju fight between the crocodile and the skeleton bird. Yeah. <laughs> what made me interested in Moon Knight was Oscar Isaac, because I think that guy's terrific yeah. and whatever yeah, he's yeah. in. Yep. Yeah. And he but was then... terrific in that show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I watched episode one and I went, eh, okay. Like, I thought he did a great job, but I just, I didn't even think it was bad, but I wasn't enticed to watch the rest of it. We were, like, we yeah, were, we were fine with it. Yeah. We were interested to see more. I wanted to see more after the first episode. I, I had a cautious right. optimism. And then and it very yeah. quickly okay. evaporated. Yeah, Absolutely. For, for us, it was like, vaporized. two was really bad, three was really bad, four was really bad, five was like, oh... Five, five, yeah. was five, weird. five was weird. I was a little. It is weird. Mm, yeah. I didn't. I didn't really like five that much. Honestly. The, 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 okay. the hence my choice of oh, because there's stuff in there that's like okay, you're trying to draw because like I was actually really surprised that Marvel displayed like a a child getting abused to the point of them developing a second personality. It's just like that's a little bit ballsy of you. Okay, cool. Well, what are we doing with that sort of thing? Um, but I, I, I you know, I still don't think. That uh, especially that last episode, like just looking back on Moon Knight as a whole, was it... it's kind of funny because like I'm I'm trying to almost try and give it a bit of its uh bit of credit to it when I realize like Moon Knight is seemingly with with Thor: Love and Thunder and MOM just this thing that's crashing people's view of the uh the f Phase Four when um we would have thought Loki should have done it, but loads of people really loved Loki, so yeah, you never Loki know. Was... 
But at the same time, it seems like every single thing comes and goes. Like, Miss Marvel was a thing, and it just came and went. Nobody talks mm -hmm. about it. Thor Love and Thunder, you forgot <laughs> that that was the most recent <laughs> film. Um, like, the, everything comes and goes so quickly. The half-life is, like, minuscule on these projects. Nobody cares about Hawkeye oh. anymore. Nobody cares about Eternals. Like, that was a, a funny know. part of... I can't remember what it was in this video, but you were summarizing. You summarize phase one. You do all the projects. Phase two, all the projects. Phase three, you skipped out. Uh, Captain Marvel and uh, was it Captain Marvel and Ant Man? Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, like we figured you just must have forgotten the, those two. I did honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if know. if I'm the awkward middle children. If I may provide uh, some input on uh, the video you made, typo. If I mean, if you're looking for it. Um, yeah, no. I, I, uh, I watched it, and I, I, you made a great argument about like keeping all the clips brief to avoid any uh, copyright issues. But uh, I would suggest if you're going to maintain that brevity for each clip, uh, maybe dial back on the transitions a bit, because I did find that it was uh, overwhelming. Um, all the inform, like the speed of the information being conveyed as well as uh the amount of sounds because like you put so much work into the um uh sound effects and like your music selection but uh, i think you just gotta mix the sounds and the music uh a little lower and um um what or is it necessarily say? better well the thing is um, uh, right, it sounded yeah. like he was making it for a more erratic audience like it's, this is the kind of thing that could be shared on tiktok i assume is is I don't know if we're old or not. I always have to wonder. Yeah, we are old. <laughs> See, we were born I, in the I, previous century. In regard to the arguments you were making, I was largely inclined to agree with you. I mean, I think the only point you made that I really disagreed with was uh, a point you made about going to see Doctor Doctor Strange just for like the the cameos in Multiverse of Madness, like where I think we kind of agreed on this podcast that we went because we really liked that character and Benedict's portrayal of him. And, you know, it's like, Oh, maybe there's going to be a good story here. Um, but, uh, I, I largely agree with your point about, um, Marvel being too focused on the interconnectedness of everything and like the broad plan, as opposed to ensuring the quality of the films on an individual level. But uh, the, the information was coming at me so fast and the, the visuals were so quick and the sound effects were quite loud. I found myself rewinding a lot and turning on closed captions to like absorb the information better. Um, mm -hmm. So really, I mean, it's an easy fix, I think, to, to make it more, um, be to have it better absorbed by people. It's, I would just say uh, cut back on the transitions or just keep it to simply cuts you know, just simple cuts without I think you can do cuts. anything on them. I think that yeah. I think you, you could do the same thing where you have like the rapid cuts between different shots and then you have the sound effects that punctuate that. And I think that even if you did it with cuts, it would achieve the same thing. But like the moving of the frame is like a little extra bit of, you know, visual information. It sounds nitpicky, but because like the, the style in general, like you're quite good at editing. <laughs> I think I, I guess that's the hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, say, better than me. Uh, I don't even know how to do some of those things. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, nah. that's that's just that's just my thoughts on it. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of my, because I know I'm very aware. That, like, was it like every two minutes there's like a little transition I do. Uh, most of the time it's just because I think it would be fun to put it in, but um. Like, there was one I remember specifically. It was, like, when Thanos snaps his finger. I think that was... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that was because I had, like, an audio fuck-up, I think, and I wanted to distract from it. I think that's probably what I love. A lot of... <laughs> I like that. It's honestly, I like that. It's honestly because... I think one where I'm, like... Where I took... It's, like, the Green Goblin, like, smashing the helmet with a rock, and then yeah. it does that weird yeah. transition to Iron Man 3. And that was because I realized that the audio didn't flow very well. If you just go from that to, like, cut, immediate cut. Hmm. I think a lot of it's probably a scripting issue. Um, I could definitely, there's a lot I could definitely fix with um, my scripting or even just my voice recording to circumvent a lot of that. When we were talking about your editing, I, I brought up uh, zero punctuation as an example of something that moves very fast and is like throwing a lot of information at you at once. But uh, what 
what I think works about that is that uh, the visuals are very simplistic. Like they're still images. There's not a, a lot to like soak in in regards to visuals, and the cuts are very simple. No well, transitions, just cuts. It's almost like stick figures in very the kind of brief, very, the easy are to tied absorb to what he's saying in a very very direct way. Yeah, so you, you so can almost like, like you listen to what he's saying, and even though it's very fast, uh, you're you can focus on them and just kind of stare at the visuals, which are more peripheral, you know. And it's it's easier to soak in. Like if if that if the that had complicated animated visuals and stuff, that would be a lot harder to process. Mm. Given the volume yeah. of uh, arguments like being made and the speed at which, like I don't even know if he like speeds up his voice in post production. Maybe I he think does. he does. I, yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm not sure. Um, we are uh, we could we are, well we have a couple. What, what's your um? You have to leave anytime soon, Mister Mister Typo, because you we could <laughs> switch over to the other Go video next, yeah. that regards the same topic but is much shorter, and you could maybe join us to see if you agree or disagree with the video or us. Who knows? Um, I think I got about like an hour left until I gotta until I gotta go. Well, that's oh, good, good we enough. Can I think. First yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Well, in that case, as you can see in our little Discord group. That's the link. I assume you've used Wash Together before, but I, I can't be sure. Never in my fucking life. Wow. <laughs> uh, see, this new generation don't even know about Wash Together, Eyes. Can you believe? Uh, that is, it's it's, fucking... we're living in another world. Yeah. Oh my god, it's my chicken. Parallel lives. My little South Park chicken. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the way it works is just, it's like a YouTube video, but all of us are in this, and all of us can pause and play whenever we want, but your volume is yours, and... Uh, well, that's about it, I think. <laughs> Not much else for you to do. Use, use the um, use the arrow at the bottom left to start and stop. If you click on the screen, it just oh yeah, it doesn't yeah. Work like YouTube, clicking on the so. screen. I don't know why they clicking on the screen will pause it for like two seconds and then it automatically plays again. That seems to be what it does every time I've ever used it. And I don't know what the yeah, just point of that is. Yeah, not sure. Now the yeah. second video we were planning on looking at, and I suppose are now. From Nerdstalgic. Now, if you oh, remember, we have covered him once before, and I believe the video we covered from him before was about how the problem. Oh fuck! Was it the problem with superhero fights is that they're always in the air or something like that? Do you remember this? It was. <laughs> I can't help you. I can't remember. Oh, it was. It was a bizarre argument. Because I remember the main references were Shazam, Man of Steel, and um, I think even Chronicle. Someone's gonna have to help me out with in chat with what the argument was, but it was very strange. Like the big problem right now is that they fight in the air or something. And it's just like what? Oh, that one. Oh. So if they're shooting lasers at each, at each other, but their feet are oh. planted on the ground, it's That's fine. fine. Yeah, and it's yeah, very the, the, exciting the to Man watch. Man of Steel fight scene. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now that you say that, it's all coming so, back to me. Yeah, he has a uh, yeah. And Sadberg agreed with the video. It was fucking weird. <laughs> I assume it was just because it was like a friendly thing. All of that was on my channel. We did that. Oh, we definitely covered it on EFAP because I I I, rem I think I told you explicitly like this needs to be seen on EFAP. I'm almost certain the fact that chat know about it as well. Uh, I think you were the one that made me aware of it, Jay. Okay, you 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 send these takes to me sometimes. Anyway, he's got this video, and it's called The Unfortunate Problems with Marvel's Phase 4. So, let's go for a different perspective on what it is that is tanking the fourth phase in Marvel's cinematic universe. The idea was okay. to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more. The MCU has taken superheroes from being the laughing stock of Hollywood to the most financially successful genre in global. Were they ever? I don't the think that's fair at all. Hollywood. How did I Sam Raimi already do that? I don't agree. How the fuck is this I don't the agree MCU that did this? And by the way, it's easy to Batman, Batman and Robin. And Robin clips. Yeah, it's a. And be it's like, a, oh, aren't that wasn't a laughing like, stock. Oh, everyone loved it, and everyone to this day loves it and thinks it's a masterpiece. Okay, I'll hear nothing <laughs> different. But it has endured the, the test of time. On a serious note, when did um when did Blade come out again? Nineteen ninety eight, I think. When did oh. Batman and Robin come out? Nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> okay, well, so Blade was a little campy, I'll give it to you, but that's that's inching it toward, and then you get the Spider-Man movies the and the X-Men movies, which, yeah. yeah, like, you can't deny that, 
like saying that you know the MCU has made it not a laughing stock and financially like safe thing to do is just like I don't know, man. Three Spider-Man movies. Do you see how many X-Men movies they made? I don't know. I feel like we're skipping they over made... some of the components here, but that's fine. Revisionist history. Oh. <laughs> global media <laughs> and yet now with super producer kevin feige at full command of everything marvel you'd expect things to be chugging along swimmingly and they are on one level however a closer look reveals a significant problem with marvel's phase four ah. the mcu started in 2008 with the release of the robert downey jr vehicle iron by the way that 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 mouse clicky noise yeah it's <laughs> just always every time i hear it i'm like man that, you just want you to know, fucking like kill a person, anymore. don't you? That's how much annoying you it is. You kind of do. I kind of hear that and I want to <laughs> kill someone. Yeah. No. Like, no. I have a murderous rampage inside of me that I'm hiding back with this smile and friendliness. But ugh. Wait, Blakely how do Clark. I enable the bell? How do I subscribe? Oh, the mouse. Okay, right. Oh, I use the mouse. And then do I do I do anything when I... Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I press oh, this button I here. The thing on I the top, like, it moves. I do wonder sometimes where they get it from. Is it just like a YouTube video, the screen, except for that part, and you download it, and it, you just crop it out, and then you're oh, like, hey. I, I put it in, in, one, of yeah. my, in one of my highlights, uh, like from my stream highlights. Screen. It's, just, it's, just, it's just a transparent thing you can download. It's like millions of them online. Yeah. Right, so they, do they come with the clickety it out, yeah. do they come with the clickety clack or do you have to make it yourself? No, you have to make the sounds. Oh, fuck. Yeah, well, it's not fucking with it there. Forever, yeah. It's just gifs and Giffenheimers out there you can get. Very you rescued easy. the gif with the Giffenheimers. <laughs> Giffenheimers. Yeah. Iron Man. I am Iron Man. The first film in an interconnected web of feature films spanning multiple studios, characters, and franchises. In case you're unfamiliar, the eras of the Marvel Cinematic Universe are divided up into what mega producer Feige and company have. He remembered Captain Marvel. <laughs> wow. Termed phases. I'm phase sorry. one is six films Iron Man 2 Avengers. Phase two is six films Iron Man 3 to Ant Man. And phase three, acting as the climactic third act of the initial movement of the universe, is 11 films Captain America Civil War to Spider Man Far From Home. These 23 films act as a complete story, more or less. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Millions of people from across the globe have. Yeah, a lot of this is just, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I can't disagree yeah, with any of this. This is all establishing accurately. Yeah, yeah. the rules, the yep. ground, yeah. It's a summary. Mm -hmm. yeah, I suppose he'll be making arguments, I assume. I feel he on. is accurate so far. Let us, I'm very curious where he's going to go. Real to the exploits and triumphs and failures of the iconic Marvel superheroes. All of these films lead up to the crescendo of the twin capstones to the story, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. These two films, directed by the Russo brothers, pulled in close to $5.5 billion. Wait, 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 uh -huh. I think you have $200. Whoopies. Which is? Oh, fucking hot. Ah, uh, they have to pay for food in their universe. And get it? Uh, 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 cringe. <laughs> fucking badass. They are an achievement in the craft and business of filmmaking that has never been paralleled. They were a definitive end to the story that was jump-started all those years ago in 2008, and then... You gotta move on. Marvel and the rest of the world had to move on. No, I don't think I will. Marvel's hotly anticipated Phase 4 promised new characters, new twists and turns in the ongoing plot, and even you more excitement. say that. Yeah, I mean, because I think we talked about it briefly when we were covering the, the first video. It's just, like, there are, th there are places to go, you know? Like, so let's yeah. hope. I think I think we talked about this all the way back when we were like, yeah, you know, there's plenty. This could be good still. Things Let's can be do. done. And now with a new element thrown into the mix, Kevin Feige would be overseeing TV projects for Phase Four, meaning not only would Phase Four include numerous films. Is it just me or this like disembodied human in this void that displays <laughs> icons? It's so Especially when it's him, you know. It's like, did you you just you just want this guy wandered in to this? <laughs> Title He's screen. surrounded by logos. He's in the logo verse. He's in the logo zone. Cinematic logo verse. Yeah. Please let me out of here. No, you have to do more. It does seem that he's spread quite thin. It's like, give him some help. Throw in another guy. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in another, just a chair. Throw the guy a bone. <laughs> Throw another producer into the, the portal. <laughs> he's like, no, no, let me go. Yeah. <laughs> no, we only want to pay one person, Kevin. You do everything. Films, but it would also include eight TV show projects, each roughly ten episodes in length. Well, and it would have been more, but they changed their minds oh, <laughs> last yeah. week. Here's where we get to the problem 
with Phase 4. Simply right. put, it's not learning the lessons it needs from the comics. It's overly convoluted, requires literal homework from the audience, and has major structural issues on a storytelling level. Um, so, those just sound like things that are bad in general, as opposed to... Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I assume the argument there is that that's what the comics went through, therefore they he's should saying, have learned... I think he's saying that they're making the same mistake, which is that it can be very difficult to get... Uh, maybe well, but, not that specifically, but it's often said it's very difficult to get into comics. Where do you start? You well, know? but the thing is, like, if I broaden that out, it could be like, yeah, but those comics didn't learn from the people before them who wrote stories and had the same problems. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Right. Mm. It's not quite... Because, like, I think it would be more applicable if the person who wrote Iron Man's first comic and made mistakes then wrote the movie and made the exact same mistakes. He'd be like, how did you, how did you, how did you not learn from the blah, blah, blah? But, like, um, I'm partially convinced, especially in fucking Phase 4, these writers aren't even read. They haven't even read the source material. Do. I don't even know that they they're aware they exist. The, I mean, they won't watch the shows that precede their films, so... Because, like... <laughs> I know, like, John Favreau, um, maybe even Shane Black, I don't know. I know Joss Whedon read the comics. Like, they used to hire people who were very nerdy as well as creators. Yeah. Um, but now there's, like, a new phase of nerd where it's like, yeah, I've seen all of the newest Spider-Man movies. I'm not repulsed by like, the concept no. of superheroes. <laughs> I am a nerd. I am still invested in seeing all of product. Hell yeah. I am very cool. Should we cast Pietro? There's been a lot of chatter online about how certain people in the Marvel fandom are frustrated by the fact that there isn't enough forward movement happening on the core story of the MCU. They feel that the MCU is just treading water and has a pacing problem compared to the breakneck speed that phases one and two had. I like this isn't even close to touching upon what I think the problem is in phase four. <laughs> <laughs> what guess, we're like, gonna do is we might well it'll be the same thing where we say, well, but is it good? Like the idea that it's the pacing, that's really what people have been talking about is the problem. It's like again, I I still think Multiverse of Bad is one of the highest, like, nonstop paced movies that we've ever had. It's just really bad. Well, it's I yeah, because I don't think it's a matter of pacing, it's it's rudderless. Where are we going? We're going very fast, nowhere, you know? Like we're <laughs> yeah. kind of it's like we're getting pulled in ten different directions and so we end up staying still. Because we have no idea where it's all leading we're, to. We're charging into the fucking IP void universe. Pretty much. Where we're going. Yeah. We're just appearing every time. Like, remember that that ad for when they were first like showing off what Phase Four would be, and they just go boom, boom, boom yeah. into your screen. Yeah. It's essentially just that. That's what it has, has been this whole time. We don't know what's going on. It's just stuff coming at us. <laughs> <laughs> On the overly convoluted front, the film side of things has become so linked to the TV side that there are massive story beats happening behind a paywall on an app that the general public may or may not have. To be fair, well, the movies I mean, are it doesn't have a hundred paywall exactly, and is, doesn't Disney Plus have like yeah. 110 million subscribers? And oh man, I actually hate to make this argument, I really do. But why couldn't you have said this about Phase Three? You gotta go watch Doctor Strange to know why he's in Ragnarok. Who's this guy? You know, like you can yeah, like a, say that. Services, that. If someone said you can't do it from home, you gotta go to the fucking theater, or you have to buy the DVDs because yeah, those and are and the if, only ways, of course, to watch movies. If someone said if the well, idea that's that fine though, because that's sequels versus a different like format or something, I'd be like, I don't know. That feels a and little as, bit arbitrary. The idea that a paywall said, only applies to television. As, a, yeah. as opposed yeah, to that's like weird. a box office is seems silly. When it's, I'd say it's also, less applicable because one paywall is done and then you get access to all the shows. As yeah. has already been said right. as well, um, you, you're better off not doing your homework on Marvel films because <laughs> you might learn <laughs> yeah, that it yeah. makes even less sense. Well, You'll um, go mad. You'll go insane. At this point, I really do feel like the best and possibly only example of this fuck-up actually coming uh, to a head is the Multiverse of Madness one, where there are people right, right. who have made significant points online about how it's absurd that the characters believe that Wanda is going to destroy the multiverse. They have no reason to think that. And it's like, ah, oh, you didn't watch WandaVision, did you? Because like they, <laughs> they, that's where they got it from. And it's like, that's Michael Waldron's fucking mistake. He needed to be specific when he had Wong talking about it. You've got to do that, because like, you, you can't really... And I think this, is, this has been throughout all the phases. If ever you, you, know, you go, oh, here is Doctor Strange, it's like... Well, for those who didn't watch Doctor Strange, just make sure they understand he's a fucking sorcerer, he's aware of 
uh, things, and you're just keeping an eye on stuff. You know, nothing that's too complicated, so they understand what's going on. And I think they've done that. But that that example in Multiverse Man is one of the first times I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, you screwed that up. Because it, if you don't watch WandaVision, it's just like, Wanda's like, I wish to have my children. And then Strange is like, please don't destroy the multiverse. Like, wait, what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> like, I don't understand. People even got to the point of being like, yeah, it's just really hard. It's, that's, that's how a, a mother who just cares about her children is treated. It's like, no, wait, no. I, oh. <laughs> you're confused. So, um, yeah, I, don't, I throw this theory out too. I, I, I think if all these individual projects were good and yet still relied on, like, I don't know, tertiary information on other ones, nobody would really care that much. Have access to. I like your plan, except it sucks, so let me do the plan, and that way it might be really good. Sure, the first three phases of the MCU were a lot to keep straight, but it was 23 movies. It was a linear story. If you showed up to the theater, you got the narrative. Now, you have to juggle the feature films and the vital continuity in the TV shows. Well, so that's just about framing. I could have just said that in a way more complicated way. I could have been like, you have to keep track of all the different IPs that encompass within this timeline. You have to go check online or at least have some friend who's familiar with even knowing what Doctor Strange is and how it compares to something like Black Adam. Is that in the MCU? No, it's not. Okay, what about the Inhumans TV show? Should I be watching that? What about the Netflix Netflix show? Should I be watching that? And I'm sure he would say, like, well, no, those weren't necessary. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, that's the thing, right? Like, how are people supposed to know? you got to find that out. You can't just assume, mm -hmm. right? So, right. yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is... Um, I'm almost defending Phase 4 here, and I don't like it. Not me. <laughs> Does Doctor Strange 2 make any sense if you haven't seen WandaVision? Not really. I, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think it makes more sense if you didn't watch it. I honestly do. Uh, <laughs> because Wanda just says she's, she uh, checked the Darkhold and she's got children in an alternate universe and that's what she wants. That's what she says in Multiverse of Madness. You can find out the mechanics for why that happened in WandaVision. Unfortunately, if you do that, you'll find out a bunch of other things that then fuck with uh, Multiverse of Madness completely. So I don't know, man. Well, I didn't see one division and said it didn't make any sense. So there you go. Yeah, it makes no sense no matter what. So it's all good. <laughs> Last time we saw Wanda on the big screen, she was reeling from the death of Vision. And now she's a villain talking about children. If she says it in, it's, I'm sorry, but it is as clear in Multiverse of Madness as it is in, in WandaVision. She made up the kids and she wants them because they're real in a different universe. They say all of this in Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, they do. Doctor Strange yeah, is like, you made them up, they're magical. And then she's like, every mother makes them with magic. And then later on he's like, bitch, seriously, you made them up. And then she's like, yeah, but they're real in a different universe. I don't that know. That was a really cool line, by the way. She's a villain with children now. <laughs> I love that. It's, uh, it made her endearing. If you haven't seen the Disney Plus show, you're cool. out of luck. This doesn't make any sense. Nah, nothing makes sense here, man. The only thing that does make sense is that nothing makes sense. Structural yeah, that's issues. just Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4. That's a good summary. Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> boon to him then for choosing that. Nice. ...have always plagued the MCU. Whether their offerings are deemed as too formulaic or struggling with pacing, there always seems to be some common flaws with the different phases of the MCU. For Phase 4, one of the common complaints is that the shows bottom out during the middle of the series. Everything tends to grind to a halt on a plot level. Look at Moon Knight. Yes, the best episode of the series takes place in the middle with Mark running around an Egyptian temple. That's not the okay, best whoa. episode. Okay, no, we need to. We need to. This so did he just say the opposite of? Was he? Did he say they bottom out in the middle? Isn't that what he said? And then he just said we'll take yeah. Moon Knight, but Moon Knight's best episode is in the middle, according to him. Which, by the <laughs> way, that episode was. They're all mostly pissed. That was particularly painful. So this is this is the true take on the Marvel shows. This is how they work. Phase one. Uh, not fate. Oh my god. <laughs> episode one. Episode one is usually it ends on some big hook or some big reveal, something that is like, ooh, we got to entice you to want to watch this. Like in Falcon and Winter Soldier, it was that it ends on um, on Walker as Captain America. Um, Loki ended on like him joining like the TVA to go on adventures with him. Or did it end with like Sylvie getting teased? Or was she in episode two? It ends on some hook. I remember that. Well, much. no, you're right anyway because we got uh, one division. Was they realized they're watch they're being watched. The show is being watched, and then Moon Knight ended with him getting in his costume, talking face yeah. to face with uh, Mark. 
um, Hawkeye, I remember in episode one, ended basically with Hawkeye teaming up with Kate Bishop, like them meeting each other. They always end on some big hook that is to, to entice you to watch it. The show then just deteriorates over the next few episodes. Episode four always ends with some big, huge moment. Loki dies, gets sent to Aelioff land in episode four. Uh, Walker with the shield in episode four. I think episode four of One Division has that's when Monica gets blasted out of the the world. Um, this, is, this is episode four for Moon Knight, right? Moon Knight, he dies in episode yeah. four. It's so reliable. Episode five is the big penultimate. The penultimate episode is always some big revelation filled episode because in One Division the penultimate episode was the flashbacks. Loki, it was him in the fucking, like, with all of the other Lokis trying to introspect and learn things about himself. Moon Knight was the big episode with his backstory. And then the finale, they finally get their comic accurate costume and everybody's super happy and there's some, some shit big, fight. huge and bullshit then, fight, yeah. yeah. A big bullshit fight and then it's over. And then there's the hook. That's every single one. Like, with minor tweaks. That is the formula that they all use. Yeah. It is incredible how reliably they've used it. It's really weird you- that He's like, ah, oh, we all know it, the problem. They they bottom out in the middle. I, I that's the first time I've ever even heard this theory about the TV shows having that yeah, as that a consistent element. Yeah, that sounds to me. I think you can apply that more broadly too. Like Halo did the same thing. Episode five is the big fight scene. Like you got to have that big mid season hook where there's a bunch of things blowing up. Well, Halo is um. I saw someone on Twitter say this, and I so agree with it. Um. Halo learned a lot of the bad lessons from... Uh, um, uh, that, that implies... So Breaking Bad is a great show, and a lot of what people will point to in Breaking Bad are the big moments. I am the one who knocks. Um, the, the prison, the prison, like, assassinations. Um, the, you know, Gus's death. Like, they'll always point to these really climactic moments when they yeah. talk about that show. Um, but the reason why those sequences work so well is because of the slower, quieter you could even say more mundane storytelling where like you're building these things up. And so a lot of people seem to have pulled from that. We need big moments. That's what it means to be real television is big moments, big yeah. epic moments, those scenes that people talk about. So Halo is just filled with big epic moments, but it's all supported by bullshit. <laughs> like there's no, there's no yeah. substance behind any of it. So it's right. worthless. Yeah. But then the ensuing three episodes are just extended scenes of Oscar Isaac talking to himself. Wait, uh, this six episodes in total. Un- I need to hear this again because yeah. it it felt to me that he just said, like he said, you know, of all the five numbers, two of them are pretty excellent. Four okay, but three of them oof. And you're like, wait, no, wait. I'm trying to decipher your madness, sir. How could you do this to me? <laughs> yes, the best episode of the series takes place in the middle with Mark running around an Egyptian temple, but then the ensuing three episode episodes sucks. are just extended. Wasn't the temple episode episode there, four? No, the temple was four, so there's two episodes left. This is, and this is what I mean. There was only one episode where he talks to himself. So he goes, he's like, in the middle, we hit the fourth of six episodes, which is already like, wait. And then he says, and then the next three are bad. Like, of. There's two. Yeah. When <laughs> when his broad point is that it's bad in the middle. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> very confused. I don't, I don't know what's gone wrong. Sue, you cannot maths. This is not... I, I very confused. Did scenes of Oscar Isaac talking to himself. How is this possible? I, I think that's a really redundant way to talk about a show that I'm not even that fond of. Like, oh, he just yeah, talks to himself. It's, like, fair. it's not being you fair mean to the You mean reductive, yeah. right? Oh, what did I say? Redundant. Redundant. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I mean reductive. Reductive. Yes, I am. Uh, now you're being redundant. With with your redundant. Master. I am. I am getting a little, little. I got the. I got the, the energy levels. They're not great. Okay, I'm okay. I'm. I'll survive. Maybe I'll grab some some form of drink that will spice me up. Maybe that could be a plan. I don't know. Loki and Falcon and the Winter Soldier suffered from similar issues as well. It's a lot to ask of a viewing public to not only sit through all these shows in order to understand a movie. Is he, the oh, script structure can fascinate me sometimes. So All he was shows? like, okay, I'm going to make the argument that the big thing these shows have as a problem is the middle drops out. The middle part, that's the bad part. All right, that's definitely the problem for all of them. Okay, let's start with Moon Knight. All right, established, middle episode. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, so that was a good episode. 
Uh, well, the rest of it. Yeah, episodes five and six of six are the bad ones. Right. I've done my argument for Moon Knight. Now to move yeah, on to move Loki on. and WandaVision. I'll just say that they have the same thing. Moving on. It's like, what? Bro, you haven't done... <laughs> <laughs> proven anything yet. Well, yeah, <laughs> because usually usually the structure would be claim, uh, evidence, conclusion. I feel like I feel like he set and out to prove the like, point. Claim, different point. <laughs> there we go. Alright, next. Yeah. He set out to prove the point, realized he was wrong, and then just went, fuck it, they all have this problem, whatever. Prove the point by saying, this is the best episode, or not. And, okay, next thing. It's like, but I don't know what you mean. Help me. Movie, but it's even more to ask when they're not up to the standards the movies have set. Another There's, reason. No, they're the, as bad the, as each other. They're as bad as each other. Let's not get things confused. They're as bad as each other. You know, Moon Knight they just ain't. Each other. Moon Knight just ain't as good as Thor: Love and Thunder. Okay, you guys need to get over it. That's just true. And it's so funny to <laughs> say, like, to watch all these shows when they're six episodes, when the average network television show is like 22, 24 episodes a season. And a lot of the time, those episodes for these shows are shorter than 43 minutes. Yeah. Or like 45 minutes, the average length of a show. Like, it's actually not that much material at all. Um, probably by design, because it's too expensive to make anymore. You got to pay the actors too much. It costs too much to, to shoot it. It's not that much, like, material compared to the average television show. Mm. It's amazing how, lo how long uh, TV show seasons used to be. Like 24 yeah. episodes. Yeah. Like, that's a huge production thing. Oh, like, uh, fucking yeah. What, what, yeah. What's happened is that Sopranos and stuff like that, Breaking Bad with 13 episodes, and a yeah. lot of British television is six episodes. So it's like, right, the less yep. episodes, the better we are. It's like, well, the better the <laughs> writing, the better you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it, there is a correlation, obviously. Less episodes you need to write, more time per script. But yep. Marvel doesn't really... The time is... They're all made very quickly, so yeah, it doesn't even matter. And that people are upset at Phase 4 is something comic book fans are very familiar with, but the general public might not be as much. All Narrative right. de-escalation. After a crossover event, big arc, or a significant creative team's run comes to an end, the book typically goes back to basics. It's a way of refreshing the status quo. After Dan Slott's Spidey run ended, you get Nick Spencer taking over Amazing, and the literal title of his first... I have no idea what he's about to say the problem is for the movie I side. I genuinely have no clue. I but I follow I him. would guess it's I... that that we don't really do small basic stuff again after endgame, but, but just go don't... right that... into the multiverse stuff. And that's a mistake, is that we should be doing grounded stuff again. Because I agree actually with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. It should be. I think but that wouldn't be learning to... from the comics mistakes at that point, would it? Well, it it would be that comics have yeah, it wouldn't be from their mistakes. It would be the the unless he's citing the comics that made that mistake. Oh, okay. Like that, it's a better understanding of because there have been. I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest points of like criticism for how difficult it is to get into comics is where do you start, where do you begin? Um, but if you have a comic that says Amazing Spider Man back to basics, it's like oh well, shit, that's probably a good place to start. You know, like you can yeah. you can jump in there. Oh. Let's see what his point is. First arc being back to basics. It's a tried and true tradition in comics. You tell your story, you take the toys out of the play area, and then you reset everything and start building something new. That's what phase four really is. It's a back to basics phase. It's not though. No, it's not. not it's not even say. close. Opposite. It is the okay. opposite. It's, let, it's, us, oh. let us go through this one by one, right? One division, you could maybe argue that that's really low stakes, but the fact is she's literally kidnapped a thousand people and she's at risk of expanding further and further. I think that when you compare to the low stakes of like you know in Daredevil, it's we're only dealing with the implications in one neighborhood of New York. You know, like we talk. Well, yeah, about and, and, uh, and it's worth highlighting like there's there's the complications of Vision. What is essentially this huge weapon being? Uh, you know, the, yeah. will the government? What are they doing with that? So it's like, all right, that's that's probably lowerish. Fine, Loki. Okay, we just we just blew it. That's that's all, that's the biggest stakes you could possibly have. That's dealing with all of the multiverse. So it's like, oh, okay. Well, what's next? Like, oh, well, uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier is like, well, that's that's geopolitics. So like, I, uh, that's pretty big. I think uh, we, we can't well, really. It's, it's um, I mean, the end the end battle is about like the lives of some pretty important senators. I, you know, like, like the whole season. 
is geopolitics. I don't see how we could possibly argue that's yeah. back and to basics. And of course, Loki, Loki is all time. So that is not back to basics. In fact, no. the stakes can't um, really get much higher. Well, they do get higher, but... Shang-Chi, uh, the risk of that ghoulish, that creepy monster dragon, if it gets free, it'll destroy Earth, so like, it'll suck up all of humanity's souls. Of course, souls. Black Widow is about taking over Earth. Yeah, they're, they're enacting, they are literally finally enacting the Black Widow plan, which is to just take over all of Earth yeah. with all of the And operatives. Eternals was the destruction of Earth. Destruction like, of Earth. Blowing up, so it's celestial. <laughs> No Way Home was about all of the multiverse, like, bleeding in. I guess Hawkeye was low stakes, wasn't it? Oh, okay, it? yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so that's what he's one. talking about specifically. And then, and then Moon Knight is all of Earth yep. getting taken over, and Arbit all of the is souls of everybody, everybody in Cairo um, getting their souls sucked out. Multiverse hey, of Madness. The one yeah. that people forget it's about all... is the one with basic, basic stakes. Yeah. Multiverse of Madness yeah, is all of the multiverse all again. All of existence. And all then of everything. And all Thor of is thunders. all of the universe. Well, with gods. Thor, yeah, all, and, and you know, I wouldn't want to understate, if you kill all of the gods, it's going to have hideous fucking consequences for loads of different cultures and planets and stuff. Like, not just in the sense that they're mm -hmm. worshipping, it could be that the god is the only reason they're alive. Like, you know, when whatever mechanics are in play. So, yeah. and, and you are... looking to the future, the, the, Wong says in, in the She-Hulk trailer, our world is on the edge of a precipice, which... Will never yeah. not be funny to me. So I guess we can assume that there might be some big consequences in that show too. To say and then Black Panther is probably going to be a big deal too, because it's like a war between an underwater kingdom and one of the most powerful countries in the world. I believe so. his references are pointing to the opposite conclusion, is what you could say. Yeah, it's bizarre well, that he takes this as this is his. You take compare it to, to basic. You can you compare it to Phase One. Iron Man was specifically about, like, this guy taking over the company to do evil things. It's pretty low stakes, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Incredible Hulk was kind of high stakes, because it was Abomination running rampant in New York. But even then, compared to what we do now, that's probably pretty low stakes. Yeah. Um, um, Iron Man 2 was a guy who was doing evil things in one place, so pretty low stakes, relatively speaking. Thor was a big deal. That was that was like Earth and a whole realm, right? The yeah. the frost giants, and Captain America was about like that was a big deal. That was several cities were in just, peril. It's just funny because like it's like because like, we're we're more than halfway through the video, so I think this is the big point. It's just, it's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's not not true. It's the opposite. Something new. That's what Phase Four really is. It's a back to basics phase. Things are really <laughs> weird. I wish it was. Which isn't as fun as the grand scale of the climactic events. Oh, dude, that, dude. That, oh, you, oh, oh, you've gone so awry. Back to basics, low you stakes stories, so just not awry. as fun as big, epic showdowns. Ooh, I agree. I can't. I can't put into words how awry that is. It is awry. It's it's, it's, it's incredibly awry. It's just wrong. Like it's just a weird perspective on storytelling. Quite awry of in-game undoubtedly but still important simply put they're not going to make an avengers movie anytime soon they're focusing on oh, these well. smaller it, it doesn't I mean... matter if they don't make an avengers movie if they have the end of the world with a team of people trying to stop it like oh well it didn't have the fucking name <laughs> i mean there's gonna be another avengers film in like three years now so it's not far away year, right 2025 mm -hmm. wait is it 2025 or is it yeah it's 2025 Yes, it is. This movie anytime soon. They're focusing on these smaller characters and universe building. These narrative tropes aren't as apparent to film goers as. Um, what if the universe building involves the destruction of the universe, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm the opposite of universe confused. building. Yeah, I just. I was just so, he's literally saying Moon Knight. Does he not remember what the ending of Moon Knight is? A we giant alligator right was going to suck small the souls out of everyone on the yeah, planet. Like, just how be you... clear. Also, it was our planet. It's not just one far away. It's 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 the very That's important one. one. Yeah. characters and on. universe building. These narrative tropes aren't as apparent to film goers as comic book readers. So some people have false expectations of what Phase Four is going to be. You really Those think? Expectations. That's the problem. Sorry. Like the people are like, yeah. wait, where's my big Avengers fight? You really think that's also, it? Here's the thing. Even if we were to subscribe to all of this, those false expectations have in part been fueled by Marvel's marketing. People thought Multiverse of Madness would be a big deal, and it, it is, but it's also not. You know, like, it's a big deal in that the actual stakes of the story are insane, 
But like, if you were looking for like some big epic shit, like in that film, you're kind of missing it, you know. Like, it's not really a multiverse of madness at all. So it's kind of again, it's the worst of both. Yeah. And that's if we agree with this, which I don't think this. I it's just I don't think that people like end of the world stories. That's just not how it works in terms of investment. I don't think investment stems from end of the world. Um, it stems from characters. Yeah, the I can't why... fathom into the world even more. I just can't do it. Like mm -hmm. everybody's, Burned out on everybody's it. excited for Daredevil returning and coming back. Why do you think that is? It's not because they want to see Daredevil flying through the multiverse fighting a bunch of aliens or something. They want to just see Daredevil doing normal Daredevil street level stuff. How do you account you for these things? Happens. It won't happen. These back-to-basic storylines are important for the lifeblood of a comic book universe. It's how you establish new characters and- I fucking wish they did this in the MCU, yeah. but they did not do this. New threats. Are the stories being presented in Shang-Chi, Moon Knight, and the other standalone projects the most impactful or mind-blowing? No. Are you kidding me? What are you are talking you about? You yes, what, they are. What are you talking about? The biggest stakes that have that could possibly ever be made in that universe is done in the show. Loki establishes yeah. Kang and the 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 destruction of free will in the Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe and shit like that. And this guy's like, no, it's not. Well, and if that wasn't funny. enough, Rags, in the same fucking phase, we've got the destruction of the entire multiverse and multiverse of madness. It's like, what? So. Exactly, yes. How it's, is this bigger than you Thanos? You can't make bigger stakes. How is this not bigger than Thanos is actually, yeah, the correct question. I, I don't I don't know, understand this at all. But if executed correctly, they have the potential of increasing the texture of the universe and endearing the audience to the characters. Only issue being, it's kind of hit and miss currently. The MCU... Huh, are, we about, miss are we about to highlight the actual problem? It's a complete miss. What, what is happening? The you, actual problem uh, being that they're not good stories. This always yeah. fucking happens, yeah, because it's like, you know, the big problem is we didn't go back to basics. But I mean, even if we did, the stories haven't been very well written, so... Man, wait, just wait, waste wait, my time! <laughs> it's like, wait, why did you say all the first bit? ...who isn't learning the right lessons from the comics. They're in a back to basics era, but they're pitching themselves as still being Stop in full-blown crossover mode. Such a silly outfit. What? I hate it. Um, um, I don't even understand what we're saying anymore. They, they're in back to basics, but they're pitching themselves wait. as in, like team up mode. Wait, is he is he trying to go around now? Are they? Says, and says like this should be the back to basic one, but that's actually not what they're doing. The I thought yeah. One. I thought the whole yeah, point. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, I thought the whole point he was uh, making was that we got. Uh, the comics did it, and that's why the MCU is doing it too. They're following suit, and yeah, that the yeah, consumers yeah. just don't get it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But now Which said, is leading to this. audience dissatisfaction and pacing issues. Marvel Comics went through similar issues in the late 1990s. The most infamous example of this is the Clone Saga. This story involved Peter Parker, maybe, or maybe not, being a clone. It ran across all four Spidey titles from October 1994 to December of 1996, and was predominantly featured in literally 160 comics. Can you imagine trying to read 160 comic books to try and understand if Peter Parker was a clone? None of these decisions have- What does that have to do with literally anything in the MCU? <laughs> like, I'm, I, yeah, I'm kind of curious what I, the point of that was. What? Have anything to do with the best way to present a story, their business choices, and because of that, they make story pacing really hard to make satisfying. Kind of sounds similar to how Disney is shoehorning all the MCU shows on- No, not even close. I don't even- 160 issues to discover whether or not one character is a clone does not sound like what we've got going right now in the MCU. Yeah, yeah. I need you to make a connection between what we have and what you described is happening, because I do not see it. I am what we might That's a long, lost. drawn out story that's character focused, which means we are absolutely not going <laughs> to have that not in the MCU. Let's be very clear. Is he, about, is he about to say they're shoehorning all their content onto Disney Plus? Like, it, it just seems like a weird. Like, of course they're going to put it all on Disney Plus. It's their properties. Like, streaming service platform and having pacing issues, doesn't it? We're trying to keep you from tearing the Avengers apart. And that's how you get some fans saying that Phase 4 feels disjointed and clunky. 
and that it's the not going anywhere. The reason why they're saying it's disjointed and clunky is because it's really badly written. Yeah, it, it can't exactly just be that it's badly written, can it? It has to be this really you interesting and kooky thing that you didn't think no, about. it's just shit. Just they, shit. They make, they keep making crap, so it feels like crap. What I find interesting is that everyone was fucking praising the shit out of all these things when they came out. So what are you talking about? Lies. Deception. Lies. These are lies and deception. Anywhere, even though it's obviously leading towards secret wars. Secret oh, wars obviously. by- Oh, yes, it's obviously. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. <laughs> obviously, guys. <laughs> That's why it's everything is shit. They're doing the secret wars. Oh. I love the idea that we're, we've all been watching this shit and we're just like, no, I can- I can see the connections, though. Think about it. Love and Thunder, <laughs> Multiverse of Madness, Black Widow. Ah, secret Wars. You can, you can see Secret Wars, yeah. I suspected Jonathan for years now, but that's that's it. It's mm. gotta be, yeah. Man and Assad Ribbage, and loosely based on the original crossover by Jim Shooter and Mike Zeck, features multiversal drama on a Shakespearean scale. In the book, and in Hickman's event- a Shakespearean scale? The fact that you just said Shakespearean scale with an image of what looks to be the cosmos, I don't know the... <laughs> I feel, I don't know. Shakespeare, Shakespeare regularly no, wrote no, many no of his stories. plays. Yeah, most of it's Shakespeare's so... plays revolved around the uh, the fate of the cosmos and the multiverse and really all, all, just all of reality in and of itself. It wasn't two teenagers who loved each other too much. I am familiar Does with those stories. Does Shakespeare have a scale? <laughs> I don't really think that applies. I think it just. Um, I think his his. I think his work is really book. good, high quality. I don't know if that's that's what he's using scale in the right sense. Well, must usually have, Shakespearean describes spoken. certain attributes of Shakespeare stories, but rarely Up is it epic. I guess I how archetypal they great. they are. I suppose is yeah. what he's getting at. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, a person, another person, and then a surrounding cast. You know, mm. it'll be a well, Hamlet or an Othello or, of course, a Romeo and Juliet. The, the scale isn't that big. It's not like these are look, again, to be clear, these are meant to be plays that you could perform on a stage. The scales will not be cosmic and multiversal. Yeah. Right? These are <laughs> literally stage plays. Often the play stories scale. back then were written with that kind of scale because so much of it was stage plays. Yeah. <laughs> Romeo and Cthulhu. Uh, <laughs> I love <laughs> Cthulhu. I don't, what, I don't care. I, I'm now picturing Cthulhu like they're, they're at a restaurant and Cthulhu's just pumped over the table, nervously, no, you know, just sitting there nervously uh, tapping his fingers <laughs> together. One and day every I Shakespeare care about play. Little things in the universe. <laughs> every Shakespeare play, the, the stakes increase. The yeah. Hamlet wants to destroy the universe. <laughs> Hamlet's gonna snap off the life. <laughs> I was gonna get all the Infinity Stones. All of the Montagues will be dead. <laughs> drama on a Shakespearean scale. In the book, and in Hickman's Avengers run, the Illuminati uncover the fact that the multiverse is collapsing. Dimensions are colliding oh, into no. each other, killing all of the inhabitants. Yeah, doesn't this sound so like, oh, for fuck's sake. I don't care. Yeah, the whole it's multiverse like, I don't is collapsing, care. whatever. Wow, that's so grand. Aren't you special? Man, like, I just really like when Daredevil had his life unravel and, and he had to, like, claw his way back up from that. And find, across the multiverse, like, right? No, just across, <laughs> like, New York, I guess. He had to travel, you know? <laughs> he had to travel through the universe in order to discover Probably the enough, secret wish-making um, creature at the center. Because Born Again ends with, like, Iron Man and Captain America actually showing up, which was, like, a big deal at the time. It's yeah. just so funny how low stakes that is now. Like, mm -hmm. Yes, all of the universes are colliding together. Yeah. Shakespearean. <laughs> Really Our really heroes is. band together in order to stop these tragedies, referred to as incursions, oh, to fail. Yeah. Oh, God. oh, that word. <laughs> that word. Yeah, there it is. That the multiverse collapses word. with only Doctor Doom able to save shards from different realities on a dimensional plane called Battle World. They're all Battle <laughs> World. Battle <laughs> World. Oh, okay. That's what Battle you called world. it. Battle World. <laughs> Let's call it Battle World. Oh, come on. <laughs> Call it, Battle call it Google Google Gal, something, something <laughs> even that. I would accept, I would accept Google Google Gal over Battle World. I don't know, Google I prefer Google. Evilville personally. Okay. <laughs> I would take that, especially if it was Doctor Doom's place. All of our Doom. heroes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my evil palace in Evil Land, <laughs> the, the city the, of Evilville. What was the name of Skeletor's castle? Skel. 
a skull castle. Wait, it's um, is it Castle Gray Skull, wasn't it? Castle yeah. Gray Skull. Okay, <laughs> all right. Not bad. Like Those Castle attempt Gray to band skull. together in order to defeat Doom and establish a world that doesn't have zombie Thanos running around. Secret Wars uh, is uh, arguably the best mainstream crossover of the past thirty years. Not so. with how you just described it. I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll have. I'll take your word for it yeah, for the sake of moving forwards. The fact that Marvel is obviously building towards it means their eye is on the prize. All of the clumsiness and strange pacing of Phase 4 will be forgotten once we get to Secret Wars. No, that, that will be forgotten what? because no, nobody remembers not. them. It won't, no, nobody remembers but these it, films. It won't be forgotten in the sense that, like, like we will be talking about Phase 5 then. Back yeah. We will say yeah. Phase 4 was shite, but Phase 5 will be a different conversation. Dude, look at the Celestial. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> His head's a couple of That's a thing. It's, man. Is that Wars. what he... So at the end of yeah. Eternals, is that on the Earth now? Yeah, so that's the, just sticking the, out of the, the Earth. The, the, yeah, so the, the plot is based... Oh, fuck. This is, yeah, so the plot of Eternals was um the Celestials put little Celestial eggs in, like, planets. And then those planets have intelligent life that is protected from deviants, which the eternal the celestial is created by the Eternals. And once the planet gets enough people on it, something called emergence happens, which is where a celestial just pops out of the planet, like crawls out and is like, Yeah, I'm alive and now and the planet blows up. So I thought that shot was hilarious movie. in Eternals, where Earth blows up and there's just a giant guy. <laughs> there's a giant guy standing in the middle. It looks so silly. Hello. I love uh, that. Like... Now I've got to imagine that a giant like god entity just crawling his way out of Earth, even partly, like part way, it's over. Yeah, it's fucked. Earth is destroyed. <laughs> Earth cannot Earth function. Is god. Well, he's a yeah, big boy, isn't then... he? And if you've moved his whole body up by that much, then that's disturbed. There's a lot of matter that's displaced. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I thought as well. It's like, nah, fuck it. Wouldn't the Earth be pushed out? Nah, Whatever. fuck it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, Fine. it's okay. It's not like adding a whole bunch of mass to Earth would like destroy it anyway. Yeah. But yeah. It's a little bit of a bumpy ride, but we'll get there. A little bit of a bumpy It'll ride. It'll all be worth it if we get to hear Doom on the. Like, Why even? <sighs> He's already no, decided sorry. it'll be worth it once we get to this point. That is definitely yeah. going to happen in the future. This what could possibly in the future. Like, and I and I don't really mean this as a rhetorical question, but what could possibly happen in a future Avengers movie that will excuse this pile of shit? I don't think it I will. I think we will simply say, oh, that thing was good in spite of how bad Phase 4 was. That I feel like be... the introduction of the Time Stone has just kind of ruined everything. Because it's just like, you know, eventually the they're going to pull... Well, well, you know what I mean, right? Where it's just like whatever they, whatever happens, if it's bad, you eventually they're just gonna rewind time and fix it. And oh, it I got what you mean. A lack of commitment. Well, yeah, I we've guess. Got, like, yeah, it just out. feels like you can do anything now and then just reverse it. I love how they you know? they took the steps to be like, all right, the stones are out. We can't use them. Well, well, you, you can if you get to a different timeline or dimension or reality or. Right. Well, these are all different things, of course, as yeah. described in detail in their individual movies in which they were uh, mentioned. I'll be right back. I gotta take a phone call. I was about to say as well, it wouldn't even matter because they have a time machine that they can go get the fucking time stone with, ain't we? Mm-hmm. Big screen Oh, so much. I, I actually, I forgot that the stones were destroyed in Endgame. Well, I get, like Otherwise... I just said, it doesn't matter. They can get them all anyway with the time machine, yeah. so... Oh, yeah! Because <laughs> <laughs> of that Mobius strip or whatever? Yeah, whatever that Is was. It... Where Tony Stark figures out time travel in five minutes. Yeah, Easy, but he no said, he "Oh said, shit, I did it." He said, "Oh shit!" So there you go. It's implied that it was surprising. He didn't mean for that to happen so quick, but it did. Convenient. Yeah. <laughs> it's untrue. Okay, that didn't really make sense, but you know what I'm trying to say. Phase four no. is already the size of phases one and two combined in terms of watch hours. Yeah, baffling, There's a sense isn't it? of urgency with some people where they want the payoffs now. If oh, anything, it's don't a testament. You dare. No, don't dare say like, oh, well, you see, it's pretty impatient. You just want payoffs. They're taking their time. Don't do that. They're not taking <laughs> their time. They've ruined everything. They're not taking their time. <laughs> Destroying it all. They could they get every character and put them on these crazy nonsense journeys that destroy them morally. 
intelligently. Why would, why? ...to just how successful Infinity War and Endgame were. The payoffs and conclusions in that film uh, were unlike wow. anything else completed in... Is he just gonna say, yeah, but because it was built on phases one, two, and three. So you gotta wait, okay, and you'll have your nice little Endgame again. What a strange video. <laughs> Yeah. Mainstream yeah. cinema before. Back and because of that, eh? there's a hunger to experience those feelings again. But what so many refuse to acknowledge is that setting up an ending takes time. Yeah. And that's yeah, he's legit saying, like, look, I know you Fuck think this me, is dude. shit right now, but so was phase one, two, and three until we got to end game, okay? Which <laughs> like, is not true. It's, it's not true not at all. True. Iron Man is a great film. Avengers was a really great, like, like that, that in and of itself, right? People were satisfied with Avengers, like Avengers 1 as a conclusion. And you don't need that much to support that story. You got a few films ahead of that. Like, people like those films. Why are we pretending that they don't? What are you? People don't like, yeah. This is what I mean. So many interesting theories today as to why the fifth, fourth phase of the 35,000 likes. I don't understand. <laughs> Apparently, people agree with this. Uh, I think it's baffling and crazy. Like I, the fact that he said, we, we, "We've returned to basics in terms of the stakes." You have to be joking. We've been at higher stakes than ever, and that's ever. his like main Typo. argument. Typo, your video is better than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It was better. Than well, this is the thing. I don't know where he got this argument from. Like, what were you watching mm. when you saw the whole multiverse falling apart? How did you go? Ah, back to basics. <laughs> back to basics, finally. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was weird. That one was annoying. It's so funny, <laughs> though, isn't it? Because one. it's like, you know, you, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you agree with Nerdstalgic then that there's unfortunate problems with Marvel's Phase 4. You'd be like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but the thing is, he doesn't even define them as problems. He's saying, like, no, it's working. You're wrong. Like, you're Yeah, you'll get over it, basically. Is incorrect. Yeah. Give it time, and you'll come around. Ooh. Wild ride. Uh, l like I said, just, just you don't even need to make it longer than a minute. The video can just be... They, they, they've been writing some shit, man. Some real shit writing. That's it. All of that. See you next time for more insightful videos where I explain the inner workings of the Phase 4 of the biggest storytelling franchise in history. <sighs> So anyway, that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Did it. I suppose now, we'll, uh, we'll see what chat has been saying. Way to do it. <laughs> la, 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 la. That's chat normally. Uh, how you doing? How you got? Oh, a lot of them have been asking me to Goodell Shakespearean scale. It's been a while. I probably should have, should have told you this earlier, chat. I have, I have bad news. Oh, no. You're not going to like this, okay? Thing is... I wasn't too fond of making The Last Goodell. Not because I don't think they're very fun and, and all of the good reasons you could imagine, but because I had a thought, and that was that when I started making those, I was trying to point out how shit video essays have gone. And uh, upon making the fourth and fifth one, it really felt I was just trying to make them what everyone expects them to be, which at this point yeah. means they've moved out of being commentary, and they've more so moved into just being thing I'm supposed to make because it's that time of the year. Um, yep. There was a year where I made the uh, parody mm -hmm. of Just Right. I really enjoyed making that, like like ripping off the style and changing the script uh, and trying to sort of do the voice, which, by the way, to this day, people still comment, it's like, Oh, that, that American accent is so bad. It's Canadian. I say a boot several times. Like the, <laughs> it's, it's, I, it's just, I think just right. I'm pretty sure he's Canadian anyway. I hope he is. <laughs> I say. Um, anyway, the point is that um, I'm not averse to making uh, April Fool's videos where I do something a little bit wacky. But I, um, I decided, and I talked to Des Bullshit about this because he's been, he's been super helpful in making Goodell as fucking excellent as they turn out to be. Um, that I, I was not feeling it with uh, with the fifth one to the point where I was forcing myself to make it as opposed to making it because I was in you know very passionate about getting a particular set of jokes or um, commentary out and so what I'm saying is 
Gidelb is being shelved for now. You're not going to be seeing any more episodes unless I feel like there's a way I can incorporate it in, in such a way that I think it has something newer and more interesting to say, as opposed to a collection of silly things that people said on EFAP that year. Which, by the way, I can totally understand why you uh, would still like it for that, and so would I, but um, uh, the, the, the passion's not quite there, and so I would rather stop making them instead of forcing them to be made, if that makes sense. I understand that, man. I, uh, I, a while ago, I started this new series called Professional Reviews, where I kind of play this character, like reviewing games, and the, I only made one episode of it. And I was, uh, the subject was Resident Evil 2, the remake. But uh, it wasn't really about that. It was satirical, satirically making fun of the modern state of like gaming journalism, about how it's, it's so much about like political messaging. Um, but I did one episode and I'm just like, oh, I got all my jokes out. I thought this was going to be a more consistent thing, but if, I'm just like, I'm actually done with this now. And every, mm. People were like, where's the next one? I'm just like, eh, I don't really want to do another one. <laughs> it was supposed to be a series, but it's just like, whatever. If I get an idea down the line, I mean, I'll do something, but I don't, yeah. like you're saying, I don't want to do it just because people are like expecting it or like to well, just I, um, do it for the sake of doing it. I started to worry with the fifth one that my lack of passion was going to start to come through, and I really don't want that to happen, so... Yeah. Was, uh, I, you know, it seemed like people liked it, and I was like, okay, I think I think we'll leave it there. Because you guys must have noticed by now, we've had a whole more than half a year of EFAP, and I haven't written down any Goodell notes, because I basically stopped. Uh, so we've had plenty of amazing quotes, and I was realizing, as, uh, as he said, that the the cosmos scale was Shakespearean. Everyone was like, that has to go in Goodell. And I was like, fuck, you guys are not going to take no for an answer on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. All right, people, people give me ideas for like RB and the Chief episodes as well, where mm -hmm. it's just like, uh, someone was recently was just like, oh, hey, did you know Sony bought Bungie? You should make an episode about that. That's funny. And it is funny, but it's just like, well, I got to figure out a thing. You know, I can't just work with that. Like, it's like, Sure, Sony bought Bungie, and then Chief is like freaks out about it. But then what happens? Then what happens? Like I got to figure out that, and I just I don't have any ideas for that yet. Like nothing has come to me, so I don't want to just start developing something that I'm not really compelled to because I don't have a I haven't figured out an arc yet. That's the key. Yeah, to yeah. Because if someone said like you know oh review uh review Multiverse of Madness or review Thor: Love and Thunder or review um fucking I don't know Moon Knight. If I was like, uh, Moon Knight, I've already like forgotten and want to leave forever, and I don't even really want to rewatch it. And if we do cover it, it'll probably be an EFAB. And as soon as I do EFAB coverage of something, I f often feel like it's like not much point. And like Thor, I guess that applies to Thor: Love and Thunder and MOM still. But there, uh, you know, basically what I'm going to get at is like there are individual reasons why I wouldn't want to cover these things, but there are also some projects where I'm like, oh, I've got a strong passion for this one. I'm not even 100% sure why, so I'm going to fucking charge into it, whether or not, you know. The people were generally looking for it to be made because um i just feel like I that's where the that's, best work uh, comes out i think that's a better way i mean what is the point of like doing essentially uh your own work pretty much independent <clears throat> independently if not to pursue the projects that you personally find interesting and i guess just hope that uh that the audience is um as interested in them as you are you know, well, yeah, that's kind yeah, of all I mean, you at the end of the day, anyway. Like, it's hard to know what anybody is really going to respond to. You presume like, you can kind of have a yeah. You, there's there's things that can inform it. Like, you can reasonably, I guess, uh, think what people like or not like, but it's always going to be hard to say with absolute certainty. Uh, uh, I am so appreciative of my audience in that regard, where it's just like they're cool with me doing whatever it is I'm creatively inclined to do. Because they know, like, that's where the quality is going to be. And I know if I start doing things just for the sake of making it, it's not going to be as good. Well, you, yeah, if the content suffers because of the 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 approach, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, and I and I hope people were interested in seeing my stuff because they liked the stuff, not because they were like, some guy is covering Star Wars. Go. Hopefully, he keeps covering Star Wars. You know, and I'm just like, oh, but if, which is funny because like, you know, I could have probably done a bigger video breaking down some of the newest Star Wars things that came out but like once we did them on the minis or wherever else it just feels like oh, it just feels like that's done I don't really yeah, want to we talk covered more pretty about good it. on those minis even and though yeah. 
You know, we'll we'll be right there when they release a Star Wars movie again if they ever have the balls to. <laughs> we'll see one day if they ever have the balls to. I think that's a fun way to frame it. They're scared. They're scared of what the audience are gonna say. Oh no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are probably now gonna start up doing some super chats, which I feel oh, like. Are you gonna play Mario Kart? I th I don't think I'm gonna play anything actually. I'm just gonna. Oh boy. Oh, right. read what? Answers. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but I, I just want to give a chance for um, anyone, and by anyone I specifically mean John, Metal, or uh, Typo, if, if you guys would like to jump out. It's probably a good little interim to do so, if you wish. Cool. How are you feeling? I'm in, baby. I'm super glued to my chair. Ooh, I'm not going oh, anywhere. Right. Wow. They're going to have to pull my corpse out of my chair. Neat. Mel, what did you say? Oh, I'm I'm just chilling. I'm just, I'm not tired yet. Cool. Hypo, how about you? Oh shit! Sorry, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I kind of disassociated. Oh, uh, uh, I'm alive. Well, yeah, I was I was saying that because we're we're now gonna just answer the messages that have been sent in. So I was gonna say if you wanted to jump out now, if you or or not, it's completely up to you. If uh, not that you were held here against your will or anything, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't want to interrupt your yeah. disassociation. Eh, I ain't gonna hop out now. But this could be an on. Uh, well, yeah, thanks uh, for joining us. That was yeah. great hearing from you, man. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, man. All right. See ya. See you, dude. Gotcha, Have gotcha. a good one. Peace. Right. Well, well. Alrighty then. I shall start reading. Will you guys please check out the new Rockstars video, 10 Times Kang Changed the MCU Timeline in Phase no. 4? No. It sounds no. Hard. No. <laughs> I don't even. There wouldn't be much substance to that, would there? Ten times Kang changed the MCU timeline. It'd probably in... just be speculation that's like yeah. Yeah, unsubstantiated. So no thanks. It's <laughs> ten times that things didn't go the way that he planned for that. Or I don't even know things. <sighs> no, I'm not interested way... in that at all. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's not uh, that. Today's what animal. What did Rockstar do? Oh, I'm sorry. New Rockstars. <laughs> New Rockstars is the <laughs> channel that do like not Rockstar Games, the guys who make. <laughs> yeah, New Rockstars is a channel on YouTube. Um, oh, okay. Today's animal of the day is the frilled lizard. Wow! Come on, get him up. Let's see this little fella. Let's see here, frilled lizard. Oh, it's that boy. Oh. Hang on. I got you. Get get you a little little picture, Rooney. Oh, here. God, it's so exciting. What's going to happen? Uh, 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 copy image. Uh, oh, jeez. No. Uh, there's the boy. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Oh, oh god, he's a dinosaur. Yeah, you see, he spits the goo on you. I don't know about that. Yeah, it was in Jurassic uh, Park. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. It was 93. It Miniature out. version of the one that spits on uh, mm. Wayne Knight. Yes, Wayne Knight. Of, uh, is, uh, what's his relation to Bruce Wayne? Barber. <laughs> it's Barber. <laughs> Even the barbers of the Bruce Wayne household become... They become Wayne. Knight. Wayne Knight. Dark Knight, Wayne Knight. Uh, wait, why is there one and two? The Wayne Knight. Did you ask something? <laughs> um, I'm confused. That's okay. <laughs> this is an Australian one, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. This is one of those uh, iconic lizards, I believe, even though I totally forgot. <laughs> I usually, blue tongue lizard is the, the one that's easier to remember, because it's like, he's a lizard, but he's got a blue tongue. And hmm. he just roams around in the desert like a good boy. Just roaming around with his blue tongue. What will yeah. I do today? I don't know. Probably bask on this rock for a while. And then maybe oh, I'll eat a lizards, cricket. Lizards do have a comfy life, it seems. They, yeah, they don't have the to sun. worry about the MC. A lot of reptiles. No, they, are, uh, they, they do a lot of hanging around. They do. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of animals do a lot of hanging around. I think mm -hmm. that's one of those like weird misconceptions that we have about animals. Is like A lot of animals are just inert lots of the time, chilling out, not wasting energy. Uh, Wings quote of the day. The reason I stopped doing walking 365 is because I was only making four to five hundred a month. Made me feel unappreciated. Okay. Wait, walking... 
Is that like, like a program? Yeah, walking 365, what is that? days a year. Is he saying he stopped like doing day. walks because he wasn't making enough money? Was he making money while walking? I'm becoming confused. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that's a game or something. Um, I don't any know. chance of covering the Sandman? Charles dances in it. Also, EFAP movies. I are... did. What? Um, Mel's already recommended that. Don't you worry. As for Sandman, wait, maybe. whatever is it? Whatever recommended? Ah ah ah. Yes, watch that. That's a really fun movie. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Sandman, I when's that out? Is it out? It's out now. It came out, I think, two days ago. So this will tell oh, you okay. how much I've managed to retain about this thing. Is that a movie or a TV show? It's, it's a serious show. Okay. Um, but is yeah, anybody, have you seen? Dance, have you seen people recommending or anything? I haven't heard uh, anything about I, it to be honest. I hear people say that the comic is really good that it's based on. Um, Neil Gaiman. But otherwise, I haven't heard much about the show yet. Righty. Well, Neil Gaiman, well I've heard that before. Budget, yeah, he, uh, Neil Is Gaiman. Is he the one who wrote the Squid and the Whale and that kind of stuff? I don't know, actually. It's a movie. I know that American Gods, he, that was him. Oh, yeah. Like the book that he wrote. And, uh, Good Omens. Good him? Omens one? Yeah. That, yeah, that's something he did too. I like that movie. Yeah, he's, he's good. One uh, please read the Pokedex entries for Mega Glali. Mega oh, Glali? I'm on it. Right. What horrors await? Mega Glali. G L Gl. I don't know how to type that. G L A L I E. Apparently. Mega Glali. Pokedex entry. Uh, did we have that one before? That one looks familiar. Maybe I just saw the picture before. I don't know. Uh, let me get you the boy. This one was a shitty screenshot. I'm sorry. This time I actually hit the right thing. So this is this is the boy. Oh, oh I remember him. Uh... Is he related to Geodude in any way? I, I think he he must. Oh, be, hang on. Right? That's that that's Gla that's Glalie. Wait, where's Mega Glalie? Oh, it led me to the. Oh my God. Uh, okay, wait. So this is the Mega version. I don't know if they have different Pokedex entries. It doesn't look like it. So it seems to be the Mega Evil version. I I don't know. Is Mega just special? Process faster, oh. Discord. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so what's his law? Let's see here. <laughs> he looks hangry. Pokédex <laughs> entries. There's a lot of them. What the hell? Uh, Generation 3. Does it say which one? Because there's a lot of them. Like, does it specify? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's going to go for... Uh, Glalie has a body made of rock, which it hardens with an armor of ice. This Pokemon has the ability to freeze moisture in the atmosphere into any shapes it desires. Well, that's just whatever. Uh, he looks know. like he's ready to munch on some food. <laughs> like, he's just... He's uh, in the mood to munch on food. It can instantly freeze its foe solid. After immobilizing its foe in ice, this Pokemon enjoys eating it leisurely. Eating it in leisurely fashion. Okay, that's... Oh my god. Nice. Look at him go. He's ready to munch. Hungry no, boy. No, Fringy, not this one. This is a bad nom, one. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, no. It can instantly freeze one. moisture in the atmosphere. It uses the power to freeze his foes. Uh, I like the permanent scowl. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You yeah, never I guess know this... if he's happy or angry, because he always looks angry. Well, I guess the part was uh, immobilizing its prey and then enjoys eating it in a leisurely fashion. Yeah. I think that's the one. Eating it while it's that's alive. That's probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not great. Oh, wait. He's, he, oh, here's the mega ones. Let's see. Maybe there's some crazier shit. I'll write through uh, 
The excess energy from Mega Evolution spilled over from its mouth, breaking its jaw. It spews endless blizzards. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. <laughs> it spews endless blizzards. Broke yeah. its jaw. How come the Damn. world isn't How come all the world isn't just some blizzard? The world is a blizzard. They, they, they all live in, in the cold mouth. areas. It, oh yeah, they just they just happen to spew blizzards in places where it's yeah. already you know, really inhospitable. Well, it's a chicken in the egg situation. It envelopes situation, prey, you know? prey in its mouth, freezing them instantly, but its jaws dislocated, so it's unable to eat them. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, the opposite strategy of snakes that dislocate <laughs> their jaws to just eat more things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the entire area around it gets whited out. Okay. Well, there you go. Hmm. Beautiful. There's some very horrifying Pokemans out there. They were uh, so... They were so nice and, and normal in the first generation when I was a little boy used child. Used to be, look, there's a dog, there's a bug, oh, look, there's yeah. a little, mushroom. Little dragon there's creature a magnet. has a, look, has a fire a on his tail. Guy. Look, he's got four arms. Isn't that interesting? Now it's like, no, endless, endless <laughs> eternal thing. winter being consumed while alive. When you look at this Matt Pokemon, it gets soul. sad and breaks its neck. It's like, oh, God. Remember when Matt Champ was in Book of Boba Fett? Do you remember that? <laughs> Yeah, that weird monster that he somehow killed with the chain. He well, somehow the strangled him. Well, the so hard that he went flying into the air, but I guess it didn't break any bones or rupture any organs. Nope. Fine. I can't imagine being I applied, guess. given so much force in Forced one hit in one that place. it just lifts you up from the air and throw Like, the, you going from a not-moving state to moving through the air up. Oh, I can't imagine what damage that'd do. Hammers aren't weapons. No. 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 So I'm oh, assuming no. the Moon Knight, Hawkeye, and Miss Marvel EFAPs are just never going to happen. Hawkeye is the best of the Disney Plus shows by far. I don't think so. I don't happen, know. No. I, Miss Marvel were even on the cards, really. No. Uh, the thing about no, it is, like, in it, in many ways, like, we don't have the time. We don't give a flying flume face, and also that uh, it. It does take a lot of work to do a full TV show breakdown in EFAP style. Yeah. And um, I would rather go for stuff that we're going to be, like, at least partially invested in. And there's no way we're covering everything that Marvel puts out at this point. Um, Not possible. For example, you can guarantee we'd cover something like Guardians 3, but will we cover, you know, fucking uh, Agatha? It's like, I don't think so. I don't think so. I watched the first couple episodes of Hawkeye, and I didn't think it was that bad, but uh, I don't think it's really remarkable in any way either, so... I thought I can episode understand, one like... unraveled, personally. I thought, like, once the action and the plot kicked in, it was like, oh, shit, like, we're in trouble already. Okay. But I stopped. Well, so, the big thing was... Kate, who is a big fan of Hawkeye, and actually got personally saved by Hawkeye in 2012, like, in the New York stuff, um, she is at a place where she happens upon an auction of the Ronin suit. Uh, Ronin, who is not known to be Hawkeye, but just so happens to be Hawkeye, and then steals the Ronin suit and gets into a fight with a bunch of mafia guys while, coincidentally, Hawkeye is in New York and able to meet up with her. It's insane. And that was episode mm -hmm. one. Right. And that was that was the end of my experience with Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it may well be the best one. But like, yeah, that's that's pretty um, that's pretty stupid, right? But maybe, yeah, maybe it isn't. I mean, again, that like we compare that to the damage that's done, yeah. by the other show. <laughs> yeah. It probably is the best one. Efap out of context. Rags. Peach pits are poisonous to dogs. Don't give it to them. Springy. <laughs> oh. Oh, right. I did, well, there you go. Oh, that's I didn't know okay. that. Oh, man. Is that true? About the peach pits? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I, I don't For know some when of that, us, that'll very ever good come handy, but yeah. I also don't know why you would ever eat... Uh, normally, you don't consume the peach pits. Normally, you throw that away because it's like a rock in the middle of a fruit, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. I know this may fall under the argument of adaptation, but in addition to simply being tired of the Joker in Batman movies, I also miss when Joker had fun with clown theming to his crimes. Yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, you, 
it, it is like, yeah, it wouldn't mean that any individual adaptation is bad because he's not doing enough clowny things, but I could see, you could miss that just as much as you miss Superman, you know, caring about people. <laughs> that would be nice to see, you know? I could understand Joker that. Joker needed more pies in the face. Yeah. Uh, we Lord of the Rings fans are about to fight Amazon like with like we're the third monkey boarding Noah's Ark, and son, it's mm -hmm. about to rain. I know that quote, and yeah, next month where it begins. Mm, yeah, it can't, begins. Can't, can't fucking wait. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. Well, there's your obligatory Simpsons quote. It's kind of worthless as well because I'm just miming, not miming, it's the opposite of miming. I'm making noises <laughs> to try and illustrate what was happening in that episode. Did you, did you guys see that leak from the, from the Rings of Power show where someone gets thrown with a sword? Yes. Oh, I think I, that was, I uh, that was our, like a uh, TV spot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That looked was, so um, bad. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was horrible. I linked it. Dude, the this, show this cost yeah, $500 man. million. Dollars. Like, it's, <laughs> man. <laughs> Yeah, was it like a see how that turned out Was it like a clip on a late night show? I'll, I'll just those? I'll just link it here. It was uh, it was okay. some. There I think it was it an goes. ad. I think it was an ad for like the show. Okay. <laughs> no one to watch it again. I'll watch it again. Watch it again. Um. But yes, continuing with oh. our chat adventures. Oh. Mauler, during EFAP 85, you joked that TFA Part 4 would be out August 2021. Lol, only off by half a year. Also, check out the Viper Dogfish. Smile. Or oh, nice smile. Viper Dogfish. Viper okay. Dogfish. Oh, we're my. That. Ew! Well, come on, don't be. Let's see. Yeah. I'm working on it. It's. Ew. Looks like a dead fish. <laughs> well, that one is that one is dead. Yeah. Oh damn! Oh. I want to see it when it's oh, hang on. So we have, around. What do you What's think? the first one? Of the Russo Why brothers. Is the coming... first one a dead one. <laughs> hang on. Where's, the next where's one. A... Oh boy! Look at him go. Yeah. <laughs> look at him go. Stationary on a table. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That is a nice smile. Yeah. He's happy. He's like, I get to. <laughs> so he's just a xenomorph. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and there's some like, fucked yeah. up shit down there. In yeah, the yeah down in the bottom of the ocean. Mistakes Ugh. were made down there. Or maybe not. Yeah. I like that there's actually a comparison here. With the xenomorphs. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Viper shark. Uh, Dude, they are like aliens, or like you know the the creatures in even the Marvel movies, where the children of Thanos, or I don't know if that's the right. You know all the creatures yeah. they fight at the end of Infinity War with like oh, giant the teeth. Dog. Yeah, and, yeah, the whatever dog. they are. It reminds me of that a little bit. You it's get like, a lot how, of inspiration for aliens what, in the ocean, I think. <laughs> what god creates this grotesque? Fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> he was bored. Okay. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> This one, I'll make it so ugly, it's gonna go all the way in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> so Nobody else see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anyone to see these things. <laughs> 3,500 words left until Mola's Iron Man 3 Unbridled Praise is released. Get hyped, boys. He's been promoting this on Twitter since Friggy's re face reveal. You know, I think mm. all of this is lies, and uh, I'm gonna put it in the lies and deceptions category. We've had plenty of entries in there today. You mean in the Deception. lie box? It's the box where all the lies go to be uh, compacted. Don't forget the deceptions. They go in there too. Decepticons. Mm -hmm. I'll be here in uh. 18 months when you massives finally read this. Ah, gotcha. Fucking right. Huh. Read it already. Yeah, fucking right. Yeah, loser. Hi, Rag. Hey. Hi, Molly Water. Is that me? Ribbit to you. Uh, Molly Water? Yeah. I don't know. Odd. Cool. Um, uh, I'll just separate the word out just to make sure I'm extra safe. They said ribbit to you, frit, and then and then they put another thing on it. Uh, it's like the, the the word you're not allowed to say, but they put fr on it, so it makes it okay, right? Oh. Gets past oh. all of Jeez. the. 
scary YouTube senses. You never know. F R and then the N word. So anyway, <laughs> I need. Moving on. They're saying they need a fringy plush ASAP. Please play the Friday night, Five Nights at Freddy songs again. There's Easter eggs. I Jim old. Jim old. This is a uh, very this is yeah. a bizarre. This is an adventure of a super chat, isn't it? Um, Lots of going on there. Mm -hmm. That's for a, a fringy plush. I mean, that's that does seem like a really good idea. That would be a good idea, yeah. Mm. Yeah, like a really, really good idea. Watch brown I can't table. remember if I asked this before, but what are the prerequisites for getting a plushie mid? Like, do you, you need to, to hit a cool? certain amount of like? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I can't. I can't have one made then. Yeah, well, never mind. Well, you want I'm one, just not cool enough. Just one of you. You like? You just wanted to have them make one of you just for you. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm and just I'd buy an audience hundreds. chief one. You might get in trouble with Microsoft. <laughs> Maybe. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, just maybe, yeah. I'm just like I figure like you must have to have like X amount of subscribers in order for like them to justify the investment. Like, it's you know. the amount of people who buy into it because they really just make a prototype and then there's a marketing campaign and you have to secure a number of buys before it officially gets before made. Before they'll go into production. Oh, yeah, kind of like, like a Kickstarter kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. It, yeah, essentially, it like proves that it's it's viable, um, and yes. so then those orders get fulfilled. But if you don't clear it, then I guess it, it was a Quentin. Quentin bought the rest of his, right? Or <laughs> I guess. yeah, Quentin bought yeah. potentially hundreds <laughs> of his own clutch. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey man, you know it happens. It is one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. That's, <laughs> that's a shame. That's well, a he's got shame, plenty of I gifts know. to give out that he can't. He ends up going to. <laughs> They'll be like, nah. <laughs> They'll be like, oh man, this fell out of the bin. <laughs> Let me go put it back. <laughs> uh, watch brown table videos slowly turn on phase four. Watch everybody's videos slowly turn on phase four that does video essays. Yeah, did Brad Table make a video shitting on Thor? He did, I think. Oh, wow. no, wait, no, that was high. That was high top. I don't know if Brown Table's done. No, that, that was Brown Table. Oh, was it? Am I mixing them up? Yeah. I mixed them Guys, up. Guys, why would you confuse did. those two? Well,. They've both, I'm pretty sure, turned well, because yeah, everybody it's... turned on Thor, okay? so Yeah, it's, it's called Thor, Love and Thunder, and Taika Waititi, and the thumbnail has, why would you do this? Written. <laughs> why would like, you do... no, that's a good question. Space. Why would you do this? Yeah, why why yeah that's this? good. That's like, oh, why Why would you do this? That's so nice. Oh, that's like <laughs> when people say, you shouldn't have. Apparently, Andor is going to be a Scurrilius? Scurrilus? Scurrilus. I have not ever used that word before. Scurrilous take on the Trumpian world. These absolute psychos just cannot let it go. I don't even uh, like. Wh why do you? Why would you think that would help advertise the show at this point instead of just saying nothing? Yeah. Let the trailers speak for it. Like, how is that going to help you? Hey, what's Andrew going to be? Like, Star Wars in it? Trump. This will make half the people <laughs> in the country give them an extra reason to not see it. See, uh, see it, and the other half won't care. Because they were maybe <laughs> they're gonna watch it anyway, so yeah, they were either gonna watch it anyway, and I doubt that this will not be the tipping point for any person who is on the <laughs> fence about uh, I don't really want to watch Andor, and it's like, oh, but they say it might have some something Trumpy in parallel. Da, 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 da. Oh, then I now I now I really should see it, <laughs> yeah. If you want to see writers with their hands tied, then you should see the ridiculous mandates on the IDW Sonic Comics Sega implemented. Uh, <laughs> some highlights include Sonic can't cry, Shadow must remain an edgy loner, and the main <laughs> characters can't wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I have the same stipulations in my comics. I like the idea that they had those to you on a piece of paper, you read them out, you laugh, and then they look at you like, why... What are you gonna, you're like, oh, no, the, nothing, nothing at all. It's, it's nothing. IDW, Sonic, <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> I just like that they specify it as, as specifically as he must be an edgy loader. With a gun. <laughs> with, a, with a, yeah, like an Uzi, right? I can't remember what his gun is. <laughs> he holds like a, a pistol is a different, I don't know if, a, a, there's a difference between a pistol and a gun, but I can't remember what it is. I found another one. 
Game characters cannot enter a relationship. Amy must always be in love with just Sonic, but they can't get together. I knew about this one. I think someone else told me about that as a rule. It's funny as fuck. That is hilarious. She has to simp after Sonic. They can never get together. <laughs> look, make her look like an absolute lunatic. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> um, apparent. No, wait. Uh, react to Tisan Young's Phase Four video. It's good. Um, I well, we're probably not going to check out any more Phase Four videos now. I think that's that's probably it for now. We'll probably, well, like I said, next week we're going to talk about Prey, which we're going to be watching today. It's not right now. Whoa. I found the list, by the way. <clears throat> well, if you find any funny ones, let us know. Um, sure, yeah. Can you imagine what the semi 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 aborted Titan would do to the Earth's gravitational fields, weather patterns, or hell, even the rotation and orbit? Clearly, Marvel put top men in their writing rooms. Top men, dude. Always they're hoping do. most people forget. <laughs> Like, that didn't <clears throat> happen. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. This one caught me off guard. Um, we'll read it out. Game characters cannot have wardrobe changes unless approved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay uh, we also have another one for Sonic must always win at the end. Even if he and his friends are in the losing end in an overarching story... Uh, they must come out on top when it concludes. Oh, this sucks. Boo. Yeah, I don't like this. Uh, we also have, yes, male characters, sans Eggman, can't wear pants, which was also <laughs> a thing in the post-reboot, albeit never explicitly stated. The inverse is also, also true. Female characters have to have some form of lower covering. <laughs> you coward. Okay, yeah, we so, ruined everything if they didn't. This is obviously. someone's... This is just someone's sex thing. That's all. That's all that Sonic is. <laughs> uh, this is my first live EFAB after catching up with all of them. I started in November 2020. Thank you for all the content. Whoa. November 2020, and they just caught up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's a sense of like. Fuck, now I don't have, like, you know, get more stuff out. And we're like, we're trying, jeez. <laughs> um, Non-edgy Pokedex entry of the day. Swablu and Ruby, specifically. So Swablu is the Pokemon. Swablu. While you're looking that up, I have another one. Um, it has been stated that there is no money in Sonic's world. And that anything that alludes to money such as the rings acting as currency, is strictly forbidden. Oh. Really? Who's making up these rules? Sega, I guess. Sega, as far oh, as I Oh, really? Know. These it are Sega's Sega. mandates for, like, comics. And what was the name like, again? IDW. Wobbly? Oh, wow, okay. I oh, that part. <laughs> the name was, was uh, Swablu. Swablu. So S-W-A-B-L-U. Yeah, Swablu. Because it's it, it, it sent me to a wablu without an s. That's wow, weird. what a shit website. Wablu. I'm playing Sonic Two right now, and I just got all the Chaos Emeralds. Nice. And I turn it to Super Sonic. There's no swablu. There's wablu. No s. Well, what do you want me to say, Battle? I don't know, but this one looks pretty wholesome, so I, I'm guessing that one is correct. Alrighty then, read that one. No, first you get the picture. Look at this little guy. I'm gonna do it. Look, Ooh. look at him. I'm gonna guess it's something with the weather, because his, his his wings are like clouds. I could just be a. So he causes thing. like thunderstorms or something. Ooh, ooh, that's my guess. When they're in a flock, they oh, can wait. cause thunderstorms because they rub against each other. Ew, ew. The website isn't German. Oh, that explains oh, it. Why? Why is it wobbly in German but swablu in English? Why would you change that? <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's a wobbo thing, I think. I don't German know. Wobbly. <laughs> that explains everything. But why it's did you? I no. Give me the English website. I don't speak German anymore. <laughs> I gave up that life. Yeah. It, it refuses me to give me the English one. Help. <laughs> Please. Here, I'll look it up. 
This wiki doesn't have a button blue. for yeah. That's the first one that oh, just only gives me German entries, and I don't know why. All right, which entry did uh, do they want us to read any in particular? Oh, there you go. Now I found it. Uh, there's a lot of them. Was it Sun or something? I just do the ruby one. Uh, Swablu has light and fluffy wings. They're like cot cottony clouds. This Pokemon is not frightened of people. It lands on the uh, on the heads of people and sits there like a cotton fluff hat. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's neat. It's not like some. It doesn't consume souls or lure yeah, people yeah. into a eternal darkness or consume you while you're alive. It's just like a nice little creature you'd want to have around. It's like a little a critter that you're like, oh, hey, Swablu, what's Which up? Which at this point is unusual for Pokemon, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It, wings it doesn't even poison you or peck down mm -hmm. into your brain or anything like that, and plants its eggs in your skull mm -hmm. or anything. So they hatch it out and with... steep acid into the victim. I don't know. Yeah. It grooms with spring water and loves loves to sit on heads. Heads. Oh, me too. That's, that's, I've that's barely it. familiarized myself with any of the Pokemon beyond the original 151. Oh, we're you're in you're in the same boat with us, man. Yeah. Some of these new ones. I know some of the second gen I've ones because up, Gold man. and Silver came out when I still played Pokemon. Yeah. That was a Game Boy Advance. But Yeah. One of the new ones is like a set of keys, like floating, and I'm just like, "Come yeah. on, guys, <laughs> keys! Come on, guys!" Dude, the break. the chandelier one that's evolved from like a candlestick. I was like, "Lol." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine like there's like one employee left in like Nintendo or whatever, <laughs> and they're about to leave, and they're jingling their car keys, and then it's like, "No, you can't leave until you come up with one more Pokemon," and he's just staring at the keys in his hand, going, "Hmm." What, what well, yeah, yeah you can do this, this. There's so many because you're like, what's the fucking ice cream Pokemon? It's literally an ice cream that is evolution is like three ice creams. And it's like, I wonder what was happening when they came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> remember, Magnemite was like that in the original 150, and it always got made fun of. That yeah, it, or, or that it's three Magnemite that fused together to make a Magneton, Magneton. and it was mm -hmm. like unique and special, but people still <laughs> laughed at it. <laughs> yeah. 151 had some bullshit ones as well, granted. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it, there was there. some... But it was, but I like them generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't like when they're over-designed. Like, they look too yeah. like, robotic or mechanical somehow, or... Uh, they look like crazy Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters, or... Yeah. Something. Yeah. I love that original art style that they had, where it had an almost watercolory kind of look. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let me get a picture to show what I mean. And they were like creatures, more so. Yeah, than like they could... kind of object turned into a living thing. Yeah, like a lot of them, I could imagine. Oh, oh, I can go out to the to the woods and I could see a caterpie or a metapod. You know? Yes. It was yes. like, oh, look, there's a weedle. Like that's cool. I could. That's, that's just cool. like a caterpillar. Your creature. Right. And especially the old trading cards, the original trading cards, they just had that art style to them. Here, yep. let me... I used to collect those and battle at school. Hey, we never battled because we didn't wheel. know the fucking rules. We just collected them. <laughs> you know, one of my big memories, big chism memories, was playing a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! back and forth and not really understanding anything about how it worked, but... Having a couple cool cards, this, that, and the other. You have friends, being, and they'd give you some cards, maybe. And being in the mm -hmm. last year of the, it would be grade school equivalent. Um, just, just, just sitting in one part of the, you know, the, 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 the area for just, just chilling out. What, 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 what word am I looking for? Like the, the recess or yeah. What, what is the room? place in which you have fun? Playground. In, but, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Mahler um, doesn't know what playgrounds are. Because he doesn't playground? like fun. <laughs> yeah. Mahler never had fun as a kid. He was lonely and he sat there with his Pokemon cards that crying, somebody gave him to go away. Crying, yeah, waiting for like, someone we'll, to play we'll give with you this, yeah, we'll, well, actually, we'll give you this Weedle if you go away. That's the idea with school, <laughs> schoolyard. That's kind of what I was aiming for, yeah. So, like, you think of that, then we were just sitting down, doing nothing. I think, I can't remember what we were talking about. It didn't matter. 
There's a kid who's in several years lower who had heard about a card I had in my deck that he really wanted to beat, I guess. I don't really know the context. I just remember he walked up and he and he grabbed his deck and lifted his hand up and pointed it at me and went, I challenge you to a duel <laughs> in front of all my friends. And I was like, oh. <laughs> like, all right. And then he got beaten up. <laughs> why, why is this happening? <laughs> uh, it was an experience. We did play Yu-Gi-Oh! And that game was the shit. Mm. I was always curious about it, but I never played it. The problem now is that Yu-Gi-Oh! is um it's 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 not what it used to be. I liked it when it kind of started out and in its early years, but the power creep on Yu-Gi-Oh! is fucking nuts if you look at um like the, the stuff they make, the the more recent stuff, it's just insane. Cards that used to be powerful are just not never used, or they're worthless, that sort of thing. Like they're dwarfed by new powerful cards, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there okay. was a there was a string of time where I was just randomly, seemingly just for whatever reason, I would watch some Yu Gi Oh channels, um, and they would t they'd have segments. I wish I could remember them. It was like three or four guys and they would just play Yu-Gi-Oh and they had a channel around it and they would talk about old school versus new school Yu-Gi-Oh and they'd like make decks to try and you know, just compare cards and power levels and there were many of these videos that people have done on the power creep of Yu-Gi-Oh and it's just like man I remember I remember that card and how good it was and I remember that card and how good it was and that card's just not even viable anymore because it's just been superseded by the insane shit that they've come up with. Right. And it's not about Yu Gi Oh! used to be these kind of these potentially long, drawn out, not necessarily slug fests, but these long games where you tried to wear your opponent's life points down from, I think, 8,000 to zero. And now there's so much text and card finding and special doodads and knickknacks that it's all about like you don't even play against the other person. You just try to get your combos done as fast as humanly possible. And it seems right. really fucking lame. Hmm. Uh, Wablu and Altaria are some of the best designs. Gen 3. Goat. Right. Fine, I'll allow it. Go Swablu. Sure. Been watching Best Moments of EFAB. I lost it over the animated Skittle discussion video. The Pipeman blesseth. <laughs> Hell yeah. I about that. That's a good animation. I like that one a lot. Uh, react to Baby Day Out, please. It's a better movie than Leia, Chase, and Kenobi. It's, it, it predicted Harambe? Link it hates it and says it's unrealistic. <laughs> I, uh, have you guys seen that movie? Baby, I no. have Baby Day Out. Um, yeah, no. I have. It's funny. It's a funny watch. That was it. Uh, Tasm 1 and 2 greater than Phase 4. Yeah. Yeah, I think Fine. Tasm 1 and 2. Better than Phase 4. That's okay. I'll allow it. Yes. I've heard people say they like Black Widow and Loki, and I can't do anything but remember Avengers and vomit at what's been lost. I think people forget what, uh, what characters they were, honestly. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day, Frog the Jam. Frog oh, the I think I know this one. Uh, let me, if I see the picture, I'll know. I, I remember the pictures. Ooh, I don't think I actually remember this one. This is a two-star normal monster. Good luck having normal monsters now in Yu-Gi-Oh. Fuck that. Attack 700, defense 500. Yeah, it's not good. What's uh, what's the deal? Frog the jam? Is he a jam? Or oh oh yeah, let me let me get you a picture here. Sorry. Uh, to Copy image, paste image. What's the flavor say? Some of the, <laughs> um, a. Ah, uh, let me find a picture of that. Like so reminds me of gonna... Hypnotoad. Does he? Does he reference? A slime with the head of a frog. It at... <laughs> it attacks by croaking terribly. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's why it only has 700 attack and it's two stars, because it thinks the croaking terribly is an offensive ah. weapon. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, 
I like that you could play five cards alongside each other or something and like make a super creature. Forget maybe it might it might have been just like one. You're talking about Exodia, like uh, maybe it was. I don't remember the name. I just well, that remember was the, like that was one card was one. like the arm, the other card yeah, was that's the Exodia. other arm. Yeah, that's Exodia. Oh, okay. If you play was... the whole set, you just win the game. It's just right. you win. That's it. Oh, that was kind of neat. I haven't watched No Way Home yet, but I heard you guys say it has great character work in a different stream. How would you compare it to the Suicide Squad? This. How would we compare it? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it certainly relies more on meta knowledge. Um, let's I suppose see. it just becomes continuity at that point, though, doesn't it? In terms of, uh, like, what, how do you mean? I'm assuming when you say meta knowledge, you're referring to Sam Raimi Spider Man? Yeah, knowing Sam Raimi Spider Man, knowing the amazing Spider Man, knowing about those gives you a lot of. True, but you know, was, is that, and... would you call it meta-knowledge to know if Iron Man 1 and 2 before 3? Um, not as much. I mean, yes, technically, but not as much because they're direct sequels. But I, how do you, how do you, how do, how does the multiverse work with that? Well, I, I assume that once you've basically told us that they are, you know, canon within the world of the MCU, at least as it stands as a multiverse, then that is what it is, you know? Is that, like the thing about a multiverse? Like they become is that, sequels before, once they say it's it's part yeah, of it. Yeah, pretty much. So now it um, a sequel. That's kind of how it worked with Split. Split comes out way later and says that it's a movie in the universe of Unbreakable, and it's just like, oh well, there you go. Everything that's in Unbreakable is now in continuity with Split, even though hmm. with the multiverse you don't have to commit to anything because the world of the Sam Raimi universe doesn't have to actually affect the world of uh, Tom Holland Spider Man universe at all. Um, but yeah, you know, I I'm not sure. You know, you, you could just call that standard continuity at that point once they tell you that's the case. I I guess it's almost like it's a new category. It's like I, I we can't say retroactive continuity because that's already kind of used for something else. But it's similar in a different way, if that makes sense. Like retroactively, we're going to say that this thing is now that we've made is still you know within continuity. Well, it sounds like the literal. We've made it. Like, yeah, right, I guess it really. sort of is. It's just not used in that way, but it sort of is. I guess it is literally so. I mean, well, it just depends on if people really interpret that negatively or not. Because if you said, well, that was a retcon, and someone goes, yeah. Yeah, it's it's generally never used in a good way. People don't say retcon in a good way. Yeah. Not typically, no, yeah. Uh, but as for how it compares, um, similar in that you know, there's loads of great character work, but there's also me bits and then plot and world are kind of all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Though, um, and I think, because I did say on a different stream at some point that I think I would probably lower my No Way Home score from if I gave it a 5 to a 4, because I was thinking about it, and the Suicide Squad, if I gave that a 5, when its problems for plot and world couldn't possibly compare to No Way Home's the and got Doctor Strange was assassinated as well, then... Right, it, th this is out of 10, right? Yeah. And uh, you give No Way Home a five? Yeah. Okay, I'm just wondering. Tentatively. But, uh, but like I said, I, I think I'll give it a four at this point because of it would be if if fail adjustment sort of thing. Yeah, it's just you know you know how it is, just inching things we, this that way and the other. To... I enjoyed it, but there was a lot of things that frustrated me oh, as well. I enjoyed the fuck you know. out of it. I had, I had I had a blast, but like on the subjective scale, No Way Home was like insanely high for me. It was like eight plus for me. It just totally worked. It was mm -hmm. front loaded with a lot of like jokey lines and like one liners. Like everyone is cracking jokes and there's some forced dialogue, like Doc Ox wed like wedging in dialogue of like the power in the palm of my hand, the the thing I'm looking for. Like, oh my god. They're just like forcing that line from Spider Man two into this. That I found that off putting. But then once it became about like Peter Parker trying to like give these people a second chance. And then, like, when the two other Spider-Men came in, uh, like, that, that really improved it for me. I was going to say, you, you're probably thinking of a different line, because what he says is the power of the sun in my palm of my hand. That's when he's holding the arc reactor that Electro stole from Iron Man while he sees that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is... Well, I think he says it twice, because he says it once on the bridge well, in his first introduction. Oh, I think you're right, yeah. He, he's, he's talking to Peter as he's on the roof of the car, and he's like, 
where's the reactor? And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. And he's just like, the, the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, that's not as... That one yeah. was bad. The second one works yeah. fine. It's just the first one. Is... Yes. Yes. It's him. Oh, fucking hell. I've... My TV's voice activated. Voice is not recognized. What are you talking about? I didn't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> not recognized. We have I a didn't... new character for the EFAP Cinematic Universe. Sorry, Dollar who's... TV. We heard her for the first time. Whose voice <laughs> is recognized? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> My TV's bullying me. You better lock your door tonight. And TV's coming for you. That's some Skynet shit, that's yeah, true. His technological terror. Yeah. Uh, now that we have an Echo show, we need Wade, a Star Wars story. Hell yeah. yeah. I I'm on board with that. Wade was a legendary character. It's really surprising. Wade, he had so many... It's amazing that all he said was... Oh, he had one line, it was short, it was... Uh... God, what was it? I have to go back, but it, I think it was like... One single short line was all that he had. I think I'm on the way or something like that. Yeah, or, something like that. I don't know, yeah. Well, it was really well delivered, whatever it was. It was at the beginning when they were making their incredibly intelligent plan that was definitely not doomed to fail, but worked anyway, because Kenobi is a... If you're going to cover, it's the word. Kenobi sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kenobi is shit. Mm -hmm. How dare you. People who think that show is good are wrong. I agree. I think that's all that needs to be said. Ringy and others, have you tried multiverses yet? No. Not yet. No. But I probably will at some stage. I don't really care to try it, I don't know. Wow, it doesn't <laughs> care about you uh, now. How about that? It said Ringy and yeah, the no. others! Fuck you! No, I said the game doesn't care about you. How does that feel? Oh. Still yeah. fuck you. I thought that was the Nickelodeon thing, but that's a different thing, I think. No, that's the Warner Brothers one. Oh, okay, yeah. Multiverses What's Multiverses? Who's in it? That's the Warner Brothers one. Oh, so Warner Brothers. Like oh, Bugs Bunny, Superman, Rick, Iron gotcha. Giant, stuff like that. Aggie. Yeah. Rick, Rick and Morty, yeah. It's just Warner Brothers characters, though, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Including LeBron James, the Warner Brothers character. LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> he is in it. <laughs> The Warner <laughs> Brothers character just sounds oh, funny. Man. <laughs> yeah. um, There's something about Nintendo that Nintendo's roster that just works a lot better for that. that I thing, think that multiverses you know? works, but I think yeah, Nintendo's is they're they're lucky. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say what it is exactly about Nintendo's characters that just functions better for that kind of game. It's uh, like like when the PlayStation did their thing, and it's like Nathan Drake versus fucking Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nathan, hey, Crash Bandicoot. A that, was a, that was a genius idea. How could Nathan you? Drake versus Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, John, you joke, but I unironically want a Huel show. <laughs> That's fair. Well, he he just be sitting in his apartment the whole time at the end of. Breaking bad. Yep. Doing his thing. <laughs> uh, I watched Moonfall. Rags was right. Perfect movie. <laughs> it is so... It... It is what it is. Is it cinema? It is... <laughs> cinema. Yes, it is cinema. Uh, if Flashpoint actually releases, I'm not seeing it. No reverse Flash or Thomas Wayne Batman was already a deal breaker. Wait, the new Flash is like an adaptation of Flashpoint Paradox, is it? I think it's Flashpoint, right? Like the regular Flashpoint, unless some mixing them up. I don't know, but um, yeah, Thomas Wayne Batman is a cool thing to see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Night Shift is great. I can get these live. Keep up the good work, fellas. Well, sure. Yas. Uh. For DC to do it like the MCU, they would need to go back in time several years and make individual character developing films for their hero. <laughs> they just make all the solo films now, and it makes like the ensemble ones more meaningful retroactively. It's just like, huh. <laughs> oh. That was an interesting strategy, but it worked out. <laughs> Could be their solution, sure. Um, 
Hi, Moobs. I added you, Fringy, and Metal in a tweet about my latest Godzilla reviews because I mentioned you guys in it, amongst others. Disappointingly, the only person to like and retweet was Movie Bob? Really? What? Nice. You must have really impressed him. Movies. Maybe they said bad things about us. Oh, that This is a it, trap yeah. super chat. It's a trap. Just finished watching The Boys Season 3. Really enjoyed it for the most part. Haven't seen Season 2 EFAP discussion, but was wondering y'all's thoughts on it. It's what, shit. We our hate thoughts it. on Season 2 or 3? I think no one has oh, seen season 3, two. right? I've seen Just Season 3. Clear. Why? Shut up. <laughs> oh, I guess just for clarification, season two, it's shit and we hate it. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty bad. Um, so yeah. much that I don't care about season three at all. I well, and care. I watched it and have concluded that Fringy Rags Metal, you guys should not waste your time on season three. Uh, oh, that's why I didn't. Everyone says season three was really good up until the finale, and they are incorrect. Season three was cringe throughout. There's some stuff in there, maybe, I guess. That's season 2 was really, really cringe, too. Well, this is the thing. It's exactly the same as Season 2, where people were like, oh, it was the later episodes that really, really sunk it. It's like, the whole thing, guys. The whole thing. <laughs> the way it works is you watch the earlier episodes and you have hope, and then your hope is squandered and eat on. Yo. And it's you're like, urinated upon. And it just so happens that the, disappointment. the time that happens is when you're watching the later episodes, so you blame the later episodes when it was all the episodes. Not the P. Yeah, the P. Yeah. I've drifted in and out of it repeatedly, and uh, I have a hard time sticking with it. Um, but I don't e? dislike it. I like the idea of like taking superheroes and making them kind of petty and vindictive, and just like like recognizable negative human behaviors, as opposed to like the stoic, the stoicism that you usually see in the likes of Marvel and DC and all that. Um, but I haven't, I haven't finished uh, season three yet. I just, I think, yeah, two killed my interest, like, kind of completely. Yeah. Now I'll look at mm -hmm. the boys and it's, it's I, I just don't, um, I think it's shallow satire. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's exploring, um, like, superheroes and deconstructing them as meaningfully as it could. Right. So, yeah, and that, I don't know. I'd... A friend of mine watched a show. I was like, "Hey, do you watch The Boys?" I'm like, "Yeah, season one and two. Don't care about three. It's like, oh, what's your thing? It's like it was garbage. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> it's like... always. It wasn't and I was like, oh, hey, fantastic. why? And it's like, I think I listed a couple of things, and just like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it's a show that coasts by on its premise alone. It happens hey, every time. Like... It's funny. Satire of superheroes and edgy, and that, like that's enough. That's enough to sell it. The concept alone makes it worthwhile for a lot of people, and not only worthwhile, but like of merit when um it doesn't do a whole lot to yeah deconstruct superheroes. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, I quite like Homelander. The idea of an emotionally unstable Superman is quite a frightening idea, and uh, it, it I is. like that. Um. I, I think, though, I have to say it a lot, but at this point, a Boy Scout Superman is unconventional by comparison to evil Superman. Right. So, it's, yeah, I, I think I'm, uh, I'm happy to, to move back to that as a template. Um, <laughs> not to say that there's nothing to pull from, yeah, like Homelander. Right. It's just, yeah, I don't know. Lame. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are pointing to like Invincible as well. I guess that slots in, but we can't talk about Invincible. None of us, none of us yeah. have seen it. No, I've seen it. I'm yeah, not sure how much it I made. Mean. Maybe someday there's like an off season of media, and then we can watch some that we haven't watched, which isn't gonna happen. <laughs> or you can watch it and tell us if it's worthwhile, and we'll trust. But you, you make me watch all the other bad shows. I don't do nothing. Like, you just you lies, know. deception. <laughs> Uh, have you guys seen the Harley Quinn animated show? I enjoyed it very much and can't wait to see season two when it comes out on Hulu. No, I haven't. No, I have no mm. idea. I didn't even know that was a thing. I know it's a thing. I just didn't care. <laughs> I don't care about Harley Quinn, especially now, a days. Yeah, Where would that be? Does Warner Brothers have it's a on service? It's on HBO Max. Yeah, oh, on okay. 
Uh, hello, E. Fapman. Crying is good for the soul every once in a while. What was the last media thing that made you cry? What media was your hardest cry? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Um, obviously not counting Pokemon 2000. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. It, I'm telling you, man, it, the ending of Lord of the Rings always gets me. Every single fucking time. I know everything that's going to happen before the movie does at this point, and I'm just like, ah, oh, it still gets me. <laughs> it's so well done. Yeah, I think that's um, fair. I think uh, even uh, Barmia's death will get me, get a tear maybe, uh, even on rewatches. And, everything um, Everywhere All at Once was up there. I mean, even oh, No Way yeah. Home was really big in the feeling tisms. Yeah, I think that's probably the newest one for me will be Everywhere, every, every, every. every. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Not unconquerably at all. Uh... That gets a tear, but uh, I think we've answered this before. I've never, what I would call, cried from watching media. Yeah, yeah I've never cried. I've gotten very teary-eyed, but I've never cried. I don't I'm know when the like, last time I cried was. Inconsolable in the theater, and the staff were just like, come on, you gotta go. Like, <laughs> you I'm, experience. I'm having an emotional moment. Leave me. <laughs> yeah, I legit do not know the last time I cried. I'm, I think yeah. I'm pretty emotionally healthy, but... I just haven't cried in a long time. Last one that had like an emotional reaction was actually Mass of the Phantasm when I watched it uh, for the wow. Forge. That has a really good scene with the same one I mentioned earlier, actually. Uh, I'm the same. The last one that got me was Everything Everywhere. Um, but uh, Fox and the Hound always gets me. It hits pretty hard. Or was it not even the father? That came out before everything everyone Ooh, wants. Oh yeah, that's the father's yes, another that one. absolutely got me. The fucking last Ooh, bit boy. with him? Damn. Yeah, that's rough. What about you, Freeingy? Um I don't know what the last thing would have been. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then. Toy Story 3 was hide fucking his tears brutal. behind his mask. <laughs> uh, speaking of animation, there's now a making of docu series on Arcane on YouTube called "Bridging the Rift" from Riot. They spent ten months on the pilot and almost scrapped the series. Give it a watch. Oh, thank God um, they didn't. I'm gonna yeah. wait until the episodes are all out and then probably watch it all in once because I think they're like twenty to thirty minutes each. So it's like, yeah, I'll wait. I don't want to. Apparently, the fucking episodes have cliffhangers on them in terms of like, you know. And then we had this <laughs> challenge and this challenge. Dealing with that was difficult, and it's like. And then I said, like, oh. "How do you draw feet? I don't know. I don't know." A tragedy. Uh, you should watch Invincible. It's a neat superhero show, and it has villains called the Mola Twins. Also, hi from Israel. Hello. Oh, oh hello. hi from the United States of America. Mola Twins, eh? There's not even supposed to be more than just me. How's there two more? Ridiculous. That's some some bullshit. It's only Better one Mauler. Exactly. Uh, I just looked it up and I've watched the video. I assume they're talking about the one we're covering. We're covering, but all right. Mm. I just watched the first Avengers with a coworker who hasn't watched the MCU before, and he was blown away by it. Oh, first Avengers is pretty solid. I, I think it's pretty great. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Lasers and rockets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What does rags and images have in common? Rags and images have in common? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. There are images of me. Well, they, they put JPGs. JPGs, like a JPEG, but what is... I don't know if that's JPG. a double meaning. I... I'm trying to think of what the other meaning is for it. JPG. Oh, what about said, me? Man of Steel is better than Avengers. I'm hurt. Oh no. Oh no. Shut up. Oh no. <laughs> you take that back. <laughs> All right then. Uh, Who said that? Kick them. They, were, <laughs> they, they kicked themselves in the game. They were like, okay, I'm out. They kicked themselves. <laughs> Hey crew, for something neat in these tismic times, check out the Pokedex entries for Phalanx. Appreciate you all massively. <laughs> Is it a big penis? <laughs> Is it a penis cat? Is a Phalanx? 
<laughs> Pokemon, Pokey Dex. There's a lot of Pokies and Dexes. Uh, Fallings. Oh, look at that. It's like a. It's like a. I don't even know. <laughs> I think my brain is starting to melt. It's getting late. Yeah. Uh, do 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 do. There's the boy. It's uh. It's fighting. Hey, that's getting a little busy, but. Yeah, it is. I a agree. bit busy, but okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pokédex, Schleams. Uh, five of them are troopers, and one is the brass. The brass orders are absolute. Oh, oh it's it's multiple creatures. I thought it was a oh. caterpillar. The six of them work together as one Pokemon. Teamwork is also their battle strategy, and they constantly change their formation as they fight. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. I wasn't All aware right, that's yeah. even a thing. How the fuck does that work? Do you just capture one and then the other ones just come I with assume it? it's a package deal. And if they're like yeah. apart, they get really sad or depressed or something like that. Oh. So you might as well have all or nothing. Even the Tizmi, uh brother is like, oh, I'm a Pokemon too. It's like, yeah, you have to get with me too, I guess. I mean, Pokemon essentially, it's, it's basically animals and magic. So it might as well, uh, yeah. Um... Disney wait for AI to write movies. Yeah, they may as well at this point. We'll be better off. I'm I've been seeing anyway. ads for that recently, like AI services that write articles for you. And I'm just like, uh, what the fuck wow. is the point of that? That's like, why at, even huh? bother? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, if you're not, if you don't have a human putting any thought into like an article, like, it's just going to be like total bullshit. Played Witcher know. games because of rags. Read the books because of the games. Hate the show because the books were great. Sigh, here's some money. Play SOT. <laughs> Sad face. Play what? SOT. SOT. Sands of Time? Our Prince, Prince of Persia, Persia game? Yeah, it could be. SOT, what else that would be? Um, sea of Thieves, someone says. In sea of Thieves, oh. yeah, Sea of Thieves is great. Y'all should play Sea of Thieves. Oh, it's about to get another, it's about to get the big captaincy update. Ooh. So y'all should, uh, should play that. They made a whole bunch of changes to how you can customize your ships and everything. Uh, good stuff. I haven't played it yet, but it looks quite cool. Yeah. Sea of Thieves is very cool. It's If you can get some friends together and play it, it's legitimately a, a, a blast. I've had a very fun time playing the game with my friends. Cool. Uh, I recently had a discussion with my roommate about internal consistency. He claimed that a comic book movie is only good if it sticks to the source material, and then perfectly outlined Thor's arc in Ragnarok, Ragnarok, I guess, and why it makes sense in universe to show why it's his favorite Marvel movie. I eventually got him to separate well-made movies for movies he likes. Well, that's okay. A lot of people won't take that, so. That's good. Yeah, sounds like an interesting conversation. I'd be curious to know that Ragnarok as a movie holds up because it's faithful. I wouldn't. I, I've not heard that before, but fair enough. It seem, seems to me the obvious thing is: is the source material good or better? Like uh, sometimes changes are warranted. Not all the time. Probably most yeah. of the time, no. But there are exceptions. Hello, Mola. I'm doing some world building practice and have a bunch of Welsh names I'm trying to use. Can you read them? We got Diamel, Edwarved, Ruadeg, Meldegedeg. What do they translate to? I don't fucking know. Google's gonna have to tell me that one. Um, <laughs> that stops. That's the best I could do even for pronunciation. I'm not even that good at that. Fake fan. Who said I was a fan? I'm a fan of the dragon. Mahler told me that... Oh, shit. I don't remember <laughs> telling you, oh, shit. No, it's fine. I don't know, it sounds like something you would say. I remember I saying it. it. No, it's fine. I, I remember that. Oh. Okay. Sad caveat to old man recommend. Episode 3, the characters get kind of dumb. People who should be experts suddenly suck at mind games and fact vetting. Okay. 
Is that a st- we don't like when characters become stupid when they're if, if a character's traits in particular are that they are intelligent, then you've set mm-hmm. a high bar for yourself that you need to pay attention to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I finally made it to a live EFAP. I really enjoy the podcast and have been watching for previous ones up to a while, up to 46 now. Oh, hey. We've only got three years of EFAPs left. <laughs> Good luck with that. Hurry up. Better hurry to fuck up. <clears throat> Um, what is this? Mola, your white male leads are finished. Keep munching all your food, big lad. We are replacing your masculine men, and all you can do is cope and seethe. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is an unusual, uh, I, uh it's an odd super chat. Yeah, your white male you. leads are finished. We just did two white male leads for Thor, Love, and Thunder, and. Well, yeah, they're members. finished all right. This I mean, is what they, we get. They are they're not shit. representing the white race very well. We need to have, <laughs> on the next <laughs> meeting, uh, we're going to have to really... Uh, right. It's, it's funny because like, I'm fine with female leads. Just write them well, that's all. Same for the men. Also, yes, yeah. I will continue to eat food. I do like it. <laughs> wow, freak. You food eater. You freak. Eating food and stuff. Uh, Disgusting. Watched Thor Love and Thunder with my mum. She hated it. She also hated Good. DS Mom mainly because of Wanda. Although she hated Wanda and called her a bitch because of WandaVision anyway. I haven't seen WandaVision myself, but I'll take her word on it. Yes, take her word <clears> on it. <throat> She's got some good taste, alright? Also, play DDLC Dumbos, please. Maybe some century. I will not play that game. Fuck you. Bom bom bom. Yeah. Uh, Typo's video would make a great temple, template, sorry, for next year's Gadelb. I wouldn't, uh, uh, dude, that kind of editing, ooh. I'd probably have to ask uh, Das Bullshit to, to figure it out in terms of just, yeah, it's so <laughs> wacky, you know? So. I really enjoy Gadelb, so I, I hope you, uh, I hope you gain, uh, some incentive to, to make another one. But not because, not just because, uh, not just for the sake of it. Oh yeah, I'll just be like, guys, go watch them on, go watch them on a little playlist, okay? Because, like, yeah. To be fair, we've had some choice quotes this year, uh, and <laughs> the whole Shakespearean and the Cosmos thing that would have been a pretty deep one. <laughs> <laughs> Flashpoint was doomed long before Ezra. Six years of development hell and rewrites. Ezra just uh, final nail in the nail-filled coffin. Yeah, no, I think we all thought it was probably going to be a mess of a movie, but we're talking more so about like the. The optics of it all and trying to release a movie to just standardly increase the, the, the hype for your franchise, to move your franchise along. Like Warner Brothers, they've been sitting on the flash now for fucking ages and they're probably still thinking like, what is the best way we can do anything with this? When they've probably realized now, had they rushed it out and released it straight away, like as soon as possible, that probably would have been the best thing to do. Did they, f- like, finish filming it a while ago and they've been sitting on it all this time? Yeah, I think they delayed it a couple times now because... I think they were trying to figure out when's the best time to release it. When will Ezra stop committing crime? <laughs> but like, when will his uh, uh, end? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing... They, they, they had that meeting that was just... All right, the minutes of this meeting are when will Ezra stop committing crime? <laughs> the answer is never. It will only escalate. Uh, did you know that the... Gocturks, during the Dark Ages, sealed agreements by eating grass, tasting mud, kissing each other on the lips, then hacking a dog in half with a ceremonial sword. Hi, Rags. Evil. Evil. What is with all the weird, like, what? <laughs> what, is, what does it mean, tasting mud? Like, you give it a little taste, you're like, mm, nice but, mud, yep. No, no, it's a bit dry, but, you know. Weird, and then the cutting of the dog in half is definitely uh, unacceptable. I am, I am against this faction. I will Same. not play them in an Age of Empires game. Mm. Can't they just do something like? Can't they just like enslave people based on race or something? You know, why well, you got to cut dogs in half? Yeah, like you enslave women or whatever. That's what sort of yeah, like do. sacrifice virgins. That would be normal. But normal. No, they have to do the yeah. Cutting dogs in half. Hi, just started a channel and posted a vid that's gotten some non-constructive criticism. When you first started, how did you deal with this? Thanks. Uh, hmm. 
you I guess you have to understand that you're on the internet and a lot of people are just gonna do and say things that you don't like. Yeah. And you're just <sighs> there's nothing you could do about it. The the number one thing you could do is to carry on and be successful because that is the thing that pisses them off more than anything is the fact that you're successful. It's something they could never like take away from you for the most part. I suppose part of it, you know, just gotta have to pass it out yourself. So which comments do you want to respond to? Which which ones do you think is it worthwhile telling someone that you think offered you absolutely nothing useful that they offered mm -hmm. you absolutely nothing useful? It's like maybe I guess um non constructive intentionally or unintentionally. I is is worth passing is somebody did somebody give you non-constructive criticism because they are incompetent at providing criticism that's workable or are they just doing it to piss you off um i guess it doesn't really matter right in either case you need you need and should be receptive to feedback that you can use um anything that you can use to improve your process or improve your craft is is worthwhile um but yeah like if it's if it's non-constructive then i ignore it i guess would you rather see a ben affleck batman film with willem dafoe as the joker or a henry cavill superman film with brian cranston as lex luther i'd like mm. brian cranston as, as lex luther that'd be cool yeah i think i'm partial really enough neat. to that that i would like to see that out of plus i want i want to give cavill another chance to be superman proper yeah yeah i'll go yeah. with the superman lex luther one I wasn't sure about that casting, but I suppose he would bring a comedic element to it, kind of like Gene Hackman did back in the day. Brian Cranston? Maybe that Brian would work. Cranston? Uh, like Brian Cranston would bring comedy to that role. I, I just he? think he... Why? Well, well, because of his uh, role in... Uh, what is it? Malcolm in the Middle? Like, I think he's he can do comedy really well. I think it's kind of in him to be like an entertaining, funny well, presence. I... I mean, not not in every case. Like, in yeah, this is I like don't... whenever Hugh a... Laurie is in something and people say, oh, yeah, like when he played uh, uh, Stuart Little's dad. Yeah, yeah, he really brings this familiar <laughs> element I... to it. Because, <laughs> yeah, he can bring that, but why? Like, I wouldn't expect him to as Lex Luthor necessarily. Yeah. Maybe. Just play him straight I, I think he, I, th I, I find him, him funny in Breaking Bad sometimes. Sometimes he pulls faces, you know, that are like, you know, when he's looking at Jesse's artificial antenna that he builds with like tinfoil <laughs> yeah. on the cell phone, and he's just like, he contorts his face in a very funny way. Like he finds opportunities to inject comedy into that role. It's very sparingly, but uh, I, mean, I, I think it would know. be really neat to have a Boy Scout Superman played by Henry Cavill and a very serious, like almost cynical, but very sharp businessman type played by yeah uh, and Brian he can Cranston. be witty and he can have yeah. that element to him but he's not like because we already got jesse eisenberg and that's shit that was horrible horrifying that's oh horrible. yeah legitimately yeah. disgusting i wasn't a fan of that either yeah <laughs> it's horrible never again in the comics and... osborne was key in both secret invasion and the thunderbolts leader these movies will be crap but imagine if they were good with more willem dafoe who could have been a great main villain um, yeah, uh, it, it, I was going to say, like, if, if everything were good, then great. At this point, I wouldn't want them to bring in Willem Dafoe in the Thunderbolts or some shit, because I'd just be like, oh, God. <laughs> we got so lucky with him not being destroyed in No Way Home. Please, let's not risk it again. Yeah. Uh, why can't we just get an X-Force movie in the style of The Expendables and Suicide Squad 2? Just something fun and balls out. Well, I think they were gonna make an X Force movie before all the Fox stuff changed. That's why they got Josh Brolin cable. Mm. But I guess it's probably not happening for a while now. That's like Deadpool's thing, right? He makes like a spin off of the X Men. Yeah, X Force is is kind of like uh, that was around that time, same time as Deadpool. he called it X Force. Yeah, yeah that's funny. He makes his it's, own team what, of superheroes. What was really They're... funny was. They make the team and it all goes wrong. Their first mission because it's really windy. They parachute down, but it's oh, really yeah. windy, <laughs> so it all goes wrong. <laughs> One of them flies into like helicopter blades, um, I, I and then like one of them crashes into a bus. <laughs> then one of the guys <laughs> he, he flies into a oh yeah, that's right, Vanisher, and he yeah. hits the uh, he he hits the um electricity wires. 
and then it's you find out it's Brad Pitt was the Punisher, <laughs> um, and then one of the guys falls into a, a wood chipper. Jeez. <laughs> 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 it's like geez. and then the I can't remember his name. It was the dude. He was just like a regular guy, and he comes to help him out. He's like, <laughs> "Yeah, no, it's okay. We're X Force, right? Yeah, we're X Force." <laughs> and he vomits on him, and his arm falls off, and, like gets melted by the acid. Good times. Yeah, yeah, I like Deadpool and Deadpool Two. I like those films. <laughs> can't wait for Deadpool Three. Mm. <laughs> well, we'll hey, look. All right, maybe it'll maybe. Is know, that maybe. even a thing? Will yeah, be. it's happening. Oh, okay. Be afraid. <laughs> Lord Longbong of Mubschlington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, hello. Yeah, I think there's a good chance that we'll probably have a little look-see at that movie. The longest of Kongest. I think it is the longest Kong movie of all time, right? That's a pretty cool little accolade to have. Surprise me! Oh my god! And you get a whole bunch of dinosaurs and big old spooky bugs. Dinosaur. One of the most disturbing ways to die ever in that movie happens. You know, that was quite a creepy scene. That's the one thing I remember from that. I movie. really didn't well. like it because I liked the character and I like Andy Serkis. So. Oh yeah! Oh. oh, that was him. Yeah, was I forgot him, yeah. about that. He got a fucking horrible death. That was brutal. Yeah. Uh, I've seen so many people say, now that Marvel is dying, the DCEU is going to shine. <laughs> you, know, you know the old expression, just because you blew out someone else's candle, that doesn't make you make yours burn. It comes to mind for some reason. It's just That's these, a good quote. It's like the Anakin corpse tried to crawl to the finish line as Marvel, and it just dies. <laughs> and then there's just this other corpse a few miles back, like, now's my time to shine! <laughs> like, I I, I can get... still finish. Told us in the <laughs> Well, if they're smart enough to seek out some good writers in preparation for their 10-year nope. plan, I could see that happening, but I don't know. If... I am pessimistic about this, but sure, maybe, 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 maybe. It would like if they suggested we're going to literally copy D Disney one to one starting this year, and we're going to release our equivalent of Iron Man, and then we're going to do blah 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 blah. If someone said well, it's a bit late for that, I'd be like, probably not actually. You know, because in five years they'll already be in a way better position if these things are actually well written. Like, mm -hmm. taking right. your time is just something they refuse to accept as an actual viability thing. Yeah. No, we must get to Justice League now. <laughs> yeah. Calm down. Scrolls everywhere, everything, all at once. Everyone, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. It's going to be great when they tell us Iron Man was a scroll the whole time. Yeah, they're going to do some bullshit like that, and they're going to think it's so clever, and we're going to hate it. And, then and it's going to be shit, and no one's going to like it. That writer will be like, yeah. Uh, I'll be I just can't mind. handle it that... because I'm so cool. I just changed all of the arc for that. Ooh, awesome. Aren't so I cool. cool? Um, My mom has the worst media takes. Her worst two takes are, the first Suicide Squad is better than the first Avengers... Oh. Mm. oh, that's pretty bad take. And Don't Moon... worry, you might be adopted. Yeah, <laughs> and Moon Knight is great. Even by the show's end, it's still ambiguous whether it's all in Mark's head. Oh, how clever! Yeah, that's the sign of just the best movie ever. So, like, is that a way of trying to like defend against how bullshit it all is? Because I always find it funny for that. Because when it's just like an interpretation on top of everything else, like yeah, whatever. But when it's like how everything's nonsense, like, yeah, but it could be in his head, so... <laughs> like, oh, okay. Then. Fine, that character's crazy, so Whoa. they can do whatever they want. Whoa. My favorite superhero movie is still probably The Incredibles. Classic big band OST with lots of brass, golden age comic art style, and great characters. Excellent pick. Incredibles is fantastic. Yep. What was the most off-color decision made by a character you liked? The act was cruel, immoral, dislikable. Uh, oh, there's probably quite a long... Um, well, should we start with cruel, Black Widow? Cruel, immoral, dislikable? The Black Widow example is a pretty good one. Um, yeah, killing that, all those people. It, it's a clean example as well, because uh, narratively speaking, she is there's nothing compromised about her. So she just does that and doesn't care. It's like, damn. Because, you know, with Wanda, it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated with Wanda because a lot of people are like, it's corrupted by the dark code. So, um, however, 
we've got, uh, you know, Doctor Strange and his lack of concern for destroying the book that... I mean, he had a hand in that book getting destroyed. I know you, you, you if we're being definitive, it's Wanda that is really responsible, but... Well, then again, what do you think? If I shoot you with the... Uh, this reminds me of the fucking Rise of Skywalker thing. If I'm shooting at you, Rags, with a machine gun going buh, 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 and then you lift up a little shield that reflects bullets and it goes buh, 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 back at me, and then that hits a, a thing I'm holding that allows people to be saved in the world, is that my fault or your fault? Or well, both our fault? It's my fault. I mean, we're partially both to blame, but is it my intention to hit the thing with that? No, or is you, it just you, you, you don't even know what it is. Oh, then I don't... <clears throat> well, does the deflector have that ability than... to direct the ricochets? Kind of yeah, like yeah, Rags knows that it does that, and he's doing it because he doesn't want to die. Mm -hmm. The gun's fault. Because <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of when, uh, when they were like, see, Ray didn't kill Palpatine because she deflected his lightning back at him. It's like, that is her <laughs> killing him, is it not? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think it's both. I think when when you, you fired it and someone else deflects it back at you and it destroys something or whatever, that seems to be both, right? But um, on the part of you, you wouldn't... Because this is the thing, Wanda didn't even know what the Book of Vishanti was. But uh, Strange did. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, but that, that would rank pretty high. What else we got? Uh, you got lower-end stuff, like... Falcon and Bucky ditching the two heroes that saved their lives, the dead. That 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 stuff like that pisses me off, but I don't know if that compares to some of the grander things that happen in phase four. I mean we have Kenobi letting Vader go at the end. That's pretty Yeah, that was pretty that's bad. That's pretty insanely oh, yeah. immoral, honestly. Uh the moral cowardice on display there is legitimately fucking frustrating. I don't think there's anything in Thor. I think I think that film's not got anything like level. Um. Yeah, I mean the the Black Widow example is probably going to trump a lot of the ones we've just said. Yeah, because it's this, so something she should be able to understand, and she knows so blatant, exactly. Yeah. She should know better. Yeah. Eva. Um. If you watch it again, Palpatine did stop shooting lightning near the end. His mm -hmm. hands were down, but it's still just coming out of his <laughs> Please, <laughs> spare, me. spare me! It's not even my lightning anymore, it's yours! And she's like, nah, it's, yours, it's still yours. Evil. Nah. <laughs> you're Lightning's real evil. Oh I wouldn't do God. lightning. Lightning's evil. That's not me. She fooled us all. Uh, Bringy, look up Peacock Spider. Nah. I'm good. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no way. It. Speaking of coward, peacock spider. Oh, Fringy is cute. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, That's is pretty it? interesting. Yeah, your prejudice to spiders is unacceptable. It, it is actually pretty oh, bad. Oh, that's neat. The way that you behave is pretty bad. Look at him go. Man, that's a colorful back. Yeah. Uh, how competent do you think the guy, the do you think the B ones is B B one B ones is in the prequels? B ones battle droids. B ones. Or? And the question is, how competent do you think the battle droids are? If that's what the B ones are, the guys with the. You know, like the tri shot and the you know the upgrades from the battle droids, the super battle droids. Well, wouldn't they just say super battle droids at that point? Yeah, B one. I and I assume if it's one, it's the first model, right? The original. Oh, if they just the, colored the regular dudes. Um, I mean, how competent? Not very they're at not all. Very at all. No, they're really. I mean, bad. they're 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 mass producible, probably fairly cheap. They're just meant to throw at the enemy. Roger, right. I think that's even the. Like with the stuff Lucas had said that they're they're yeah. incompetent. They could be sliced down by Jedi like butter or something. They could just tear through them. I remember that shot. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's like uh, BTS. Yeah, he's talking to Spielberg. If if the question were like, 
how well do they fit into the universe or how much do you like them or whatever that would be one thing but asking me how competent do i think they are it's like they're not <laughs> not even close they're just terrible i don't think we ever see them yeah, achieve yeah. anything it's usually I don't super think battle they droids anything either yeah uh mount damn nature you scary creature i have found for you is lee cochlid Ridium? Sure. I have is no that, idea what's happening. Is that a is that a is thing? That a, are they trying to give binomial nomenclature there? Green banded brood sack. Apparently, what that is. <laughs> green banded bro green banded brood sack. Oh, it's like a little. Oh, that's an unusual looking snail. Yeah. Oh, I hope he's alright. Gets up to A sudden Transformers discussion while I research about events leading up to the film for a video was a coincidence that gave me a good spook. Good job, Fringy. Okay. Oh, wow. About that. Ooh. Digimon of the day is Kabuteramon. Wait a second. Oh. It's not the snail. The green banded brood sack, those things that are fucking sticking out of its head, those are the parasites that are in the snail. Oh. Oh. That's not nice. I don't like that. Boo. Yeah, they like burrow inside of it or some shit. Boo. Oh. Uh. That's the Pokemon, by the way. Pokemon? That's the Digimon. Slimy boy. Oh, right. Digimon, yeah. That's from the original series, isn't it? I remember that one. I was going to say, he looks a little less cringe than uh, the others in terms of the way he's drawn. I don't know. That looks familiar, cringe. yeah. Well, look at him. I don't me. like it. I know, he's scary, it's, it's, but... It's, it's, no, it's, it's too edgy and try-hardy, you know? I, I looks understand. looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. A guest? It's been so long. Please stay for dinner. <laughs> uh, first ever EFAB I've caught live and it's covering the most influential franchises of our generation. Thank you all for being a voice of reason for modern day blockbusters. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I talked to someone who thought that Star Wars... Oh, not Star Wars. It's... Wait, it was says SW breaking out of the mirror dimension. Call it which, okay. Uh, is fine because of her power. I said that it ruins the stakes and Waldron wrote himself into a corner. He disagreed. Shake my head. If her power is directly connected with something to do with the mirror dimension, you have to fucking tell the audience that shit. Like, how the hell does that make any sense how at all? How could anybody intuit that? You know? And then, if it's something that we should just all know, then how the fuck does Doctor Strange know? Doesn't he know? Yeah. I mean, like, he should know that. He shouldn't be surprised that it doesn't work then, should he? So, I don't know, I, I'm not convinced. I've heard the idea that she uses a particular kind of magic that is, like, particularly good against the mirror dimension, which to me just sounds like a fucking cop-out. Sure it is. It's, it's like just really good against the mirror dimension. Oh, right. shit. Yes, I give it a bull and a sheep. Mm. How is Fringy finding the new MK8 DLX courses, and what would you guys want to see? Oh, wait, well, that'll be the second question. So that's the first question. How is the Mario Kart 8 new courses? Uh, I like it better than the last round. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the new map, though. There's something about it. it feels super rigid. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the new course, like the brand new one. But Waluigi Pinball, having that back is cool. Um, I like the tour courses. Yeah, it's it's okay. All right. And uh, what would you guys want to see from the next Mario Kart game? Mechanics, carts, characters, course ideas? This, is, this um, seems I like said, Springy's question. Yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't have an interesting answer for this because I haven't paid a I've said a lot them. that I think um, that the next logical step is just Nintendo Kart. Have a bunch of Nintendo characters as the, as the uh, you know, cast of characters that you can play as rather than just, um, yeah, rather than just Mario characters. That's what I think. Super Kart Brothers? Yeah, something like that. Uh... Mutually, I know you guys won't cover the boys season three fully, but could you mention your favorite slash most hated part of season three? Sure. I would say my 
favorite and most hated is probably Soldier Boy, um, or things to do with him. I think he's a really cool idea, and I think they got the greatest actor around to play him in terms of just he seemed to nail it. You know, I, maybe I'm hyperbolic there. I just mean that they had everything they needed, and they made his character fucking crap. Uh, it's just like incredibly one note. He's just an asshole. I'm not even sure how much of his lifespan makes any sense in terms of if he just treated everybody that way. How did he manage to get to where he was in all these different ways? Sometimes he seems interesting. Sometimes there's little bits and bobs in terms of how he reacts or what he says, this, that, and the other. And so, you know, I was trying to enjoy him. Um, but then I just got annoyed. I, I couldn't take how much he was just like, ah, it's so he's so abrasive in every scene. So uh, what I love and what I hate is connected to him in that, um, again, I, I don't mind saying this because you guys I just wouldn't recommend watching it. The big plan for the season is to get Homelander. To do that, you got to detonate uh, Soldier Boy on Homelander. That's, that's, that's his. If he detonates on him, it'll take his powers away. It'll burn the V out of him. And... Um, so just just to give you an idea, the, the, this is the setup. You guys remember Ryan, right? Homelander's kid, for him. Yeah. 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 So you got Homelander and Ryan are in a room. Soldier Boy, Butcher with superpowers, and Maeve are in the room. The those three want to get Homelander. Homelander's trying to appeal to Soldier Boy because he just found out that Soldier Boy is his dad technically because of the way Bort did sperm stuff, whatever. Um, okay. and so they they attack Homelander. They start preparing Soldier Boy to to detonate, and then Ryan knocks Soldier Boy like out into a different room. Like he hits him, and he gets flung out of the room. The thing is, Soldier Boy is like one of the strongest people ever. I think he might even be more durable than Homelander. It's unclear. Um, but he's obviously pissed. Uh, I think he's even lasered by Ryan actually. Um. And Soldier Boy is kind of an asshole, right? But you understand the mechanics here. So Soldier Boy like hits Ryan to the point where he fucking flings across the room as well. Uh, I think he's knocked out. So like I said, I'm describing events here. You, you following? You, you understanding where everyone is so, and yeah. what's happening? Yeah, I guess so. Now, him doing that, him hitting a kid, is shocking. But that is a kid who is a Superman, and it and he just lasered him. Um, yeah, makes sense. So, like, you know, I'm going, I'm going very slow motion here on purpose. Um, in that moment, I'd be like, "Ooh, this, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, you kind of hit a kid, but at the same time, you, you hit a kid that was killing you in, a, in a, almost. It's complicated, you know. I don't know. It's, it's one of, the, but um, Butcher and Maeve decide because Soldier Boy did that that they are now going to give up the chance to stop Homelander to just beat up Soldier Boy. Oh. Oh. And that was possibly the most frustrating thing in the entire season for me. I was just like, yeah, Soldier Boy's a dick, sure, fine. But Homelander's threatened several times over to destroy the whole world, so I don't, I don't think like, yeah, okay, fine, he hit fucking kill him later if you have to, you know? <laughs> like, it's uh, the only reason it happened was because they obviously don't want to lose Homelander yet. They're going to milk him for a few more seasons, probably. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, enjoyed a lot of stuff about Soldier Boy, his history and his, his the, the actor for him, but a lot of stuff I didn't like about him, and that part was super dumb. Icing on the cake, Maeve should have died. You know exactly what I'm talking about. His surviving that was hilarious and stupid. But yeah, so to be fair, the biggest flaws, I guess, are in the last episode. So the people saying that the last one's the worst one, they're probably right. Ooh. Homelander is the show. I think you're right. At this point, I think you're right. All the memes about good... Bo uh, Boy Season 3, it's always to do with him. He's a good character, yeah, I like him. I wouldn't go that far. No. <laughs> I just like the idea of a like I was saying before. I think you were at going to the bathroom or something. But uh, an emotionally unstable Superman is a is a very interesting idea and a terrifying one. You know, I like kind of having a show that revolves around somebody like that. I think you're totally right. I don't think he's executed well at all. I think that he's no. running on that concept is why people even like him. Also, the actor right. Anthony Starr does a great job. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, months late with this, I know, but canonically, why was Multiverse Peter played by different people but Multiverse Wander and Strange, etc. weren't? Hi, Rags. Hi. Luck of the draw, roulette wheel, it's not I, really... I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be anything, you never know what's going to happen. I think you're allowed that benefit when you're dealing with the multiverse, you can you get to choose whatever you want, really. Uh, though there would still be like, you know, if, if, if I was about to open a portal randomly and it's like, I hope this universe has this, 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 and then it does, that would still be incredibly lucky. It's not, it doesn't, Absolutely. like, people who know who Peter Parker is or whatever getting drawn to the universe, like, I think what they gave us for that was a fair, like, selection. I don't think that was like a particularly lucky or unlucky selection. Uh, you hear the Russos call The Last of Us 2 the greatest game ever made? Mm -hmm. uh, I heard about that. <laughs> Did they really? I didn't know that. God, that would unironically tempt me to be like, stick to movies, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and even then. Even then. Like... Uh, I wasn't a fan of The Gray Man. I watched that recently. But, yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, it's super generic. Uh, yeah. Edge and Precipice mean the same thing. That's what I thought, yeah, that's why that line sticks out. It's like, wait, what? Edge of the press, event. What are you talking about? Uh, Australia only exists because the emus allow it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Typo is a crazy and kooky guy. No, I think he was pretty normal. Still do. Uh, and then there's Kang the Almighty. Is that someone from the comics, I'm guessing? This, those are like Kangs we're going to be meeting eventually. Kang the I guess. Conqueror? Well, so this, they said Kang the Almighty. I don't know which one that is. I don't know what he's going to do. Blow something up, probably. Well, the guy in Loki is He Who Remains, who's some kind of variant of Kang the Conqueror, right? I think that's... Yes. What it... <laughs> for, what it's, for what it's worth. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. Like, I don't really care. I'm just... I think that's what it is, though. It's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, Ripping pepperoni, Goodell man. Yeah, kind of. Uh, kick typo out. He's ruining my mood. Oh, wow. Really? It's like a you issue. How much to get rid of typo? I want him gone. What is, what is <laughs> going on here? <laughs> Hick typo, he's Dude. shouting too much. I'm, this is a meme. You're oh. memeing. How could you? I think he deserves major props for coming into this stream and, and hopping on and, and talking. Oh, I yeah. liked him. I liked him too. I thought he was friendly. Goodell, Don, but not for, forgotten. Hi, Rags. Hi. Um... Peter Jackson was asked to be a part of Rings of Power. They asked me if I wanted to be involved, and I said, that's an impossible question to answer without seeing a script, said Peter Jackson. So they said, we'll send them to you, and the scripts never showed up. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Maybe they never had any. Cool. <laughs> it was like, I wait, like what do you mean scripts? Why would we do have a script? Do you want to get involved? Well, you know, just let's, let's wait to see. You know? <laughs> Let me take a look. Dude, I fucking love the idea that he said I need to see a script. That's probably, like, bizarre to them at this point. Like, what do you yeah. mean? Why? What's that got to do with anything? Do you don't want you to want... be involved automatically. It's like, well, you know, it'd be nice to know what I'm getting yeah. into. Yeah. Why do you want a script? Look at all this money. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to do poopy stuff. Uh, versus match of the day. Who wins between Vader and Gandalf the White? Only allowed to refer to the OT, prequels, and the Jackson films. Gandalf's power level is a bit of a mystery. Um, I'm, my instinct is to go with Vader on that one. I think so, yeah. I think the, the force, force is going to pretty... outdo his magic in those films. I think so, yeah, because the yeah the magic in Lord of the Rings is really hard to really peg down. You could make avalanches and create storms. You can, it's just it's not like immediately impactful in the same way that maybe just using the forces to lift objects on a whim. What I will say is when Gandalf fights the Balrog, some interesting references there for what be maybe useful against Vader. Maybe yeah, like the bubble shield he's got. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know how much that's going to help when Vader's... Vader's pretty overwhelming with the Force. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, my instinct is Vader, but I, I think there's a possibility for either of them to win that one. I suppose it would be up to the writer. Uh, for a nice Pokedex entry, look up Ultra Moon and Emerald entries for Dragonite. Dragonite Pokemon. Dragon Knight. Oh, Dragonite. Dragonite. One original one fifty. Yeah. Uh, sorry, which one's one of those? Uh, look up Dragonite for Ultra Moon and Emerald. Dragonite's like the friendly kid version of Charizard. It's like softer edges. Hey, okay, Emerald. It can circle the globe in just sixteen hours. It is a kind-hearted Pokemon that leads lost and found foundering ships in a storm to the safety of land. Well, that's Aww. nice. That's a nice thing to do. What a good Pokemon. And then we got Ultra Moon. It flies over raging seas as if they were nothing. Observing this, a ship's captain dubbed this Pokemon the Sea Incarnate. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Will you guys ever cover Daredevil? Season 3 is one of my favorite pieces of media ever. I think we'd all like to cover something good again. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Doubtful. Probably not, no. But yeah, no. Good to know people are enjoying it still. We'd still I'd still recommend it. Uh, definitely at this oh, yeah. point with, with how everything's gone with everything else. Like, why not? Go throw it on. Are they erasing all that now that it's a Disney thing? I don't know. Or are they no, no, I building think, on top of it? I would seriously doubt they would want to delete that. People love it. That would be it. No. Like I've heard log. good things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam thinks he destroyed Mola's consistency argument. I don't want to spoil it, but I have to say it's pretty bad. Please correct him, maybe on EFAB. Hey, you know what? Let Adam, let Adam think that. That's fine. He's got his own show to run. I'm sure he's got a really good argument. If it comes up, in passing, here and there. You know, well, like, we can have a little chat about it. He has some interesting ideas when it comes to storytelling. I... The a Adam Friended, yeah. That's the lad. He's, uh... I think, I think I blew his mind when I was saying that I really only care about things making sense. I think that oh, blows God, everybody's minds until they understand I'm basically talking about everything they've ever thought to talk about anyway. They think, at first, I think they think that it's just, like, lame stuff, you know? And nerdy stuff. I heard you arguing with Destiny about Star Wars on his show. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I was laughing my ass off. I was trying to help all the people in that call, and they kept tanking it for me. Yeah. Oh, but they made my hero all stanky. It's like, no, that's not the argument. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Moreman, Fringinator, Metalitarizer of Doom, Ragamuffin. Oh, all interesting names. Um, guy I recognize but can't remember the name of. I like you guys. Thanks for sharing your ideas. <laughs> Have some money. Oh, nice. thank you very much. Don't like overdesigned Pokemon? Look up Eternatus. That's already an overdesigned name. Have a look. E Eternatus Pokemon. Jesus, what the fuck? Whoa. Is he like. Do you find him at the end of time or something? So, so we got Eternatus, like this fucker right here. Let's put so him in chat. So Is he like, like a. Like cursed Porygon or something? It's a gigantic Pokemon, but apparently there's like a, a I don't know, a mega version of it. Mega e version. Eterna That's Max mega Eternatus. Version. Look at this fucker. Uh, I don't know if that's an evolution or a special thing. Like that thing goes crazy. Look at this. This fucking spaceship, man. <laughs> and this is supposed what to be a this? Pokemon? Yeah. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> What, okay. what is this design? Like, what were gigantic, they thinking? Gigantic yeah. Pokemon. It's too pointy. Now I want to just see what the Pokedex entry says. It's just stuff. 
Where's the Pokedex entry? Where's it? Is there even one? Fuck. Oh, there. So what was this thing? The Cornet's chest absorbs energy emanating from the lands of the Galar region. This energy is what allows the Eternatus to stay active. Okay. Sure. Uh, right. Well, that's all energy. That's what energy is. It was inside a meteorite that fell 20,000 years ago. There seems to be a connection between this Pokemon and the Dynamax phenomenon. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what happened to Pokemon? <laughs> Why is there like phenomenons and shit? Where it's like almost Pokemon a thousand do? now. Infinite amounts of Holy. energy pour from this Pokemon's enlarged core, warping the surrounding space time. Jesus Christ, get rid of this thing right now. Boo, silly. That's insanity. Greetings, EFAP crew. I have created an EFAP themed hey. Monopoly board. I treated it oh, to boy. Mauler and on Discord. Let me know what you think. Monopoly? That's cool. I just want to know what the locations are. Almost like the most expensive one. Have a look. Oh. The boardwalk and park place of the EFAP world. Molopoly. I see. Oh. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh, the movies is what is what oh. I see. <laughs> oh. So like at the bottom is Captain Marvel then, or <clears throat> well, no wait. Well, Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones season eight. That's fair. Batwoman, Ghostbusters, Man of Steel, Captain Marvel. Blade Runner 2049, is that? Yeah, I think so. Or am I blind? Black Hunter? Uh, Black, Panther. Black Panther, I see. Um, and Doctor Strange. Why is the prestige so low down? Yeah, I was going to say, what's going on there? And Mission Impossible Fallout. They're the orange tier, I guess. I feel like Batman and Robin Atlanta. is above Aliens as it should be. It's, it should be boring. <laughs> yeah, you've, got the, you've got the original trilogy. Look, I like the original trilogy. You put it way too high. Like you put it, like, you put it above Lord of the Rings. Like yeah, that's not. Correct. Yeah, you put you are, Infinity correct. War above, Lord of the Rings is better. Than you put Infinity War above Aliens. Maybe what have you done? And Aliens. Maybe they've not. And, uh, you know, they're not thinking Predator. about it that way. I don't know. Yeah, we've got the Suicide Squad is above Parasite and then Fallout and the Prestige. Yo, the Prestige is an orange. Ooh. It's the first orange. Yeah, the Prestige is the lowest of the good side. When it really... The fact <laughs> that it's right next to Doctor Strange as well. Like, it is. Pits next to... Uh... I appreciate wow, someone, the effort. Go to chat said Alien yeah. isn't very good. Oh my god. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. I, I hate you. We okay. have a slow well, old though for memes. Yeah, yeah, and the ER railroad. Um, your expectations can get subverted if you're not careful. Your expectation, yeah. Let's see. Rhino milk. Our utilities, we have rhino milk and. Spider milk? Uh, da, 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 da. Spider, milk. Spider milk, yeah. ENR railroad. Short ER line. Terror, Terror, Ter Ter Terravania Railroad, and Redder Railroad. What's the Patrick Williams one say? Oh, your you're expectations watching... were subverted. No, that's oh, Ryan Johnson oh, one. The... Uh, where is that? You're watching movies wrong. Oh, you're watching movies wrong. Pay one hundred dollars. I like it. I like these little pieces they got there as well. Super chat, yeah. super chat, super chat. Good Ooh, so stuff. Just ha got hacked as the jail. Express <laughs> VPN. Just use Express VPN, yeah. That should have been Singapore, surely. Or something like that. Um but yeah, thanks for that. That's cool. Hi Rags, oh. check out Hi. Uh, Hoosian Growlithe from, wait, Hoosian Growlithe and Arcanine, I guess? 
Huzian? Zuian? Huzian? I'm not sure if that's... Mm. And while you do that, Rags is spot on about Yu-Gi-Oh! Modern uh, YGO is akin to Solitaire. Your opponent can, can win on turn one before you play a card. Games rarely go past game three. Try yeah. GOAT format, early 2005 ban list, plays like a real game, back and forth. Yeah, the the original Yu-Gi-Oh! It, it really did have this back and forth component. Like, you were actually fighting somebody, and you had to very thoroughly engage with what they were doing. You couldn't just try and get off these crazy combos and stuff. Uh, let me, okay, here is the... Here are the other Growlithes. Prefer the originals. These look strange, but they're not terrible, but prefer the originals. Uh, will you do an EFAP on The Last of Us Part 2 with John? <laughs> Just because he likes it does not mean we have to torture him with telling us, telling him all of our points about how much we despise that game, okay? It's alright. I would never assume you would do another episode on that, because I know you've done one already, and uh, just... I've still got to listen to it. I've been meaning to, but you know how it is. I've been busy doing shit, but uh, I'm eventually going to listen to it the whole way through, because I'm actually very interested. Well, I think um, we did a couple I maintain... of episodes on it, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I'll listen to those, too. Um, I maintain that I enjoyed it, man, and if I said otherwise, I'd be lying. So, um... It, I thought it played really well. I enjoyed okay. the thick, bleak atmosphere. Last of Us Part Two. Oh. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, fuck, I enjoyed it. I thought the climax was exciting. It kind of felt like Pulp Fiction, the whole thing in Santa Barbara, the final act. I liked the reversal of Abby, even though that was a, I know that's the point that turned a lot of people off. I, I understand. I don't think you guys are wrong at all. I think I'm probably overlooking a bunch of things in its execution, even though I enjoy its <laughs> themes. But uh, I, I'm not going to make you guys repeat yourselves. I've got to watch your videos to be informed on your Well, position. fair warning, but, there's a vitriolic uh, fucking hatred for that game, and I still kind of harbor it quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand, man. Um, but, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh my god. Please read the Pokedex entry for Magikarp from Sword. Hashtag feels bad, man. Oh boy. Magikarp. Be like all of his family drowned. Pokemon. I like how every time it gets later and later, and there's like, more Pokemon! And then you just get more depressed, and you get scared that some Pokemon is gonna eat you while you sleep. Mm-hmm. Most of them. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I don't need to post Mag Magikarp for anyone, right? Uh... Holy shit, that is a lot of text here. Uh, sorry, which one was that? Uh, sword. Sword. Uh, do, 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 do. Holy shit, that's so many Pokédex entries. Uh, Omega, Ruby, Sun, Ultra... Uh, sword, there. Um... Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> That's so mean. It just says, it is virtually worthless in terms of both power and speed. It is the most weak and pathetic Pokemon in the world. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. You don't have to say that. That does seem just mean. It seems mean-spirited. Imagine you. Imagine you go. Out on your little adventures, like, oh, what's this Pokemon? Oh, don't do that. It was worthless. Like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's some <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, poor dude. Uh, also, hi, Rags, and hi to the German who's never won a Soulsborne race. Oh, screw hi you. <laughs> I did right. so well when I wasn't doing a race. <laughs> yeah. Man, I love all those soul games, but I haven't beat a single one because I suck at them so much. I'm not well, good maybe at like... if you would play less The Last of Us. And... 
Good. Wow. I'm okay. just playing that constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Can't make any time for any other video games. I'm really good at The Last of Us 2, but I'm not so good at <laughs> the Souls games. <laughs> I like how I forgot to name The Last of Us for like two seconds. Like shit, shit, I almost fucked it up. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm very impatient. Like uh, I don't want to have to maintain for twenty minutes like precise roles and all that. I just like my mind tends to wander a lot, uh -huh. and then I just and you do that once and then you fuck up and then your <laughs> your health fucking goes down rapidly and it's a shame because I'm missing out on all this cool lore and world design. Hmm. Uh, did you and guys see no journalist mode? <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, did you guys see Boogie call out Ethan Klein on Twitter for being fat? Laugh my ass off. I did. <laughs> I did see this. <laughs> that is. Yeah, I saw funny. that picture of Ethan, and I'm like, fucking hell, jeez. Yeah, he's. Uh... Oh, what, was was that a recent one where he's like in the I don't know a recliner or something, just lying he's just, there? Is his belly almost? I thought it was shopped at first because I was just like, man, that's that belly's getting big. Damn. Um, but I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know how he's. He might. He might just let himself go a bit. You know, happens. Just a bit. Just a bit. Too many pizzas. Doubled in size. Too pies. Mm, pizza. Rags. You can only peg one, but you can never do the others. Options are Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and Anthony Starr. Also, they're in their super suits. <laughs> Why? <laughs> See, this would be perfect if it was Rags' stream on his channel. Why don't you just ask all the sex questions about fucking superheroes? <laughs> yeah, it's just a little pegging, it's fine. I feel like, I feel like it should be Henry Cavill, though. Uh, easily, kind of. I'm assuming he's looking them up. I just fell asleep, I don't know. Either way. Mm -hmm. been a lot of chat saying Henry. Wait, hello? Oh, yeah, hello. It's just like, hello. okay, yeah. that's weird. I guess RTX just fucking quit <laughs> while that was happening. So, um, you ain't saying but, nothing. Yeah, I'm not, into, I'm not into pegging. <laughs> so, that doesn't even mean anything to me. I never I was, had never had an interest in it whatsoever. Why would I peg them? Why would they, why would not we just do nor, do, do they know what pegging is? They might not. I don't know. <laughs> why wouldn't you not. peg them? I mean, you could, I guess, but that would be strange roundabout way of doing things. All right. <laughs> Y'all should check out... You know, out... these sorts of questions make Fringy comfortable, uncomfortable, so... You know how he is about this sort of thing. Pegging, specifically. Y'all should check Reacher and Terminal List. No idea how Bezos Corp let those two gems come out. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that they're actually not that good at all, but... Well, what was funny is... I've heard Terminal List is decent. I asked no, Rico, I like... Hear, I hear recommendations, that's... I think that's different. I can imagine that it's entertaining, but I don't expect it to be good. Drinko I watched episode like... one. It wasn't spectacular, but it, pretty straightforward, but uh, it was alright. I thought it was okay. Drinker was singing its praises, and then he was like, Why haven't you watched All of Us Are Dead yet? I told you to. <clears> then I was like, Well, why aren't you recommending Terminal List? And then he was like, Um... I don't think you would like it. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I assume when he says that, that he means he enjoyed it, but that it's got plot fleams in it. You know. So but, uh... Maybe maybe it is me, because it's Chris Pratt, Amazon Prime, and it people it's got bad critical reviews and favorable audience reviews. I maybe I'm being unfair by attaching those two together. <laughs> people people said the Tomorrow War was great and like, oh god, and then we watched it. Mm. And it was awful. So it was one of I'm the worst sure movies we've seen. Tomorrow yeah, was so I'm sure, bad. I'm sure that this film is uh, this TV show can't be that bad because it's like a normal action thing, isn't it? So like, it, it doesn't have any of the crazy <laughs> time travel stuff that that thing has. Um. I think it was a straightforward yeah. and less cliche version of Jack Ryan, you know, the John Krasinski uh, Amazon thing. I, uh, I watched it's... Jack Ryan and I stopped partway because it was just like, hmm, I don't know, this isn't doing anything for me. Yeah, well, I thought the plotting and dialogue was eye-rollingly cliche in that. and uh, Ooh, But Terminal List was a bit of an improvement. All righty. Uh, hi, Rags. Hey. 
Thanks for mentioning Josh Strife Hayes. Led me to his content and love it. Did you know he's watching Jay and Metal's Star Trek podcast? Hope you guys have him on sometime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If he wants to come on, I'm sure there's plenty of things we could talk about. Yeah, yeah I don't know why anyone would watch Jay and Metal talk about Star Trek. That's a hey. crazy guy. <laughs> hey, I'm here this time. What a you character. can't say that. Hey, Mom. Bouncing off the Wednesday discussion about Simpsons, American Dad, Family Guy, Futurama, etc., it's fascinating how well they understand how to write jokes, but also manage to be well-rounded shows as a whole. Love them. I mean, yeah, you, you could almost take it for granted, right? Because, like, I loved watching them when I was uh, growing up, and I'm sure I'd happily watch a bunch of them now, the, the more classic episodes from each of the shows. But, you know, these days they struggle to string together a plotline that can do anything for, for a, lot of, uh, a lot of the shows we've been watching. But maybe that's that's harsh because I'm mainly talking about Disney instead of like animated shows. But then again, you know, I I, don't, I doubt Family Guy and uh, Future Futurama has not got its new episodes out yet, is it? They can... there will be coming eventually. South Park is still. Right I recently watched the Going Pandemic on. Special and some other episodes. Like South Park's still good. There's more stuff we got to watch. The Streaming Wars, I think, is the new one. I'll watch that. Part yeah, one and two, it. yeah. There's two parts. Yeah. They're both like I've films seen, for I've like an hour that, um, each. That there's Karen Randy, like Randy <laughs> with a Karen haircut. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my. I love you, buddy. I wasn't a fan of part one, but part two got a few laughs out of me. I thought that was okay. All right. Look up Tri Brigade Nerval. It reminds me of Fringy. Yu Gi Oh card. Oh. oh. I can see why this reminds you of Fringy. Does it remind you of me? Oh yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah, I can see. I can see why. Yeah, there is something yeah, in there that I think you could pick out. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. Kind of like Green Goblin. Are those like bombs? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's one of those new cards that's just look at all the text on there. It's one, two, three, four, five, six lines, and they have to shorten graveyard to G Y just so they could fit this shit in. <laughs> What's this Spanish? Called? Tri Brigade Nerval. Isn't it strange how Mario never ages, but Donkey Kong has? Cranky Kong is OG DK that fought Mario in the arcade. Donkey Kong Jr. is the second DK, and the current modern DK is the third Donkey Kong. Maybe he's the only creature in the Mushroom Kingdom that ages. <laughs> like, for some reason, everyone else cracked immortality. <laughs> Um, Mauler of puppets and pulling your sleeves, twisted your rags and smashing your frings. I know <laughs> this. Great. Twisting yes. My rags. Hi, rags, and hello to Fringy and John. Hi. Hello. Wow. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Got recommended a cover band on YouTube. Check their social media, and what do I see? But a Fringy retweet. Turns out they follow a bunch of you guys. Nifty. Oh. Oh wow. Well, how cool. about that? Hogland. That's quite a coincidence. Quinky dink. Not sure if covered before, but have a look see at Dex entry of Gigantamax Gengar, both sword and shield. Gigantamax? Sounds Gigantamax like a stupid Gigantamax name, Gengar. but sure. I'll let you, whoever wants to give that a look see, I'll read the next one while you. Right, so it's just going to be a huge fucking Gengar, isn't it? It, I'm looking it yeah, up. Yeah, I think it's that's a, a, it's a huge. Yeah. It's a huge oh, Gigantamax is like yeah. a modifier, right? You can apply that to any Pokemon. It's just big, Presumably. big Gengar. Large boy Gengar. <laughs> that is a big boy for sure. Big, big Gengar. Wait, what's that like? Hmm? Oh, there's a Pokedex entry for that. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Gengar. Okay. Pokedex. Oh, oh, oh. Mega Gengar. Where's the max one? What is this? I hate this. It's too much Pokemon. <laughs> I'll keep reading. Let me know when you got it. Yeah. If yeah, you can yeah. Get it. I've heard rumors of a Marvel villains team up show or film. Is this true? Well, if you think of the Thunderbolts, that's, that's more of an anti-hero team or something, right? A what one? Sorry? I, uh... They're saying they've heard rumors of a Marvel villains team or show or film. 
No, I think that is meant to be Thunderbolts, but it's more like anti-heroes, yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, Fringy, what do you think of Bullseye's character? Um, oh man, it's been a while since I watched Season 3. I remember liking him, but I couldn't mm -hmm. hone in on anything specific at the moment. So, there's the... Oh, it's like, uh... Gigantamax Gengar. Uh, and the sword one says, Rumor has it that its gigantic mouth leads in leads not into its body, filled with cursed energy, but instead directly to the afterlife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm not going there. Uh, There's a doorway to the afterlife. It's like, ooh. Come and back then out? the shield one, it lays traps, hoping to steal the lives of those it catches. If you stand in front of its mouth, you'll hear your loved one's voices calling out to you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, then. Creepy. Yep, that's about uh, normal to talk about at this point. You gotta be 10 to be responsible enough to control yes. Pokemon. Just to be clear. I wonder if they ever retconned that, if they ever changed it, if they ever realized that that was stupid. <laughs> when they went back and said, just, uh, just as we're it, upping the age when limit. When we said to, 10, you, know, you're just, you have to understand, okay. everybody in this universe is like 100 when they reach 10. That's how that works, okay? And you're like, ah. Oh. As a good. comparison, just a normal Gengar entry for Pokemon Red. Under a full moon, this Pokemon likes to mimic the shadows of people and laugh at their fright. Oh, well, see, that's <laughs> more normal. It's not like it didn't hurt or kill anybody, yeah. so. Like yeah. a prank, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you feel a sudden chill, and it might be trying to lay a curse on you, but that's, that's as bad as it gets for the for red, blue, and yellow. All right, yeah, it's that's not, not so bad. Not, not gigantic and has a afterlife mouth. Um. Okay. Archie Sonic is the worst thing ever made. Where do I begin with this horrendous, obnoxious, over-bloated, over-dramatic, fetishized, Nazi-driven, and overall completely nonsensical soap opera? Well, I'm not gonna bother. Bye. Hey, I used to collect that comic when I was a kid. I started from issue 12. Archie Sonic? I don't even know. <laughs> Alright. Yes, yeah, so Arch there's Archie Comics, and then Sonic was kind of a subdivision of that. Archie Sonic Comics. Oh, how terrible will this be? I mean, it. Oh, I mean, it's you know. Oh, Ar yeah, Archie. They have Sonic the Hedgehog, and he's all broody, and there's fire in the back. I just, I can't look at Sonic and take him seriously, <laughs> and ex imagine him with all these like robots and these these conflagrations behind him and these. Really, I just can't do it, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you Here, mean. Here, let me... Like, look. Uh, I look at this, and I'm like, I can't take that seriously. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is clearly <laughs> sexual. Uh. Uh. John is a brave boy. I respect it. Yes. Like, talking about yes. your brave Last of Us 2. Okay. Hey, and you guys are good enough to keep having me on. My yeah. dumb, my, my dumb, stupid butt. We were paid to have you on, to be fair, but I think it's still cash. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Druckmann slipped you some cash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's half money. Good stuff. Uh, forget about Star Wars. Destiny said in an old interview that Lord of the Rings trilogy was bad and overhyped. Wow, wrong. Again, mm -hmm. you guys have to understand that's what he and Adam and Sitch, like, they need to say these things. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. They gotta have all the bad takes, right? Oh, Because yeah. otherwise, it, like, they, they wouldn't just have, like, one or two bad takes. They'd have all the bad yeah, takes. For some reason, they... like, a requisite for talking about politics is that your media takes just gotta. <laughs> cancerously bad, because you. You gotta trade one for the other. I think it makes complete Probably. sense because all of the all the film people they're so high. let's take Chris Duckman for example who's hyper aware that you're supposed to like Blade Runner to the point where he will force himself to like Blade Runner because if he hadn't he'd be socially ostracized you see that that's the format that's like the environment but when you're a politics streamer and you randomly share like oh yeah I, you know I I thought that Indiana Jones was shit and everyone else is like what because you're not allowed to do that <laughs> they don't know so they stumble into these horrible takes because they haven't been shown the light yet. And, uh, you know, gotta... They don't have these conversations. They don't know. Those, those poor fuckers, they don't know. 
Poor but we'll lads. we'll save them one day. Day. For now we let them frolic in the forest of being wrong. Frolic. <laughs> I haven't heard frolic in a while. That's that's nice. That's nice. <sighs> Look at this. I don't wanna. You will. Damn it. You make me look at it. This? You must. Go bust. What the fuck is this? That's Sonic the Hedgehog. It says they're really big on top. First That's... issue. Look at him in his little. His little. It, look at how, look how weird tails looks. They can't even draw Sonic as well as me. I think they should have hired That's me. That's true. They can't. They need to hire you. My Sonics was best. Oh my god, this is a blast from the past. Oh yeah, I, I literally have a stack of these in my mom's basement. I used to oh. collect them religiously every week. The Archie Sonic co just all comics or are these specific? Well, this would have been back when specifically, Sonic was the coolest thing yeah, in the world. Specifically, Sonic the Hedgehog because I got Sonic Two on Genesis, and I, immediately I was a Sonic fan. And I'm like, I gotta get the comic. I saw them on the rack when I would go out shopping with my parents. I'm like, I gotta get this. Also, I gotta stay up to date on my Sonic lore. Yeah. Lads. You drew, you drew that epic Sonic I'm... on that goddamn. <laughs> I'm looking with, at all these comic you did with book Out covers. Me, which was bullshit, but oh, go ahead. I guess there's a huge fan base. It just, I, I guess, I have to remind myself every once in a while. The Sonic, there's a yeah, massive yeah. amount of people who fucking adore Sonic, and I just do not get it. <laughs> I've never. I got... do not. Understand. I had a friend who was fucking obsessed with Sonic back in the day and I was always just like, yeah, he's a little annoyed rat, well, I, mean, I guess. You can understand, uh, <laughs> no, you can no. understand the appeal of like old school, like 90s Sonic, right? I love like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Like the, I think the, that the game is fucking awesome. The platformer games, yeah, where you go oh, I mean, like the, the, yeah, like the Genesis ones, like Sonic 2, Sonic and Knuckles, you know? I'm I, not even I, a fan I, of I Sonic really... 1, but I think Sonic 2 really improved the formula and then Sonic Absolutely 3 and Knuckles does. perfected yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah, those know... games are cool, and it's a fun little world, but then, I yeah, so little Sonic Adventure Sonic. was the beginning of the, uh, <laughs> the new era. This is their jungle adventure, where cool. the throne boomerangs so swing on vines. So you've fallen down the rabbit hole of Sonic comic books. Go, go read them all, Rags. <laughs> go read them all and report back. Tell us yeah. which are the good Sonics. Look, they've got a, they're doing the... I just, I'm just... Look at all these. There's so many. There's so fucking many. They this got quite a lot movie. out of that character in terms of comic book lore, that's for sure. And they got a lot of, out of Sonic in general. <laughs> He's been, yeah. been pumped. Yeah. That's... <laughs> he even makes it onto an old gothic phone semi-regular. Oh, dude, this is issue 12. This is my first ever Sonic comic that I got. <laughs> Did you see the pink furry bait on it? And you're like, yeah, I gotta get this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is, no, this is yeah. it's not a fetish, the comic. I think this was just the issue that happened to be out the week that I got interested because I was so hyped on Sonic 2 for Genesis. Gotta get that Sonic comic. Yeah. Um, we have uh, read out all Super Chats, by the way. So that means Woo! It is Yay! Time, Yay! Time Damn. to end. But before that, John, what are you up to? What's happening? Ah, tell everyone. Mm. Oh, well, I'm still doing my YouTube crap. I'm got uh, I'm juggling a couple things at the moment. I started a new review series and uh I'm also doing the finale of my uh RB in the Chief season 8. I'm working on that as well. Uh John Graham on YouTube if you want to subscribe. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, I mean, they are pretty familiar with you at this point, I think. <laughs> if the, I if they were so. going <laughs> to sub, they probably would have. But those who are holding out, it's your loss. Your you better, loss. or I'll find you. Wow, <laughs> Duma just threw in a super chat saying, kick Sitch. He's not even here. I would have kicked him by now. Yeah, yeah, but you've got long legs. You can stretch him out, find him. Longer. Have, I, don't, I don't think stoats have very long limbs at all. No, Mola can... He's asking Mola to do it. I'm saying that Mola can use his long leg. Well, as you highlighted in what you were saying, Bailey, there's like you can find him. It's like no, I I don't know where Sitch is. What am I gonna do? Kick everything and just hope? What I thought. Yeah. Mel, what are you up to? Where are you going? What's happening? Run away. What? What? I'm doing still Metal's Forge weekly. I did one twice. I did two. Whoa. In one week. Calm down. Yeah. 
Terrifying. Yeah, I did those just trailers before you did. So you basically copied me and I demand compensation, but that's uh, fine. This is compensation right now. Oh, oh cool. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, it, how it, how it do you like uh, Majora's Mask Metal? Do you like oh, it? Oh, I liked it. I, I actually like it better than Ocarina of Time. Right on. It was the first time I played it and I, I had a great time. Uh, it was good stuff. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I need to play it. Conforming the general yeah. opinion. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, hate doing, it. <clears throat> doing Metal's Forge tomorrow, probably the same EFAP time as today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Bullet Train because mm. I watched that in in the cinematisms, and I'm going to talk about it because I found it to be pretty entertaining. What would you give it out right. of ten, Metal? Commit to a number right now. I don't know, four or wow. five. Pathetic. In yeah. like a good way, so I mean. Basically better than most of the things I've seen <laughs> this year. Ooh. It's ranking uh, pretty high. So yeah, go, go, go Hungus there. Uh, it's always a good time. I, I, I'm, I'm on this uh, unofficial DCA... Is it DC... DCAU. AU? Yeah. Arc with meme. We did Mass of the Phantasm last week. That was good stuff. Uh, those are always long forges. Like, they always go to up to, like, four hours. Uh... Which I know, short man bad, shut up, it's long, long enough for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, those, those are good, good stuff. Go, go check that out. Mm. And if you, uh, if you want to see me live, I do stream and links on the Twitch roos, as everyone is probably aware. I'm, I'm a bit on a retro arc, uh, if you will. I'm currently playing God Hand on my PlayStation 2. So I'm playing all that nice. stuff on my original hardware. Uh, just going back. Doing the things. I even got Silent Hill One as an original copy of my PlayStation One, so that's I'm, I have that prepared for for Spooky Month. Neat. A little, little teaser for that, if you will. But yeah, yeah, that's 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 what's going on. There you go. Um, rags, springy. What about you guys? What about me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In what way? I don't know. Uh, what do you mean? So like. Are you working on anything? You got yeah. the updates? Oh, sorry. I was looking at these fucking weird Sonic comic book covers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking rabbit hole of bizarre. Um, yeah, I should have a video out. Not too long. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Um, I, I'm <laughs> yeah. just working on stuff. I'd like to have more to say right now, but I don't. Hopefully I will soon. I think last week I said I'll probably be able to say more this week. Um, and all i got to say this week is I'll probably be able to say more next week. Because... Not quite there, but almost at a point of being able to... This thing is big. It's long. Okay? Oh, um, so yeah, more info. Alright, next week. Maybe I'll be inclined to say exactly what it is by next week. I think before the EFAP next week, you'll see... Um, I'll, post, I'll post the timeline in its completed form without visuals fully done. So you can at least see that. And I'll tell you how long it is at that point. You say that every week, Mola? I only said it last week. That was the only other week I said it. You're lying. You're telling me lies. Deception. Once again. Told you this stream had a theme. <laughs> Terrible. Um, so, yeah. Stuff. Stuff on the way. And as you guys know, we've got the anniversary stream coming in 20 days from now. Oh my. 20 oh, exciting. days. Who knows what'll happen. Fun times ahead. Um... And we got we got another super chat that says kick them all and let the dawn sort them out. Some good good way to approach life, I'd say. Good way. That's yeah, solid. Solid. But yeah, that's about that's about that. I'd say we're gonna we're gonna head off now. Thank you all for giving us a listen, for hanging out, for those kind donations, and uh, thank you to the guests and uh, Mr. Typo for for jumping on as well. That was a bit of fun. We yeah. Shall, like I said. And uh, These are always fun. Uh, thank you very much for having me on, and thank you, chat. Thanks for, Thanks for coming on, dude. And of course, Absolutely. we're going to watch Prey and talk about it next week. So if you guys want to be in on it, you can go watch it yourselves, or you can just listen to us summarize it, because we probably will. Um, yeah, probably. Other than that, thank you all so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, we bye will bye see bye you guys bye later. Bye. Cheers, bye. guys. Peace. Bye.